Welcome. We're doing an episode of Callouts Confirmed. So we asked Twitch chat some questions and came back with some poll results. And we're going to see if you guys can kind of uh, guess what Twitch chat thinks, basically. See how in tune you are with the with the world, with the people. First question, what do you call a spot on Ancient when it gives a CT full view of mid? You have your options there. Window, red room, top mid, sniper's nest, house. What do you guys call it in mouse? Do you guys call it... We call window? it... Demon. Call it window, demon. Uh, window demon. or demon, yeah. yeah. Window or demon. Why? Because it's red? Yeah. 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 All right. We call it two different callouts. We, we, call we do window and house. Yeah, okay. Whatever yeah. someone's feeling. We always interchange it for whatever right reason. I think house or red room. I house think I've heard red room before. I think probably the window. That's like I think window. Floor. It's just like Mirage. Yeah. Probably yeah. the window. It's always, that's like a window map. from T-Small. Yeah, it's have always have a like, window. Yeah. Call it across all the yeah. maps. Do you call Anubis mid window as well? Yeah. Even if it's not yeah, we do. And, and, and house. Do. And house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we can. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an easy one. Yeah, yeah. Sniper's yeah. nest. Sniper's <laughs> nest. Yeah. I can imagine Demka. Oh, damn. One sniper's nest. Yeah. Red room, red room. Red room. So which one do you think was the highest? I think window. Window. Yeah, I think two. Window? Let it be window, but we call red room also. Anybody call it sniper's nest? Sniper's I nest. No for that. Oh, it's a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah. It's a mouthful. You know, this blew my mind. 11% said window. 11. Well, I, I thought it was house, house more. right? 3% of you said sniper's nest. And we need to talk. Yeah, and whoever that 3% is, we need <laughs> yeah. to have some words. Yeah, we have some words. Let's see how high their, their elo is. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's in the sniper's pit. Okay. <laughs> Which one do you think was the most picked by Twitch chat? It'd probably be no. Yeah, yeah I think window. Window. I think window. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you'd be incorrect. All of you. All of okay, you. Okay, then it is red room. room. Okay, yeah, it's red room. Red room was up there. 69%. Shout out to Twitch chat. Well done. What? what do you call the CT pathway through a building leading to the B-bomb site on Inferno? Ruins, construction, church, or garden? Or what was the most common usage? Ruins, was it? for sure. I think ruins. I think yeah. Probably, 100% ruins. Yeah. Probably construction. construction. I did construction, though. I think construction. I think ruins, no? Yeah, like construction. No ruins. Church. No church. I don't no. think anyone calls it church. No, I, I, I haven't heard. It's ruins now. I think uh, ruins are construction, but I would go like, ruins. There's no way. Because most of the people, like. I think that's what the game says. The game says it's probably. Yeah, they construction. It's probably church, honestly, but it should be ruins. Damn. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Floppy <laughs> takes church? it. Yeah, this blew my mind. 71% oh, is a church. What? Church? I mean, it is a church. I can't deny it. It makes sense. You know, there's the whole pulpit, I'm not gonna lie. stained glass and all that. If I'm in face and someone calls church, I might have to think twice. They would have brain lag like on that one. <laughs> okay, church. Uh, church. I didn't hear you in MFPL, never my charge. One charge. Church. church. <laughs> what, what do you want to charge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, interesting. And 16% uh, and said ruins. Garden. Mm. Garden. 2% of people thought it was garden. Bro. 
Welcome to Callouts Confirmed. This is a good one. We got the Twitch chat basically polled yesterday. We were asking them different names for the spots, and it seemed to divide opinion. It raised some eyebrows. I'll be honest, there are some weirdos out there. Yeah. There are some weirdos out there. Don't know where they're making these calls up themselves or something, but uh, I'm going to pick your brains. And I know Americans tend to have some, uh, well, some mini differences, if you know, if you catch my drift. Uh, up next, what do you call the underground pathway connecting second mid to mid on Inferno? We've got Mexi, Vietnam, Rat or Underpass? Call it Mexi. Yeah, we say Mexi. Yeah. Yeah. Europeans probably say Vietnam. I, I say both. It depends They're what probably both for the same reason. Depends on the mood you're in. Yeah. <laughs> depends on the call. I think it's either way uh, Vietnam or uh, Mexico, but uh, I used up to say Mexico. Yeah. I used to say Vietnam more often. Yeah. yeah. Or, or Vietnam or Mexico. Yeah, I mean, those, I the, don't know why, those were the old call outs. Like, uh, I was from Mexico. Gamer call outs, yeah. I had Vietnam. Vietnam. You know? oh, oh, oh. I would 50. vote from Mexico. In our perspective, it's 50 50. I mean, I call it three of these, but. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> and everyone gets all three of them, I'm sure. I think it's Vietnam. No, I think it's Mexico. No, I think it's. I would say, I would, I, I would go with Rat. I would go Rat as well. What? This one was uh, pretty self explanatory. What do you reckon they voted for? I oh, have to go Mexico. Mexico, yeah. I don't, I don't think. Yeah. I don't know, Mexico probably. Yeah, 56%. That's the majority saying Mexico. But Rat apparently is popular in Central Europe. 21% saying Rat. rat. Um, yeah. I mean, makes sense, I guess. Yeah, probably I mean, might find some rats, rats down there. there. Yeah. yeah. Might as well be. Oh, okay. Easy. 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 What do you call the room that connects A site with outside on Nuke? Annex, main, or mini? What did Annex. Twitch chat pick? Okay, but this is like, so in NA you would call it mini. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But then uh, it's all about how many Twitch chatters are from NA. Yeah. So I don't know who voted. <laughs> oh. Or maybe main. they're just trolling and they go Annex here. I would go main. I have a sneaking suspicion that uh, you guys calling it mini? Yeah, yeah we, we call, call it mini. mini. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. Euros call it main. Yeah, yeah. Hong Kong says main sometimes. Say I do say main sometimes. Yeah. Main. Yeah. But Slips out. Yeah, I try my best to call mini, but main just sounds so much better. Yeah. And it actually <laughs> says mini on the sign. It does? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does say yeah. garage. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Which really blows my mind. It's like aluminium, aluminum. Maybe you guys are right this whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we called it mouth in South Africa. Mouth? Mouth. Because there was like a little face you can make out of like the lights and the doorway. Oh, wow. That was a yeah, long time. That one, I like, like that. that. Yeah. The... It's mouth, mouth, mouth. <laughs> mouth. <laughs> yeah. mouth. Uh, but what do you reckon Twitch chat said? I think mini. I think main is the main one. Main is 77% uh, from Twitch chat. Okay. But we do call it mini in, in North America. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure we get a little main mixed in there, but I've, I've called it mini for 20 years. <laughs> we ain't changing shit. European <laughs> Twitch yeah. chat. Oh, come yeah, on, I mean, man. you guys, the, the American showed up 17% mini and 6% saying annex. 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 All right, welcome. We're doing an episode of Callouts Confirmed. So we asked Twitch chat some questions and came back with some poll results. What do you call this small boxed area on the left side of the overpass behind bombsite B? Uh, graffiti, jungle, ABC. I mean, it's not ABC anymore. Yeah, yeah but it is called ABC. No, no, it's not. <laughs> what? Do we call it ABC? Yeah, we call it ABC. Yeah. Uh, I think so. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Why I, don't, I, I mean, I, I think I, it's graffiti or I think, I think it's I think it's graffiti. I think it's graffiti, but yeah. Yeah. No, we say graffiti. That's graffiti. It's yeah. Graffiti. Yeah. It's graffiti. There's graffiti everywhere. Yeah. There used to be graffiti the there, but now there's not. They moved yeah. it to T Swan. Yeah. It's gone. I mean, doesn't it say ABC as well? Isn't the graffiti saying ABC? Yeah, it ABC. said ABC. Yeah. 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 Well, in CSGO. I didn't know that. Wow. I think a lot of uh, persons will be on the graffiti. Smart man. Smart man. Yeah, I don't know why, but on parks, uh, much more saying graffiti than ABC, I don't know why. Graffiti, ABC, it's the same amount of syllables. It's the same speed to say it, but yeah. you're right. Yeah, 78% of people say graffiti. graffiti. And you guys call it? ABC. ABC? Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. ABC on the wall. It seems, <laughs> it seems a little divided here, boys. <laughs> but this is a chance I mean, to get everyone actually, on the same page. I'm not sure how do we call it. We call it ABC. I, I think we call it ABC. It's such yeah. a universal call. If you call graffiti or ABC, yeah, everyone strong. knows. Yeah. 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 The spot that connects B-site with mid on Vertigo. Window. There's always a window. Construction, always. Guardian, Connector, or B platform. B platform. B platform. He's B platform <laughs> next to the sniper's nest. <laughs> Uh, we call it window. That's window. It's window? Yeah, it's window. Yeah, it's window. 
I need to stop calling it window. Guardian? Yeah, okay, that's my fault. Yeah, I call it Guardian. I don't know. Yeah, Guardian? I don't know. In Europe, it's Guardian. Yeah, Europe, they say yeah. Guardian. Really? Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, for that one player. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what that play is? I, no, I, 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 I don't think you ever played that, man, to be honest. No, I don't think <laughs> there is no way, There must yeah. have been. No, Guardian played. No, he definitely it, did play. I remember watching the game. Video? Guardian huh? Was there even a window when I mean, Guardian was, played, though? I think I remember the door was there. The door was on time ago. Oh, I don't miss the door. No. I don't know. We call it window. No, we don't. Yes. We call, it, we call it heaven. We call it heaven. Well, I've never called it heaven in my life. I call it <laughs> well, here's the eternal question. Why does anyone call it Guardian? I don't know. It's a good does question. Does anyone know? No, no oh. idea. Guardian, He's window. smiling. It's a... Dang, I wish I took this one serious. 72% went for window. What? what? 72. See, they're trolling now. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a window. It's always a window. There has to be a window. <laughs> and now for history. Our final round, our history buff Oh here. no. <laughs> <laughs> Question number one, which famous Carthaginian leader is known for crossing the Alps with elephants during the Second Punic War? <laughs> what is Second Punic War? <laughs> no, it's the Google. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it's <was> funny. <laughs> <laughs> like Google said. You guys have to know this. Yeah, this is ah. easy. <laughs> nice, you know it. nice oh. bluff, Isaac. <laughs> you know it, Of course not. Hannibal. Hannibal. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Thanks, God. Yeah. That's bad. Okay, that was clean. He saved us. Yeah. He saved us. I, I, was, I was about to say that, actually. What was the trade route that connected China and Europe in ancient times called? It's a. Um, Golden Road. Is that No, not Golden. It's a. Uh, I don't know, but like this is. Rock, I think like Transylvania or something. Transylvania. I don't no, know. it's something else for sure. You don't, you don't think so? Might have been named after like a, shall we say, thing that was traded along that route, potentially. Silkway. Silkway. Yeah. yeah. It's a Nash at Vietbull. I don't know. The Nil. I can I say it's in Sil Polish. It's, ah, it's Silk, Silk Road. Silk Road. Silk Road. Yeah. yeah! No, history is your topic. Let's go. Mm. Two out of three. Final question here. See if you guys can get any of the history questions. <laughs> then, which country gifted the Statue of Liberty to the United States? Oh, I Great reason. To France? Uh, I would say Spain. Spain? <laughs> But whose answer are we actually locking in here? I was feeling more confident. Yeah, it's funny because in Paris there is like also like a small statue. You want to go rock, paper, scissors, and when you... <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's sure. not how we... What? Do you have any other... Uh, uh, any other French? French, French, There we Spain. are, there we are, they did it! I know where uh, it was built, you know, see Paris. It was France, right? Uh, uh, okay. So, yeah, uh, yeah, French. and we were even getting the workings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. Okay, rock, rock paper, paper, scissors, shoot. shoot. So you're saying Spain. that is incorrect. It is in fact France. <laughs> oh, uh, the, the fact that it. there is a small Statue of Liberty yeah. in Paris yeah. might be an indicator there. Actually, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a huge indicator. Okay, so I had the answer. Oh, I had the answer on the history questions, but you should trust yourself more. I said it. Why would you lose the game though after? That's all about team players. Just win the rock paper I said France. I said okay, whatever. Let's. All right then, roster roulette with the boys. You got six chips in front of you, and you're gonna place the amount of chips is the number of roster changes that team will make by the end of the year. How many roster changes for Monty? All right, two from Madden, two from Sampias, two from Magisk. Five? <laughs> from Snappy? I have no idea. I, I think they're very underrated to be fair. They don't get invites to anything. They grind away to everything. They have no partner invites. I think they will just get ripped apart eventually. <laughs> like I think um, players will get bored out. Like if there's changes in Navi, there's three Ukrainians that are, is attractive there. <laughs> Cool Krasnow, going for Minus it. Krasnow. <laughs> and being this highly ranked is very impressive. Like when they come to one of these tournaments, they have to perform. Otherwise they're like, they're just dropping rankings. Like I don't know that much about them. Could only see maybe one change happening. And also it's a team that is very likely that someone gets picked up from. It's kind of like when with us in ends, like when we had too much success compared to like the size, um, like I think this could be a similar case where they will just get eaten up. <laughs> yeah, I also can put one. It's many teams were interested uh, before Katowice of our players, but anything can happen. We will see in the future. Like Sam Dayang, Vora and MQ, I know they have a really good relationship, like those three guys. Like, and I think they want to continue playing with each other. And obviously, if the results are not going as good, they, I think they will just change Bro and Krasnal. And they, there is a lot of young talent and good players from Ukraine. So they might go fully national team. Okay, seems like we've reached a consensus on Monty. 
right then, roster roulette with the boys. You got six chips in front of you and you're gonna place the amount of chips. Is the number of roster changes that team will make by the end of the year. Uh, we got Maus up next. Are you ready? One, one across the board, okay. Who's the one? Uh, <laughs> Brolin have, uh, I don't remember, he have short time contract or something like that? Could be one, it might be Brolin or Torsi. <laughs> all six. <laughs> That's ice cold, Jimmy. I, Team I, sucks, I, get them all out. <laughs> Max one, but Max one, I will not even put it. I'll gamble on two. Gambling on two? Yeah, this is a gamble. No, 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 for sure. They're a young team. I think they have a good environment in, inside the team. Say they're number six in the world, I think they will stick to their roster. But let's say G2 are number six, they probably won't. I think it depends how Berlin plays, to be honest. If he, if he plays well and performs well, he's gonna like stay and they're gonna probably stay together. Maybe they will sell even some player also. I think the highest risk of them changing the roster is players getting poached. I think it's a um, good bet and <laughs> I have. <I>, <laughs> There is, there is no, there is no like explanation for this one. Yeah. It's just from feeling. I'm getting scared from Jimmy. <laughs> this has been fun. All right then, roster roulette with the boys. You got six chips in front of you, and you're gonna place the amount of chips. Is the number of roster changes that team will make by the end of the year? It's gonna be complexity. Now, don't do my North Americans dirty here, boys. Three, two, one. Put your chips in. For complexity. <laughs> All in, baby. Okay, one chip for Krasna, one for Demka, two for Waro and SDY. And we need to see them upcoming the tournaments. If they will go well, I don't think they will make a changes. But if something happened bad to them, I think it will be one switch. I don't know who it will be, but yeah. They started out really good, but if they keep dropping now, I think that they will be looking at a roster change. And I think there's a high likelihood that they might not uh, continue to get to playoffs like uh, they did at the start. Too many North Americans on this team. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see 100% the long run in this team, maybe. It's like, then Grim is performing, then Elise is performing, then JT is performing, and then Floppy is performing. It's just so divided. Like, they never have one, like, consistent who's always in high in the numbers. It's like, I don't know, it's very difficult finding out how this team actually works. Uh, two, though, SDY, that's, yeah, is that... Yeah, I think uh, Elish is there to stay for sure, 100%. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, if they change, for example, uh, the player, it can be one player. It should be two players, from my perspective, to change these things up uh, completely. <laughs> You heard it here first, folks. No. <laughs> so how's that stays on the team? I think they could probably benefit from getting a EU player in because they can still keep the North American core by doing that, and I think that will happen eventually. We're going to keep trying our best. I try my best every day and see what happens. Oh, yeah. That's all I can do. That's all That's you can, can do. You should be a motivational speaker. I think so, actually. He's got it in him. As long as you put in your 100% every day, that's all that matters. <laughs> this has been fun. All right then, roster roulette with the boys. You got six chips in front of you and you're gonna place the amount of chips. Is the number of roster changes that team will make by the end of the year. We've got Falcons. New roster coming together with that end score. Any changes for this team in 2024 as they try and make it work? Three, two, one, put your chips in. I was wondering what you, I was wondering what you were gonna I'm do. I'm gonna put two down as well. I'm putting it down too. Yo, interesting. I don't think it's a like finished project. They're probably just seeing how it goes for now. And then they're gonna change something if it doesn't work. Okay. You go still? Minimum. Yeah. <laughs> With any other teams and any professional organization, if I don't perform for six months, I'm gonna I'm gonna get kicked. I think they're probably gonna change after the major. They got like stressed just before the major like cut off. Like they need to get the roster before. So they just had to put together a team. Going into it, I think it's better to just assume that there won't be any. They need to adapt to each other. Maybe it will take more than six months for them. So we just need to wait and see what time will show for us. I think they have high expectations and if they're not met, then yeah, some changes will be yeah. made. Falcons want to be like a top top one team instantly. So they're probably gonna try to get as many, like the best players they can. I think they have pretty interesting roster, I would say. Like some really good players, of course, and 10 Boros. Uh, like talent and <laughs> good player as well. A huge talent, but he also needs to show it. And it's the same with Marco as a captain. If he's not going to show it, he's not going to be part of it, you know? Your pragmatic approach swayed him to throw in all six. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the way he's thinking, like, if people don't perform in six months, everyone will be kicked. JT? Did I already say it? Oh, you did. I'm sorry. You're not even listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> the main goal of, uh, of our team is to 
be able to win a major in 2025, right? If we are not in the right way, if any of us is not performing, he will probably get removed. And this is this is just a reality. We know it. Like every top five, top ten team, they want to be the best, it's and if they don't being do a so, professional. yeah. I mean, yeah. you see it in football. You see it in annual sports that if people are not performing, they will eventually get the, the boot. It's, it's nothing personal it never is but we also have to be honest that we are living in an environment where teams are investing a lot of money with one goal to and that is to win but of course i hope it's not happening because that means we are being successful that means we are going into the project with 100 and and doing everything we can to prevent that because that is the goal we want all of us to win inspiring words from inspiring men that's ross roulette Intel Extreme Masters Katowice is brought to you in part by Intel, Acer Predator, DHL, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, One X Bets, and White Market. Pity party. I know, I know we had a long day yesterday, but come on, come on. This is the Hall of Heroes. This is where legacies built. I don't think Zonic was coming in yesterday and thinking, uh, oh yeah, I'll just turn up and play some games. No, he was saying 10 2 is the most dangerous scoreline. He really, really was. When I say Caddo, you say Witzer. Caddo, Witzer, Caddo, Witzer, Caddo, Witzer. Let's get this on. Three, two, one. <laughs> Oh yeah, we are back and we mean serious business today because that elimination already beckoning in our first game on the A stream, Matthew. You're right, coach. It's going to be Vitality versus Heroic. We are going to be both at the edge of our seat. Survival is the name of the game and I need to see a reaction from Sphinx. On the inverse, uh, either G2 or Ents are guaranteed to be making it through to the Spodek. That's, uh, That's a nice little sick. treat for one of them. That is sick and I love the Hooksy versus Glade matchup. There's so much history going into this matchup and we'll have to see how it goes. Eternal Fire versus Na'Vi. Now that's just a simply a question of surviving the gauntlet. Two teams on quite different paths at the moment. Who are you taking in that one, Matthew? Well, the namesake might go towards Navi, but I actually disagree. I think Eternal Fire have shown better Counter-Strike, Zentaris, Waikiria. They've given me enough to believe in an upset here. They've been looking absolutely red hot. That concludes the A stream side of things. So uh, what's going down on the B stream? That huddle has got me feeling thank you, Pump. And yeah. on the B stream, I'm super hyped because we have two elimination games, which are always really tense. Complexity up against Falcons. And then we've also got Monty going up against Cloud9. How do you think those are going to play out? I think Cloud9 is going to win that game against Monty. However, it's probably going to be close as Cloud9 have been struggling. I think Falcon's complexity is going to be super interesting. Two teams who are struggling a bit, but if I have to pick one, I'd go with Falcons. There we go. And then, spot in the Spodic, up for grabs. It is Miles up against Gamer Legion, who Who's going there? I don't think anyone saw Game on League play that well throughout the tournament. I, I must have been very, very surprised by them every single time I've seen them play. However, I do think Mouse is a better team, better individual, so I'm gonna go with Mouse. There you go, you got it straight from Pimp. And now, Freya with our top stories. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, that's the question. How exactly did we get to these matches that we find ourselves in today? Day number six here at I am Katowice. I've got Steele joining me to go through the top stories of the day, or yesterday, I guess, technically. Cloud9 versus Maus. Uh, that was a marathon of a game. Maus coming out on top despite, you know, losing their star player. Frozen no longer in the mix. But uh, things looking pretty good for the Maus squad, right? Yeah, things are looking pretty good. I, it was a bit of a nail-biter that last series on Ancient, especially in the triple overtime with the... Oh man, it's like one of those matches that haunts you for years to come. You just have like the PTSD flashbacks. If I just hid for one more second at that pillar, we wouldn't be in this situation right now. So that's something that they're definitely going to be thinking about for a long time. Yeah, how do you think that leaves Cloud9, you know, in the long run for the rest of the groups? Because they're going to have to win uh, quite a few games to even just make it into the spot. Do you think they have the balls to do it, Steel? I think they do, but at the same time, they've looked really shaky. They got upset round one in the play-ins against Rebels, and from there, it was just like, okay, are they going to do it? Are they not? And then they go against Virtus Pro, and it's like, oh, maybe they can, but then Virtus Pro's sleeping, and then it's just like you never really know what you're going to get. It's every game something else is happening. The one good thing is like... Well, electronics looking good again. <laughs> we want that. We definitely need that. We're demanding that from Cloud9 going forward. Uh, speaking of the teams that have actually made it through to the Spodek, we've got FaZe, we've got Spirit. First of all, Spirit, did you expect them to be making it through to the playoffs in this fashion, right? Not dropping a series. I didn't know exactly what to expect. I always have some base level hesitation of just fully buying into a new phenomenon. So when I saw this, I'm like, eh, I'm not sold yet. But then when I saw them play and how confident they were in the fashion that they were winning the games in, I'm like, oh, you know what? I can get on this bandwagon. You know what? I can get on this train. How hot are the donk stonks looking right now? <laughs> the donk stonks are looking pretty hot right now. FaZe also making it through. Uh, surprises there, or does that, that, that make sense? Because they're one of the teams that's come into the groups, and we were kind of looking at the other teams that are, are doing good work, and they already had a warm-up in the play-ins, but, you know, FaZe, FaZe looking pretty, pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, FaZe have looked really solid, you know, even since uh, Sydney. They were looking really good there. They, they won a, a bunch of events. The only thing that I was really going to be like, eh, what's going on with FaZe was the whole minus twist plus Frozen. Mm -hmm. How is that going to slot in? Are they going to change a lot of things up? But it looks like they're kind of playing everything the same way that they've always business as usual type of thing. Well, two teams earning a spot in Spodek yesterday, but unfortunately for two more, uh, they're out, eliminated. That is Rebels and, of course, Apex. Um, I was surprised at how competitive the Apex and Na'Vi series was. We went to the full three maps, but was that off the back of, you know, Apex looking solid or was that Na'Vi looking bad? Which, which way would you take it? I would say Na'Vi's looked really bad this event so far. Not what you would expect from a team of their caliber. They really need to figure something out. I don't know if it's that they're playing too static, they're not innovating enough, or they're just like stuck in their ways or what it is. But I mean, I was just like from the start of the event thinking like, oh yeah, this is when Apex goes home. Oh, this is when Apex goes home. So, you know, finally we, we see it happen, but I, you just never really know these days. Yeah, I think it was an achievement for them to be making it through to the group stage. And obviously, you know, uh, it was unfortunate that they lost out to Na'Vi alongside Rebels. Also, unfortunately, going home. But for Cloud9, they need to be bringing everything and the kitchen sink today. So, uh, Banks, how's Groove feeling this morning? Just a reminder, guys, over on the B stream, we've got Cloud9 taking on Monty. The guys are warming up and they're getting themselves ready. Perfecto, mm -hmm. today, you feel like it's going to be a different day today? It's going to be a winning day? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a lucky day. So oh, because a it's lucky day? Yeah, because it's before, it's an unlucky day for me. So <laughs> I just <laughs> pretty sure it's going to be lucky for me. A swapping of them out, I like that. We got a, a hopefully happy Hobbit this morning. He's got a smile on his face. Of course, as always. As, as always. Now, yesterday's game was very tough, right? But is it something where you guys still feel like you're progressing as a team, you're improving? Uh, you can see it. Yes, uh, progress on your face. You can see we're improving every match. Mm -hmm. Of course, we still have a lot of mistakes. It's it's all, yes, it's all about time. It's yep. easily can be fixed, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy your warm up. Mr. Boomich, you have been loud and wild all event long. You ready to put the hurt onto Monty? I'm talking about the game plan, sorry, uh. guys. Okay, I'm going to leave him. He can't talk about anything. You're talking to Electronic about it, so I'm going to leave him as well. Axel, you going to say anything? Hello. Hello. Oh, there we go. Oh, you, you, you talk to Boomich, I'm going to take Axel. <laughs> He's listening to you as well. Okay, they're talking about game plan. I can't do anything. Say hi. 
Hi. There we go. That's all we need. Thank you very much. We'll get back to the desk. <laughs> you know what, Banks, you did well. Full focus, and I would hope so for Cloud9 going forward. But, uh, gentlemen, I think we need to revisit something that we theorized way, way back mm. in the play-in stage. We've got our 1x spec power ranking. This is what we thought we should be expecting coming into this tournament. Um, I can already see we're quite wrong about <laughs> quite a lot of these things. How much right. influence did Banks have, by the way, on putting Navi as number two? Like, what was Blood Wolfland about? You know what? I don't even think that's the worst out there. I think <laughs> there, are, there are two names that we can mention straight from the get-go, and I'm not going to make fun of them because I was on that bandwagon as well, but VP and Astralis, obviously, we I, I want to say we overestimated them. I don't think so. I think we rated them fairly when they came to Katowice, mm -hmm. but then, wait, hold on. Let me find just a pure Boom. There we go. That's a Michael Bay sound effect right now. That's what happened here. That was an absolute catastrophe for Astralis and VP. Maybe we can have a look at some positive vibes, Jacob. Pick, you, pick you, your positive vibe. You, you're cool. Huh? You're right. Yeah. I, if you have money, I am like a jukebox. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, Matthew. I love how you just ignored Vi 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 Vitality. It's still up in the air. It's it's ah, also, okay, okay. Whenever I talk about Vitality, people say, oh, this guy, every time he's on the desk, he talks about Vitality. I don't do it once. You put me under the bus. Yeah. Listen, there's, there's two teams I want to highlight here. Two teams I want to highlight here. One being these boys right here. Eternal Fire have actually looked like one of the better playing teams. To be 17th right now, nah, no way. They're playing some good, beautiful, solid Counter-Strike. The way they're going up against FaZe Clan as well, yes. almost beating them, almost booking a spot into the Spodic, they came very, very close. So that's the team I want to look out for. And then we have the, the likes right here, Matthew. We cannot get around it. Oh, I think absolutely. this has been the best playing team in the tournament so far. They have the best individual right now, and Dunk going off the charts. You have Shiro coming in. And the team play, we were discussing about it, me and Yanko yesterday, it's not like it's all the Dunk show. It's actually a well-rounded team. So for Team Spirit right now, they're probably more like up here. Yeah, it feels like in terms of power ranking, they've played the best Counter-Strike. Yeah. They've had the best individuals. I want to give a shout out, if I'm allowed, to uh, to Rebels Gaming, because I think their story sort of changed throughout this thing in Katowice. They started as, hey, I'm just happy to be here. Uh, wow, this is the hotel where players are staying. Wow, this is the Holo Heroes. And actually, throughout their games, we started giving them the time of day. We started listening to their stories, seeing them progress, and sort of make a, a little mark here in Katowice. And I think that deserves some praise. Yeah, it was impressive that they made it through to the group stage. Um, I do want to draw your attention to two teams that are going to be going head-to-head. -head. Got Maus, Game Illusion, guaranteed Wait, let me help. to have a mm -hmm. Polish in-game leader in the Spo deck because one of these two is going to net that today. I think we've got to give some credit to, to Game of Legion again. I feel like every single time I turn up to a tournament of a big caliber, they somehow exceed my expectations. I never really recognize them. I never really think, okay, they're going to do well. They're going to qualify. They're going to be a factor in the tournament. They're just going to be here. They're <laughs> just going to win a map once in a while. But they exceed my expectations every single time. They played some solid Counter-Strike. They don't necessarily have the best individuals on the server, but team play, chemistry, and synergy, that's one strength of this. I agree with you that they exceeded our expectations, but I don't think we should say sorry. I, I think it's disingenuous to now stand and be like, well, actually, no, it makes, it makes complete sense. Of course they were going to do it. No, let, let's appreciate for what it is. They're overperforming compared to what we expected. They're doing way more than what we thought. Good for them. Why would I pretend now that this is, oh, actually, no, it makes a whole lot of sense. Maybe it's just my conscience, because the, the problem for me is they've done, it, they've done it three times. They've done it at the major. They've done it now here as well. They did it uh, sort of also at Cologne last year. Every single time they turn up to a big tournament, they play better than I expect them to be. So maybe I need to raise my expectations. Maybe a, I'm a stupid. A guilty conscience. Yeah. Well, it does exist. He's just trying to very much atone like He's atoning here. Where is Trace so we can have uh, an actual atonement, like pure atonement? <laughs> I think we need Aww. to go back to the drawing board with this, maybe revisit exactly what on earth we were thinking coming into this. So uh, whilst we do that, Harry Hugo, how's it going down in the player boots? Another day of group stages here at IAM Katowice, and we have Cloud9 and Monty on the line for elimination. It's not just sad news, though. Playoffs are waiting for one of Game Elysian Mal's. All that and more at IAM Katowice groups. Isn't that right, Harry? Did, did they win? Did they win? Did, I, did Eternal Fire win, Hugo? I'm sorry to break it to you, Harry, but the Turks did fall last night. Phaser in the spot, though, and Eternal Fire get another chance. Another chance? Versus who? Na'Vi. That will all be coming up later today. Don't worry. Get a nap, we'll get ready for Monty Cloud9, and there's all that and more in store here at IAM Katowice.
Colt's gonna jump across. I've heard some uh, good rumors about Boomich. I feel like he's just a nice guy to be around with. I I've never seen him feel be toxic or whatever. He's one of those captains that always believes in his call and uh, his team, whatever, whatever the score is, and uh, he tries his best. I feel like he's a very flex flexible in-game leader. We can see he's taken up the op now in Cloud9. Cloud9 needed him. I don't think they needed him as an AVP player, but they definitely needed him as the IGL. Well, from my eyes, not having an opera definitely put some pressure on, on the team to perform. Every Every successful team does have a very strong upper. Going against that understanding is interesting and it's gonna be hard to prove, but um, yeah, it's up to them. I feel like he came uh, with a storm to the scene, like he was a fragging IGL with Navi. I feel like he was really good, consistent. I think Boomich is a, is a really good IGL and I'm excited to see him back um, in Cloud9. And I think his special strength is uh, his explosiveness is in IGL. His aim, I think he has pretty good aim uh, for an IGL, definitely. Calling or anything, he was just annoying guy on the server to play against. Like he's always, let's say if Navi was like playing by the book and like doing things in a way that you could anticipate, Boomich was the one, you know, going out far left and doing things you wouldn't expect from from a team like Navi, like pushing with MP9 or like, I don't know, pushing with like shotgun or some crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, but I think like Boomich was this like, kind of like X factor that could win them some really crazy rounds and turn some crazy games. Cloud9 now in an elimination matchup going against Monty. But Groove, I've got to touch on the Mouse game there, especially Ancient, because it looked like there was a lot of chaos and frustration. How did you view it? What was the frustrations? So uh, I think uh, if we just have a look at our uh, yesterday's match versus Mouse, the first map, it was our map. Yeah. It was for us. The second map, <laughs> their peak was just uh, for them, obviously. But uh, Ancient, it was, uh, I told it before the match that it will be 50-50 map and okay. uh, uh, we didn't uh, win some crucial rounds, mm -hmm. uh, especially the rounds versus uh, force buys, uh, two last rounds, so and th that is why we go to the overtime and when you play third map at overtimes, mm -hmm. uh, you, it's always about the nervous, so it's always about the huge mistakes. I. I just saw a lot of missed grenades. Feel confident more for today though, Monty, a team you understand? Yeah. There we go. Easy words, quick answers, let's see if they'll get it done on the server. Welcome to Intel Extreme Masters Katowice and it is the B stream today and we're kickstarting with an elimination game. Monty up against Cloud9 and as we stand in the Hall of Heroes, there are iconic names on the walls, faces that we love, moments that we've all shared together watching Counter-Strike. Some of the players that you are going to see in Cloud9 are already on the wall. If you don't understand why there is so much noise around this team, we're going to break it down. I'm going to be your host for this game and helping me break it down is Maui Snake and Steel. I don't even have funny quips for them. I want to jump straight into this. Let's walk through the, the history of these players in Cloud9 and why we hold them to such high regard, Maui. Well, we have a couple of guys that, like you said, line the wall. We see Axile over there. We see Electronic over there. The fact is that they've won previous Katowice's. And also, there are four major winners on Cloud9. You go to Hobbit, you go to Perfecto. They also could have had their names on these walls, too. The thing is that they are against a pretty big underdog right now in Monty, but it's for an elimination game. And there's a lot of tension between both of these teams. They played each other so many different times in their Eastern European competitions. And so they're very familiar with each other. And that's why the stakes are incredibly high. 
still electronic on, on our screens right now. This is his opportunity to not just be the sidekick, right? Cloud9 was meant to be his chance to shine and say, hey, pay attention to me as well. Yeah, definitely. I come from a time of simple supremacy, basically. So when we see electronic kind of stepping away from the shadow of simple, the little bro of simple, and he's able to take the spotlight again and, and return to his former glory. That's always nice to see. And he's putting up those numbers on Cloud9 right now for them. You can see them on your screens there, the opportunities to win, but also the despair as they find themselves in an elimination game. They may not be able to make it to the Spodic. They may not be able to make it to playoffs, especially, obviously, if they lose this game. And it's going to bring us to the conversation that everyone's been having. You saw some of the pros weighing in as well. This whole concept of Cloud9 doesn't have an AWPA. We know this. Everyone has said and has weighed in that without an AWP, they have a problem. We know this. The team has said they're not getting an AWP any, anytime soon, so we know this as well. So my question to you, gents, is what the hell do they do? Because they're not going to be able to change the situation. They've got to work with the tools they have. How do they build something fantastic? Well, the style that they've been playing has actually mitigated some of the, the lack of the op, that is. We are obviously, though, looking at the fact that, yeah, the op changes hands. So, yes, they don't have a primary opper, but they have a certain player per every map who's picking that weapon up. So, we can see that it's to varied effect, obviously. Boomich doing very well for himself on Overpass, Hobbit being pretty good at Nuke himself. But then they seem to have these kind of weaker maps, and it's very obvious, actually, when you look at this, like Inferno, Ancient Anubis, there really isn't a significant op presence for them. But that's why why actually this Cloud9 team has been throwing out more in terms of active aggressive rifle plays. They're trying to set their riflers up to try to find opening picks. Sometimes that is to their detriment. Sometimes they're walking right into a setup that the opponents are ready for, but they do feel like they have to force their hand at times because they can't rely on the big green's presence. So we obviously saw still uh, Cloud9, the coach, chatting a little bit about what happened against Maus yesterday. Uh, it went to a third map, went to like a gazillion overtimes, but they still weren't able to, to see it through. It's why they found themselves in the lower bracket. Do you think it is just the fact that they don't have an AWP, or is there more that Cloud9 needs to work on? I mean, it's never just one thing in a team. Usually, like, there'll be things that stand up or take priority or you know, a bigger thing, a bigger deal. But it's, at the end of the day, you need to be a well-rounded team with a lot of depth. And if you're missing one part, usually that's not what's going to break you. What we saw is just... You know, so many things that, like the smallest of margins, that's what the, the coach is saying. You're, you're, you're going into a third map. It's going to be a 50-50 map, and we need to win just like one different round. I mean, we'd be sitting here having this conversation about mouse sports right now, right? Yep. If Perfecto in that one versus one sits behind the pillar for one more second, doesn't try to like swing out, we'd be having, having a completely different conversation. We wouldn't be talking about this op thing as big a deal as it is right now. So, you know, it, it's high-level Counter-Strike. Things happen, and not everything goes to your way and you just have to do the best you can with what you've got they're not doing the best they can with what they've got though maui well, I mean, maybe well, I'm they wrong. could be. Just, they like, could be. All right, they could, but so far, I haven't seen it. That's what I'm saying. It does seem like it's a problem for some of the more idealistic coaches in this space. I would probably consider Groove to be one of them, probably people like Blade as well, where they see a problem and they think, well, we can still extract a little bit more out of every player. And I think it is kind of what Steel's saying, too. You know, you look at Cloud9, and I think sometimes their mid rounding isn't always the cleanest. I think sometimes the calls out of spawn are a little bit too simplistic. Where you have such veteran, savvy players, you don't really always need to do what they did in overtime against Maus, which is they did so many just A execs out of spawn, B execs out of spawn. It's like, come on, you can actually slow the round down for yourselves a little bit. And I feel like that's probably something they went back to the drawing board today and say, why is it when we hit overtime, we half of our strats were just execs out of spawn? Like, use, use the fact that you're actually pretty good at mid-rounding sometimes. That's Cloud9, but on the side of, of the other side that they have to play against, what the hell was that? Even I don't know. Uh, it is Monty, and yesterday they did not show up. We didn't have a chance to see them in the plans. We've only seen them in the group stages. We only saw them in one game yesterday. And by saw them, I mean we saw them do very little. Banks caught up with them, though, to find out how they're feeling and what they've potentially changed coming into today. Monty will certainly need to get off to a hotter start than we saw yesterday. But when I'm talking about a hot start, it did start hot start on one side of the <laughs> map, mate. And then afterwards, it became problematic. But I want to ask, was it more down to you guys or was GL playing very well? Were they difficult for you? It's definitely down to us because uh, uh, how you know Monty? You know, Monty is a grinders, right? A lot of matches, a lot of maps, yep. a lot of stuff happening and stuff. 
And this season it was first time for this team where they actually entered the season as a tier 1 team where you didn't play anything before mm -hmm. and it was only practice and obviously practice don't give you all the answers where are you at, which form you at, mm -hmm. what's your best maps, what's your worst maps and stuff like this, right? And what works, what's, what's not. Usually we were checking it in, in the matches, right? Yeah. This season we started off uh, that we couldn't play those matches. At least last season we had a plane before Cologne. And actually, that's a complete deja vu mm -hmm. because we played against GL first match in ESL Cologne. We won it, then uh, we lost a match, and then we played Cloud9. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> going around again. Uh, yeah, that's uh, exactly this way. And uh, yeah, it's down to us. We need to kind of find out the um, uh, season groove. Yeah. That's what needs uh, to be done, and uh, that can be done only with the tournaments and only with the wins and losses and stuff. That, like those answers you can't get on practice. Well, the loss did happen yesterday, so the win needs to happen today, otherwise elimination match. What did the team talk last night look like? What did you say to them? Well, nothing special, you know, we've been in these situations like forever mm -hmm. uh, and we'll start from uh, EPL story, I guess. We lost uh, two matches there, it's a triple elimination there, obviously. Uh, so we told ourselves exactly the same thing. It's just playoff started a bit earlier, you know, <laughs> and that's how it is. It's like 1-32, uh, yep. <laughs> round uh, of 32 <laughs> or whatever is it, uh, or 16. Uh, so nothing special happened. Just uh, best of three players mm -hmm. all the way uh, from this moment. And, um, and that's it. It's not like uh, you can change something uh, significant in one night. No. So we will see how it goes. But what do you make of how Cloud9 play and, and their style of play right now? Obviously, the lack of Orpa as well coming in there. Does this make it easier for you? Uh, not quite, to be honest. In CS2, that doesn't uh, affect everything so much. Mm -hmm. It affects, obviously, on some certain maps. But on some maps, it doesn't affect them so much. And they're playing uh, a lot of freestyle. They're playing very confident CS. Uh, that's what we lack right now, because uh, we didn't play matches and we didn't uh, have a chance to get this confidence from, right? So that's their basically only advantage, that they played some matches this season. They lost some, they win some, whatever. Uh, and we didn't, obviously. And um, I didn't say anything special or anything changed from like CS goal patterns or okay. their CS2 game right now. They're playing what they like to do and what they're confident in. Well, let's see if his confidence is going to work out today against Cloud9. Let's see if Monty will be able to grab that win. Interesting thoughts there on the, the no orb situation, but more importantly, touching on something that I think a lot of Monty fans are going to be concerned about Maui, and it is the fact that they haven't really played much this year. Before their match yesterday against Gamer Legion, the last time they played was seven weeks ago. So that's a bit much, especially when people are used to what made Monty such a heartthrob story when it came to the Blast Paris Major, because at that event, they had played more maps than everybody in the three months leading up to it. You can see right here, yeah, it's not, it's not even practice makes perfect for Monty, it's officials make perfect. When they enter that Paris Major, 140 maps played in the three months leading up to it. And now for I Am Katowice, 23. Like that's that's a completely different feeling when they're coming into this tournament. Yeah, I would say I saw that, the, I guess the effects of that as well. In their match yesterday, it looked like on their CT sides, they had a really good thing going for them. They were playing really well together, especially after they got the first pick, but it was their T sides that were looking lacking depth. And maybe you get the depth through uh, more, uh, more practice, more more officials, I guess, in this regard, and just being able to um, grind out games in a more explosive manner. It looked like they had two different things that they had. They had the slow default spread around on their T sides on their gun rounds, and then on their ecos is when they would be like maybe run it down, stand it sometimes, but we never saw kind of like a, a mix of the two where they would start with like a spread default, get some sort of map control, and end with an explosive hit. I actually really want to bring that up because I, what you mentioned with kind of on their eco rounds where they where they were just by five deagles and maybe one flash sometimes, it's like, come on, so many of the teams here actually are going tech nine, they're buying smoke, flash, and it really is kind of like, you're not really saving more money by just buying a deagle and armor instead. And so, but the teams that are buying the tech nines, especially in CS2, I found to be so strong. Like so many explosive pistol plays onto bomb sites once they get map control are so much more effective in this game because to be honest, people just aren't as good as spraying in this game. That's a big thing too. 
Getting used to time in the game in officials is so important and they haven't used it as an excuse, they haven't brought it up, but we do know that, that Monty is struggling at the moment with a lot of their players based in Ukraine and the war that they cannot get to boot camp. It is, I think it takes them like two days to get out of there just to get to tournaments like this. So there is a lot of those outside factors, but uh, as Yanko would say yesterday, no excuses. You got to play a game, they've got to perform. Can they though? And as the veto comes up, I'm curious how either of you are feeling about this and how you think it's going to play out for Monty. I'm feeling an overpass pick out of Cloud9. I think they're going to be able to look at Gamer Legion's footage yesterday that and how they dismantled Monty, and so that would be kind of my expected pick out of them. And yeah, Cloud9, they did, they just been loving that map. And okay, Mirage for Monty. Maybe Anubis for Ancients is the third map as well. It looked like they had a lot of overlap with their map pool, mm -hmm. where it's just like they, it's just like you look through their map list. It's like Overpass Mirage Anubis Ancient Overpass Mirage and Ancient Anubis. It's the same thing over and over on repeat. How much do you think it's sticking in the heads, though, of, of Monty? Because uh, this is a team that has to grind through all of these events, right? And they need to make sure that they get as far as they possibly can. They had that last yesterday. If they lose now, they are out. That is not a good start to your year. Oh, yeah, and the thing is that Monty, because they're not part of the partner system, aren't going to be playing all those those partnered events and everything like that. So it's important that they look back at yesterday's footage and wonder to themselves, hey, we're going into Overpass again. We got we got our asses kicked by Gamer Legion once we switched that T side. You need We need to actually come together and figure some things out because the CT side was fine for them, and I feel like Cloud9, the reason they went for this, they want to just take them out of the tournament. They want to send Monty home. Really quick, Steel, is it going to be the legends that are going to continue to keep themselves going? going in the group stages, or are Monty going to be able to knock them out of the Hall of Heroes? I think we're going to go to the distance on the th uh, on the third map here, but uh, Cloud9 should be able to take this. I'm hopeful for Monty to be able to overcome their overpass pro problems from yesterday, leveraging that good CT side um, to make sure that they can overcome their not so good T side. But I mean, it's a good map pool for both these teams. We could see any anything happen here. We're gonna be in for a banger. That's what they're trying to say. We're getting into our first elimination game here on the B stream, and who better than to take us into game? It's Harry and Hugo. Yeah, thank you very much. Monty taking on Cloud9 in an Elim matchup. Monty yesterday only able to field three T side rounds across the series. So getting off to a good start here is gonna to prove to be paramount for this Monty squad. On the other side of things, you have this Cloud9 team that have had glimmers of promise, but you're always left wanting a little bit more, I felt like, from Cloud9 throughout this. And this is where I really want to see Waro on the side of Monty come into his own, because one of the big problems for Cloud9 has been this lack of the, the dedicated AWP, right? So hopefully this is going to give Waro a little more freedom. You saw him very keen to get involved in fights yesterday, but wasn't able to win a lot of them. It's going to be a fast B-pop to open up for Cloud9. Yeah, they established some control in combo. It's all five out B at the end of the day, and not many players here to stop them. Double entry from Axile, and in a round like this, that should seal the deal. Bomb goes down, and Monty, with no kit currently, have to fight up against five players in the site. Boost comes up for Sundai Young, desperately looking for a pick back in, but they're not giving him anything. Boomich is right below. Oh, don't know if he even got the spot there either. Axel can swing on this contact. He's got Julies after the open and kills, and Boomish is good for his. Everyone falls in an instant. I like that you establish Waro as a player to look out for in this game. I definitely agree. When we look at the last time Monty took Cloud9 on, it was at Cologne, it was in group stage, and it was also an elimination game. Cloud9 2 0'd. But you know what was different there, Harry? Cloud9 had an AWPA. Mm. Shiro topped the series, 1.6 rating, and it was him v. Waro in those head-to-head -head so often. So with Cloud9 having their current lack of dedicated sniper player, we even saw Axar winning rounds with it yesterday over Mal's, uh, I think this may be a little harder question, of course, as the desk poised is, what form do Monty bring in today? Because yesterday was nothing short of underwhelming. Yeah, Sam Dai Young at least looked good in the series, I guess you could say. You know, there wasn't really a whole lot of positives to go off of for Monty. Nope. And so I hope he can start strong now. He's got this scout in the force by round for Monty. Even forcing in this second on the CT side, something that you don't see a lot of teams do. I like that. It's confident. It's a good map for it. And of course, it delays your gun round, but it means you can get the AWP in your first full buy as long as Warrior saves for it. We'll have to see if they can find any success, though. Scout is so powerful on the A site. Some Dae Young looking for picks. He's already hit a tag. A Cloud9, a pretty spread. 
three CTs here, as there were in the pistol. But this time looking a little better off. Cloud9 are coming their way. Some die young. Already lands a tag from this scout and now chance to do a little bit more as he spots players aggressing through the long side. It's going to be Waro's Deagle delivering this kill to Monty to open up, but it's swiftly traded out from Hobbit. Boomich takes it one step further. 5-7 in the toilet. It's going to get Whoa. overrun here. And Axar will kind of rein them back in. Cloud9 secure that one. They deal with the force by only losing a handful of players. And so for Monty, the full eco to follow. But it does seem, you know, you, you mentioned it last round, you're dead on. The, the priority is on bringing out this AWP as fast as they can. Yeah. I think the second round force is also map dependent. It's also, you know, if you have a play you want to make, uh, or this isn't the best map for you know, making a play, I'd say like an ancient CT side where you could you know, gamble towards B and, and play an aggressive mid round would be nice, but overpass is more just hoping the scout can light up C9 and the pistols can finish it off. Sun Dayung hits a bunch of tags, but they're not all converted. So Eco coming through, STY with Zeus. But for the most part, it's going to be Hobbit making it rain. Dollar dollar bills down in connector. Easy done for C9. I just want the Zeus kill. That's yeah. what we're all here for now in this round. Morrow's setting SDY up for it, but Cloud9 are already out into B. They're going to bring that bomb. Uh, sorry, Harry. Well, I don't know. Hobbit, you know, he's making <laughs> a prime candidate for a Zeusing right now. That's all I'm going to say. No, believe some die young. Believe in the Zeus. Ooh, yes. there's a world. Nah, he's a little too far, oh. and he fires it way too soon. Yeah. They are still going to find Hobbit over here in Connector. Waro. Making that all money. Turn now, yeah. Trying he gets to... a kill with this. Massive. He can already buy it, but this would just make it even more juicy. Making it sound like he's running up and saving. And I think, unfortunately, he might miss everyone Hang here. Hang on. Electronic is a prime MAC-10 candidate here. Yeah, you've done this before. Axile's now holding on to the ladder. And Waro won't be able to move. So we will just be this MAC-10 held out of the round for Monty. Surprisingly passive, considering we expect that AWP. ASAP. Uh, yeah, doesn't even go swinging. But I don't think he's going to play it, to be perfectly honest. He's going to give it over instead. Cloud9, good start to the game here. We talked T-sides for Monty. Three yesterday, zero on this map. Uh, they went 9-0 down uh, when, they, when they were on the second half T-side and lost the game to Game of Legion 2-0. They got three on Ancient, and one was a full anti-eco after winning Pistol. So... Yeah, and I think the thing that makes it even more worrisome is like yesterday down towards that B site, Demka and Bro were fantastic, yeah. right? So it's even that's a bit of a question. Are you going to get the same level out of those two players down towards B? Some die young over here in middle, and he will get cut down oh. by Cloud9 as they move out through that mid smoke. Waro posted on the AWP. We said he was kind of our guy to keep an eye on here. So let's see if he can find anything. A missed shot from that orb, and it's already gone. They kind of put a lot of stock in bringing that out early. And with the first shot just sailing past Cloud9, they sit in a 5v2. Surely no hope for Monty here. Still Cloud9, hold on. I love this. They're just trying to keep this dominant and clean. And they'll wait to see if Monty make any plays. Infonade does nothing. The benefit of Krasnell doing this and actually playing the save Mac 10 is he could drop an AWP over, you know, if you want to look to the future. Oh, the... 10 damage Yeah, thing. that's crazy, bro. It hurts for bro. Yeah, that is crazy, bro. <laughs> I got to go back down B. They've seen one player. In these situations where if you're Cloud9, you're in a 5v2, and you see one player, it's always logically better to go to the other site because there could be two players, but there's definitely not zero. Yeah. Wow, well, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, yeah. that's a mind melter, that, that one. That is, isn't it? You know, worst case scenario on B is 5v1. Worst case scenario on A is 5v2. Yeah, I'll take those better odds. That's a nice a better way, way to word it. it. Yeah. Run away from bad men. Scary. Cloud9 avoid the fear on that A site. And bro will get the orb. That's something. Put it to use. 
But Cloud9, I mean, you talk T sides, we mentioned Monty's lack thereof. Yeah, I'm already Cloud9, nervous. seven rounds over past T side against Maus yesterday. Sure, their map pick for a reason. Great track record on this map. If you think, you know, yeah, I, I think this is going to be a very hard map for Monty. I think Mirage has to save them. But at least I hope we get some of that Demka madness from the B-bomb site yesterday. Yeah, you know, I think something even LMVT spoke about was how the, the, the lack of T-side rounds like just got in Monty's head a bit, right? It very much affected them heading into the second map yesterday. And I mean, that was that was apparent, right? They got three T-side rounds across the series. So you, you don't want a slow start here, especially not on the side. You know you have to deliver on with the hardest side coming up next, with one that you've struggled on throughout your time in Katowice. So this full buy is facilitated thanks to the save and Waro gets his hands back on that AWP, but no love to be found with it over in middle. It looks like Monty gonna have to be ready to withstand this fast B play. Electronic at the helm. We've seen some monstrous entries from this guy, but he's cut down getting nothing done. Instead it's Boomich's Molly to burn out one. Bro withstands it from the short side. And now he's all that remains from this B-hold, but here's the rotate, the AWP teed up in heaven, a missed shot from it, and Axile's been allowed to pick that up, but they just keep chasing him down. They flood through the heavens, and Monty will put a stop to Cloud9's fast B. I do like that execute for Cloud9. I'm glad they went for it early in the game just to flex on Monty. The the cool detail is that HE grenade they throw at the front. To, they know Demko's gonna be playing close wood or monster trying to fight for it, and that, that close nade on wood forces him to reposition the pillar, which they have Molly. So the fact that Demka gets one kill when two pieces of util are designed just for him is very impressive. Waro comes through the smoke as well, and Monty just throw themselves at that B hit. They will hold on. A very important first round to Monty to not get steamrolled on CT overpass. Nothing worse than losing pistol on CT. You want to maximize rounds on one of the best halves in Counter-Strike right now. A fake dink for Exile. And he tries chasing that kill down over at Long, which baits him into Sumdai Young. However, Sumdai Young's getting wrapped through the toilets. And so Boomich is able to flush him out. The orb's gone back around to facilitate a heavy B play. Ooh, That's the timing play. on this. Oh, yeah. They're going to check? No, they're not. No. They're not. Good trade. Could have gone a lot worse. Krasnow is still activated for a fast flank, but they should be aware because of the short water take. Hobbit, oh, he's on the prize, but he drops. Doesn't need to play. Krasnow can just hold and contain. Waro has his fullback through toilets, but even he's scared of the long side. Their timing's open. Can Cloud9 he's, find them? He's about to not have to worry about it, thankfully. Bro's on his way up, down from B, and so that will turn his attention back into the toilets just in time. Oh, don't... Yeah... Cloud9 trying to move up through Shaw, but that's where the Whoa. order resides. Another missed shot from Wario 2K. Seeing the AWP there certainly makes it a little scarier, but looks like they do want to try and challenge him. He plays up close to the smoke. Bro here inside of the site to help him, and that AWP just nice. a, a big decoy to pull the attention away from Bro inside of the site, who puts up three. Monty breathing a bit of a sigh of relief here as they kind of find their footing on the CT side. Now chaining two together. And with that, looking to take a bit of momentum in the game, right? I know these have been, or at least had, some awkward moments in them, such as not clearing the sandbags here at short, some missed shots from Waro, but they are finding them, and the setups are nice to kind of get them there in the first place. They're just one round away from breaking the money at Cloud9, and so suddenly you could be looking at a tie game. And they're stuck behind the mid smoke again. Waro playing an aggressive line, gonna get mollied out early. Cloud9, after doing that, wanna go straight back to B. They've got a huge gap here. There's only two players at the B bomb site. Bro's taking space. It's all on Demka again. How good does this execute look? It's not even an execute. They are contact right now. Heaven smoke and a flash is all that supplements this. Demka needs something in the site. Oh, yeah, going to hold on for the first, but oh, the flash okay. is breaking. That's a CS2 peek out of Hobbit, if ever you've seen one. Full running, Galil spray down. 
Bro with the backstab, but he's being accounted for. Another man up through short, and Monty just flood this B site just like last time. Everyone's here so quickly. And now it is only Hobbit left standing. He was running and gunning to open this up. And Waro is aware of this backstab timing. He should have this on the AWP as Hobbit sneaks around the corner. That's nice and easy for Waro 2K. And with that round going dominantly the way of Monty, now things are called into question here for Cloud9's T side. That money extinguishes, it vaporizes. We said it was done if they didn't win this round and with not even a plant to be found here. They will be staring down at these bank accounts in dismay. There's nothing for them. And so this should be Monty looking to tie the game up here and now. Attack timeout called in for Cloud9. They don't want to let Monty build up a CT side that they can be happy with, especially not after how this started, right? You win the pistol, you win that first rifle round. Even up against the save guns, you find some success there as well. But aren't quite able to take it over the line. You thought like you were going to get straight back to your winning ways, but Monty have got some fight in them here. Yeah, I imagine we'll see some more A hits for Cloud9, right? Because Waro so far has been mostly missing. Not a huge threat so far, and Cloud9's util has been pretty solid on this T side. B holds are nice for Monty, though, so Cloud9 will have to try something new. The Eagles are out now in this round. Some bits, some bobs, and everything in between for Cloud9. And they'll take it low and slow. It's been pretty calculated. Not in a hurry on this A site. Happy to leave it down to the final 20, 30 seconds. SDY and toilets. Krasnell tied to Waro, patrolling Banana. Or it's got to be careful. Because they will stay tight trying to trade these kills. Or he's going to hit a flick here. Oh, he's seen the shadow. Ah, oh, now he's seen an elbow. They've given him too much. First the shadow, then the arm. And now maybe the head of the beast of Cloud9 here. Oh, God, oh. the flashes will wreck him. Boomic nicely tees up his teammates there with the pistols, but the mow down is swift. Monty with the reply. And Warrior's death there, not in vain, as everyone else is able to capitalize on those Cloud9 players caught out chasing that kill down. It's so kept nice and clean, and the dangers of that round avoided. It's now a tie game as Monty put their own four-round streak on the board. Yeah. And each one of them feeling like it's getting progressively cleaner. They built up a good bit of money with only two kills being found across the last two rounds for Cloud9. This is nice for the Monty CT side. Very impressive recovery. And Cloud9 are going to have to dig deep. They don't call in a timeout. They go right back in. They have their plan in mind. We'll have to see how they fare. Connect to take. Krasnall's been in here a lot of the time playing late round, so Cloud9 want to clear that out and get info early. Monty with a pre-boost. It's a lot of damage both ways. Perfecto gets out worse for wear. No AWP to bog down him with. Or maybe to bog him down with. Cloud9 stick to flat rifles, as they do on really all T sides as well. We only see CT AWPs from this team. Waro. Talking of which, is going to find that pick as Hobbit tries to clamber up Connector and a mid-fake for Boomich into a B hit. Right now, the numbers are looking good, but Bro has an informational position. The smoke comes down. He loses that info. And so Waro is the sole defender of B. Cloud9 don't like what they hear. They pull back into the stack. Yeah, the, the little double push out through Long is coming in for Monty and Krasnell. He saw him there. Surely. He got a little whiff of Boomich moving up through short. SDY, good position here, this long aggro. Ooh, he swings it wide, and that's going to give over the kill to Electronic. This A play looks tempting, but Monty still stacked up in this side of the map. Oh Awkward rooting for Waro 2K. And so now this site hold's got to fall to the uh, the two long players. Krasnell lights them up. The nade finishes off the 1 HP Perfecto, and they're never ready for Demka. He's often the guy left anchoring down towards B alongside Bro. When you see him already set up over towards long, you know that Monty just kind of outred you there, right? Yeah. The fact he's even up 
up on that top side, let alone in such an aggressive position, push down the long side. Krasnow caught them off guard, let alone the fourth player on A. That's such a nice gamble for Monty. Shortbro has a position where, you know, Monty are able to make an A stack, but when he smokes himself off a monster tunnel, a short tunnel rather, he doesn't know whether Cloud9 are going for monster. They almost did. They almost just walked into MTB, and instead they go into the four stack on A. Great read for Monty. Cloud9 getting pissed. They're going through the molly. Yeah, it's another good read here as they stack heavy down towards this B site. They anticipate that Cloud9 want a bit of vengeance on this B play. Nades rain out from the heavens, and that is a lovely nade. Lobbed in from Warrior 2K, and it's done so much damage. More util follows up. Molly even on that bomb plant. Cloud9 duck out of the site. Reasonable escape, to be honest. But it might be hard getting blood from this stone in a three-on-three. -three. It's all on electronic, but he has had some fantastic games here in Katowice. He's dead immediately. Rifles will be removed here for Cloud9. It's only the pistol on Perfecto and not for long. Warro's warm and Cloud9 may be in trouble here as we get the, to the dying stages of their T side. Huge deciding rounds for Monty as they pick up steam. The comms are looking good. The rotates are nice. The B holds have been very well done. Yeah, I think you can really feel that Monty's like read of the game is kind of eased into the server now. They're, they're, they're feeling like they know what Cloud9 are doing from the A stack in the round prior, followed up by the immediate B stack. That anticipation that Cloud9 were going to go back to a fast B hit. This is one where Cloud9 look like they kind of want to go back to it, right? And they're accounting on the fact that Monty just stacked here. There's no way they do it twice. And they're looking right in that assumption. Oh, bro, dear. That's to hold on. And bro, Will, look at that. Three clean kills. The M4A4 does him well there. Spraying into headshots as well. The deaths are talking about the difficulties players have had with sprays. And there's no doubt about that. It has been harder to connect on CS2. But Bro just nails them. What a hold. Don't even need this stack. It's still here. With the bomb at their feet, that's, there is no saving this. That's the, 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 the real kind of... That's the real beauty of it, right? Cloud9, they, they were dead on in that Monty wouldn't stack this lower site. It was two players who had to do it all. And Bro gets it done basically single-handedly. Look at that, just a, a pile of them as they moved out through Monster. He says, yeah, do that again, please. I want a couple more kills up 12 and four, sitting top of the server. That's why Monty is a fun team when they're firing because I feel like so many of these players can pop off, right? You've all seen the Warro carry games, but we know Sundai Young is the calm, experienced player of the team. Bro, the opposite, inexperienced, loud, but also can just have these crazy pop-off games like Krasnow. And Demka's CT anchoring is solid as well. I gotta go swinging, getting a bit hungry here. Perfecto's patiently waiting. But he can buy even if he dies. They've got max loss. May as well give it a go. And Monty will meet him there. Seven to four, a big streak. Seven in a row. Yes. Maybe eight. Cloud9 are going to have everything they need except the orb. And even then, the Utah won't be perfect. Yeah, this is this is exactly what Monty needed, right? Like, there, there was a world that kind of felt like anything less than this, and you, you could have made the argument that Monty were in trouble because we've seen the T-sides look so flat. And when they start this whole game 0-4 down, I, I was really worried for them, but they've, they've dug deep and they found their footing, and you've certainly seen improvements just across the board, whether that's Bro anchoring down towards B, Warro's just kind of read over the... Uh, over the over the game right now has improved and he started nailing a few more shots on the AWP. So the momentum is very much changed up here. Well, it was a real hot start for Cloud9. It's now gone completely silent. Oh, it's messy and a second swing comes out. It's actually Bro who gets the kill through the smoke. Even trying to like punish the spam there, you know, that's a, uh, a, desperate. a, a desperate play from Hobbit. And desperate times calling for desperate measures, but Cloud9, that leaves them a man down now. Long pop, they'll avoid the AWP here, but the flashes make it very clear where the goal is for Cloud9. They're hoping they get a flank in middle, but Monty aren't that aggressive. They just rotate heavy up. And again, Monty's rotates, their reads have been really good in this game. It's enforced by Bro having uh, you know, a strong position down at B that Monty can play all on top site. And with a double AWP as well. 
It's going to get worse before it gets better for Cloud9. This might be an eight-round streak at the end of the half. Sam Dao Young scoped in. Nails that shot onto Electronic, and now they're ready for the long hit. Demka even playing around the dice box as that kind of third man over towards the top site. He'll Ooh. swing out, he'll deal with Axal, and it's only Perfecto left. Try as he might, there's no success to be found here. He's oh. wrapped upon and locked out by the Waro 2K AWP. It's eight rounds in a row on the CT side from Monty. Waro 2K steps up from a slow start. He regains control over this game and over the AWP, assisting Monty to an 8-4 scoreline. All eight rounds coming consecutively as well. They follow up from that initial 4-0 start that Cloud9 embarked on, and they don't let them get any more T-rounds across the remainder of the half. However, Monty, they are kind of experts in not getting any more T-rounds in the <laughs> remainder of the half. So let's see how this one fares. If they could start strong with a pistol round win, this one is right there for the taking. Absolutely. We tee them up all of a sudden to, to, to really just lay all these worries to rest of the weak T-sides from yesterday. Absolutely. There are big questions to be answered in this half because they got eight rounds CT against Gamer Legion and then zero in the second. So... What can Monty give us here? Nice start for Waro. He is warmed up now, and he's putting that aim to use. Finding Boomich in the toilet. Oh, damn. Good. 
See ya. Sorry, bud. <laughs> now they, this is interesting because now you might over rotate A if you're Cloud9 thinking that that's a B lurker, they're going for an A hit, but Monty are actually regrouping back a monster. So Cloud9 active in the mid round. They take some control and we're going to see Waro try and fake out A site. This is sick. Oh, he's got a beautiful play here, but he's not oh. going to clear the corner and Axel finds him. Fl uh, lurks on lurks, fakes on fakes, but it's into B where Cloud9 wait. Yeah, double set up over it short. This one could get cleaned up by the Cloud9. Dual Barrettas on Electronic. They move into the site. He's going to start spamming away a little wider on the plant. And so it will come in. Bro gets that bomb down. A man down, though, in the post plant. And they're desperately looking for space. They get past Axile. So that space is secured over at CT. Electronic falls. Some die young. Out of the round now as well. It's and it's just Krasnow left in it. 1v2. Fought for this control over towards CT. That tap on the bomb. He goes looking for the player through the heavens. And Hobbit will be there to deal with him. So a pistol secured for Cloud9. That that huge lifeline, that massive opportunity that Monty had doesn't go their way. But the bomb plant, at least, lets them bring the heat early on. They absolutely, the cool there was the plant, right? That was a prioritization for Monty. They could have definitely gone for fights in B, but instead they, they get the smoke on site and the goal is make the money. At worst case, we want to buy Galil's round two and try and upset Cloud9. We don't want to be left to, with full eco, lost pistol, nothing to show for it. So... You know, it's not a win for Monty, but it's the next best thing. It's a second round buy. Yeah, it's a lifeline early on on yeah. this T side. They still have that route open to take control of the economy game, and that's what they're looking for. Ooh, <laughs> boomage. Come on now, buddy. He runs into the wall that slows him down for a second. He can't get back into the site as a result. And right now they've got him pinned in in the toilets. They've wrapped all around him, but he still offers up a kill. Boomich is a thorn in their side right now, just roaming through the back lines. They thought that they had him trapped in there. But he's not trapped in here with them. They're trapped in here with him as he shows up. With that double kill off the MP9, and he still keeps this. this wild rooting going, but this time it's heard. Waro 2K says, hello, bye-bye, and Boomich is dead at 2v2. Bomb down over in the toilets, and a bit more aggression from Cloud9. Oh, under the lip of the smoke. I don't think Bro got that spot. He's remaining vigilant, but Electronic in position now to win the round. And Waro, he's on the scout, but he's 10 health. There should be no way out of this one. He doesn't even take the M4. He needs that instant TTK. Is anyone going to give him the head? Smoke and a save. 20 seconds. The fact that he's even going for this is optimistic. And oh, Electronic has swapped sides of the toilet. That's a good check for Waro, but he's not going to win the round. The right there to trade. That was a damn nice try. But you know what's... Problematic now, Harry. What's up? We might enter another Monty struggle street. Oh, yeah, you know, I mean, it, it, I, I got to say... It's that all the makings of a Cloud9 comeback. Yeah, no, that is very true. And uh, the opportunity to exploit early in the half is gone, and you have to rely on having consistent rifle round wins, which is something that we can't say we've seen from Monty. Yeah, I gotta say as well, fantastic round from Boomich. He, yeah. like, considering you know the whole I, the whole idea of getting him trapped in that little box was like, yeah, that's our opener right there. You know, we we kind of secured the early man advantage, and so instead of kind of you know just going for the one and done, taking a swing back into the site, he actually roots aggressively and tries to fight Monty head on. I love this though for well. Monty. It's so risky, but it's them understanding the dilemma that they're in, and actually Cloud Nine's by while it has way more util it has less rifles so there is the argument to be made that it's weaker and the monty have a little bit more loss bonus you know it's 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 dangerous but monty they're used to it man this is a team that can be very aggressive that can be very in your face and so they're risking it all on another force here after making it a 1v1 i admire it if nothing else 
I mean, the T-Sai from Monty yesterday on this map was like very exec heavy. It was a lot of just kind of grouping as five for the most part, roaming the map as a pack and then trying to exec into a bomb site. So for Cloud9, they've got to try and piece together where Monty aren't. Right, that's the goal here. They don't know yet. That They're about to figure it out. They're going to take this short control away. Getting very close on this A site, and you've got Boomich on MP9 jump spotting. The info's there now. They've heard guns fire off. They know Monty aboard, so that third rotate's coming in. And this is, I think, one of the one of the sort of problems that Monty are going to run into. Once you've heard a couple of these guns fire off, you know that. Like, right now, you know Monty want to go A. You've got short down towards B. Yeah. You still have two players there holding on, but they don't leave a lot to the imagination in these execs. Just got to win the fights, man. Simple as that. Smoke, Molly, and in they go. 20 seconds. Oh, they don't have a oh. flash to do this either. Yeah, this is... This is wild, man. They've just got a straight-up gunfight their way oh, in. Axel nice. turns from a flash that was never going to arrive. Boomich's MP9 is trying to do it again. Oh. He's in here with the bomb planter, tries pulling the knife. He gets a little help from another MP9. Oh. Boomich is still in this smoke. He is still in the sight. Oh, they really line, the line up. up. And it's even the tag to Electronic. 1v1 now. Bro peeks it wide and is given a chance to duck out of there. Tap on the bomb again. Bro has to kind of swing this to check for that defuse. And Electronic is just playing the oh. mind games, but it's Bro to close it out. Three kills from the man. A hat trick in the round. And he is still delivering from that CT side. And I think that could be one of the big differences here, right? When we had Demka with a really good start on this map yesterday, he went so silent when they got onto the T side. Oftentimes, somebody gets a bit more activated in those post plants, but for Bro, that's a huge round to have put up. Not just a 3k, but a critical 1v1, and over Electronic on the other side. Not an easy man to beat in those clutches by a long margin. That was a very entertaining round, right, for, for Axar to be turned from a flash, and they don't even have a flash. That's so funny. And it was the one rifle. Boomage being a hero right now. That's back to back. Monstrous rounds, but it's still not enough. This this is the Scout reward, collapse. right? This is the reward that Monty yeah. were waiting for. This is the reason they went for the back to back four spies here was to just get ahead of the money, oh. break it early. Okay. And they've done exactly that. They even want to chase down Boomage. Oh god, he has an MP9, guys. <laughs> uh, okay. Weapon they deal choice. with it, they deal with it cleanly this time. Oh, they popped out of nowhere in middle, chasing down Sundar Young. And, well, Cloud9 will. 10 to 6. Full eco out of the way. And now Cloud9, oh, their, their money is ugly. Just as a result of, you know, the second round being a yeah. 1v1. They had to put everything in to barely get a, a two rifles. And one full eco will not cut the mustard, Harry. This is why those two four spies were so good. You know that if you do break through, Cloud9 are faced with that awkward decision. Do they force in that previous round? And then if they lose it, they're not rifling till the game is basically over. Or do they take the full eco? And then they have a pretty rough, you know, buy round between them and this game slipping away. Oh, the time. That is, uh, seeing that from Waro's POV was like, Benny Hill music, running behind the rock, Boomage completely unknown about. And of course the MP9 rushing long because that's all Boomage is doing right now and it's working. Fantastic opening kill for Cloud9 in a must win round. Boomage is like, man, why are we worried about having an offer? I'll just play this all of the time. This Dude, is great. It's working. He's risen to top of his team. And it's all on the back of this MP9. He's at, what, five kills with it in this CT side already? It's not even just the kills. The round where he hid in the smoke as yeah. well. Oh, no, he's so made some time. great plays on the back of uh, the SMGs. We love an MP9. Run and gun game, they say. And look at this B setup. Classic electronic smoke on the left side of the site to give them some room. Got to play behind barrels. Ooh, I think, we, I think we're getting a bit of deception here, Hugo. Monty, I've said, right, like how they've been quite straight up with where they're going. It's like wherever you see the first one, that's where they end. This time, that bomb was rotating out. The, the round's kind of been ruined now, yeah. thanks to that kill out through short. And with only 25 seconds, decisions have to be made. And so it will come back down to this oh, play. jump up? Jump up is a little awkward, but we won't talk about it yet. Electronic feeds one. Will that be enough for them to come and regret it? 15 seconds. 
Hobbiters to hop on down in the water. This should allow a plant for Monty. Gonna smoke the site. Krasnow just looking to plant inside of it. Oh, Jumping MP9. Boomich oh. tries to be the hero again, but this time it's just that one and done at the start. And now for Cloud9, they need this. They have to hold on here. This was all their money put into this round. And so if it comes up short, if we're left wanting, Monty are on their way to the finish line and there's nothing for Cloud9 to stop them with. Oh dear, Axel might have to save unless Perfecto gets a pick and they're playing so passive. He's looking for an upgrade so he can run away and that is a done round, dead in the water. Boomich tries, uh, as he always has been, with the jumping MP9, but SDY is the hero of the round. Two massive covering kills to stop Cloud9 from denying that bomb plant and that was in the final few seconds of the round as well. So it goes off and Monty go in with 11. Already a better T side than we've seen from this team. Already matching their whole BO3 up against Gamer Legion yesterday. So sky's the limit right now for Monty. A new day and they are seizing this opportunity. 11 to 6. And Cloud9, I mean, they can't, they should eco, but it's the scoreline. That will make the decision. And so I expect to see a fall by just round these saved weapons. What a sad way for it to go for C9. But Monty, a better look is a good sign. Yeah, and I think a much-needed confidence booster, right? Like, if it had been the case that Cloud9 had won the pistol, won that follow-up round versus the rifles, Monty had then tried forcing again, and Cloud9 withstood it, I think if you're Monty, like, you probably would have been would've getting in up. your heads yeah. a bit, right? Like, the game would have been neck and neck. You would have had another flat start to the T side. But instead, it's not just that you kind of had the, the confidence to keep going for those forces, knowing that it could just win you the game. It, it's like getting the, the kind of vindication. Like, it all, it all panned out the way that you wanted it to. You can do it on these T sides. And so that little reminder, gonna put a bit more pep in the step of Monty. There's definitely conversations about economy and MR12 and how it needs changing, especially for the CT side, 1400 being abolished. And I agree with all of those, but Monty, what I they've done- I agree with all of them. Uh, yeah, I agree with the, right. yeah. I think 1400 should be abolished on CT side, especially. But despite that, Monty have abused the economy to their favor. Cloud9 have not had more than three rifles in mm. any round of the CT side. And this is another example, two M4s, both saved, supplemented by MP9. So the money just hasn't been there. And that's why Monty have gone for these rebuys after rebuys, where they've kept the pressure on. Why, why you see someone like Jame always have a hero AK on one of his players in a full eco, because the value that damage does to CT economy is so hard to withstand. They flash peak, but Bro sees it coming and he hits that fantastic headshot. He has been a monster in this map. And look at this, 40 seconds, one smoke on the entire team. Perfecto, he's got it in the right place to block B right now. And he's even holding it for a few more seconds. This might force Monty to rush through a smoke with seconds to spare. It goes into monster. That's where the bomb is right now. So it's actually, yeah. see, not have a chance, but they've only got two players here. They still have this nade on Sunday Young, but it's really hard to clear the monster smoke when it's deep like that, right? Volumetric smokes, am I right, folks? Here we are, Boomich in mid. Gonna get out with one, perfecto. Five, just buying more time, and it's time that Cloud9 desperately need. There just isn't a chance for Monty oh, here. They're yeah. trapped in it short, and even if they find Perfecto now... What are they doing? Oh, they, they, they really needed to just go and chase this down. He wins it on the clock. Yeah. They do all the damage, at least. So if you're looking for kind of silver linings here for Monty, it's the, that CT money that we spent all round talking about. It's still down in the dirt with all five players falling. The task for Cloud9 is actually harder in this round than it was in the last. <laughs> Silver linings, yeah. That's weird to not see Monty chase down Perfecto. I'm sure they didn't expect to get given both flank kills, but C9 died to win the round. It's worth it overall just to keep themselves against map point. But I would love to see one player just rush Perfecto down and, yeah. and you know, try and... I mean, you definitely feel like there was the way in there, right? Like, yeah. you, you kind of have, what, like six seconds? I know that's not a lot of time or so, I've been told, but, like, <laughs> he's trapped in behind the pillar. Waro's holding it. Like, if he holds it from short, rather, on the AWP, and then you have someone just kind it's... of running at him, you could display 
place him. You could have won that. But regardless... It's just a hectic round. And they're yeah. killing flank players as well. Of course, it's easy to look at after because Warrow gets the orb shots off. But, like, if he doesn't get those kills, it, Perfecto's position doesn't matter. So, yeah, it's all coming down to seconds to spare. But you know what really wins that round for Cloud9? That monster smoke at 30 seconds because mm. it forces Monty all through short into the flank and then they, they can't kill Perfecto in time. So, utility matters. Oh, Cloud9 have not been able to get comfortable on this entire half, despite winning the pistol and even getting rid of the first Monty Force. Yeah, for a team of five rifles to have <laughs> ever been allowed rifles <laughs> is almost ironic. Yeah. Boomich, the dedicated SMG player of this roster. Just the in-game leader life. You know what they need right now, Harry? A diversion. Yeah. Well, Axile and Boomich are playing pushed up over towards the front of Bath, and Axile has the shadow there for that first engagement. They want to try and trade this, but Axile holds the line. Boomich now here to assist, and they learn about this little kind of mini toilet setup. Bait and switch. Sure, it doesn't net you the amount of advantage. Boomish doesn't get that follow-up kill, but it does shut down this aggression over towards A. This walk up through short from Hobbit. Oh, the rest of Monty are moving out down towards B. Krasnow could get rewarded for his patience here. Oh, it goes the other way. Okay, yeah, it's down to the two-man B-hole. Oh. Perfecto holds the line, and Waro, he's joining there. <laughs> Look, man, he's picked up the MP9, chasing them down, don't and he will Boomage. get overwhelmed. You, you, come on, MP9 versus Boomage, you don't beat him in his own game. He's going to win that fight. I don't know how Hobbit gets that kill in middle as well. That was crazy. As they're hitting B, wins an MP9v rifle fight, and uh, good check on the balloons. It's going to be Cloud9. Somehow still in this game, honestly. Would have been easy to write them off with how this half... Not began, but uh, went, we'll say. And right now, Cloud9 are looking for nine as Monty are finally taking a breather. Yeah, these are the sort of buys that the desk were talking about earlier on, right? Monty leaning heavy into the digs, only have a few pieces of util. In these sorts of rounds, you, you have to have a game plan. You've still got to look to inflict maximum damage. You're not going to keep Cloud9 on the back foot for long if you let them build up money. So one of these smokes used early. Now it's down to a single smoke for Monty. This probably is one of the better maps to play Deagle over Tech 9 just for the argument of range. But yeah, Tech 9, Flash, go through the monster smoke. There's a lot of potential in those kind of rounds. Oh, Boomich this is good. They've kind of it. circumvented Boomich, yeah. leaving only Axile. He gets dinked immediately, but not for much. And he'll even drop in this smoke. Goes back in for more. Some die young, out from long. That's because Boomich leaves the angle and comes in for the backstab. He's just harassing. Bro is dropped out of the round, and so it's only SDY. Did Boomich, like, trade positions in that toilet smoke with SDY? Is that how he got there? Because Boomich comes in through toilet. As a SD, SDY takes long. feel like we had a bit of a timing there. Eagle. It won't matter. Eagle and a dream. Let's Should see if SDY matter. can do it. Hypnotic on the Deagle. Going to have to be hypnotic in the play. Got to leave us mesmerized. And with two players just bearing down on this position. And the backstab coming in. He should be a dead man on this first swing. He'll get dropped out of it. And it's Boomich is jumping MP9 to close. The gap is tightening, right? What was once a big old lead for Monty, one where they had Cloud9 on the back foot economically, is now starting to dwindle. That's three in a row for the Cloud9 squad. And they've come a long way from that, you know, full death. But round one, they've started to keep players alive. They've started to find some money here. And so for the first time, I think, on this CT side, it's five rifles wow. for Cloud9. Round of applause. It only took forever. Everyone armed, everyone dangerous, and the most important round of the game yet. Monty trying to find map point on their opponent's pick. And Cloud9 trying to withstand on this CT side. Demka looks early for an opener. 
Cloud9 Heavy B. We've got a flash shut up as well to pop a monster for Perfecto and Electronic to peek together. Cloud9 playing things by the books. And Monty will leave Demka here to lurk as they go back up top. Axel's re aggressed long in the meantime. And Boomish is spotting with an A4 from the site. Oh, I love the walk up into A for Monty. Demka needs to play before them. And he feels like he has the timing. He feels like he has a bit of room. That Molly's a problem. So is the headshot. Demko lands it. That's going to cause rotations, perhaps, for C9. Boomich do drops down below. Perfect time for Monty to go. Yeah, I mean, one of the strengths, right, are these, uh, these eggs, eggs often being very transparent for Monty is now that they throw a bit of trickery and you can see how Cloud9 have just fallen for a hook, line, and sinker, right? That kill comes out down towards B. Suddenly, the double A hold is just dismantled and they only learn now that the site has been taken. Boomich spamming, trying to draw some attention away from Axal, who's pushed up at long, hidden in this corner right now. They actually did just check it. We saw Demka take a swing down through long. Oh. Now he learns about Axal the hard way and this one falls into a 4v4 retake for Cloud9. Even though this is their first round with five rifles, it could end up being their last. If they come up short here, Monty move onto map point and the money is broken. So this is a real swing round. Cloud9 need this and they're getting all the openers. Waro 2K, he's helped lead the team to victory throughout this one. And with him and some die young battling back, Monty look to lock in 12. Cloud9 are sent packing and everyone's gonna fall to this bomb. Oh, they get so hungry for the kills there, but they didn't know two players of Monty we're in the toilet. That's a truck plant. That's a free defuse for Cloud9 in the 4 on 2. But they go in for the gunfights and it lets them down completely. No kit on the remaining couple of players. And the pandemonium comes up in favor of Monty. What a robbery of a round for Waro and SDY in a 2 on 4. A nice attempt at a retake for Cloud9. But their one rifle round will be exactly that. Just one. Back to an M4 and a FAMAS. And the best chance Monty will get to close this first map. Solo aggression over at short. Ooh. Perfecto on the re-smoke and just in time as well. This is an easy kill for Electronic. They're not even going to... Oh! Ooh. Nice. Boomich is CZ. Okay. Doesn't matter what you give him. It feels like he's good for something here is Boomich. And so this round, the one that was meant to be easy for Monty, their best chance to close out this game is off to a really dire start. Oh, Boomich is hanging around. He scared they're up long already through toilets, but they're looking to fight him here. One more would be uh, just incredible, but they should be able to find him on the close position. Kras now with the clear. Get that gun out of here. That was the bomb spotted too, so a bit of a rotate triggered for Cloud9 as they pad out this top site a little more. MP9 up close on the back of Hobbit. 30 seconds, Ooh. so flash is good. Gonna net that kill for Bro. Not super clean, 20 seconds left. This one really down to the wire. And now that you've seen them still carrying on, you've seen the flash out of Krasnell, you know he had the bomb. Cloud9 start to pull everyone over towards this top site. Two players up here right now and a crossfire set up between Truck and Dice. There just shouldn't be time for Monty in this round and Perfecto makes it happen. Two kills from him, two from Electronic. Both those players starting down at B, and they end those rounds up on A. Cloud9 locking double digits. They are back to success on these SMG low econ rounds. Nothing's easy for Monty nowadays, it turns out. Cannot get a clean close with a great opportunity. They have to take a full eco, man. They have to play for every single round of regulation. Cloud9, four rifles as well. It's just about keeping it clean, right? If anything, you know what has been maybe the best part for Cloud9, Harry? They've never had enough money to buy the AWP. That might be to their benefit. <laughs> Fast out long, or rather mid. Glocks 
trading or trying. And Cloud9 put distance. No head armor on Axel. You hope he doesn't pay the price for that. Big Boom is here and will just run away with it. Oh, oh, actually, no. The head armor thing does come back to haunt them. Gun's now picked up over at long. Monty can look to milk this a hell of a lot more all yeah. of a sudden because as we've kind of, you know, we won't just, we won't shut up about it, man. Like, we keep talking about the money because this has been a huge factor of this game and Monty have a great chance to inflict damage again here thanks to these two kills being gifted the way of the Glocks. If they could get out of this round with even, you know, one more kill, that's fantastic heading into the final round of regulation. They're fine. Whatever happens, Monty can buy. But can they win this round out of nowhere? With no health on Moro, with no nades. And with Cloud9 making a very hard gamble. But they trust in Perfecto, the top performer alive on that B site. It's going to be Monty creeping into the crossfire. This setup looks good. Yeah, how are going to take contact, draw the attention away, and allow this swing out of Electronic just to lock it in? But they go peeking ahead of that. Once again, it's a final 10-second push that's silenced by Cloud9. But that was just Glocks. We weren't meant to get excited about that round. I would love a pause here for Monty. If they have any remaining, just have a breather. Yeah, they will call out their final tactical. You get one more going into overtime anyway. Not that they want to go there, but this pause will help them from avoiding that completely. It's all been about late game recovery in this map of overpass for both teams in both halves. But who will stand tall at the end of regulation? 24 rounds deep. Warrior's AWP is out. And focus faces for Monty. It's nice to have a, a round finally where no one is, you know, scrapping for yeah, weaponry. I mean, everyone has everything. Everyone has weapons, but Monty are lacking a little in the util department. Got to make it work. No excuses here. They've had ample chances. They've had their easy rounds gone. Oh, I kind of like this already. It's a real pace change for Monty. All of these rounds have been, you know, final kind of 10, 15 second pushes for the most part. This one is far more decisive. You saw it. Boomage gets the info. What these nades nade. have done great damage. One into Park early on and then another one down the long side. Already Bro and Sumdai Young are really wounded on the back of this util. Spam damage even connecting out of Axar. And so Monty might have headed into this one with a bit of a furious pace behind them. It certainly helped get the util out of Cloud9. Yeah, they wanted to rush this, but blocked completely in this round is ruining it for Monty. Still Cloud9 don't want to risk a gamble too heavily. Three players on there's, upper. There's not much more like blocking util left for Cloud9, right? They got this one smoke on Electronic, but he's all the way down at B and he kind of needs to hold on for that oh, in, in case Monty drop back down. Flash forces the AWP to shoot, so you know Monty at 40 seconds is still AWPing long. This should be clear to Cloud9 nine, nine right now. They won't get aggressive. They're not going to risk it. Axel moves forward, and Demka's patiently waiting on short side. Monty with a 5v4, their best bet yet. Well, Electronic's trying to make a big play down here towards B. He's confirmed and freed up an extra player to go and help that top site. That will leave him a long way away from the action. So right now he's hoping his teammates can withstand Whoa. this hit. But Hobbit caught in the open. Boomich dead on the short side. It's all coming unraveled. And this flank wow. is heard. Demka closes it with a tap. And so it takes all of regulation. But it will be Monty closing this one out. Spearheaded with some strong performances from Waro 2K and Bro to help uplift them and get them through. They steal away Cloud9's map. Yeah, a reassuring look on t size as well today, right? The force back and forth for Monty. Five T rounds at the end of it on overpass. Cloud9 go down to Mirage.
Scruffy CS, but it will still be a dark day for Cloud9 because they've just lost their map pick in an elimination game here at Intel Extreme Masters, Karavice. This was all to play for, and they needed this desperately. They've made it a little bit tougher for themselves. Some legends in the mix that you've seen on the Hall of Heroes, and they are now going to have to step on up because Monty has finally woken up. To be fair, though, Maui looks a little bit like they have some sleep in their eyes, but they did the job. I feel like Monty maybe not the fastest start. I mean, they went, were down 4-0, but then they just won eight straight there. And I feel like at that point, they were cooking. They felt really confident in this. They looked at the game footage yesterday and said, you know what, actually, I don't think we have to change too much because uh, this T side is going to be a lot easier than it was against Gamer Legion. Yeah, I think they had a cold start, as I like to, as I hear you say. <laughs> um, you know, a little cold start. I was getting a little nervous when I saw that, actually. Like, the first gun round, it was like 4-0 down, and they just had not the greatest start to the round. It's just like, okay, are you going to hit your shots? It was an aggressive four-man A control. They had one long, they had, like, connector control, they had mid control, and they go to fight together, and they just are not hitting their shots. They and just I'm like, whiffed. Oh, God. they just whiffed. Yeah, they just whiffed. And I'm, I'm just like, okay, is this going to be a really bad half? And then they started stringing rounds together. And then even the, the later in the half, they're getting onto like round nine, for example. And all the rounds that you think, oh, they've got this in the bag, it's just a mess. Mm -hmm. They're they're not. They have the man advantage at the start, and then they're walk pushing around. They they get taken out. It's a four on four, and then you're like, oh, okay, well they still have good positioning, and it comes all the way down to like a one versus two. So we're gonna see that round right here. Waru actually getting one of the only like few op kills in the entire game, and then it's just like, okay, they're slowly working around. They don't really have any explosive plays. Oh, look, SDY just walks straight into the crossers. Cool. Okay, so we're going. <laughs> I mean, and then, like, as this comes up here, it's just like such a back and forth. All the kills are so quick together. It looks like people just weren't on yet. They they I, hadn't woken up, like you said. I feel like for Overpass, especially, is a map where it feels like things can feel a little stringy. And so I think that's really highlighted by the fact that when we watch a clip like that, like just the coordination in this game in the beginning, like both teams were getting settled into it. I feel like that's going to happen in maybe a higher pressure match like this one where these guys came into a pretty clear game plan, but it's just not going perfectly for anybody. And so I would almost describe some of the rounds in the first half as scrappy. Well, that was the thing, because for me, I saw, I saw Monty yesterday and they didn't come alive on the server at all. So when this started, I kind of that was my thing of like oh they're still sleeping but there was there was some sort of uh, espresso or whatever it is that people need to do to, to wake up in the morning because once they started it looked good and that is actually going to lead us into our united states air force aim high player of the match bro from monty getting in the the necessary shots he needed and doing a damn good job of it Bro was instrumental in a few of the B defenses that Monty were able to put together. Uh, we see obviously him in different spots than I just mentioned to uh, supplement my point. Obviously, no, but obviously he was taking he was taking some good shots, good good aim. Uh, I feel like Bro's been a guy that in the replacement process for Boros that Monty have had to undergo. He's just a much more stable force for them, and frequently they just kind of throw him to an anchor position, and you don't really have to worry about him, which has been great. He hasn't really been that superstar for him. In fact, I think in the past three months, he has been their lowest rated player. So for him to have a nice kind of rifle v. rifle duel against a team like Cloud9 and be succeeding this frequently, that's a really good sign for him and his progress. I was going to make a really dumb joke about just dropping an O from Boros and you get bro. But there, there is something about you could switch the letters up somehow. But it was the second half that was just like interesting to me. I was thinking at 10-7, I'm like, oh my god, this is going to go overtime, isn't it? You said because that out loud. I said that out loud, and it, we almost, we almost got close. there. It was, it was really close. And the reason why I was saying that was like, we're not seeing this op on the CT side. And I know it's like beating a dead horse at this point, but at the same time, the way that Monty was just walking around, yeah. shift walking around, and then on the other side of that, Cloud9, it's not like they were holding their setups and they were playing together where they were getting trades. They were walking out into places to get info and they were getting punished for it, where they would have a man advantage or a positional advantage and they just wait three more seconds, five more seconds, they're chill. But because they don't have that deep line somewhere, they have to get a little bit curious for information. They got punished for that curiosity, and then the next thing you know is Monty's able to do the slow play. But the, if you walk around everywhere and an op is posted up, yeah. you just die. You don't get to do that. So Monty just stealing candy from a baby at this point. I, I feel like we, of course, are bringing up that same conversation again and again about the, the op. 
But I feel like I'm just watching the same game over and over again when I'm watching Cloud9. The way that they fail, like Steel mentions, it's like everybody can just kind of walk against them, and they know these rifle plays are going to come out. Like, they have to do something aggressive. They have to get this information because they don't have any clearly favorable fight for them without an AWP presence. And so this is what happens. Like, like Monty's T-side today, between what they did against Gamer Legion, where they got zero T-side rounds, versus today, I didn't actually see any real improvement. I just saw that they weren't up against an op. Yeah. Here's the thing, the, the, the orb conversation, and again, we've, we've said it, it is, like, it is beating the, the, the dead horse, it is going on and on, but they're not changing anything, you mentioned there. And Cloud9, uh, they've said that they're not getting, they're not getting an AWP anytime soon, mm -hmm. this is how they're going to play. That's great, boys. They can't keep playing like this, though, Maui. So, so what do they have to do differently to make this work? Because I don't think they even know at this point. Timings, I would say. I feel like in late round situations, I actually kind of like Cloud9 a lot. I feel like when they're playing on each other in like a three on three around a bomb site, their fundamentals are really apparent. It's really clear that they know who should be playing off of who, who should be getting first contact with really strong rifle work on top of that. But it's just that they always, because, because you can't really just sit back and just pray that the round is always like a tense situation like that, they're just not finding themselves deep enough into rounds in those favorable situations or even situations where they have a good chance because yeah they'll go for a little molly play towards short water control because they just need something because they don't they don't know what's happening across the map that's my big problem with them they don't know what's happening boomich has tried to alleviate that problem with an mp9 he's like just kind of dancing everywhere but i feel like overpass is a map where i like their i like their t side usually but it's just that this reason the map is is good on the ct side is because of, sn of snipers but also like when we talk about oh they need an opera it's like if anyone purchased one it would be a different story. The, just having even, the, They didn't even get one. They didn't even get one. That's one of the things. Another thing is, like, when you talk about operators, like, what is an opera? It's like, they are people that use the weapon a lot, so they're proficient at it. They know the, the good angles to peak. They have, like, all the little things about it done. They have their scope sensitivity all good. But part of it is managing your economy so that you can actually whip it out. And if you don't manage your economy properly, so instead of getting the M4 armor smoke on around, you go for the MP9 and maybe you don't even get nades, and then you can go and farm against ecos, or you have someone drop you an MP9 so you can go farm ecos, and you budget so that you can afford one. If any of them on the roster did that, we'd be looking at potentially over time potentially a cloud nine win but because nobody's even got that in mind mm -hmm. that means that they they will play halves without it and without that deep line they have to do something different so if they can't have map control that's what happens when you have an opera especially on overpass is you can be like okay you're here with an op cool we can go stack this other site they either come into your op or they come into our stack. But without that, then they move around way more and they split up, split up separate, and that's where we see them losing first bloods or um, over committing or overcompensating to certain info plays. That was super interesting. And if you're a Counter Strike player, you hopefully learned something there because <laughs> we got a really deep dive. Still, I've heard so much about having you on a desk. That was rad, man. I'm pretty stoked that this is the first time when we got to have that much insight into what Cloud9 can possibly change up. Uh, I want to talk a bit about the map that we're moving on to, but before we do that, Banks actually ran outside to just get a catch up with the teams. Let's find out what they told him. Well, the game has ended. Sorry. They're rolling on through, and the Monty guys did manage to get some T rounds, which is a, a big help. I was just talking to LMBT, the coach there, and I will say that when it comes to the full focus of this team, he was kind of memeing a bit. He was kind of joking around how well they were doing, but he did say, even on Mirage, we still don't know our map pool. We still don't know how this is going to go, so it's not out yet. It's not over just yet. So it's all up in the air. They're just happy they won a map. But that kind of sets the tone for the whole game, I think. Let's see what happens on Mirage. Let's see what happens on Mirage. How do we think that this is going to go down? I imagine Monty win the series here, actually. Uh, I thought that Cloud9, I, I really thought Cloud9 kind of had to win Overpass because their Mirage has been pretty bad, Cloud9 that is. They've lost to Maus yesterday, they lost to Rebels to open up the play-in stage, which was one of the biggest upsets on day one. And the reason that they're having so much difficulty, guess what? It's because they don't have a great sniper. Perfecto is okay on this map with it, but he doesn't really mo move into the spots necessarily to find the most impact with the weapon. He's a little bit more static. Wherever he starts the round, that's usually where he's going to end the round. And so it's obviously such a far cry from seeing people like when, when some of these guys were playing with Shiro, playing with Simple, obviously, where they were so mobile, able to dictate what's going on on the defense. And I feel like Monty, who's a team that loves walking around taking rifle duels, oh, they were going to welcome all the rifle duels that Cloud9 are going to present them on this map. And with Monty looking better on 
on their CT sides, I think like what we look at is, okay, how is the T side going to play out on this Mirage game? And it's like, well, Mirage is a map where it's easy to connect with the rest of your team. You can connect through middle or underpass, and you can connect in four different ways. So when we see the mid-round situations where they start walking around and they're really slow and they're not doing any explosive things, that actually kind of works on Mirage to a degree because you can get into some of these lurk positions and you can do some push and pull and you can do these kind of like you go up in this area and you stop and you kind of siege the area first. You don't just full commit right away. And I think that style can play out really well, especially with you know how Cloud9's been walking around in these mid to late rounds on their CT side, just one person walking this way for info, that person watching walking that way. They can walk and get punished in, in these traps, basically. Thank you so much, gents, for weighing in. And if you're watching at home, North American analysts, by the way, make sure that you're here for the, the next breakdown that they do because it is actually super informative as well as entertaining. We are going to take a quick break and then we're going to find something even more entertaining because it will be Mirage and it will be Cloud9 up against Monty. There, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Monty making up for their slow start yesterday. Sit a map up now, heading into Mirage. One that has proven to be troublesome for Cloud9 here in Katowice. A loss to Rebels to open up their run in the play and certainly does not inspire a lot of confidence. And for Monty, I think very important to highlight how well Bro and Waro2K were able to kind of rein in that last map. 
Right, we had a hot start from Demka in the opening game for Monty that then fell completely silent, especially on those T sides. But Bro was able to keep it going, and it felt like Waro kind of had his reins over the game as well. Yeah, and now even the desk predictions flipped, and understandably so, as we go to Mirage, Monty's pick, their second most played map uh, of last year, it's second to Anubis, which is our decider of the series. Cloud9 going to try and drag us there, kicking and screaming and everything in between. Monty just want to eliminate them right now in the groups. Waro with a deagle in middle, dropped over by Bro, set up to succeed, but you don't get those window fights like you used to. And it's just jump spawning for Boomich. He'll get out of there scot-free, and they'll boost up instead. Boomich eyes on the prize. Demka dead on the lurk there. Not committing to the window boost, just ready to pop if needed is Bro. And meanwhile, Monty go back up Catwalk. They're all over the place. Deagle dead. Catwalk dead. Hobbit's hitting heads. Yeah, one kill back the other way, but it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence for this pistol. Not yet. Krasnow able to tap out one. But it's kind of grinded to this really awkward halt for Monty. The only real estate they have is middle and all the exit routes are covered. Ooh, Axile getting teed up. Doesn't peek on the back of that flash. Where do Monty want to go? 30 seconds left. Anywhere. <laughs> They've got to pick a destination here. It's going to be up into the A site, up into this electronic door Ooh, Beretta. Nice. And he's tucked in, lying in wait over at Tetris. 20 seconds. They don't clear him. Bomb pulled, and that's Krasnal dead. Just bro left standing. Cloud9, they're going to pick up a pistol here. Yeah, it felt like overpass pistol for a moment where Monty were going to try and prioritize the bomb plant and just get that guaranteed force. But then they don't hunt electronic or plant. They go fight CT. They knew electronic was close A. He got that early kill, and that's just where we'll see him in a lot of these CT rounds. So, yeah, oversight there, not the end of the world. Cloud9 found those two opening kills, and that makes life very difficult for Monty. Full eco, and a nice easy beginning to the map for Cloud9. I say they need it right now, with how overpass went. Ooh, Hobbit. Historically, one of the best A anchors when it came especially to the Gambit days. Perfecto, a load of B. Here's them close. He won't force this. He will call for rotation. They jump out. Perfecto making it nice and easy here. Axile even has them boxed in from top of middle. So at this point, Monty, they only have B to go to. And Cloud9 are very set up to deal with it. This one will not get exciting anytime soon. It's just a nice cleanup out of Cloud9. And they managed to keep five alive, which is actually pretty huge. A feat that they struggled to accomplish. Yeah. Back on overpass. There you go, mate. There's the context. Thank you. You've tied it all back in. I don't think I've done one of these for a while. Little report from the bathrooms, right? Okay. I overheard uh, it was Bro talking to some Dai Young. Yeah. And he was bigging up his Monster 3K from that last map where they pop through the monster smoke and he demolishes them. And it was just a very sweet moment overall. He was kind of oh. telling him how cool it was. He said, yeah, it was all headshots, only headshots. Oh, Bro's 3K spray down. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, well, no, you said it was bro big enough SCY, but no, like the other way around. Well, report from the bathroom break over, and it's Boomage breaking hearts. Bro dead. Got a one for one, though. Monty in the middle, and Hobbit all the way around. Is he going to go T spawn or ramp? This guarantees a kill, but the alternative was the bomb. That is being picked up right now, though. Demka doesn't know it. He's dead. Do you knife this, Harry? Well, Hobbit won't, surely. Oh. He's just going to milk it for as many as he can. Oh my god, this is such a good... He's waiting. Oh, Hobbit yeah. has brained them! Deals with them both, that's the bomb. And there's the arm scene for Perfecto. Lovely trigger discipline wow. out of Hobbit. To go for that is is wild, but... The jump as well, like the jump is very audible in CS2. It feels like you can't make those sneaky plays as much. So Demka doesn't hear it over, presumably, communication. And the bomb just 
joins in on that ramp setup. That's a disastrous way to lose the round. But a lovely flank for Hobbit puts Cloud9 3-0 up. Well, Monty's T-side troubles re-emerge in map two of this series. I am jumping the gun. Yeah, but I mean, you know, it's Cloud9 showing good knowledge kind of what they're up against, right? Monty would like to go for these kind of just slower grouped plays. There's a lot of shifting around the map for this team, and sometimes there's gaps available. Hobbit's able to find one of them there. Oh, so nice. Don't think he could have played it better. As wild thing is, like, you know, you you have no idea how he got yeah. there. You're thinking, like, did we not check that corner when we came up through ramp? Yeah, we swear we did. In yeah. fact, like, we, we defo did. Where'd he come from? All right, then, Monty, just down to a few pistols around the saved AK. Let's see if Waro is able to get something done with that. Going to have a decent bit of util to work with. Cloud9 on the other end. Everything they could ask for after how these first few rounds have gone. For the first time on their CT side, they've built up an economy early. So let's see if that can give them a bit of a backbone here to withstand some of these Monty rounds. Yeah, and definitely will be eyes on Perfecto on the AWP. See if what Maui said comes to light, if there's any changes here, but has been underwhelming. It's probably one of the better maps, but not for now. It's rifles up in A, Hobbit holds for one. Pistols come surging into the site. Smokes it down for Cloud9. It's only Axel who can fight here. But Warren's put that rival to use, keeping the pressure on. Molly's going to delay the plant, or at least deny it for now. They're going to have to go hunting for kills, but these smokes... Look at the bomb. It's going through. It's going through. Could it go B? Is there a way? Is there a chance? It's a high-risk play if Demko wants to make it happen. And no one's yeah. looking. If you're Cloud9, you're fully anticipating. They're just playing for the bomb plant oh. here. Demka with the backstab. Oh, no. Still one more man inside of B. Perfecto never moves a muscle. He just drops anchor and posts up, waits for that bomb to rotate in. A nice idea from Monty. But Perfecto knows his job. Doesn't rotate out of B until that bomb is spotted, until that bomb gets planted. That's nice. Definitely seen some over-rotations in Katowice. Loro takes one shot. He will live it. Worth going for, but it's so difficult. Perfecto could be anywhere. And he's definitely going to get the audio cue as well. So unless Perfecto does something... Yeah, he has all the health, yeah. all the info, none of which is available to Waro 2K. Everywhere could harbor this last man. Got to try and plant safe. That's his only way. Read it. But it's too late. Perfecto comes in swinging. 4-0 for Cloud9. Great round for Perfecto. There deals with that big flank for Waro, or rather the Demka coming through market. Yeah, Monty are at least happy with how close they make that round, especially with more rifles to follow. So forcing a bit of money out of the Cloud9 ranks. Boomich going to pick up the AWP. Okay. It's Boomich now. Big boom. It's, you know, often between these two players who will AWP has felt somewhat map dependent. Then it goes a bit too deep to break, and so Monty catch a break out top middle. They just leave SDY there. It's a full default round for Monty, trying to ascertain what C9 want to do, if there's any of that Hobbit aggression, perhaps. And he tries close to ramp with electronic. Krasnow needs to be cautious. Smoke. <laughs> Is not CSGO. Boomich can't look over it to underpass. Hobbit wins his, and Boomich also finds an orb shot. So right now, Cloud9 just massacre Monty in middle. Only move they have is window. And that's being contained by Axel and Ladder. Oh, oh yes, Boomich. A second from that AWP. It's a good look. I feel like for one round, Monty should all just rip their shift keys off the keyboard. Yeah. They're making like, you know, I think if you're Boomich and you've got guys shifting around the corner, yeah, that's lovely. You love that as an author. 
Well, as, uh, as Adesh said, that's why Monty got away with so many of these walkie plays on T-side last map, especially on Overpass, where you have long sight lines in toilets, in banana. And so Monty could just get to front A without Cloud9 having any information. Well, now that the money's no longer a problem, you would hope that Boomage can hold the line. And he did in this round. Two orb kills and a save for SDY. Terrifying. <laughs> he is scared, and all he hears those A1S is firing off and puts the fear in him for a moment. Okay, this has been very flat for Monty to open up. And even saving that AK, sure, it's going to give them a bit more to fight with here, but causes you its own set of problems down the line if you don't find success on the partial. I want something a little more in your face, a little faster, a little quicker. Boomich, right place, right time on the AWP. Oh, when I talk about the nade, all that matters is he gets that opening kill. There was no one that would have even been damaged by it, so Ooh. nothing to say there. Some die young, creeping up through mid, but this is the one gun. This is the AK, and if he falls here, gonna have a tough time retrieving it. So here they are, moving back around the map. Monty up and leave that B site once they see the AWP. Boomage staying relatively mobile. Has at least taken a different sideline to watch middle. They kind of pop through this con smoke, but Boomage will have eyes on it. There's another from the Boomage AWP. And that is the AK dropped out of the round, retrieved by Krasnal, who does gain some real estate Ooh. over towards jungle. A swing kill there as Axile is dealt with. That opens up the route out through connector. Electronics baiting for Hobbit by making noise in CT. They have to be aware. They have. You have to look at the name tags and you get kills here. Hobbit up close, Electronic can spawn, and they will get that trade off. Electronic can wait for the retake. Krasnal Ooh. getting teed up with a flash. Oh. He's got the bomb on his back, but he wins that fight, Boomich. Rug pulled from underneath him, but it's Electronic with the trade. Waro has a low HP player here, just hounds him down into the 1v1. Perfecto, the man left to beat. The man yet to fall in this map. Will this be his first death? He's creeping out. Good timing on the jungle push. Waits for that plant. Gets up close. And Waro is dead. Perfecto still yet to fall as he locks in a sixth round for Cloud9. And Boom is just saying, yo, go grab me that AWP. I'm having a fun time with it right now. Yeah, I hope Boomish keeps going on, right? And not Perfecto right now. Because I wondered, was the first one because Perfecto saved the AK and he just wanted to play it? Well, now we have an orb. And hopefully it continues in the hands of Big Boom, who finds another double kill with the AW. And Perfecto saves the day in the clutch. That's what he's good for right now. Good awareness from Krasnow that after he gets that first deep pick CT, that that's the rotation player off B. And that Electronic was the guy throwing the molly earlier. He goes for the clear. Waro does get a bomb down, which is something, but perfecto positional advantage on top of that bin. And Ooh. he puts Monty in the trash. You see frustration setting in for Monty early yeah. on here. Some die young with just a little outburst. Some anger fell after how that last round goes. Boomich nice. tries his hand at the opener, and this time Waro is there to greet him. I wasn't flashed or anything. That wasn't set up by Cloud9. They just, yeah, he just goes off the rails and. War is waiting. An unlikely opening kill for Cloud9 without utility. And a B stack right now. They're making a read. I like the gamble. Trust in Hobbit who has util to block on A. Even he is playing retake. Perfecto. Oh my. Oh! AK advantage. Comes up for Demka. Yeah, 
Cloud9 pad out the B site. It's really all they've got. That's a freebie onto Waro 2K. This one could still get out of hand. Yeah. It's by no means a done deal after these two kills going the way of Monty. They try to switch it back up. Oh, Bro had to win that fight. He really had to. That would have been the con route corrupted. Axile tries to move in and take up this position. Can have his work cut out for him. One kill for Axile. Bit more damage, but that's the end of the line. And Hobbit's been spotted down by the murder hole. Plant comes in, Hobbit rooting through the spawn. Two of these players very low for Monty. Oh, if he needed anywhere else, but it's the full health player. Oh, so much damage done. Literally 10 HP, the difference on that round, but it will be the first on the board for the Monty squad. Can they start chaining some together now? Some die young and bro both on the board at the end of that one. I want to know how many dinks went on between uh, Electronic and Ladder and, and bro and Con, because it felt like both players hit multiple headshots before that kill came in. And even though Axel has a really nice angle to catch them off guard on short side, they fight together, Monty trade out, and they're able to take a round close, but you'll take it. And now we have an APOP. Yeah, this is more up-tempo. This is that pace change, yeah. and Cloud9 are blindsided by it. Electronic out of the stairs is just hounded down, chased by Bro over the stairwell, and so a save call comes in for Cloud9 immediately. It's a lovely change of pace for Monty, who have been going, as you said, shift everywhere all around the map. And now they just explode. You get two entries, there's nothing Cloud9 can do. Perfecto. A couple of kills here. Oh, but he takes the orb out instead. Demko will save it. And even Axel's gun is not guaranteed into the follow-up round. I love that pace change for Monty. It was about time. It's hard to call when you're 6-0 down, when you're not winning anything. But if you come off the back of a round win by playing your slow, defaulty style, Clan 9 not prepared for an explosion into A. And there is a CS2 peak. Even on LAN, no chance for Axel to react to that. And there we go. The man we saw throwing his hands around in aggravation earlier on is now getting a little more hyped up. Some die young. Proud of how these last two rounds have gone. Happy with it. And they know how important that one was. Even the fact that they removed that saving player teased them up for more success here and now. Heavy A stack. And one that will be altogether avoided by Monty. So long as they stick to their guns, they wanted to go B at the start of this. changing their mind. <laughs> They're changing their mind. They're going back over towards A. Oh, There's already a deep palace player in Electronic holding this line. Some Young knows they haven't oh. had palace, so has to clear all these angles. You see Electronic there. They learn from Hobbit. Not again. Potent position, but he needs to turn around eventually. 5-7 up close. He's heard the steps now. Yeah. Deals with some die young. Perfecto can't get out of there, however. They're ready for a stack. Oh, leg scene, arm scene. Finished off by Krasnal, and this one should just be the mop up. Axile gonna get out with one over here in middle, but there shouldn't be any saving that AWP. He's gonna try root for it all the way around through top mid. Right now, that's the object of his desire. Can I get the orb? That's what Axile's wondering. There it is. That's his end goal. But Monty won't let him have it. And so there's the 3-6. Cloud9, their eco round doing a little bit of damage, but never enough to get too exciting, even as Monty do root back round into the stack. And so they're going to call out a little timeout now. Yeah, if Monty come back and you know win this map, for example, it just it, it would be impressive given that they've started every single game they've played on the back foot. It's felt like, uh, with the exception of that first half of overpass against Gamer Legion, it's been very difficult beginnings to every half for Monty, 
And even on the last map, remember it was 4-0 down, they get eight rounds in a row. This is the same six up for Cloud9, but now Monty is starting to get into their groove. If you pardon the pun. I mean, they just want to keep Cloud9 here, right? The longer you can bully this CT side, the better. There's no AWP either now. What pace do we see from Monty? Have they read the economy right? you got to be expecting an AWP in a round like this, just in case. There's always a glass available. No one goes for it, though. Fast out under. More decisive mid-take here for Monty. But Cloud9 want to fight back. They've got a flash primed. Electronic swinging in off connector. Oh, with the break as well from Monty. Well, they break their own heart. Bro, bit of bowling here down under. And that smoke is very deep. That will give ways to peek into connector if Cloud9 want. Orb spots a shoulder. Moro can't get the guaranteed shot. And the Molly will actually push that player back. So once again, heavy on A as Cloud9 have been most of this map. Monty yet to make their final decision. And it seems like Cloud9, who are playing this very smart, five and four, they don't want to give a kill over. They don't want to give a way back into the round. If they're going to do it, they should do it as a team. And it seems like that is the move right now. Three players pushing up Catwalk. They leave Electronic to anchor, and they'll fight as a pair on short. It's a nice move for Cloud9. They're going to find Monty with solo mid if the B hit doesn't come through first. Yeah, you still have Demka all the way over at ramp, and he's starting to gain some real estate. That bomb on Bro is going back, but he had to walk most of the way. So this is like a very down-to-the-wire sort of move out of Monty. Oh, what a kill. With Demka not winning that fight, this one should be done, honestly. There's 15 seconds. The bomb is now over in mid. They're going to have to just group up through the catwalk. Electronic, one kill on the right man could win in this round, and they're not ready for him here. A missed shot from Waro Zorp. And so time gets the better of Monty. They all end up falling, and Cloud9 given a seventh. A big 3K out of Electronic to make it happen, who stays very nimble across that round. It's not the first time that not only, you know, two players in one position is one Cloud9 around, but also the player you're not expecting in that position. You kill Perfecto on Catwalk for 15 seconds, you think B is open. That's the names, the name value of, you know, knowing who anchors which site uh, coming back to bite Monty, because Electronic, who is, you know, the rotation player is, or the, you know, the con player is, is back in... The B site as well, he'd pre-rotated to stack B. So nice mid-round move for Cloud9. And even though Monty catch a couple of kills there where it feels like they might be able to dig themselves out of that hole, Electronic drops that bomb. To be honest, if Warrow trades him there, he may have a plan. So it's very important that Warrow misses that shot. No, but it's not his first miss in the series, to be honest. He's having some trouble on CT overpass as well. I'll tell you what's made another appearance here for Cloud9. It is this AWP on Boomich, and he's using it to push up towards top mid. Good real estate taken for Cloud9 here as they start to piece together where this one could end up. That's going to bring Electronic back over the way just at the right moment. That smoke in Palace takes the wind out of the sails for Monty. They look like they might just want to come through this. Hobbit, good position oh. to deal with the Palace play. One kill presented, one kill gained. Even tries his hand in the spam battle, but gets overwhelmed. Boomich is dead, and so is Electronic. The sight taken from Monty. And even as that nade finds good damage, advantage lying with Monty right now. Molly at the stairs doesn't quite go off. Smoke was still down, but it's not going to give Axile a way back in. Just perfecto now. Oftentimes, great in these clutches. A 1v3 was laid out ahead of him, and he looks to give it a little look in, but that shot fired off from the AWP just might put the fear in Perfecto. Swing out from ramp, and the clutch is denied. He's cut down. Well, nice I recovery from Sundar Young as well, right? Yeah. Who, I think, only got his first kill, I want to say, like four rounds ago. 
how does Krasnel get out here through the edge of the smoke and find that spam kill? That's the, the difference maker. He has the bomb. Hobbit's in a position for two kills as they go through, uh, go through a smoke with no flash or at least no effective flash for his position. And Krasnel gets out with the crucial trade and the plant. And look what that's done to Cloud9's buy. Shotgun CZ MP9 all over the place. And they do drop in under, and Monty actually don't take mid spawn, so they don't know this, but it's paranoia inducing to be stuck in this position. You want the peak, you want the like info, and Boomish will find it. Boomish has always been good for a kill in these rounds, but this one is going to be one that gets away from him. Not the best spot to be in with that CZ. What oh, they weren't ready for Axile, even though they hear him ticking the molly. They don't think he's going to be a mad lad and just go running through it, but he does. And he gets the reward. He's got the bomb right now, trapped at the back of apartments, hiding behind the TV is Demka. He can't wait here forever. And if he ever wants to rejoin his teammates in a B play, he would have to start making some moves. So a little awkward right now. Monty just hold and wait to see if Cloud9 give them anything. They just need a pick, they need a refrag, they need Axile, but they think he's still up in the B side. He comes down under, what a reposition, he can flash his fight, Demka turns, and it's two for Axile, then Electronic even activates. That's a beautiful play from Axile, we were waiting all series, he's been very quiet, but he shows up at a good time. Sunday Young with the world on his shoulders and Cloud9 high in the sky, eight round CT side looking good on Mirage, a map they've had trouble with, but facing elimination show their best half yet.
Cloud9 lead the charge as they fight to stay alive here in Katowice. It's a pretty strong team effort here from the C9 squad. Electronic with some standout moments. Hobbit and Perfecto both finding their footing as well. And even some nice plays from Boomich on that AWP in the mix. For Monty, their slower T sides let them down there. Just four rounds to their name. But we've seen it's the CT half where Monty have really been excelling here throughout the event. So let's see if that's going to be enough. That is a reassuring factor. It's also a reassuring factor just to see Cloud9 actually competing uh, in the first half, right? To, to see them go out with a whimper, I think would be a bit of a shame. It wouldn't be too far away from what we've seen from this roster. Underwhelming since its inception, uh, you know, with their best run really being their debut at uh, Cologne uh, last year, where they had Axel coming in just in time for the playoffs, Booster playing the group stage, and then obviously they uh, fell in their opening round to Vitality, but... Yeah, for, for Cloud9, this is elimination. This is everything to play for. This is mere rounds so, away from going home empty-handed. What you're telling me, Cloud9 need Booster. They need him back in the Maybe, squad. Maybe, th can he AWP? Not really. <laughs> uh, no, mate, Boomich can. I think it's you know crazy as well, considering you know, I imagine there, there may be changes on the horizon for Cloud9 if, the, if they fall short here in this competition. But with the amount of CIS orping talent that we talk about over, over years of Counter-Strike, mm -hmm. for them to not have anyone is kind of a, a shocker, to be honest. Uh, obviously, they were going through other issues as well. Keep in mind, the changing of in-game leaders uh, was a whole factor. Electronic realizing after... Uh, quite a while as an in-game leader up uh, uh, back in Na'Vi and here in Cloud9 that actually, yeah, I play better when I'm not in that role. And we've certainly seen his rise in performance since he's given that up to Boomich. It's great to see Boomich back in the server. There's no doubt about that. I'm not calling for heads. I'm just uh, looking for tails. And an AWP would be a nice story, yeah. Cloud9. Well, we'll stick a plug in that, Hugo, and we'll get ready to head in <laughs> to this pistol. Monty, CT side. If they can find this pistol, they're off to the races. The comeback is back on. If Cloud9 pick it up, there's not much room for the Monty squad left in Mirage. Oh. Krasnal pushing Ooh. on in, and he won't like what he finds here. All of Cloud9 yeah. wait around that corner, and they get delivered a double opener into the this B site. Wow. There shouldn't be a way to win this, right? Monty not going to get given the kills in Kitchen. Cloud9 cooking. Oh. Hobbit can swing off of the market door contact. That's a spam for Bro. I don't think he even saw him. There's a second player in the corner, though. Trade is nice. Bro gets a double before he dies, and everyone else will fall as well. Cloud9 get nine. And Monty have to eco, so you're expecting double digits for Cloud9 as we get a quick technical timeout for the coach. What does this mean, Hugo? If we go to Anubis, what happens there, mate? That's actually where Cloud9 I think, I think are favorites. And even though it's Monty's most played map of last year, they actually have a very good Anubis. Uh, a lot of that was with Boros in the first half and first half of the year, you know, coming into and including Paris and some of the madness he got up to in middle. Obviously, we've seen Monty still recover well from that, but Cloud9, have, that's been their home map, Anubis. And if they can win this game dominantly, which right now is, is yeah. setting up to be that with a pistol round, yeah, momentum. You know, Monty breaking under the pressure. I think Cloud9 are suddenly favorites again on map three. Because I think a lot of us were looking at this, and the moment we see Monty, you know, win that opening map of overpass, it's like, yeah, we're going to Mirage next. They they should be able to pick this up 2-0. Yeah. And I mean, I know I that was lost the it to Rebels. over on the desk. Yeah, exactly. Cloud9 have looked pretty, pretty rough on this one. Yeah. And it's a nice map for the Monty squad, but... Yeah, it just feels like for me, Monty have come into this tournament too cold and started too slow. Like that opening game, not to discount Game of Legion, but Monty should be winning that on, you know, if you're going off of last year's form. And obviously there's extenuating circumstances with Monty. They've talked extensively in that interview. I recommend you read um, with Mira about, you know, the lack of boot camp yeah. situation leading to that. And obviously that's going to make life a lot more difficult in such a hyper competitive scene. But still, that's just how the cookie crumbles, Harry. Back to the bakery. Yeah. And we are right back. <laughs> we are right back in.
Well, talking bakery, no dough for either team here. They put it all on the line, have Monty with a four spy. We've seen them do this now in both CT second rounds after falling down in the pistol. This time it comes more from, I guess, necessity, right? They just want to try and claw something back. An unexpected win Ooh. over C9 with the force, but... Ooh, oh, rough start as the double <laughs> nades flush SDY out of ladder room. It's at least redeemed by Demka. Short is left open, and Stack. so Monty have got to bear that in mind. But three players here over towards the B site, primed and ready to go. Even boosted up is Kraz now. They learn about oh, him no. too late. Everyone else is beating him to the punch. But this one, the wheels are coming off the wagon. Cloud9 trying to regain some control. Everyone is wounded. Everyone is hurting. And Monty... Lockdown B with the triple lean there on that four spy. And that is their lifeline. That is their shot of redemption now left open. Not something you see many teams like to risk. Monty do take that risk and it pays off for them. Yeah, well, that is that is a, a part of the risk is that you gamble and that you save if you're wrong. And, and it works out perfectly. Four players on B if you count some die young. And even though they lose the flank, which was going to make that B hit, beautiful for cloud nine they think yeah we've killed the ladder player how many more could be there oh everyone everyone could be there and three cts lying in wait for monty will find them that force by round a comeback is not out of the realms of possibility but they've got to contain the rebuy back on this t side got some tech nines at least Loads of util for Boomich. And smokes on all. All right, so Demka, the anchor man, alone. Versus the world. And with these smokes coming down, no one will really be able to help out. You can get some spam from Waro, but that should be it. Oh, that's huge. Before There's no the stair smoke. There isn't. It oh, comes it's, it's in coming. really late, really, really late. And so it let Waro play into the round in a way that Cloud9 would have rather he didn't. Demka holds on from underneath Palace, even having to swap out of the sidearm. Some smooth moves keep him in it and buy more than enough time for everyone else to pad out this sight hold. Very well done for Monty to put a stop to that. Yeah, LMBT giving him his props as well. Well done. You know, not just getting the opening kill off of Sunday Young's flash, you know, living, buying time, getting a second, flying around. That was nice, nicely done for Demka. And Cloud9 full eco. Should I shouldn't be worried, but I am. I I still am worried. You're worried even in this round? I'm, not in this one. I'm worried for Cloud9. Okay, nine right. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah. I'm worried they get too owed. Yeah, it's justifiable. I don't want to say it's not. It's like having a fear of roller coasters. Fair enough. Yeah, most of them are fine. But when they're not, they're really they really ain't. It only takes one. Just to mow down up against the Glocks. I like Cloud9 for that. Just run at them. Yeah. You're not going to win it, so why take two minutes? Look. On one hand, yes. On the other hand, tactically, it's, <laughs> you not, go, yeah, I know. it's not the right play. You should try and burn out Monty's util. You should bore everyone watching. But maybe Cloud9 just want to get on with the game. Yeah, exactly. They're showmen. They want to fight. They want to play. They want to swing mid dry. I grant them that right. Smokes go over into middle. Bro with some... I was going to say ah. smooth moves, but... Some moves. There were moves, but smooth they were not. Doesn't get into the ladder room like he wanted. Smooth like my brain. No wrinkles. <laughs> they say wrinkles are unattractive, Harry. What do you think? Goddamn wrinkle brains. Right, look, man. Cloud9. I'm just going to return us. <laughs> yeah, Cloud9, please do. Out, out through lower. I don't even know where to take it. No. It all goes slow. It all goes quiet here. They execute. Going quietly. Not what Cloud9 want to do. That molly tick is a problem because it just guarantees that Monty now know a player is going to lurk connector when these smokes come through. 
But there are two players. So let's see if Cloud9 bait each other. That might be their best play. Or boost window. Try and keep Monty guessing. Some contact made over here in mid as Bro does get the info. There's two down towards those lower tunnels. Full exec out in a way. In the meantime, Demka still waiting behind Triple for the perfect time to strike. He gets out with one and a dink down range. Makes life a little easier for SDY. It's Don't just know. the one and done. Plant coming in. Bro oh. tries his hand at the spam Ow. but can't quite deny it. Waro, similar attempt, similar results. That bomb goes down, and now they're left fighting for some control, but the CT fight doesn't go their way. Cloud9 are in danger of getting boxed in here. Uh. Even a tag finished off now from the pistol. The sidearm pulled. They learn about Hobbit down in connector. Bomb planted out in the open four, and Bro holds this. <laughs> and Hobbit, that's a ballsy jump across. For Bro with no kit, this is awkward. And it's not really a, a round he can look for. He's going to go in and pick one up, tap on the bomb, but time is of the essence. And Hobbit just jumping around for these checks. Confirms he's not on that bomb and wins it to the time. Beautifully done from the oh. Cloud9 squad to make that happen. And everybody dies for Monty. And it's, it's exactly what we mentioned before the execute came in, right? The molly ticks, they hear someone take damage, and so Axel has to play, but I love that Hobbit doesn't join him. He, he lurks out under, he makes no noise, and he lets Axel look like the lurker in that round when it's actually Hobbit all along, uh, who plays late, trades out that orb kill, and wins the round from position. You know, there's no way Bro can actually win that. If he sticks to the bomb, Hobbit swings him. If he goes for the fight, Hobbit jumps. It's, it's LL situation. So, very well played from Hobbit. Experienced play from Hobbit. 10 to 7, Cloud9 get their first gun round on the board. And that's a, a good start to the half. After losing to the Force in the second round. Oh, are they just going to... Hit B. Uh, these this position of bro is is the multi kill one, right? It's the with the jumping rifle. Bro gets two kills, and Cloud9 are in big trouble here. This is akin to how they played their second round, and it's going to start off poorly as well. Oh dear, bro has moved though. Yeah, he's hopped on down, but he's still going to be here to try withstand this B assault. First man in, we'll deal with him. No kill off of that MP9. Warro, right place on the AWP, right time to strike. He knocks out Electronic and even goes back in for more. Warro 2K giving us something on this AWP. Bunch oh. of missed shots today, but not in this round. It's the ace from Warro 2K. The captain puts him on, the, on his shoulders and locks in an eighth for Monty single-handedly on the back of that orb. He's so confident, right? He's trading every single kill onto the B site. And then with three to his name, he goes wide in the middle of the open and hits the reaction flick to Perfecto. He is feeling it. That's a beautiful round for Waro. Starts with a mid pick and finds every single B site player for Cloud9. And it felt like Cloud9 had a chance there, right? They got Waro, or they got uh, Bro off the boost with the Molly. There were only two there, but Waro comes flying in as that rotation. Wow. Cloud9 thinks. Ah! <laughs> Damn, that's what an AWPA can do, I guess. <laughs> Oh, dear. Oh, I'm so scared that he, that he was going to... Oh, he is he dropping is it dropping, on the orb. Yeah. Okay. Okay, oh, they're blocked. blocking each other, but he does it with the pistol, and yeah. it's all contained. He's deserved those ecos. He's earned those ecos. An ace in a gun round. Oh, this is more like it from Waro yeah. 2K. This was man when he, when he came into the, the, the game yesterday, he was, like, really keen to get involved. And then whenever he did get the chance, it was like, oh, why were you so keen, you know? Yeah. Like, it, it was just looking a little rough, but... Here we are in the second map, in a map where if Monty can take it, if they can snatch this one back, they knock out Cloud9. Wow. And Waro has stepped up massively. This is a good performance now from him across both maps. It's a very reassuring signs for the Monty squad. Cloud9 calling in their second tactical timeout. Will Tactics save them from that Waro AWP? Because it's hungry. Had a lot of involvement across these last few rounds. 
This was 9-4 for Cloud9, right? 8 on the half with a pistol. But not converting your pistols, or you'll pay the price. Monty are right behind Cloud9. And I say right behind. Well, they're ready to lap them here with a map in their pocket already. And if you're Monty, you don't want to go to Anubis. You don't want to find out what that third one has in store. They lose the look of being favorites that they came into as on Mirage. Electronic lurking under. Timing is good for him. They've just left this position, but Sumdai Young is out in the open right now, trying to hunt. They're all looking, three players looking top mid. No one's looking under. Hello! Electronic just pops out, and he gets that kill, but the turn is swift. Hobbit inside of the smoke, stopped by the orb, over the window smoke, and Monty, a man up as Cloud9 come pummeling into the site. It flashes rain in. Waro on this angle, fast reposition on the AWP, nimble, but a couple of missed shots sail past Cloud9. Still the advantage resides with Monty, even with that bomb going down. Ow. Some Dai Young is deep oh. in, but it's Waro to beat him to the punch, and a clean round out of Monty. They keep four alive. The high fives are coming out now, or fist bumps, or somewhere in between, as that one gets a little bit awkward. The fist fives, the high bumps, all of the above. And just as how Monty have three players all looking top mid, a massive oversight. Bro should be checking under there. He realizes too late. All of Cloud9 are looking at CT in the post bar because who, who is it but Waro drawing in their attention. And so Sam Young just walks through the jungle smoke into a feeling confident is Sam Young. And now we're even. The plant could facilitate a mishmash buy here where Utah would be lacking for Cloud9, but they've called out their final timeout, the final chat with Groove going into not not even, you know, we got four rounds at least left. Or at most, rather, of regulation. So this is a pivotal moment for Cloud9. Groove needs to come in with something clutch, a coach that while regarded at the top of his game, has certainly been drawn into more scrutiny as of late with the arguably mis, uh, arguable mismanagement of this roster. And especially when it comes to tactics, with the changing of in-game leaders, with Cloud9 post Nafany being mostly underwhelming. We got a half buy. I actually love this investment for Cloud9. They're going to go Hail Mary into the site. Yeah, fast out ramp, but they're giving a good deal of respect here. Monty kind of set up for a retake over towards A. Demka floating around in the spawn, knocks out one. Some Dai Young joins him in that. And the spam nearly connects. That blows the smoke open and nice easy shot to Perfecto. Cloud9 is just getting crunched on here. It's chaos all around the site with smokes down. The MAC-10 trying to chirp to life, but board down low. Boomich gets finished off here. It's only electronic and too many angles, too much responsibility. Yeah, They're wow. getting loud now as Monty look to run away with this 11 to 10. They pull ahead up into the lead from that 4-8 start on the half. Demka's just screaming them down. He knows what that means as well. Monty, you say what you want. They've had great reads to CT side from that second round stack on the B bomb site to this one as well. Heavy in middle against what they know is going to be either lacking util or lacking firepower. It's the latter for Cloud9. They play retake A and man, they just lock that one out in the post plant. Sure, Cloud9, have your money, have your four buy, but you are facing two rounds from elimination. And it's another aggressive stance over in mid for Monty. When you don't have to worry about this AWP on these long sight lines, the freedom is palpable, man. Monty keep running back these aggro mid setups, and even now moves are being made. Some die young creeping up through the lower tunnels. Hobbit is here lying in wait, and we'll get that one delivered to him. Oh, that's a big entry over towards B. They won't capitalize on it. They're not going to move straight in, but that will draw rotations around. Walking through that smoke, that little gap allowed Perfecto to check the site. And now he sits concealed from Bro back in the spawn.
all off the flick, has to go back to Palace and won't be able to land it. Demka, right place here as they move out through the lower tunnels. Hobbit caught looking the wrong way. That one's free out in top mid. I don't know if Electronic was spotted there, but if they saw him, they know they've got this 2v1 inside of the site. Axile gets the bomb planted. It's an open bomb plant as well, so the reroute back around towards ramp. Should do well for Cloud9. It is going to come down to Electronic in this clutch, but he's throwing Util. They know where he is now. They know he's on the ramp ahead of the Molly, already out onto the Tetris, but wider on the plot. What? That's a stray bullet if ever you've seen one, and it's going to let Electronic mop them all up in the clutch. That is madness. He seemed <laughs> fated to win that. He was aiming nowhere near them. Literally last bullet, just running on his counter strafe, and the RNG comes in clutch for Cloud9. It may save their tournament life. My, oh my. You'll take it. You will take it if you're Cloud9. It's all you've got. This game rages on. Overtime on the horizon. And this one's for map or match point. Or a smoked out in middle. He's been breaking this though. He's been fighting over the top. He'll do the same. They're already out. They swung behind the boxes and burrowed in. He hears them spamming. He knows mid is taken. Cloud9 catch a breath after a hectic previous round that almost gets robbed away. Yeah, I mean, look, man, if all it takes for them to find a way back into this game is a stroke of luck. Make the most of it. They really have to. They don't have a single smoke left on Cloud9. That is problematic. This is going to come down to a lot of dry fighting for the Cloud9 squad. And that means for Warro, there's going to be a lot of open sight lines on this AWP. Good molly. Very good molly, but they won't punish Krasno on the escape. The nade is even better as it catches his retreating position. Boomich gets up through the cat smoke. He's already found a bench pick. Oh my, he's making a lot of noise here, trying to sell this fake. The bomb's up in Palace. And Look at Monty. Electronic is rotating out. They have two players on ramp. They're ready. And even though, you know, you might, you're, you're going to check for SDY. You know you have an ab ramp. You're going to check for this first oh. guy. Contact made out of Demka as well. So now they know about both these players in a ramp, but dealing with them Stop is a whole it. different fact. Remember the fact that they don't have smokes oh, here. Well, that's proven to be a problem. You could have just looked to smoke this off and have a route into the site. Instead, you're left fighting and chase down is Boomich. It's all eyes on Electronic, no who's got to clutch again. 10 seconds. And so there simply isn't time here. Even as he gets that first, he will go no further. They give him oh. one more fight in at the end, and it's just to rub salt in the wound there. Cloud9 bored to their knees in the final round of regulation. They've got nothing to play with. That is a disastrous way to lose the round. Monty burrowed in on A. Do not even consider a rotation. That's because they have everyone else at the B site. Two tucked in A, three back B. So Boomer just killed us nothing to force repositions. And rightly so, Monty hold. And they completely uproot Cloud9 on that A split. Waro back to his tricks in window. Mollied out this time at least, but no one's even taking middle. They know that he's had a hell of a game on this map. Not missing a beat. Stay far away from this AWP coming up connector. Someday I've got to be careful. They're already through the smoke. Ugly spray. Molotov's a problem. Axel must smoke it. He even misses it. They're out into the site. They're splitting from ramp as well. Demka's got to do another massive multi on the anchor. Yeah, he's got some support from Waro's Zort back in the spawn as well. But as the util reigns over, he's teed himself up behind triple. Won't take contact from Khan. Instead, swings oh, this bomb plant, dear. but can't quite deny it. Man advantage falls the way of Cloud9. And Hobbit goes chasing kills on the extremities. But he will fall out of the round. A 3v3 retake deciding the fate of this game. Krasnal creeps in very deep within the site but not oh. deeper than they're ready for. Shot nailed from Perfecto. Bro, still so far removed. Worried about more players on the extremities. They're nice. all here. Warro's Orb chimes in with a kill. A Can stick. this be the turning point? He's got to get on stick. the bomb. Electronic has won it with the spam before. This time it might let him down. Oh. Out of ammo, and Warro has oh, robbed yeah. them. 13 to 11, as Monty claimed the 2-0. And they recover from that slow start yesterday.
One of the biggest criticisms leveraged against this Cloud9 is the lack of the AWP, and that shows up across this series. Great performance from Waro. The turning point here on Mirage, coming from the back of his AWP Ace at B, and he kept up appearances for Cloud9. It's an earlier exit than they would have hoped. A tumultuous time in the playing stage, and one that gets brought to a swift end in the groups. Yeah, it's got to feel good for Monty. Cloud9 eliminated them in the same position back in Cologne group stages. Well, here in a new year in Katowice, it's Monty to send Cloud9 home early. And look at how much that means to them as well. It's got to feel good for Waro. Dem could get him very loud in this series as well. A statement win for Monty, and we'll have to see how they continue to fare as they warm into competition here at Katowice. There you have it. Heroes in the hall. Past legends are going home. Monty has woken up. They had a bit of a rough start yesterday, but they continue now here at Intel Extreme Masters Calaviche. They are still in the group stages and they will remain in the competition. This is the Monty we were waiting for. This is the Monty that we expected and that we saw last year. They always punch above their weight. They come in. They are the stone in the shoe of most big teams. They are the, they're the plucky underdogs. That's how I would describe them. They actually really not with the same win condition that I would have pinned them ha to have last year where they were just playing every single online game possible. Now it actually is the player quality that comes up in, in spades for them. The fact that Waro was fantastic for them in this, that Demka had some nice late game moments there. I feel like when I look at this Monty project right now, or I guess team, it's not really much of a project anymore because it has actually actualized. I really think that this team with SCY at the helm has taken so much They've, they've taken what CS2 gives them and they've actually just kind of like revamped themselves in a way more recently than other teams were like Cloud9. I feel like they're maybe just a little behind on things. It's interesting to see that their CT sides versus their T sides are so... There's such a big contrast between the two because the CT sides, they're really aggressive, really in their faces. And that's where Woro's op also comes alive. And honestly, if there's anything to talk about this game, it's that he's been doing so well with that op. And he's been getting in their faces. He's been getting, yeah, I mean, that ace. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk about, actually, we're going to show you the ace, but not right now. What we're actually going to do is go straight to the man himself, because I believe he's with Banks. And he's probably celebrating. He's still in the competition, and he played like a demon. He certainly did play like a demon, so I think that's perfect words for it. Well, I'm going to just start by asking you, this game for you individually was great, but it does it feel like you can take extra liberties, you can go further when you know you're not going up against a, a dedicated AWPer? Um, yeah, 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 it was more easy to all team to play when we understand they don't have VP usually and it's more easy to take space. I think it's uh, like was good for us also. But uh, even with rifles, sometimes he was giving them entry and it was a bit harder, but yeah, this was good for us. It definitely was good for you guys, but Overpass has been such a great map for Cloud9. Yesterday, you guys certainly had your struggles on it, especially on the T side. When you got that map, did you feel like, okay, this series is ours? Uh, they, we check uh, our mistakes, uh, what was wrong. We just, uh, yesterday punch give us today to <laughs> understand what we need to do on the map. And uh, we, need, we don't need to be scared. We need to bring some energy to fill a game, uh, to do our plays, what we usually do. And today it was working better. Would you say that though, when you feel this extra pressure, you know, when you're facing elimination, we see the, the best of Monty? Uh, we don't have pressure at all. If we lose, we understand we have more tournaments. Uh, we need to have in our brain, like, of course, we want to win for 100%, but no pressure at all. Wow, no pressure. So just step by step, you're taking it. But getting this win, right, does it fill you with confidence for the rest of the tournament? Yes, yes. Uh, now this win will help us a lot also to get confidence more to all players. And uh, yeah, I think next game we'll play uh, more better. It was like second game for us in this season. And yeah, yeah we need a bit games for to get a uh, very good form. More time, more success. That seems to be what they need. Let's see how they can go further in the tournament. Back to you, Sam.
Thanks so much, James. I love that. That is such a grinder's me mentality. Oh, if we come out of this tournament, they will just play That's more fine. tournaments. Yeah. That's what we'll do. Of course, you did mention him still. He looked fantastic throughout the, 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 the I'd say, both the whole series, but Mirage specifically works out really well for Warrow. Yeah, Mirage specifically, I mean, we didn't even see him necessarily just doing the sitting back, holding a line stuff. He was, like, getting pretty in their face. This uh, clutch round at, at B as well. Oh, my goodness. He's just, like, finding all the cracks. He's moving around. He's doing quick scopes. He's doing quick peeks. He's, oh, just dancing around this pillar as well. The quick scopes here on upper, just the micro adjustments as well. So this was a huge impact, and this is what was missing from Cloud9. We did see Boomich having the op out, but not really a lot of value out of it. Like a couple of rounds where he got some decent value out of it. But again, it, it comes to what's going on with their positions and their roles. Are they yeah. switching spots sometimes? Like yesterday, it was a little bit different. What's going yeah. on? Before exactly. you get into that, though, I do want to say, if you just watched that and you really liked it, don't forget that you can watch every sick play from whichever angle you choose. Just go check out Face It Watch. Look at us, paying the bills. Continue, Maui. <laughs> well, it's it's interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of ready to shift the conversation over to Cloud9 and kind of the woes that we've seen from them in this tournament. And we saw that they did try to rectify the situation by switching up some of the positions. We have a little clip like yesterday. I was talking about the fact that, you know, some of the positions, like Perfecto's usually the opera on the map. Well, they kind of just switched everything. After they lost to Maus, after they lost to Rebels, they actually changed the spots of practically every CT side player. Now it's Boomich that's opping on this map, and that's just one day of changing like they, they literally just said yesterday we lost to Mao's let's just change our positions and obviously it did okay for them like the reason they lost this was probably more to their T side than their CT side mm -hmm. but this is kind of the, the unfortunate fact of the matter with this cloud nine team they're they're veteran players they have a lot of experience and so you think if you're if you're like sitting back at home you're like what's so what's so hard about switching spots <laughs> In professional Counter-Strike, in this meta right now, there are so many little tricks that you're not privy to if you're not playing these positions day in and day out. And we can see that, like, Cloud9, they're just throwing everything at the wall right now. And it feels like, unfortunately for them, this is kind of a run-up for the to the RMR, to the Major, where they're just trying to see how can we possibly assemble ourselves into a workable fashion. And today, obviously, it didn't really ring true for them. So it's like you're saying they're a pot of boiling water with spaghetti in it and they keep taking the spaghetti out and throwing it on the wall and it just falls off and it's like not ready yet and then they're just going to do it until it sticks on the wall and you're like oh, okay we're good we've cooked properly like it, it's like going guess and check in a math problem instead of actually knowing how to do it you know you're just like trying to every so you're working backwards with the multiple choice answers and you're doing algebra like the wrong way but that's kind of what it feels like Cloud9's doing I don't know if they're going to have the runway necessary to put something together by the time the RMR or major rolls around Fair enough. Those are those are heavy words. So I think still, what, what we should do is is we should celebrate something. Uh, who oh is our God. who is our MVP? I think the MVP of the match was the op. Like <laughs> hands down, just the gun itself. The gun, the gun itself. <laughs> <laughs> best gun right there. <laughs> <laughs> the best, the best, 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 was just the op. The op is the MVP production. of the match. Good job. <laughs> That's great. I didn't even know we had the deaths to op graphic that we could pull up there, <laughs> but that's just fantastic. I mean, it's it goes to show that Waro. I mean, he dominated on map on map number two for sure. Even on overpass, he had some good moments on, with the op as well. And it's just like, it's like unfortunately the main conversation with the C9 team. And it's like we're gonna keep talking about it until you guys make us give us a reason not to. That's just what it is. They're gonna be having nightmares about this as well because I think if they haven't realized by now what their problem is, everyone's been saying it to them. And unfortunately. It, it was a big problem. It has made they've been eliminated from Intel Extreme Masters Katowice. This is like a this is a tournament that you need to do well in if you want to get yourself ready for the RMRs, for the major and for Cloud9. I don't see what they do now. They can't seem to fix they can't seem to fix it. There's there's no nothing to do right now. You you have your major slot locked in with this roster. You can't do, you just can't do anything. I, what I what I want what I want from Cloud9 is I want Boomich or Tell Hobbit you want. just Tell just, me what just, you really just want. go into a deathmatch server and opt for like five hours every day. Play some FPL games, op only. Like people are gonna probably get mad at you on your team. You're gonna queue up and they're gonna be like, dude, wait, Boomich, why are you opping every game? I, I've drafted you an FPL to be this kind of player, and it's like, no, just do it. Like this team needs an opper so badly, it's so frustrating. Frustrating. And so pick one of those two. I don't like Perfecto on the op that much. Just make it Hobbit or Boomich, one or the other, and just commit. Just full commit to it because, I, like, even if you have like a C tier level opera, which Boomich or Hobbit, I believe, can become that by the RMR major, then you maybe have a chance because your rifler core is really strong on this team. Like, they're winning games, practically speaking, just with rifles as it is against top tier teams. So just have any semblance of an op presence. 
I, I could agree with that. I think that, like just going one level further is if you're not going to pull up the op as often or you're not going to just deady one player to it, have a little bit more depth in play. You, you need to, if you're not going to use the op, you have to buy into not using the op. So you can't just try to play the same way that you would if you had an op on the board. You have to start doing more traps, more gamble stacks, more team-based plays. Like we saw that from Monty actually on overpass on their on their CT side. They like to get together and and go aggressive on A with like two people coming up you know, fountain steps, one person long, one person in connector, and just doing this all out gamble brawl. And the same thing in like short B, they'll get in there and get in their faces. But we don't really see the same thing out of Cloud9. So if Cloud9 want to go and skirt it without the op, then they have to start doing more team-based plays. Of that, let's take a look now at the brackets so far here in the group stages. Of course, Monty, they're, they're not all the way just yet. They're, they are going to have to continue to fight for their lives. Uh, you can see there that, that FaZe and Spirit, they have, they've, they've secured their spots uh, in the Spodek, but now everyone else is going to start fighting, not only to survive, but for their spots as well. I know that on the other stream right now, the Heroic Vitality game is, is looking pretty impressive. There's a fight there as well for who stays and who goes. I believe. And Maui, when you take a look at this, any standouts for you that you're looking at going, oh, this could, this could get interesting soon? I feel like the team that I've kind of, has really caught my eye in the events leading up to this and at this event is probably Eternal Fire. I feel like they're a really interesting underdog in terms of just this resurgence or like, well, basically coming onto the big stage from Wycadia. I guess from Group B, I think Gamer Legion is probably the team where I'm kind of surprised by them too, because I feel like they didn't really have much of an identity for the last five months and suddenly, well, Big Snacks is here and he's hungry. How about I'm, you? I'm just, honestly, I, I see this Gamer Legion result and I see how, how they've been performing so far at Katowice and I'm shocked. It's like a completely different team than even like a month ago or, or whenever Sydney was. It's like I saw them, they were so reliant on their set plays, they were so reliant on certain things going the right way and now it's just like Snacks is unleashed. Acor has been hitting op shots. It looks like he's a completely like reborn player. So that's a very interesting thing to see because it's more than just their set play heavy style that's going to work now. Now it's also their individual skill and their clutches and everything's going to come together. So seeing that as a result is kind of interesting. Not the way that I would expect the bracket to play out at all. We've had one elimination match. We are going to have another one here on the B stream as well later today. Uh, so you need to stick around. Make sure you have, there's also a match that will be the decider as to who goes to the spot between Gamer Legion and Mouse. It's all to play for here. Go get some refreshments. Make sure you're back here. Mike will have you covered for the rest of the day.
words, promise you honestly I I wouldn't use them against you unless I thought it'd be fun <laughs> So I sit at home alone in your t-shirt I'm wondering where it went wrong When you always said it, how you liked me better than anyone We cannot, we cannot talk, we cannot just shrug or dust it off or is that thought Cause I cannot pretend I am your friend, I am your nothing I don't feel bad
Turn up this up right now. I like this up right now. You might be stuck right now. This might loosen me up right, up right, up right, up right, up right now. Get up this bus right now. Get up this bus right now. This is this one, one, one. Turn up this up right now. I like this up right now. You might be stuck right now. This might loosen me up right, up right, up right, up right, up right now. Get up this bus right now. Get up this bus right now. This is this one. Some trees ain't no smoke, it's mean for lungs, but you believe. But it's okay, we make mistakes, be relieved. So why art thou in They're not like me, re my eyebrows too intense. I rock out like the Brahma. I wanted to be like the Wayne Johnson teacher, said I'm trouble. Once I got my dreams on work, I started snapping a boss bubbles. I think it's how creators see. A creator's be perceived this fly, you're whipping right, but off ID, you're broken cheap. I need an electric bike to vend this food, to vend these rules. Get these tools, cause hate is true, they're watching me. Haters discretion and vice. Oh me, oh my, I just want to survive in the sea under darkness. Hiding from the light, all we do is push violence. Pain over violence, radio silence. Turn up this up right now, wow. I like this up right now. Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice, where we've got a date of destiny between two Polish leaders on deck for this matchup, and one of them will guarantee their spot in front of the hometown crowd in the Spodek Arena. That's what's at stake here, gentlemen. So to bring you the action, we've got Maui, we've got Bubski. How are we feeling about Gamer Legion taking on Maus? Well, I feel like a lot of people might be surprised that Gamer Legion are even here. They've been uh, shocking the world with the fact that they were struggling for an identity after losing Shuhei. They went through Neelan. Now they have Snacks at the helm. And I actually feel like this Gamer Legion team is starting to punch up a little bit. And so they've been a pleasant surprise. Yeah, and I think a lot of people counted them out after that major. And when they sold I'm and people were like, okay, this project is now dead. But they're still kind of that same feeling where they're always a tough opponent for the better teams to play for some reason. They are indeed. And the man who links them is, of course, now the in-game leader of the Mao side. It's Shue, so let's hear what he had to say ahead of this game. Mao survived an intense game versus Cloud9 yesterday. And I want to start with that, Shuhei. This was chaotic. This was probably frustrating at times, but you closed it out. What did you learn from this first game? I mean, definitely it's a huge positive thing for us. Uh, we're known to lose the first game <laughs> in the tournament, so I'm really happy that's how it went. And also, with the, having a long overtime, it felt like we got a little bit of everything. So because we missed playing stage, I think it was a really good warm-up game um, for the rest of the tournament. So I'm happy the way it went. We learned a lot of things. We know that we are able to keep our composure throughout the games like this, so I'm happy. Now, in terms of being happy, your first ever Katowice and you're one game away from making the Spodek as a Polish in-game leader. What does it mean for you personally? Yeah, it means, uh, it means a lot. I mean, like, 10 years ago, I was sitting at home watching with my brother, and now I'm suddenly here taking part in the tournament, so it definitely means a lot. And in terms of that, you're facing another Polish legend who's won here, right? And he's done this all before in Snacks. Is it like a movie story that you need to take down another Polish legend in order to try and take this spot? I mean, come on, it's been 10 years, Snacks. Like, you, you got to retire at this point. It was 10 years ago you were played here, and now you're back. Like, what are you doing? You going to retire him then? Of course. Oh, fighting words, confident as ever. Let's see if Mouse can get it done. A little bit of heat there at the end. A little bit of spice coming out from the young whippersnapper. Trying to take down the legend, trying to retire him. That's a little fire. 
I love that. I love that Shuhei just he has the media presence and experience mm. to know how to talk a little bit of trash, but not be disrespectful. Obviously, he's looked at the VP, yeah, that that golden lineup and what they were able to accomplish for the Polish scene. So I'm sure he actually really reveres him. I guess it's the equivalent of Hooks saying to Kerrigan, "Bro, let me shine. Let me get the space. Let me take the oh, what the Danish scene is the the current best IGL." It, it's actually kind of fun because last year those two guys were here not to compete at IEM Katowice, but actually to attend the HLTV live event, mm. and they were talking about the Polish scene and they were specifically asked how do you save Polish CS and well now we've got one of them guaranteed for the Spodek we've got Ents making waves we had Rebels being the surprise of the tournament Polish CS has not looked better in a very very long time beyond that you obviously have Neo the coach of FaZe Polish legend you have Taz the coach of G2 another Polish legend there's almost it, like it went from not enough to maybe too many do I dare say that no if, you well, don't in say Poland? that okay, no, 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 not, not in Katowice there's a good amount not in Katowice okay alright we'll give us more Give us more. Uh, but let's talk about Miles, right? This is a team that maybe had a little bit of a shakier start here, but uh, now they're starting to find their form. What do we think of this Miles roster right now? Um, I think they, they lack the confidence to be a potential top team, but I think they need that experience together and kind of build it as a team. I think we saw it beforehand with Mouse with Frozen, that he was like that safe anchor that would always deliver on the server, regardless of who they met. Now they have Brolin, who needs to build his confidence up again. He's a very well-known rifler, but for the past couple of years, he's not been the same, and it's definitely a downgrade from Frozen. We can't deny that. But the rest of the players have this amount of experience now, so they need to step up. Brolin is leading in the server. We do see a lot of great talent there on Maus in Exertion, their entry fragger, Yimpat, another stable anchor for them, and Brolin himself, who I feel like they're trying to build him up to be the star player. They're trying to make sure that he's able to get his own in a lot of these matchups, but it's been a little bit inconsistent. In, in the Cloud9 game, he had one horrible map and then two very good maps. And so we're kind of, it's a day to day thing right now with Brolin and his comfort with the roster. On the other hand, we do see a Maus team that, hey, the other four of them actually just won ESL Pro League get kind of towards the tail end of last year. So they know what it's like to take victory, but never really in a stadium. And one thing I spoke with the coach about is that he said that we in the Academy Project have taken even younger players now because we believe so much in the current roster. Like all these players are around 20 to 24 and it just builds up for the future a lot and they don't need those guys from the Academy Project for the next couple of years. So it's a really smart approach from the guys over at Maus and I think it's an undervalued thing that other organizations could learn from. Little investment in the future, a little uh, comfort in the present for sure. I mean, the future is the present for them. But let's shift focus towards an older team, a team with more experience, a team with a legend who won here a decade ago. We've already talked about it. Let's talk about Gamer Legion. Snacks at the helm. He has that team looking incredible. Yes, the difference in Gamer Legion's play from, I want to say, two months ago when they were first playing with Snacks to now is a stark contrast. I have a single round I really want to show between Gamer Legion yesterday when they played against Monty that's showing that they went back to the drawing board. They're not just going for set pieces out of spawn. They have all these little ways to try to play counter to what opponents are doing. So what we're seeing in this round is Gamer Legion are moving into the B bomb site in a 3v4 deficit right now. And what we're going to see is that with 25 seconds left on the clock we see this smoke deployed by the Monty side and this is usually at least kind of in the old like in CSGO this would basically spell doom but Snacks is right there ready to throw the counter utility necessary in order to get his teammates through this because you can nade smokes open you can break them in CS2 Gamer Legion, they have embraced that. They nade that smoke. They flash right behind it. Kios and Isaac are able to storm the bomb site. And what was looking like a dire situation is now a round win for Gamer Legion. And one thing I love about that clip that none of this is a lineup. Like, you know, unexperienced players, they kind of need, oh, I can't do that smoke. I don't know. Snacks is just kind of, hmm, I kind of know where this is. Froze it. And the all the flashes and the nades is a perfectly lined up. It's it, for some reason you need a lot of experience. I remember playing with Glaive back in the day. He was so good of saying like, uh, "Oh, I'll just throw a perfect puff flash for you," even though he's never practiced it before. I love it. I love it. That experience being rewarded. But uh, we do also have some words from the legend himself to hear about how he's feeling ahead of this game. Let's check him with snacks. Katowice and snacks. There's many special memories here. But snacks, I want to ask you a little trip down memory lane. Nearly a decade ago was the last time you were competing in the sport, like eight years ago for that when you stepped inside it. Can you remember what it feels like to walk in there? Uh, if you mean about 2014 when we won, like, uh, yeah, it was, the, the, the feeling was really great. I, I remember, like, music coming up, it was, like, pumping you up in, you know, so it was actually really great. Um, 
feeling inside of me. And but I remember when I just sit at the, the PC, like everything closed for me. I didn't hear a crowd. That, I didn't focus that, that that much at crowd when I was playing. Obviously, I heard them in the moments, like especially at the beginning. I think uh, after the, like pistol run start, I remember I think Pasha killed Getray on mid, and then I, I I heard like all of the crowd just started to shout, you know, every kill. Yeah. So yeah, the, the feeling was great, obviously. And your eyes are lighting up. You look happy when you're yeah. talking about these memories. And you're one game away from making this happen again. Extra motivated today? Uh, I think I'm coming with the same mindset as I do at the Katowice Plain. I just want to, to win, obviously. The, the great achievement would be to, to come again after 10 years to play again on the, on the station Katowice. It would be so nice, obviously. Uh, I, would, I would like to see again or just play in front of the, the Polish crowd. They're awesome. So, yeah, it would be great. Uh, I wouldn't say it's my dream, but obviously it's close there. I, was, I just like everything. Like, and maybe that's a bad, bad thing what I said. Like for me, it's more like I just want to, to compete. I just want to play on stage everywhere I can. Uh, I would just say like, if I can go in, in, in Spodek inside of it, then it's gonna be really good. And look at that face. He's ready for it. Let's see if they can get it. Ready for it indeed. All smiles there as you can see the thought entering the mind of what lies just on the other side potentially of this best of three. Uh, a legendary IGL, but uh, let's focus on someone else in this team as well, Bubski. You wanted to highlight Isaac. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about Isaac. I think people, when they mention Isaac, they go on HLTV and ZC that rating, and I think it's around 96. 096 and they'd be like wow this guy's some ass but he's actually really <laughs> a real good player for some reason people don't really value what he brings to the table like looking him at the monster position generally like he is one of the better one at positioning himself obviously there's better aimers out there but when it comes to playing himself and just playing uh, these hard positions like rubs he does it in a different way he doesn't do it with the aim necessarily he do it with the way he moves around i think he's a very un undervalued aspect of this team and i would love to see him bring even more to the table yeah, it definitely feels like a player that is probably kind of rising the ranks in terms of people were valuing higher and higher as supports because you can never really just look at a support player and say, oh, based off of rating alone, he's good or bad. It's more like, is he making sure that the floor of the team is high enough, even with a poor rating? Because he's not really set up for the frags. He's got to do it all on his own. And he's part of that solid core, right? The connective tissue be between the old Gamer Legion that made that run at the Major and now this current iteration. When you're talking about Kios, you're talking about Isaac, you're talking about Acor, they were the ones who were with Shuei. They're the ones with snacks now and they're the ones that continue to just have these surprising results. We have the vetoes here. Any surprising results we should expect in these? I feel like Gamer Legion will probably want to go for Overpass again. Mm. Yeah, we also just saw Isaac with the, the comfort of him playing B. The only thing is that they're potentially going to start on the T side. I remember they want to play a lot of entry strat and they're also going to go for it. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. There are also a lot of demos to look at from Mouse's side so they can be prepared for the CT side. And we get the Ancient pick out of Mouse. This was actually, it was, I felt like it was either going to be Mirage or Ancient, but the thing is that because these teams both had the same perma veto of Anubis, we actually see in the game of Chicken that Mouse were the ones that ended up banning Anubis. And actually, because of that, there's a slight veto advantage for me in terms of Gamer Legion, just because they were the ones that decided they wanted to ban one of Mouse's best picks in Mirage, and they wanted to yeah. see, does Mouse actually does that, did they go for it? And they didn't. They just banned off Anubis. Yeah. And from a player perspective, from going back in the days, like it's always the bigger team will always fall out. Like they will take the chicken roll and just, okay, we ban our normal map and then let the other guys get a little bit of advantage. Because when you feel like you're the better team, you don't want to gamble on sitting after the game and be like, guys, why did we freaking end up at Anubis? Because yep. we tried to gamble. Like they should be better on paper and therefore they're not going to gamble on. Now let's take the conversation in a different direction, right? Because there's one aspect about this duel that we haven't touched on yet. That's one of the classic head-to-heads we think of in mm. Counter-Strike. It's the Alpers in the server. Acor has been on something of a tear here in Katowice. Yeah, he is Mr. Inconsistent, but when he's on his good games, he is one of the best. I think he's the second best Orba in Denmark when he hits his peak. I think there's no debate. I think Nikodos is trying to catch up to him in some aspect, but I think he's kind of undervalued. When you look at what he's done for this Game of Legion project, it went from something where you kind of didn't think about it too much, and now all of a sudden he sits here and it's almost a 50-50 game against Maus. I think it shows what he brings to the table. He's been the second highest rated player of the group so far. Only one series, but you know, it's still impressive when you're above names like Donk and just below Amonese. And he's also a very emotional type of guy. I, I used to play with him in Mad Lions. I also think he was praised as one of the biggest talents in Denmark back then. So he brings a lot of firepower, but the only thing with him is that he has that mindset of, or if he doesn't sit right or if the PC is lagging a little bit, he will start complaining. And I also spoke with the coach and he said like, damn, he's still like that. But it doesn't really change me for for why he would potentially have a bad game, because I think he's learned so much over the years that he will need to change in order to take that next step. Now, thinking about the other side of things, right? Torji, what are we making of Torji at this event? 
Torji, I... In their game, actually, yesterday against Cloud9, it took him and the team so long to actually get him the AWP. Like, they didn't manage their money well enough for him to have it. So I can't really grade his performance with that weapon right now because he just didn't have it as much as I would have wanted for him to. But I will say, I want maybe three months ago, I probably would have had Torzi as the slight favorite in this kind of matchup. Well, so far at this event, it has been hands down Acor, so they, he should be winning the AWP duels more times than not. And I also think he is the one that needs to step up. If Maus wants to be a consistent top 5 team, he is the one I am personally looking at to take that next step because I think Gimpad, Surgeon and Brolin all bring something to the table and Sui is an exceptionally well-talented uh, IGL considering his age. So it's really only Torsi from my point of view who needs to take that initial step. Well, we'll see if he can take that step. We'll see if the crosshairs can be in the right place. But I know two guys who've always got their crosshairs in the right place and their words in the right place as well. It's Harry and Hugo. Take it away, boys. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, a banger of a match up here in Game Allegiant versus Maus as new gets ready to meet old in the clash of these Polish captains. One thing is for certain, it's all on the line for someone like Snacks, who 10 years ago here in Katowice was able to lift this trophy, earned his spot as a legend in the Hall of Heroes. It's one hell of an opportunity. There's a lot of history, though, talking of it between these teams, between these players, between these organizations, even. Yeah, it's not just Young v. Old, it's not just Pole v. Pole, and both captains of that, right? It's even Shui against his former team, uh, you know, now taking on Gamer Legion, who he dragged to a major final with some real talent inside of that roster, got picked apart. We were ready to write Gamer Legion off, and they've come into another season with a string of strong results, taking down VP in the play-in, and as well as Monty yesterday. You know, this side of the bracket, Harry, you could have made cases for anyone winning, but it feels poetic that the Poles are in pole position for the Spodek into a pistol round now in a series that feels destined to go three maps. It's a strong one for Gamer Legion. They're going to come running out long, and the latest edition of Brolin is dropped immediately. Yeah, his death is not entirely in vain. It's a lot of info on the back of five players getting spotted out through the long side. And look at the adjustment this has triggered for Maus. They start bringing bodies up towards this top site immediately, even taking real estate down towards short of B and in the connector. Torshi, backstab looking to come in. But one thing we've been crediting Snacks for throughout this entire event is his read of the game and his ability to outposition his opponents. And this round is such a good example of that. He's got this one on a silver platter. Great knowledge as to what seeing five players on the long side is going to do to the opposition setup. He was in anticipating aggression and he gets given it a five on three secured for Gamer Legion. Yeah, not even five months in this team for Snacks, but we really have been enamored by not just his individual performance, but his leading as well. Some great T-side rounds, but talk of talent and a young man enters the round. Yimpat back from the long side, taps Kios out. That will force Gamer Legion to reposition and they're going to go down connector. Mal's right now have gambled on upper. This is a freebie bomb site for the Legion. Yeah, they're just going to move in entirely uncontested here. And even though these rotates are starting to shuffle on down, that bomb plant is guaranteed for Gamer Legion to play around with. A man down in the retake. No kit either. So time is of the essence for Maus here. Flashed in for a peek. They try to swing and thin out the herd. Maus all amassed over towards CT. Snacks here to make contact from out behind the pillar. Now plays his hand with those dual Berettas. Oh. He charges them down. And so it's a big opener from the Polish legend. Snacks, three kills in the pistol and some great reads to get him there from shutting down that flank through the back lines to then calling perfectly down to an empty B site. He makes it look all too easy. I oh, just you can't you can't not be enjoying seeing this guy back in the server, especially with the amount of old legendary uh, Virtus Pro players that are here at Katowice and making runs as well. Mm. Taz behind uh, G2, Neo already in the spot behind Phase, Cuban as well. Of course, now eliminated behind Apex, but here nonetheless, Gamer Legion. Oh, Vault doesn't know it, but they're running his way. He might hear the steps now. Pitter patter of pistols coming around the corner. He's got to just take as many as he can. But one by one, delivering two kills and trying to stand still. Torshi hits him. It doesn't matter. It's a gun given, but it's a round lost by Maus as Gamer Legion amass over the B bomb site. It's a worthy trade. 
See that got a little saved on for later, and Mal's playing bodyguard. Yeah, that's something that the desk talked about and kind of linking back into the, the history angle. Obviously, you've got Acor in the server for Gamer Legion, but he did have that stint within Maus, and when he was dropped from the team, it was to make way for, for this you know, new look Maus squad where they kind of promoted all those NXT players and, and started to gradually take over the uh, the Maus main team. Yeah, Torshi was his direct replacement, and you know, for, for a while it felt like Torshi couldn't hit high heights in big games, but then we had the, the biggest roster change for Maus post-major, which was Dexter out and Shui in and right off the bat we saw Torshi freed up he spoke heavily in interviews about how he felt he had more room to play his own game with Shui as his captain his old uh, academy captain and we definitely saw those performances I like what Maui said on the desk about how if this was three months ago I would say you know Torshi is the favorite he did have some great games uh, debuting with Shui in the roster but this tournament, Acor, has been red hot and it's on overpass, especially on those CT sides. So we'll see that later. But now it's just rifles v rifles as Brolin takes middle. Yeah, aggro play from Brolin. Oh, nice. Smoke blowing open. Lovely way to set him up on the aggression. He hears them jumping and he calls for that nade. And Brolin is rewarded. Also an interesting player, someone kind of trying to set the record straight, it feels like, on, on his status yes. within Counter-Strike. Always had, you know, boatloads of potential. Had some high-flying times towards, I don't, I don't want to say the tail years end ago. of CS. Yeah, yeah years, years ago, ago now. His recent... It was when he kind of went into that nip squad that things took a, a real downward spiral, it felt like. I mean, playing for that nip, or, nip org has killed many careers, it feels like. Uh, but being free of that, we've seen some great games from Brolin as of late, especially against Cloud9 yesterday. Some crucial rounds won. Ooh, I think he saw one. If he saw him, it was the bomb, and Snacks gets dropped on the approach. Yeah, another kill for Brolin in the round, and here's the backstab from Exertion. Going to deal with Kios. Bomb plant coming in. Isaac's going to plug in those numbers, but in a 2v5, now wow. 1v5. Isaac just about trying to do some damage, and Maus won't let him do that. Lovely round from Brolin, who is involved from the word go and even slows down that play in towards A, just thinning the numbers, making life very easy for this Maus team. Yeah, this is a series of map vetoes, right? In, in terms of uh, both teams should win their pick and we should be, in theory, ending it uh, on the decider. But if we, you know, if, if Maus come in as the favorite and take away overpass, they are poised so well for that 2-0, just given the results recently. Although, the flip side to that is, despite, as we said, in that Gamer Legion game on Ancient against Monty, that they'd lost it seven out of eight times since mm. Snacks joined the team. They broke that streak. They got back in with a win, and they looked really good. So you know, if there's any, if there's e ever a time to yeah. break the curse, it would be now. Oh, not able to escape this time. They flash through the smoke. They get that trade. Torshi aggresses on long. It's a hyper fast round for Gamer Legion coming up connector. And any regression will be punished, you hope. Oh, yeah, lovely from Kios. Deals with one of these players down at B. And at this point, Gamer Legion, they've got a bounty, a treasure trove of info to play with. Isaac is making moves because of it. Bomb. Taking all this space over towards a, yeah, the bomb being in the back lines could prove to be problematic. A lot of this now kind of waits on Isaac for him to make his move, for him to make his play, and he goes hunting down here towards B. He's made the perfect play as well. He doesn't even need to move out of heaven. The danger is he won't see a B player, but that could convince him that he's right, that Yimpat's holding this angle, a very passive player, the young Finn. And he's read the situation right, but it still may leave him lacking if, his t if Snacks just runs into B and gets that bomb plant, especially if it's open as well. Scared of the short side from that early aggression. Yimpat goes back. Isaac will be set up to win the round with the bomb. Denied by Impact. Great position. Isaac now in a world of hurt has to make noise. Yeah, Impact played this very well. Uproots the entire round by executing snacks. And Isaac can have nades raining down upon him. One more from the heavens should seal oh his fate. My. And yeah, beautiful util there from the Mouse squad. Two kills for Torshi, two for Yimmy as well. And he does play that well, man. They knew about him down towards B, but Isaac doesn't want to go hunting, doesn't want to give up that kind of advantage of having a player deep behind enemy lines. It's Snacks trying to tee him up with that plant. 
hoping that the impact's moved out of there or isn't going to take the swing, isn't going to take the bait, calls his bluff and lives to regret it. I do how, I love how much we're seeing the success of players coming from academy teams, you know, orgs investing in uh, young potential, you know, players uh, at times too young to even play the main circuit of Counter-Strike. And Mal's are obviously the go-to team when you think about those academy upgrades and how well they've done, the impact being the latest addition. But Spirit as well, obviously with a huge talking point, having, you know, Zontix and uh, Donk in this main event as well. Brolin spots the entourage of T's coming up long. He's going to retreat. But it's all a fake out for Gamer Legion. They sh show the bomb long. I mean, you know, even in some very abstract way, you could say like Brolin before the Academy teams really w I existed, he came through like a, a mind melting path through that, what was it called? Gamers like reality oh, show. Ga yeah, Gamers 8? No, no, no. sorry. Um, ga gamers, gamers with a Z. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's the one. Of course, in... Uh, in Sweden, yes. It's like the big brother of Counter-Strike. Picked up a win there. That's what he says, mate. Oh, flash through, hang on a second. Impact only good for one. Gonna try and make this B-pop work, a game of Legion. They still have Acor floating around the connector to try and thin out rotations. It's Exertion set up over on the short side that looks to reel this round back in for Maus. Roland falls, convincing kill out of snags to try soften up this B site, but there is exertion getting activated and snuffing out this take. Acor has timing on this player out through Com, but armed with the scout, not the oh, weapon of choice, the and they're looking his way on the reload. Things go from bad to worse here as Isaac is dealt with, and Acor left as the last man standing. He's getting given nothing as well. Torsi's creeping in for the kill as the snipers clash. Torsi has the, certainly a better weapon and a better shot. He's going to find that round for Maus. Lock it in. 3k from Zershan on the short side. Looking very nice as well. Maus coming in confident to this game with three rifle rounds in a row off, off the back of their first buy. Game of Legion. Definitely a team to watch out for on overpass. Been upsetting some of the best. But Mouths, they've been put through their paces already in just one game yeah. here at Katowice against Cloud9, went the full distance, went to overtimes and then some last night. Yeah, one thing I want to keep an eye on is Acor, right? Uh, he's not been immune to slow starts in a series and then often looks to build in a little bit later. But if he's put on the back foot too heavily and you don't get to really see that AWP come out, that could be a problem for Gamer Legion. Synergy for Maus is at an all-time high right now. The way they're flashing these plays and, you know, breaking the smokes together, taking this mid control. It feels like Gamer Legion can't even get comfortable in you know, relatively safe map control. A blind shot for Brolin. Akel will overwhelm him with the Deagle and get that upgrade. But Torshi still has this position. He has nade and he has support coming in from the back line. Got to turn around now. Shui will adopt this smoke hold and can flank these two guns in middle. If they don't hurry up and chase down Torshi, Shui kills them both. That's exactly what happens. Four rounds for Maus now. They're starting to run away with things. They've got a rebuy for Gamer Legion. They've got to start soon. Yeah, and one of the things we're already getting a real taste of is, as to why this game is so exciting in terms of the play styles is these are two, like, very mobile teams, right? I mean, look at where all the fights are going down in this round, right? You've got players pushing up through Con, and it's all kind of this fight for the mid control. Snacks has already kind of proven himself to be someone who likes to try and get in the heads of his opponent, likes to try and outread them, but Maus are more than willing to meet you there. Hell, even when we've had guys like Exertion on the cast, he's kind of showing through the way he talks and his philosophy of the game that he likes all this pushing and prodding for info. He feels it's very important to how Mao's play. And it's also very you know, CS2, isn't it? We see so much more control getting taken, so many more buddy system pushes in mid rounds as well. It feels like you can't sit back and rely on your anchors to necessarily get these massive two, 3K holds anymore. You've got to be mobile. You've got to be active. And Shui is the embodiment of that, finding Isaac down in the connector. A 5v4 for Mao's and... Game of Legion lose all control, all information. Their backline could be open. The bottom could be under the control of Maus. Sure, he will hold on. But it's that paranoia with a minute left on the clock that Game of Legion have to contend with.
Yeah, for Gamer Legion, this is kind of their round to try and regain a bit of momentum here, but what not off to a good in. start. And Mao is making more mid-round moves. Yeah. It is Exertion and Brolin grouping over in the toilets, looking to creep bomb. out mid, and that's the bomb getting away from Gamer Legion. No chance at a trade here, not yet anyhow. Snacks is in a good position to do it, but oh. missed on the spray and immediately pays the price. Brolin overwhelms him. Exertion, the bait and switch between these two. Only Brolin actually spotted in the toilets, and that works wonders for Maus, who take their fifth in a row, quite the streak already under their belts. And with Game Allegiant, the money running dry, they're looking to keep streaking these rounds together, are the Maus squad. That has to feel so constricting for Game Allegiant. You can never get comfortable in that round. The whole time, Shui is in the back of your mind, but as the bomb gets dropped, Snacks has the perfect position. The fact that he's up long with 25 seconds, sure, he let his teammate die with the bomb, that's a bit awkward. Awkward, but he has a position to win the round and he can't even get a kill off of it. And like you said, only information on one of the two toilets players. Gamer Legion just don't know where to look. They're getting prodded from every position. That's a flawless gun round for Maus. They are looking ripe for the spot egg to start this series. There's no way I'm going to count Gamer Legion out though with the results we've seen from this roster as of late, proving that they weren't just a result of Shui's leading and Ema's fragging at a major high performance near to an MVP. And this was even the team that at the start of CS2 took down FaZe in that BO1 opener at Sydney before FaZe went on their miraculous three event run. Gamer Legion, they've made it into short, battered and bruised by the utility they're gonna pop. In they come. Shui secures that opener on the first pistol in, and Snacks will get collapsed upon out through Monster. Kill out of Acor is nice, but it's not gonna open up the door into this B site. Torshi's already dropped on in with the AWP. And he just holds this line. Exertion always a threat on the other side of Monster, just keeping the attention home did on him with a couple of spams off from the AK. Oof. Takes one of the dome, but that's where the AWP is there to bail him out. And so it's a lovely little kind of bait and switch set up between the two of them. You try to reel them in with the promise of a kill to exertion. And you send them packing on that AWP. So the fast beat is repelled by Maus as they take six in a row now. This CT side is rapidly getting out of control. Yeah. And for Gamer Legion, this is a big problem. We're finally going to get to see another AWP out for Acor. Uh, it feels like we haven't had a weak player starting for Maus. Obviously, it's the benefit of beginning on CT Overpass, especially for that all head to head that you're talking about. The Acor, in theory, is favored in, but he has the harder job on T side Overpass. And yet, everyone's had their moments. A big 3K there for Zershin on the B bomb site. 6 to 2. Gamer Legion forcing to smoke the Molly, making their presence clear in middle. We have that head to head, and it's coming up for Acor. Vault even found Brolin in middle as well, but they should be ready for a third. There's always been three starting mid for Maus. Sershin down in the connector, and even Shui on long. Gamer Legion just staying grouped is the key here. They're going to hold off for a little bit and see if Maus want to throw anything their way. Here's another example of these nice mid-round moves from Maus, right? There's this immediate grouping up towards mid. They want to try and stake their claim Ooh. here and now to this no mid way. control, and they do it. They battle back for the three-on-three. Three. Shui's even ready for the wraparound long. Snacks will get the drop on him, but there's another man here ready to take it home oh as they chase down the bomb out in mid. It is all left to Kios. This one is flipped on its head quickly, and it's thanks to Maus making that decision to group and fight for the mid control. They use their limited numbers to battle back together, pull all their resources into one place, and it works wonders. And then they go, have the bomb. We don't care. We're 2v1. Whatever we do, we're going to do it together in the same site, and you're going to have to get through us both. Zershin is still rooting through toilet, but he might even hear these footsteps up long. Kios is making a run for it with 30 seconds yet to get that information. He'll miss it. He will miss it. But the impact is back in the bomb site, and Zershin's coming his way. As I said, they want a group. They want to play it together. 
And they have now got the information. heard that one step, that one extra step out of Kios, and that is one step too far as he's looking to get locked out. Both players there. He'll even see that in the death cam as the ultimate middle finger. Mao's really were just one step ahead. Back to back three Ks for Zershan. That's a three on five into a 2v4, and Mao's win both disadvantages. That's a sick round. And Game Legion, they stay grouped, but Mao's, uh, like you said, that early rotation back up A, they put everyone on front side, on top side rather and they just completely shred Gamer Legion before they can even make a call. Wow, Mal's are looking red hot right now. Looking like they want another run here. A team that is so easy to underrate when you consider they don't have this, you know, legendary experienced player that so many of the top rosters do. It's all young guns and they're shooting hard. We have Tech Nines and loads of Util. Plenty for an execute here for Gamer Legion. They need to show us something here because other than the first two rounds of the game, it's Mal's on a hot streak. I mean, if you win the, the pistol, stick the landing on the conversion, and then that's it on your half, that is just a gut-wrenching feeling all across the board. Look at him go. Shui has not cared and not waited in any of these rounds yet. Could get punished for this. There's a second player in at the barrels to try oh. and swing and deal with him. They do have him boxed in right now, and so they're able to overrun Shui at least. But it's not without cost. A lot of damage done to both Acor and Snacks in that fight. Great move for Jimmy. Grabbing that gun out of there. You can see Snacks is doing oh, the same thing. he's trying thing. to grab it he right now, it. but it's not there. He's thinking the E-key is broken, but it isn't. They've gone ahead and retrieved that gun already. So smart. What have we got now? Two flashes on Acor. Pop you through Monster. Yimpat might even see these flashes coming, and even if he doesn't, Zershan has been the madman oh, on the B site. That's all the, all the util, util really. that's the bomb, and that's any hope of Gamer Legion winning this round. Yeah, try to flash themselves out, but Yimpat doesn't let them in, and now there's the re-smoke for insult to injury. That locks them out of even exploding through, and so this one just slows to a crawl with no time left, Gamer Legion. They're left hoping and praying for a serious misstep from Mao's. That's smoke. And that's not going to happen. You've got no choice but to go through this. And when they do, Mao's are ready to receive. It is a clean shutdown from the Mao squad. Still yet to drop around since the rifles made their first appearance. Very impressive. And it's the way they're doing it as well, right? Not just the disadvantage, uh, disadvantageous rounds, but the non-stop aggression from the captain of Mal's. He's always finding these openings. He's always getting behind Gamer Legion. He's 3-0 and in opening duels so far. Pushing connector, pushing through monster. Just disrupting the rounds. Not letting Gamer Legion do what they want. Another orb for Acor. And this time, actually, a missed molly in middle for Mal's. They won't try and take it, though. They just trust in the AWP. Torshi sat back toilets. And we have a 4B stack. This is a read for Mal's trying to predict a fast execute. We know Gamer Legion have some nice B pops on this map, but they won't use them. They feel like they haven't even able to, been able to play their defaults properly with how disrupting Mal's have been. So they clear connector, they take middle, all, all looking like a nice start to a round for Gamer Legion. They've got plenty of control here. You know, Mao's won't hold steady for long. They will look to make moves here. And Shui's trying to make one right now, but caught on an awkward timing. He's pincered between Kios and Snacks. Even the heads up play to get out of there for Yimfa. He doesn't commit to the fight. He knows he's solo B. He must survive. He has no blocking utility. Zershan's come down with a Molotov, and it will be required. Game of Legion is still too strong over here on A. So if Fault and Co are going to try and sell this as a fake, they have to get away with something, you feel like, with that kill not coming through. 
That's going to leave Snacks up here alone. He's lobbing in util, but this B play has got to begin in like the next few seconds, or else there won't be time. And Maus don't buy it. They don't buy this exec. They keep three strong oh. down on B. Hell of a read and hell of a play out of Exertion, who continues this strong showing on the rifle. Two kills from him and cleanly done. He even goes out for more. And this B play is cut down. Maus never take the bait. They call Snacks' bluff. And they look all the better for it. Right now, Shui is in their heads, man. Yeah. He is masterfully out calling Gamer Legion. And what a cool story that is, right? Obviously, for this young Polish captain, you're up against Snacks for a, for a shot in the spot egg. That doesn't happen every day. And, you know, 10 years ago when Snacks was here lifting the trophy, little Camel on the other side, he would have been, what, 11 years old mm. watching that from home. And here he is playing him for that spot in the spot deck, and he's showing them up. Showing no mercy. Another aggressive round for Shui. This time it is punished. We have a classic Game Elysian pace into the B bomb site. The smokes are down. They go right through, but they still miss. They still whiff. So does everyone. Zershan finally looks mortal in the pit, and the spam comes through for Acor. Finally, something to sit on if you're Game Elysian, but don't count Maus out of a disadvantageous round. A two on four. Of course, he won't stop that plant. It gets put in, and he's trapped out on short side. Flanking monster would be the death of him. It's up to Brolin in this one. I mean, the freedom in this scoreline, the freedom of having this much money is you can attempt rounds like this. Snacks with the backstab, gets that one for free. Torshi's not ready for it. And that leaves just nice. Brolin to get swung on. Three rounds is all Gamer Legion managed. They get the last in the half. Other than that, it's Maus all damn day with exertion storming the board.
A Mao's masterclass on that CT side sees them with a huge lead. A blinder of a game called from Shui so far. And with Exertion topping the charts at 15 and 4, often good for multi kills where it feels like one would have been enough. This Maus team is rapidly running away with Overpass, and for Gamer Legion, the alarm bells are sounding. They've got a huge deficit to make up here. Yeah, part of the danger of this MR12 change has been players not getting orbs in as early as they want or as soon as the half ends. Acor had a couple in there. He won't even want a head to head to Torshi. He's the top performer, but it felt like a non factor on T side. The half was over just like that. We need Gamer Legion to win a pistol if they're going to have any hope in maintaining a comeback here in their map pick. And the aforementioned man headshot immediately in middle has to retreat. We do have Gamer Legion making a hefty stack on this top site. They've read it well, but that's information for Zershan. He sees three players in A and they'll dart back down to Brolin at B. The fact they've already dealed out two dinks as well is, is wild. You really softened up Gamer Legion. They do lose Brolin on his attempt to fast play out through B. Torshi still floating oh. around in the toilets. His deleted snacks in oh. with the backstab, but a little too quick and Zershan a little too ready. He will get that trade. Now there will be. It's back and forth. It's, you know, pulling at the wires here for Mal's. They don't know which way to go. Torshi called he had a kill, but Snack's great awareness as always, even if he does push the boat out just that little bit too far. Snack's likes his team to be very mobile, right? We've seen that across their games so far, but this one, it's that mixed with being a little antsy, right? Rotating down towards lower. They really don't want this pistol round to get away from them. I like how Miles are really dragging this out to get everything they can, but they've got to commit, they've got to pick, and they pick the wrong site. Here it is, the big man. Looking to try reel them in a little bit from his long push exertion. Stellar performance thus far. And with him still in this, there might be a chance for the Mouse squad in spite of this there. stack. One more man in at the truck. Exertion looks aware, but eventually this bomb's going to go down and he'll get caught from bank. The plant is denied. And so Gamer Legion at least lock in a pistol and no bonus money for Mouse to play with. Yeah, team Ace, everyone pulls their part for Gamer Legion. A requirement was that round, and that comes off of Snax's call, cool, even though he you know, rotates too far down to B when Mao's actually stalled it out. Uh, you know, the call comes in to stack up. Uh, it's a 50-50 split and Gamer Legion land it right. Mao's go into the stack and now we have the chance for Gamer Legion to actually play their favorite side in CS. It's CT overpass. Mao's going to make this one quick and easy with a monster setup on full Glocks. Oh, didn't spot the bomb there either. But it's still an early rotation. Acor's taken middle. They come running and Kios gunning, making his score just that little bit prettier. And Gamer Legion do it with ease up to five. And the half begins now for Maus. Shui must call something to take down his former team. Yeah, I'm really curious what Chewie cooks up here, right? He he wants to keep Exertion switched on. He wants to keep him playing like this. So they're gonna put a good bit of attention on trying to trying to tee him up for success. Some nice deep mid util. Now as well go through it. They smoke two mollies already in this round. So they've burned a lot of utility in the opening stages. Four strong on lower in case Mal's go rushing. They're being methodical. Con Molly clearing it out. Delayed in middle. And as you can see at 120, two smokes, two flashes are all Mal's remain with in this rifle round. Gamer Legion are the opposite. They've done very well to hold on to their utility. Kind of need hero plays right now. Roland tries to offer it up. Snacks caught on the spam. It's good damage. But Mal's need to be deadlier than that. Certainly not a bad way for it to start, though, out of your kind of solo B point man in Brolin, at least keeping a lot of pressure on. If he can find oh. Isaac here, that is a blinder. He's done all he had to do in this round as Brolin. Damage onto Snacks and a kill onto Isaac, and immediately the pressure is on for Gamer Legion. Yeah, you might even be willing to make a gamble here if you're GL, and they will. 
Initially moving up to A, but pop through the smoke. The timing's thrown astray for Gamer Legion. They don't know what to think. They don't know where to look. Blinded oh. is Kios. is a good grenade in response, but still Mouse have pulled a wall over the Gamer Legion eyes as they rotate back up top after Brolin's fake. Yeah, wow. Great round from yeah. Brolin. I mean, this whole round, this 10th is delivered on his back solely. Set up with that flash for the second kill out through Monster. And now they've nice. just got to hold on in the post plan. And with that kill, you've locked it in. You've run away with it. What a what a call for Shui to put that in your first gun round. Think about how little util Mouse had at 120. Two smokes, two flashes. That's not exactly double fake util. And they show B. They delay, they recommit through the monster smoke, catching Kios, and then Gamer Legion, who were 3A, by the way, who made the right call, drop all down lower because they've lost another player, and then Mal's run up with 15 seconds into A. If anything goes wrong, that round looks silly, but it's a beautiful call. And it finds Mal's 10 rounds, and surely if you're Gamer Legion, you're slamming your desk after that one. If only you'd gone with your gut. Brolin playing out of his mind, right? As we mentioned earlier, wasted away, wasting away on Nip, as many Swedes have. And we wondered if he would ever return to the form, to the potential that he was always meant to have. But here in Mao's, it's looking like a different player entirely. Definitely a good vibe in this team. That's always been something we've said about Mao's. Whoa, Bro Ooh, Brolin's a little too switched on. <laughs> Damage to Shui, but concealed in the smoke. A dink done back the other way. Wrestling what? with the AK. It's so awkward. Vault, luckily enough, gets out with that one. It shouldn't have been as challenging as it was. And so now the rest of Mao's look to other oh. players to take some space. And luckily enough, with the game exertions having, he's a prime candidate to do so. Another example here of Mao's having a good understanding of these mid-round reactions from Gamer Legion. You still have them floating around outside of B, waiting to see if Gamer Legion make any info plays here. Ooh, Torshi careful. just can't afford to be careless on this rotate in. They haven't had Monster for a while, but they do hold down short, and as both these players go walking in, the timing just awry, and so Yimpa is not considering it. Torshi's on for a backstab, and when you see that player... Those two. Now you know there's two. Going to deal with Snacks, takes that one kill while he's got it. That pulls Isaac back down towards the B side, but he's got his work cut out for him. Second man on his way in, out through short. Isaac down in water, swinging out, deals with exertion. Can he find Torshi? Oh, oh God, no. the bump pull. That was, that was an accident. Torshi cut down and dealt with as Isaac anchors B. Yeah, it's a slight mystery for Maus. I think Isaac's further away than he actually is, even though uh, Torshi's getting cover on the pit. They they thought he'd rotated out because they heard him running back. That's why he knows there are two players B. So, yeah, the cover's not great. And then, obviously, a bomb pull doesn't make things any easier. That whole round was a bit of a calamity for Maus. I mean, did we Getting promised... Roland, dinking his teammate. We promised two very mobile teams. I think that round showcases it better than any so far, right? They're, like, flanking each other on like a double layered flank they through don't even shore know. and no one's even aware. Madness. Yeah. That could have gone a lot worse for Gamer Legion. So they'll just, t they'll just take the round. They're just happy to be here right now. Stringing three out of four on the CT side. Starting strong on the second half. It's a good sign. We're still waiting for the Acor Orb. Money yet to be established here for Gamer Legion. A shame to see Exertion playing Deagle in this round, right? You can always make the argument that, oh, he's fine with the Deagle, but he has been not missing a beat all game, and he's had long picks in two rounds already on this T side. So I'd love to see him given an AK here. Shui's going to lead the charge. Exertion right behind, and Volt playing on the wood, waiting. Well, that's why you give him the Deagle, I guess. <laughs> Wow, it's not the AK, it's not the Galils, it's Exertion's Deagle to do it, to secure that opening. And with it now, the whole map goes dark for Gamer Legion. The info that they once had, all these footsteps up through the long side becomes a big question mark. They try to make some moves to gain some ground back. Exertion, not ready for this, but they're not oh ready for him. God. They walk right by each other. This isn't and good. Now Exertion, he doesn't know it. But he's a prime candidate to ruin this round. It goes both ways. He also doesn't know that they've taken these forward positions. This is better for Gamer Legion than anyone else. He's starting to consider it. But this is weird. 
Snacks has cleared out long. Oh, wait. Now he's going to go down Con. He's got oh. the backstab. He's got the backstab on Acor, who's just homed in. Tunnel visioned over it short. Oh, that one's free. And Exertion gets away with it on the Deeg. A second kill in this round. That pulls Gamer Legion really thin. They're really stringy right now. And considering that Snacks has taken all this info over towards long, Exertion selling the fake up through short. Oh. But now they spot the bomb. Isaac has made it all become clear to Gamer Legion. They've oh. got to start scrambling down a lower. But Isaac holds the line. 15 seconds and Isaac just keeps taking heads off. He's done this one solo and Torshi has no room to play. That one flips back on its head in an instant and it's all Isaac down towards that lower site. Yeah, that's a perfect example of everyone has a plan until they get hit in the face, right? Mal's have the perfect setup. They have the short control. They know where the majority of GL are, but Isaac just comes swinging on, a, on an unsmoked monster and finds three crucial headshots. What a play for Isaac. That looked like it was going very wrong for Gamer Legion there with Snacks flanking I mean, the wrong way yeah. on Long. That's the only way they win the round, basically. That's what was poised to Gamer Legion just then. It's like, Isaac, you better kill everyone. And so he goes, oh, that's what I have to do this round. And he does it. That's madness. Sick round for Isaac. Great to see someone else being bought into the fold here for Gamer Legion. And you know what they needed done? a couple of stars to kind of pick things up. And I already know where you're going to go with that as the next statement, Hugo. Cleanish look at this round, Harry. It's, we finally got an orb. Acors in toilets. And this is, yeah, this is the guy who can break the server. This is the guy who can change the game here for Gamer Legion. Miles cannot afford to get ahead of themselves with Acor orped up and ready. He's playing very safe. All the way back at the bomb site already. It might not matter for this round as Miles' pistols will explode into B. But it's something to keep in mind for later on. Zershan shows on top site lurking as usual. But this bomb again is going to get killed before anything else. If Snack stays on this boost... Oh, the jump again! That's disastrous, but he at least gets info. They know what's happening, and they've dropped the rifle at the front of the pack. Yeah, it's retrievable at least, and it is exertion to pick it up. Go on. You can never discount them. And while Exertion is still in the round, Isaac, Isaac another multi-kill over towards Monster, and that will seal the fate of this one. The gap is rapidly closing. Maus once thought like they were running away with this game. Since getting onto the T side, they've managed one round so far. The scoreline is closing up. Gamer Legion have started flowing again, and a couple of key players are rising to the occasion to keep them in this. Might just stave off Maus long enough yeah. for the rest of the gang to get switched online. We had that really nice first gun round for Maus where they pulled a fake out on B with Brolin's double entry and they hit A with 15 seconds. But other than that, it's looked all game of Legion. And now that we have more things installed like this orb, Maus definitely need to watch out for what game of Legion have on their map pick in this series. It's so great that we can even look at this game of Legion team and be ready for competition when they're on the back foot. We know this is a team that has great mentality, has great leadership, and the core of which has been to a major final. You know, once they lost Shui, once you had him at the part, it, it felt like, you know, this was almost like a, a dying project. You kind of yeah. lost like your brightest sparks, but funnily enough, exceeding expectation and Willing to battle back with new players stepping into those shoes. Certainly feels like a team that's more than the sum of its parts. Snacks down in connector, trapped by a Molotov, wins his fight. He's going to get Flash back in. That Flash misses the mark completely, but it doesn't matter when Volt comes swinging for the trade. Nice assistance for Gamer Legion, and they even bail Volt out, giving the escort back to B. He's going to be freed up to rotate and help out Acor if needed. Does leave only two players lower, but Isaac has not missed a beat on the anchor so far. And even Kios has come back from a two-kill first half. Mals have just flashes on Torshi. Pop them into B. Good info play for Kios. Buys a few more seconds. He's holding that smoke as well. Yeah, he, he's going to swing this. And they are too. Flash comes through. And he's ready to go. Has support here. 
Him and Isaac make quick work of it. It's only exertion left nice. standing and not for long. Cut down by the double B hold. It's really coming to its own here for the Gamer Legion CT side. Shadow advantage makes it so hard to get out of monster. That close wood position is, I feel, more potent than ever. That's why you need to see, you know, nades be used on this position. Uh, we saw some pressure being put on uh, by Cloud9 in the previous game towards this. But still, Gamer Legion continue to find defensive rounds, and Mal's are put back to pistols. And this is all the while the usual like power duo of Acor and Bolt haven't had to do a hell of a lot. Haven't gotten off to the best of starts, haven't really gotten activated yet. So just wait. It's gonna get better before it gets worse. That's certainly what it feels like for Gamer Legion. Shui truly tested now in this game because the rotates were smooth, his ankles were rocking on the first half. Well, now he's got a cool well above to take this win as Gamer Legion look ready to equalize the score on the favored half. You need another blinder from Exertion's the Eagle. He's putting himself on a very long angle, but you can feel like he's feeling the game, right? Yeah. He believes that he can open up with the oh, deep barrel. down through long. Barrel, oh, that's barrel? a long gun. He can see Hello? the barrel, but he's not. He's so, yeah. There we are, there we are, there we are. Oh, oh. baited in, and the AWP will find him. Now flicking back onto the toilet. Finally, we're getting that A-core round. Two kills from the AWP. No. Vault spotted over at long, but still makes quick work of that first and second player in. It's a now only Shuey. 1v3, bomb at his feet, but a man out at the truck. That tap, bait snacks into the peak, and he will deal with them. A tie game all of a sudden. Game of Legion roaring to life now. As that little partial buy is cut down without Game of Legion getting too stressed. They had protocols in place to deal with that every step of the way. Running out of time, Amaus, to come up with solutions to the Gamer Legion problem. With each round, Gamer Legion are getting more and more confident. Now that it's a tie game, they can afford to take a few more risks. They can play a little looser, a little faster in these rotates, and the freedom that comes with that, if your snacks, feels monumental. Yeah, immediately smoking that molly and taking sure water. It's typically T smoking the Molotov towards the B short, but. Gamer Legion want to fight for this real estate as well. And with door blown off, that's a lot of pressure on a player like Yimpat, who's been fairly neutered in this map. Brolin, once again, being the hero, opening up into Monster. He finds Isaac, huge scalp on that B site. They're going to go hunting for the orb. Can Torshi be set up? The one head-to-head -head we've had was won by Acor in the first half. And Acor smokes down. Torshi holds on. Acor even goes hunting. High risk, high reward on this smoke play. It will fade eventually, and he needs to get back to a safer position. Meanwhile, Torshi looks for a boost. Acor, talk about risk, over the top. He'll take a wall bang. Got ab abandoned now. Everyone is here for Gamer Legion, and for good reason, because Maus are coming. Well, Vault and Kios battle back. Maus. Don't want to jump the gun here. They've still got 40 seconds left. They try to chase down these trades, but the trades elude them. Bomb now retrieved. They've tossed the man with taking space down here towards B. It's Torshi with the AWP, but Game of Legion one step ahead, instantly pulled back off A and went to reinforce this B site. They knew what the reaction would be, and Sakios is there early. Only one kill from the man. It's left to vault. Oftentimes, a shining star alongside Acor for this Game of Legion squad. And he's now tasked with a 1v2. A tall order indeed. Got to stop a Brolin that's been hot in this round. Three kills deep already. Holt drops in. Flash goes out, and there's the swing. Brolin drives it home, and not just the opener down towards B, but the closer there as well. And so once more, it takes Brolin finding success on his B lurks to define a round for Maus. Yeah, even though Gamer Legion lose it, man, that, that was almost a 2v5 back for Gamer Legion. They put all four players standing on the A site after Brolin finds that pick. And thank goodness Maus get the spot because that frees them up to rush the rotate down. When Maus have the info, when Maus know you're stacking, they don't delay their decision. They are decisive. They instantly drop and they get that plant and position in the 2v1. I love that Brolin even goes swinging. He seems very refreshed in this roster, very confident. He doesn't want to get peeked into a jail. He just wants to take his fight on a timing. And right now he's winning his fights. Four kills for Brolin in that round. 
the crucial double entry in B to get Miles there first. He has been the hero of the T side. Let's see if he can keep it up. And really, even though Gamer Legion amassed this comeback, it's all on this round. They lose it, this one's done. Yeah. The money is gone. And we've got an orb patiently waiting outside of the B site. Oh, it's crazy that the past seven you won would all be for naught if you fall down here. And so how did Gamer Legion handle this pressure? Already a lot of damage done to Acor's AWP. He'll go looking for his revenge, but Maus don't give him any more contact. They let the silence speak for itself here. Like this. Boost up in the mid round, gonna try and catch a player moving out through short, but oh. no, one step ahead. It's Brolin again, who over these last few rounds has just come into his own, takes the head off of Snacks. The head of the beast of Gamer Legion cut off. And he is to watch as the rest of his team try to navigate the murky waters of a 4v5. Well, a new scalp grow. Okay, Malaysian resmoke timing is very nice, but Mauser still indebted into this B bomb site after that entry kill. They want to end here. Sersh, I'm going to try and sell something, but I think Gamer Legion is so committed. Wow, 27 seconds smoke. They're so committed to B with three deep on Mozart's side. No one's going to rotate. They have to believe in this hold, and for good reason, they will. Snacks has told them, do not move. Do not buy it. They are coming B. They are going in to the stack. Made quick work oh, no. of initially, but a missed oh. shot out of the orb, and that might be a disaster. Isaac has been a hero down on the B site. He's going to do it again, and he denies that plant, robbing the round for Maus. It's Gamer Legion tying this up on the back of a stalwart call to stack that B site in spite of the util reigning over A. Snacks calls do not budge. And Gamer Legion stick to their guns, and they look all the better for it. Wow. And the, the way that they held that util until 20 seconds, they put two smokes down in the final 40 towards Monster. That just forces Mal's hand. You even have an Acor missing, a crucial shot to the AWP, but it's the bomb denial that does it all for Isaac. The hero of this B site earlier on, he does it again, and Zershan, you know, he's not covering, but he's so late. He was the guy faking that top side. He's so delayed to Monster that he cannot stop that swing for Isaac. If he comes wa through water, that is a very different round for Maus. Maybe a 2v1 they close on the B-bomb site, but instead, it all comes down to this 24 rounds of regulation, bare minimum. And whoever loses this round, broken. What a banging game, and we're only just getting started. 16 kills in the first half for Exertion. He's had a more troublesome time here on Mouse's T side. Instead, it's been Brolin as that ray of hope for Mouse to hold on to. And once again, he's back to his old tricks, left to his own devices down here at B. He has no util, so he's got to either position himself well and catch Gamer Legion getting aggressive in the mid round, or he'll have to go push and prod and do it dry. And this setup's on the clock. We've got four players at B, but it's not the solo orp on the top side. It's a vault with zero utility, having to worry about long and short. So you can see Gamer Legion are already starting to panic a little bit and move three players to that top site. Mal's are not gonna give away any info because they don't have the util to waste. They're gonna walk up long. If no one spots this play, Maus will suddenly explode into this site. But at least Gamer Legion have the numbers to contend. Vault in front, toilets. Yimpat, quiet T side. He needs this kill or Maus are in big trouble. He won't find it. And now Maus have to explode into their death. Three players out through the long side, three players into the triple hold. Cut down as they try to move through. Not getting this one for oh free. My. A couple of choice kills from Brolin and Exertion as they reply back the other way, but very wounded. Maus are hurting. These have got to be clean fights. It's the two top performers left in it for Maus. 
And Exertion on this fade will get tested. One kill goes their way. No HP for the remaining man. Brolin just gets out of the firing line and it falls to Isaac versus Brolin. Oh. They normally clash on B, but this one's decided up on the top site and it's Isaac to lock it in. <laughs> 12 11, the lead taken, map point locked through for Gamer Legion. Wow, and again, what is it? It's nearly a, a 2v4, this time from Mouse, who were down after those initial entries. It's the second layered lurk of Exertion, who once again comes through and almost saves the day alongside Brolin, but it's still going to be Gamer Legion holding on. Mouse's plan extremely important to allow this final buy in reg. Got a shotgun for snacks, throwing whatever at the wall, seeing what sticks. Down in dark. Flash to middle, Vault Prime, Vault ready, and Vault spraying two headshots. This shotgun is about to ruin the young Finn's day, but your pat turns around quick. Three on three. Don't write this one off. Overtime is still on the tip of our tongues. Brolin sneaking through this smoke. Will it be the kill that opens up oh. the B site, or will it give away that advantage? It's the latter. Exertion, one HP. Kios had two kills in the entire first half. He has made a sublime recovery. But this position, this reposition, if he doesn't commit heaven, will leave him out of control of this round. Mouse will contact into B. The only thing Game of Legion have is Isaac's aggression. It allows for a fast flank on water. But sooner the better for Mouse. Take this space, get that plant that has so often been denied in the pit. They will not feel safe. They will not guess this site is empty. They have to work that out. That takes time. That takes resources. And all in all, Gamer Legion set up on the fast flank. Look at Yimpat's control, though. Soon they're piecing it together. They're going to get heaven, potentially. This is great for Mouse. Game of Legion are right behind, sniffing out the problem. There's no bone in your body that's ready for Kios to also be with Isaac here, playing this buddy system over towards Shaw. It, it's got to be impact. He's got to nail these players as they cross in. He finds the first one HP on exertion. Oh. Nade sails past him. Him v Isaac oh. again. And this time, one HP is enough for Maus. Exertion locks in that clutch. And one health is the difference between this being a done deal versus OT. Maus are still in this one. Exertion nearly 30 kills deep yeah. on this T side. And to think his reposition there as the smoke fades, it almost kills him. As the smoke is disappearing in front of his very eyes. But if he stayed in pit, that nade would have ended it. We would have gone to Ancient with a map in Game of Legion's pocket. A slight positional change for Exertion wins the round and gives us bonus play. An intense game right now. Razor thin margins. And infamy on the line. The Spodek awaits. For Gamer Legion, they have things to prove. They weren't just a, a one hit wonder, they weren't just a, a Paris run. There was depth to this roster, there were reasons to believe. And for Mouse, they want to get back in the limelight with a new replace, a, play, a replacement to the young veteran of Frozen. They want to prove they can keep this up, and Shui puts his team on his back and chases them through Monster. There's no one here. Nate from afar. Brolin knows he has room, and he takes another headshot. Snacks the final man in this B-side, puts up a stand, but he needs more than one. You do not envy Snacks' his position here. Often he's able to outwit, outposition his opponents, but this one... The moment he's known about, it's all going to come down to the aim for Snacks. And the aim of the game, buy some time for these rotates, try to set up the rest of Gamer Legion. Damage done to Acor in the back line, and they chase that kill down. Suddenly, Snacks buying time is not enough. He's got to do so much more than that. He's got to offer up a multi kill here. A legend in Polish Counter Strike, a legend in Katowice. But he will get shut down, accomplishing nothing on this behold. 
Volt is in with the backstab, but it's readable now, it's predictable now, and so Maus take the first in OT, and they do it convincingly, with Shuey taking a page from Brolin's book on yeah. that monster walk. And Brolin joins him, right? That's the freedom that OT offers, especially the first round. You, you know you have economical leverage, you know you have rounds to play with, not playing scared against map point. You can push a smoke. You can throw something random at Gamer Legion and hope they're re not ready. Isaac, for the first time, is caught sleeping at the, the B site. And Mal's take the first round, the first step in the right direction. Up those spotic stairs. The other thing I think that's scary for Gamer Legion here is up until now, they've been so down to embrace not having perfect info. They've had full trust in Snax's read of the game because oftentimes he's been right in those reads. Oftentimes they've lent into these stacks heavy with not much to go off of other than his intuition and his read of the game. But that as the first round of OT kind of throws all that through a loop. That was an up-tempo B play, contact, no proper util to tee them up for it. Oh, hey, Corp in middle. Been a long time since we've said his name. Hasn't really been given the opportunity to use this on that A site. Talked about the many rounds that Brolin's found these B entries. This time he's passive again, but the flash is perfect as they go through the broken smoke with a kill. Seeing so much of that on overpass, especially when you do have tight choke points, tunnels. Well, she's going to take his back down to B as well. There's a smoke down in the monster. I like this from Maus, right? When, when you deal with Brolin down at lower, you know that's normally the B player, normally the B lurk. And so making sure Gamer Legion don't go for any sort of info play now on the extremities. They try to hold on to this map control. But Gamer Legion take no such liberties. They buckle down into this three-man setup down at lower. I mean, they should be winning this, right? You've seen them win this countless times in this game already. Another strong triple setup with layers to it and Util still to go out at 40 seconds. And that's a big problem if you're Maus. Not drawing enough Util out of the Gamer Legion squad. A dry swing there. Now double Molly out in a monster. And that slows this even more. Maybe a bit of an overextension from Kios. That could give Maus the way in. As Exertion crosses, he is mopped up. Dealt with cleanly and Torshi finished then as well. It's a stellar return to form from Gamer Legion. That first round doesn't get under their skin. It doesn't shake their faith in snacks. They maintain that triple B hold. Yeah, you make a good point there as well. Like the lack of early pressure being put on by B. That's because it's Brolin solo, right? The default of Maus is to leave Brolin here. And of course, he's not going to be hyper aggressive, trying to sell a fake. He is a lurky player. He is a, you know, he's Swedish after all, right? He's going to just try and find those late timings and walk out through smokes and catch you off guard. And so Gamer Legion, every time we come back to a late B hit, have enough smokes, have enough mollies to stall out Maus. Torshi throwing himself through connector here. Combat orb looking for a kill, but it's not theirs. Spam is also a problem. Got to watch out for that door pressure. And so we return from the madness to another calm mid round for Maus. Acor adopting a dominant position. He's going to use it well. Goes through the motions. Vault can play here for the rest of the round as far as he's concerned. He doesn't need to move, especially not with the AWP up long. There's limited spam potential from Maus, who is still being pretty quiet about the amount of A control they have. Zershan has to save the day once again. He's really in two minds about this. He feels like there's a player oh. close, and he's right in that assumption, even hearing the flash there. Did he see that? It's going to give them that little bit of forethought that maybe someone has crept up through the short side. Brolin, has he been made aware about this? Will he check it? Exertion will wow. runs down through the back. Very smart. You could see the cogs whirring as he pieced that oh. one together. And now Shuey tries to slam the hammer down. Okay. But Acor, back of the sight. Oh, just dancing around this truck. Eventually overran. 
Time is of the essence. Time is a problem. Through. And through that smoke. Oh. Torshi isn't able to protect the bomb plant. And now he's left in this clutch. 1v2 as he tries to run down the truck player. There just isn't time. Isaac wins this one by hiding. And so the lead is pulled up in favor of Gamer Legion. A stellar hold from Acor on that AWP. We've been promising you that Acor could be a difference maker, could be the guy to turn this game around. And that multi-kill right there from the truck, the starting kill up through short, and then the double in this sight hold, yeah. that makes all the difference. It could have even been a fourth as well. I mean, he's the one fiddling, trying to pull his pistol out, second guessing it. There was a fourth definitely on the on the cards there for Acor, but he did everything he needed to to win that round. Last player hiding to play that clock, and it expires for Torshi in the clutch. Game of Legion sit in the lead by one after a nice CT defense. And this game rages on with no clear victor in sight. Mal's have been put through the ringer when it comes to overtimes yesterday against Cloud9. Overtimes yesterday against Cloud9. They had to battle on Ancient for hours. So don't think you're going to catch this Mal squad sleeping. Game of Legion. Remember that initial T side, Harry? Three rounds. Pistol, yeah. anti eco, and the last of the half, which was an explosive B rush. I'd love to see them make that call here, but I think now that you've finally got the money to withstand a full buy, Acor's Orb will probably see something standard that they felt they didn't get the chance to run in regulation. They also know how aggressive Mal's have been in middle. But this late in the game, Mal's adopts something more standard, Torshi at long. Roland by his side, re-aggressing. Could play very late. Anti-flash for the young Swede. Bomb outside of B. But Game Illusion not done much on middle to fake out Mal's. They don't have A info other than long, so they will have to rotate Shui. He drops a flash and drops back down to B. In-game leader Bray not falling for anything here. And now Brolin activates. This is beautiful for Mal's. They know exactly what's going on. Yeah, just a treasure trove of information for Brolin. And he's in a power position in mid to free up more players yeah. to move down to this B site hold. Exertion and Yimi make quick work of the monster Careful. component, but still a chance to explode up through the short side. It's the return from Exertion, swaps out under the AK and sends them packing. That B play repelled. I feel like we haven't seen him not get a multi-kill on this B site all game. He, when they come to him, he gets two or three kills every single time. Nice combo with the nade as well. 32 kills on Exertion right now. And it's first to 16, just like old times. Game of Legion really feeling like B is their way in. There's no presence in middle. Maus are running the exact nice. same setup again over at long on A. Gamer Legion never saw it, so I like that Mao's just kind of called to, to do it once more, called the repeat. It worked out for them last round, and it looks like it's going to be a damn near deja vu case here the second time around. We've literally seen this one before. Yeah, and it's going just as well for Gamer Legion. Brolin with all that mid info doesn't even need to active flank. He knows he now has them boxed into connector at best case scenario because Torshi is checking out the toilets and making sure no one's crept through on a timing while Brolin makes this play. He's still got to worry about Acor, but I think even one kill here for Brolin is his job done and he might have more in store. Yeah, I mean, the longer he doesn't play, the better, and he knows that. This is very smart. He, he Ooh, is just waiting. This. He might miss this completely. They haven't made any steps. There it is. The perfect kill. The AWP are out. They will reroute long. Torshi might die for this. I don't think he has. Oh, Brolin checks it. No way. And the AWP turns back in time. This is 15 rounds for Maus. He's just playing with his food. Brolin, one more bite. Oh, and he's got it. Five alive, 15 on the board. And Maus look to steal away Game of Legion's pick in the first overtime.
And there's something so beautiful about seeing Brolin, you know, in these positions, making plays like that. It feels like, you know, might not have been here the longest, but Shuey is very clearly immediately knowing how to get the most value out of a player like Brolin. Yeah, he's not going to be worried about you getting aggressive, but also he gives you the freedom to make those plays. Trust in his individuals. That's what Torshi said. He's not going to micromanage you. So Brolin off the leash is a different beast. And with one Polish player guaranteed in the spot deck from this match alone, it always felt destined to be Shui. He's almost a map closer to making that happen. Oh. Hell of an opening for exertion, just spams through the smoke and he walks reaps in. the reward. The bomb's here. He's going to hear all this. Oh, Snack's walking. Oh, he's running now. Can't run. Oh, is he going to no. try to drop Snacks? No. That's crazy. Snacks, this is crazy. This is crazy. And that's the bomb now dropped in bottom con with exertion. The guy 35 kills deep. The trade comes in at least. But this has triggered a real slowdown for Gamer Legion. They had to waste time getting this bomb back under their control. And Maus have shuffled the defense all towards upper. Stacked. Shui has continued this great CT side calling, this great read on the game. Three in the right place at the right time as Gamer Legion move in. Roland, great position and great results as always for this guy. He's been a monster here in Katowice and he's looking to keep it up and close the map. Game of Legion forced out down to Ancient as the second map will have to be used, have to be come back by Game of Legion. Maus, a monstrous opener, hold together in overtime and Zershan puts on a show. Yeah, I couldn't think of anything better with Shui. Some fantastic calls in there as his as Snacks, his brains clash. He comes out ahead, Brolin lights out on those lurks, and lastly, and I think it goes without saying, Exertion, just a monster throughout the entire first map. Yeah, you ask the question, does old beat new? Well, right now, new is taking the cake, Shuey's going for the spot egg, and Ancient will decide.
X-Factor performance there for Zertion propels Maus over top 16 to 14. You'd think it was a 30 round game. Man, what a banger there from Zertion. Uh, Gamer Legion had no answer. No, they, they tried. One of their guys tried. I think Bubsky's favorite player actually tried. He highlighted him in the pregame. Isaac tried delivering some finishing blows to Maus, but no, at the end of the day, Exertion really, really put his stamp onto that B-bomb site. Yeah, and it was also the battle of the two monster players all of a sudden. It was Surgeon and Isaac on both sides constantly locking down that B-side, and in the end, I feel like Surgeon was the deserving winner. He was indeed. I mean, it's tough to argue with the numbers, right? 35 and 16, something like that. Those are pretty ridiculous, right? I mean, when when a player we typically think of as like the entry for the team, one of the first guys in, is getting numbers like that, it just it kind of tells the story. Absolutely. I feel like so many of the attacks from both of these teams were centered around these B sites as well. So it really was, you would wanted to say, we wanted to say more about maybe Torzi or Acor. They definitely contributed in this game, but it was really exertion. Isaac, both doing so much damage on this side. I feel like in CS2, I don't, I don't know if you're noticing this already also, Bubsky, but I'm kind of just feeling like so many teams like attacking B so much more because, again, like the smokes that we showed in the pregame where you can use smoke between barrel and the pillar, you can just nade that now. And so it doesn't feel as hard to get into this bomb site. And so I feel like that's why we're seeing more of the offenses go towards that site. And also the thing of uh, we've always seen like the left side monster setup being really popular because you it's kind of easy to hold angles. Now people are like hard strafing into you and it's a little bit more difficult in CS2, so I buy into that. But I think one thing that is also interesting with Mouse is that when we talk about Surgeon, we didn't really mention too much before the game because it was Yimp and Brolin running with all the titles, right? If you all of a sudden have that trio running, like that is the main key for, for Mouse to step it up a notch. I'm still looking for Torsi. Give me Torsi mm -hmm. in some situations where I feel like, okay, get a, a 4K, get a 5K. We saw Monacy yesterday. I'm not saying he's Monacy, but we saw the impact that he can have on that CC side, and I didn't see that coming in from him. Yeah, you know, we saw the guy who dropped 90 over a BO3. Uh, let's just get used <laughs> to the numbers. point of comparison. Not not a high water mark at all, for sure. Let's uh, turn our focus to the other side, right? Let's talk about Gamer Legion, because Isaac was playing well, right? Your unsung hero, your role player, he was hitting, he was doing his job. The problem is that he's not meant to be the guy who's top of the board, right? There are a few more pieces that need to be hitting here for Gamer Legion. Yeah, and that's still the thing after they've losing I'm. I think I'm in this particular team was such an incredible player. I don't think we see the same I'm in, in Na'Vi for sure, and he was kind of the guy delivering the numbers. He was Mouse's frozen mm -hmm. all of a sudden, and now they can't have to rely on Vault. I'm not saying Vault is not yeah. the same, but he is... Yeah, I'm just not sure he has that spark in him to like make Game of Legends the same thing. What made Game of Legends so impressive yesterday when they played against Monty is that Snacks did a very good job of reading what was happening next in the round. And I just feel like in this game versus Mouse, he didn't really have that same read. Like sometimes he was getting caught on rotations a little bit more. He was a little bit behind the play where I was, it was obvious that yesterday Snacks was in this flow state where he's able to control everything that's going across the map. But today just like he had some flanks. Like sometimes he was about to flank, but his teammates are already dying before that happens. So kind of a personnel problem thing and probably just a little bit slower on the reads himself. Maybe. Let's look towards the future, right? There's more Mouse to play here. There's more Counter-Strike to play. Mm. Do we still have hope for Gamer Legion, or based on what we've seen from Mouse so far, do we think that this one's going to the 2-0? I mean, objectively, I think these teams are very close. I don't think it's uh, an easy matchup for Mouse. I think they are obviously happy that they drew Gamer Legion, expecting that this result couldn't make them going to the Spodek Arena. I don't think you can be expecting a, a, a worse team than Gamer Legion all of a sudden, but now they're going into the Ancient, and I'm not sure what Gamer Legion is going to bring, because what one thing I'm kind of sure about for Gamer Legion is that once they play better teams, they're really good at anti strategy and there's a lot of demos from Ancient already. We saw it yesterday with the Ancient game uh, with Yimpad on the A side. I think there's going to be a lot of things to look for, and they're also going to hope that Yimpad is not going to have the same type of game. I think there's one thing to look forward to, is that for Gamer Legion on this map, it's like the one map I see where Isaac isn't an anchor. He plays mid Rifler yeah, he on plays this Donut, one. yeah. Yeah, mid, mid and Donut, and that's kind of a, a spot where he's just in more action, and if he is able to bring some of the form that we saw with him locking down Monster, well, then you've actually controlled one of the most important parts of the map, and so that might be a little bit of a win condition there, but I would still probably lightly favor Maus on this map. One would expect it, but I will remind you, I think we maybe got swept up a little bit in that overtime, it almost didn't even get there, right? Right. That yeah. was so yeah. tenuous. That was so touch and go until the end. Mouse definitely had some blunders, definitely had some mistakes. This is far from, you know, a world beater of Mouse right now. And, well, now they are just that one step away from the Spodak. They are just that one step away from securing their spot in the playoffs from for Shue's first ever mm. IEM Katowice. That would be tremendous.
Yeah, and it's also some pressure he's going to be feeling going into that game, right? He's going to know in the back of his mind constantly. You don't talk about it going into the game. Guys, if we win, we are going to sit in that arena. Let's go. Just one more map. Like, they're just going to be focusing what's for next round, next round again. But it can be hard when you're so young and you haven't really tried it that much to just be like, okay, what do we do in pistol? Because in the back of your mind, you're kind of like, oh, my parents want to come into the arena and see. And <laughs> also my girlfriend, maybe. And like have a couple of friends. Like those things. I think we saw the same thing at Blast with Astralis. Obviously, was not the same roster. But I think they had like good potential to go through. But they just completely fell flat. And I'm really proud to see Sue in this setting, like delivering up to the expectations. He has been indeed. He has been indeed. All right, who's your key? If Gamer Legion are going to turn around here, is it still Isaac we're focusing on? Is there one player who can just turn the tide? I... I... Mm, beyond him, I want to see Snacks have a better read, uh, just be a little bit quicker. I just feel like yes, like the, the difference between his flanks, his rotations, the way they would sometimes group up and just go for like a play together. That's one thing that I really liked about Gamer Legion yesterday. So I, it kind of has to be a team effort, I guess. Like it seems like a cop out answer. But one thing I also really liked about when they played yesterday on this map is that they were so good when they lost space towards middle. They would send they would send a flash over. There would be a guy peeking from window, guy peeking from donut. They would be, even try to swing cave at the same time and so it was kind of their mid-round reactions to losing space because things aren't always going to go as expected in the first 20 or 30 seconds of the round when you're against some really strong entry fraggers like Brolin and like Exertion. I also think this is the benefit of a game of Legion right there. Really well structured team in some aspects. I don't think you're going to be picking one of these players and be like okay he's a top 20 player he's like this and that. Obviously they have players like Aiko who's able to have a really solid game but overall when you just pick out the names they just make a nice team structure. They're not really individuals. Man, ask some analysts to pick one player and they'll say, you know what? No, I want all of them. All of them have to do better. And well, that is certainly the case. We'll find out if they can after this break.
just one map away from arriving in the spot deck from securing that playoff appearance and after shutting Gamer Legion out on their map pick now heading on to Ancient it's looking real good for Maus. I mean we've seen them be able to best that Cloud9 squad just yesterday. They've had some very convincing wins here on this map, and I think more so of a problem for, for the Cave Legion squad is just that this is one they have had a very troublesome time on, breaking a lost streak just yesterday. I don't know, you're, you're getting a little nervous, right, Hugo? Yeah, it's, you know, since just Snacks joined this roster, we, we haven't had any success for Gamer Legion on this map. Aside from, you know, one win over FaZe, sure, notable. It's been a string of L's, but, you know, like we said, they took down Monty, they had a solid CT side. Snacks had some great positional play. It's something we've been hyping up a lot for Gamer Legion, but they'll have to have all that and more to get through the monsters of Mouse who are chewing through Gamer Legion in this series. We saw a phenomenal map for Zertion and some great calling for Shui as well. Who knows what Ancient has in store, but it certainly could be a qualification to the playoffs at bare minimum and the chance to run to the semi-finals in that upper bracket match. Miles look to make the most of this opportunity. They have truly had some legendary games on Ancient, not just against Cloud9 yesterday, but even Cloud9 at that Rio Major. Can another run begin in the green jungle? Zertion does begin in cave and find a 5v4. Oh, this is all going to come down to Snacks and his dual Berettas, and he's Ooh. so blind. One kill from him, but that's the end of the line. You couldn't really expect more of Snacks there. The flash leaves him absolutely wrecked. And so Bomb now planted. Mao's even teeing up long flashes. They're hungry for space. They oh. just want more. An exertion. Oh. What a way to open up. Four kills in the pistol. Keeping up appearances from that ludicrous start. Back on overpass. How did Game Legion shrug it off when they get 35 kills against them from this guy? And then he opens the pistol with a 4K. One tapping your team on long rotation. That is a painful way to begin the game for G. And you know Mal's are just having a ball right now. They're having so much fun. They feel like they can do no wrong. Full eco. I mean, you know, Exertion always was a phenomenal presence in the server, but you feel like since that departure of Frozen, there's even more of a spotlight put yeah. on him, and I think he's done a fantastic job of rising to the occasion. Thrust into center stage. And loving the limelight. Brolin, ooh, there's a lot of them coming down the ramp. Only these USPs, though. And with support from Shui, the attempted lane take denied with just the pistols left to fight with. This is a Mao's conversion waiting to happen. Bomb has been planted. No reason or way to put a stop to it. With the bomb planted on A. They're going to go hunting as well. Ooh. <laughs> Cheeky angle for snacks, but everyone else removed. <laughs> Two and O. I'm not talking about the series. Not yet, at least. But Mao's are trying to get there. Game of Legion's first full buy. Orp will be delayed as a result of taking that full eco round two. 
Uh, hopefully we can see Acor come off to a stronger start in this game, being on the favoured half for an AWP. Less necessity for Torshi to have it if they're going to be running fast executes. Mid take for Mal's delayed. Expecting more utility than maybe Game of Legion do throw. It's just Isaac rooting donut. Triple B, the first gun round. And I really love how just independent Brolin is, how much faith they have in him. To put pressure on as a one man unit. He's faking very hard right now, keeping three players here. That leaves just two in defense of this A site. Vault backing off into Donut. Does have a man alongside him. It's him and Isaac. Sure, he's coming through on this Lurk as well. Check him out in the middle. He's about to cause a problem. Cause commotion at the back of the Donut. Vault jammed in. Does get a kill. There's a second Lurk in mid, but Brolin dies to the red swing. And now they're in trouble. Torshi needed to live after that kill, but he simply couldn't afford to. Vault. Same story. Tucked back. Deals with his kill very well, leaving Jimpat in a clutch. Quick reload. Going to top up the M4. He's going to need all the bullets if he wants to withstand this one. Smoking through, but oh, they're close. on that bomb. It's the 10-second stick. Kios trying to hold it. His teammate watching on. It's a little awkward, and the defuse just oh. comes in in time. Right before Jimpat can make it through that fatal funnel of smokes. Game of Legion, steal that one from under Mouse's nose. And so they're going to get their first on the board early. Yeah, that was that was pretty desperate for Mouse because they have all the control, but they still don't plant for Donut. They still don't give uh, a setup there because they don't have Donut yet. Shui was late on that lurk. And they smoke it off and they just go for a safe plant, but that's where they choose to take in the post. And that's what puts the impact in such an uncomfortable position there. He had to run through. And I'm sure you could feel the stick was coming with no kit, but little he can do. Same story for Isaac. Gets absolutely blown out of the server as they break the smoke. Oh, when you lose mid, you lose the red room this quickly, this decisively. Oh. Oh. That causes massive... Oh, no! Problem. How did he get them both? What a transfer. They're double swinging him. That looked crazy. Chewie was spraying the wrong position, in fairness, but even so, for Acor to get both kills with the ump of all guns, well, he'll take it. They're going to regress in middle and try and flank B, but Mal's have already established control. They've taken the site. They just need to clear cave. They're not comfortable yet. They don't realize it's completely empty because Snax isn't here. He's fast flanking, and now they work it out. The impact's got to turn around stat. That molly could be oh, no. death for oh. Acor, and it is. What can you do? It tags him as it goes in, and from bad to worse there, Snax is here faster than they are prepared for. And Satoshi now learns about him the hard way. Vault making a bit of noise. Back in Jag, needs to clear this close angle and he won't. Brolin and Yimpak go on to close out the round and so Mao's ease their way back into this lead. They deny Gamer Legion picking up any early momentum on this CT side. It's a harsh trip back down to reality. That last one coming down to just one player surviving and then having it instantly go against you in spite of that from Acor. Also, I want to see if we get that again, but I'm pretty sure Miles didn't plant default. They planted like against the cave wall, which would make spamming for Yimpat super easy in a post plant, even easier than default does. So let's see if Miles used that plant again. If I did catch that right, flushing into middle and flushed down the bog. Stuck in the mud of Gamer Legion. And wellies will not save you here. Two pistols constricted to donuts. And Mao's just free to move as they please. 4 1 up almost assuredly on this T side. So something I think we've got to look out for is in a lot of these rounds, it's been relatively light over towards B, and I wonder if Mao's in this follow-up round are going to put a bit more attention there, right? Because we know... Ooh, ooh, Brolin, you saw him. Well, there we are. One of the tricks up Game Illusion Sleeve is they have some lovely takes of this lane area, right? They have some good util to do so, some good protocols to try and yeah. do so. And so I think if you're Mao's, that's something that's going to always be just eating away at the back of your head. Don't get me wrong, Brolin is showing to be very capable when left to his own devices, but the solo MAC-10 hold on that side of the map just ain't it, so he might need a bit of help this time.
Be a good round to just go for a set piece out of spawn here for Miles if they really wanted to flex, but they're expecting full utility and that's exactly what they'll get. Double molly mid, flash combo. They go swinging through. Shuey does not care right now. He removes the orb like that. Blinded behind the smoke and a blinding double opener for the Miles captain. In-game leads him to a 5v3. Disrespectful opening kills. And there's another player. The barrel might give it up. Volt gets the frag. That's something, but Mal's are not exactly worried right now. They're walking into A. I mean, even now, he is pinned in there. Good off angle. Oh, no. They've seen Dang. the shadow. Oh, it... Dancing around, just trying to dodge being that next domino to fall in defense of this A site. Trying to buy some time, and he's done a good job of that at least. Game of Legion bring everyone over. They are all here right now. Brolin is holding for a lurk that's never going to materialize. I'm stuck. And Torshi is trapped back in main. The only one what? with util is Brolin, and he's a long way away. Oh, no. That collapse from Gamer Legion. They move in, they isolate that bomb back in main, and they get all the glory. It's going to be left to Brolin in this 1v2. Now, you know who you're up against if you're Gamer Legion. You're going to be constantly looking over your shoulder here. Usually left over towards that B side of the map, but he takes some safe routing to come out through main. Got the bomb, he could leave, but he'd have to run the whole way, and he didn't want to take the AK to give them noise. But he has so much room right now. Can he find a rifle? Does he just want to grab it? Looking for a kill before the plants. And the steps have been made. Now he can upgrade if he wants. He's just going to go stick, I presume. Smoke down, bomb down, but they're going to run at him. No chance in that post plant. Snacks will find it, and Gamer Legion get on the board. Rare miscom for Mouse, it feels like. Torchy realizes he can't actually safely cross uh, with the bomb there, so he decides to hold off and play really passive. Meanwhile, Mouse's util isn't down, so they're looking for kills in CT. Gamer Legion hit a nice timing to re-aggress, but it seemed like they weren't aware that Gamer Legion could just walk out Temple and flank those two side players, so... Felt like a missed call more than anything for Mal's. Considering the round starts with this, right? That's quite a a huge miss from the Mouse squad. That's an example of when like playing Lurks goes a little bit too far. If you are 5v3 and you're still leaving Brolin to Lurk on B, you may as well just go four or five players together through A main or together in that A split. You know, Brolin could have joined them through Donut. There would have been four players in the site. Instead, there's three. Brolin's holding a K flank. It could be a valuable position. It could give them options, but you want to minimize the chance that you lose those man advantage rounds and that's exactly how you do it you stay grouped so a little mistake some teething issues for Miles, but it's actually a game of legion timeout who want to make the most of this opportunity afforded to them Instant red smoke lined up and some more focus getting put over towards this A site in this round from the Mouse squad. In fact, to say more focus is an understatement. All the focus is leaning in towards A main. Yeah, they've clearly got a game plan here. Vault up on top of the boost. He sees shadows. He knows they're here, primed and ready to go for the first. Can't follow it up with anything more as Brolin gets that trade. And I mean, when you see Brolin out through main, you know that this is going to be the A play. They move in swiftly. They lock in all the trades. That plant is afforded, but it's Isaac to claim the advantage for Gamer Legion. Goes unpunished. And there's that Acor AWP pulling up to the scene. It's all on Yimpa. And he's got so many angles left to clear. Tries to make a break towards CT spawn. At least gets himself out of the firing line of Donut. But his task is not done yet. A 1v3 required. And now they know where he is. They've got him pinned in. They'll chase him down. And they get away with that one easily. It all starts with that opener from Vault over at main. Initially, you think Maus are doing a good job of trading their way into it. The kind of swing kill in the round comes from Isaac, who was sat down bottom of the board for Gamer Legion. He delivers here, gets that one, and then just fades out, allows them to play around this man advantage. Yeah, Vault does his job there, but you feel like that's an oversight for Maus. It's a very common position for Vault to play. You'll often see him starting jiggling close main with a Molotov or on top of the boost. He likes to play up front and use those shadows to his advantage. But Mal's, if they've done their...
prep, if they want to continue to abuse A like they've been doing all game so far, they've got to know about Vault's protocols. Here's the other side. They're going to smoke this Molotov. He gets out for free, and there's not even a kill for Maus as Vault swings for the frag. Roland gone again. That gives full information. Vault's even double dipping, and it's a tasty morsel. Tastes like Maus. Four on one in an instant. And Shui spammed through the smoke. Dear, oh dear. Mao's throwing just instant XX at this A site, but getting caught off by vaults. I want to say predictable tendencies, but they're also very good tendencies. Yeah, it I may think, not matter if you know what you're doing. Yeah, you know you what know. he's doing. He has very solid protocols here, and he does largely approach it the same way. I think there's only so much variation you True. can throw in with like the the A, the A hold, but he, he is like automatic in this position yeah. in terms of how he approaches it, right? And and he does end up feeling a lot of the times like a backbone of this game Allegiant CT side. So often able to, to do what he does there, get a couple of kills, slow down the site play. I mean, That's exactly what you want out of your solo A player. Monty could not break through him, right? They went for so... They had the same game plan, actually. They went for so many A explosions like Mal's, and there was not one round that they killed him without him taking someone with him, you know? So... Sure, Maus, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure aware of this, but back-to-back -back A pops and Vault multi-kills them both times. So something to look out for. Four on two. You could walk the smoke if you really wanted to. There's not much else available. Impact still taking cave slowly. So Torshi will wait in that fade, but... If I know Yimpat, the smoke will fade before the young Finn is here. Torshi's at least heard the footsteps, so they know about this AWP over a long, but that's not to make it any easier for Yimpat to clear it. Three from Acor on the AWP. Not a bad round. Five to four. The thing that's scary if your mouse here is how these rounds have been getting cleaner and cleaner for the opposition. You know that right now, Gamer Legion is sitting on a tidy amount of money. And so the remainder of this half is going to be a real grind if you're Maus. It's not about winning that one round that breaks your opponent's money. And so suddenly you start surging ahead into the lead again. You've got to grind your way through these Gamer Legion bank accounts that are looking pretty buff. Big unless ben. your name's Kios. Of course. Big baller Kios. Down to fifty dollars. This is interesting, though, right? That initial game plan, because you're dead on. Uh, so many of these rounds have ended up over towards a. Clearly, they think that they can get past this vault solo hold, Ooh. and they've been showing that's not the case. And so now the onus falls to Shuey. It falls to the rest of Mouse. What else do they have up their sleeve here? Mid take, a close mid positions for Game Legion. All jump spots dangerous. Got the AWP Vacor scope day main from Big, so I like the change up. Game of Legion are just trying to stay adaptive, stay ahead of the game rather than reactive. But look at Shui using that Lurk smoke. He is inside of B. Kios is patrolling, but not for long. Loses his head. Smoke in the mid cave. They know Snacks is here. He's been spamming, so Molly smoke combo. Even Snacks can't push that smoke. He'll try. He's found oh, a way. Oh, he, he always finds a way. They'll hunt him down. Four on three. Cave flank from that mid take. And Acor with nothing to do but hold. That might be a save. I like the change up for Game of Legion. It just comes down to Shui playing so aggressive so early, which we can expect from this guy. Walking in to be behind the Lurk Smoke. And even though Kios is, you know, Kios is playing retake, he has to play save. But also he can't not peek. He needs to be jiggling, he needs to be checking and getting the info that yes, they are in B, you can start your cave flank. But as soon as you hear Snack spamming, you know, okay, there's probably max 1B. They have mid, unless they've left A open, there's max 1B. Shui takes that space, he hits a nice headshot. And that is kind of how the round unravels. In-game leader brain. Mm. I got nervous with the whole, you know, smoke molly bug over in the uh, over in the cave with snacks, being able to play around it. Of course, but good protocol to deal with him. They threw that nade and chased it down straight away. So the hope in the round was short-lived. 
Oh, they don't want Heaven taken. The Molly comes in. So Mao's putting pressure on Cave early, trying to keep Snacks contained. Nice bounce for Snacks with that Molotov. They cut off the Orpa. And he tries to break. Oh, again, the lurk through B. Oh, gets out with one, does Torshi. Meanwhile, Exertion's all the way up in the red room. He's denying these rotates over to B. Oh. His game Allegiant oh. try to scramble in. Exertion lights them up. Acor caught in his crosshairs. And now Isaac trying to make a ballsy oh. play through that ramp smoke. I mean, a play had to be made here. You're down yeah. two on three. Someone had to be the difference maker. And it's not going to be Isaac. He's kicked to the wayside. Yeah, it looks silly, but it's one of his better options. He knows he's going to get split by three players, so he would rather be the one forcing the fight. And maybe catching Mouse with nades out behind the smoke. Mouse, though, after those two A-pops that ruined their money, they've recovered very well. They've landed back on their feet. They've won back-to-back -back gun rounds going into the last of the half. And Game Legion can buy no problem, but Mal's have done everything they need to on the T side. Anything else is just gravy. Yeah, and I mean, as we kind of spoke about, right, like the thing that makes this impressive from the Mal's squad is that these haven't been free rounds. These haven't been easy. It's not no. like you've had pistols or SMGs to go up against. You're never going to get that reward really either, right? Game of Legion still getting full rifles out here, and that AWP save means that Acor at least gets to bring that into the fray. I want to see what adaptation Snacks can call here, because right now they are getting beaten by a Lurk Smoke on ramp. Their mouths have back-to-back -back walked through solo and taken the B site and, and got an entry kill that has disrupted the round. So Snacks, who, as we mentioned, since joining this roster, has won this map two out of nine times played now, if you count yesterday. So clearly adaptation to problems has been difficult for him on Ancient, a map that obviously wasn't in the pool during the heyday of his career. So what can he call? What can Ash put together? What can Gamer Legion manage when they have everything they need weaponry-wise in the last round of the half? The onus is definitely more on them because if mouse keep doing what they're doing, they're in for seven. Yeah, I mean, even this in of itself is like a little mind game here, though, right? Because Mao's have been abusing this B lane control, oh, and now if you try to pad out B too heavily, they're going to take real estate elsewhere. It's one kill off of the mid push for either side, but Sui is tagged down low. Brolin is left to lurk out on the lane, and he is anticipating aggression. He knows Gamer Legion have had to make an adjustment on this side of the map. Finally. So let's see, can Brolin make out like a bandit with any kills from this lurk at the lane? Right now, Gamer Legion think they've yep. got the control, and that's when Brolin plays his hand. Oh, there is an orb, though. Acor might be able to grab this kill. Very nicely done. Got to move quick now, Miles. They know they're on the clock. Vault inside of the smoke. Vault inside of the smoke. They have no idea. And they find out the hard way. He might have just saved the day at the end of the half. Vault has no doubt been the hero of this CT side for Gamer Legion. Can Shui go above and beyond to close out their T side? He was bought down a 5 HP right at the start of the round. And that's going to come back to haunt them. Vault, the hero, man, flying the Gamer Legion flag high up on this A side of the map. It's because of him, this whole bomb site has just felt unobtainable, unreachable. And look how safe they're playing. They want him to plant. They want to close that net slowly. They don't want him to roam and find a kill. So every second Shui uses looking for exactly that is time not wasted, but lost. Molly will allow the guaranteed plant and Donut seemingly his path. Snacks is instant. Snacks is immediate oh in through the back line. Shuey's going to try five forward, but this orb has the pistol out. Now it oh. dropped out from the round. Shuey, 1v1, and it's versus Snacks for this final round on the half. Pole v pole, and out with the swing. Snacks takes it home for Gamer Legion. Delivers a tie game as he locks Shuey out of that clutch.
in the clash at Katowice, it's Shui leading the way in the server. A tie game in spite of that. A few key rounds lost to the wayside as Vault steps up on the other side of things, locking Maus out of any A plays in that first half. His impact was stellar, but now Gamer Legion go to the T side. And so this is where their greatest challenge yet maybe begins. It could all start strong if they're able to pick up a pistol round here and now. Yeah, I like to see a heavy B setup in pistol as well. They've even got two donut and the clearing middle mouths. As proactive as we could expect after this series, they are making moves immediately. Shui's even holding a mid flash. He knows he doesn't need it. They're about to climb heaven and flank Gamer Legion. The only danger is going too soon. They should wait for the nades and backstab rather than be the front runners here. Don't tell Gamer Legion you know. Don't reveal all your cards. Let Gamer Legion walk willingly into your stack. Zertion shows his hand and he versus his snacks but comes out ahead. And now this B-pop looks to come through, but it's going to be lacking any cave component. And these players getting up ramp is not a guarantee. As they move into the oh. site, they are cut down. Brolin's dual barrette is delivered, and it's left onto Acor alone in a 1v4. Maus clamped down on this B-play. And Acor finished off, denied any hope in that 1v4. I, I just love watching Mal's on CT sides. They just never sit back. They've really adopted to CS2 so well in that active information seeking play style and they have the aimers to back it up. Zertion wins a very convoluted fight against the Glock. Not easy given how good that gun feels in this game. But Mal's box Gamer Legion into a trap of their own and jam cheese down their throat. Hear a rifle for snacks. It's pretty desperate right now. Surrounded by Glocks. Tell yourself damage is the bare minimum here. And when they learn about this Galil, yeah. Maus, that really does come as a surprise. You've heard Glocks oh, firing no, off. No, this no, one no. is rapidly getting no, out of no, hand. No. Snacks is hero Galil and a Glock kill from Isaac. Puts Gamer Legion up 5v3. And even if you were looking to do damage here, even if you were hoping that they take the bait, that these Glock kills, these eco kills on vanilla pistol players prove to be too tantalizing, and you get that kill over towards B, I don't think you were prepared for a 5v3 up. So now Gamer Legion, what do they want to do with this? They're going to root back all the way back. In fact, another Other. dink downrange. These Glocks are doing work right now. That one comes from the P250. It's got to be Brolin. It has to be all Brolin. In that first half, Vault was lights out in these A-site holds. Now we see if Brolin can match up to it. One kill, nice. two kills. Brolin makes it look easy on the spray. Torshi moves in with the MP9. It's only Snacks left standing. 25 seconds to play with. 8 HP to his name. And the hero gun is oh. cut down by Torshi's jumping MP9. That's a damn nice try for Gamer Legion. It's very hard to, you know, criticize them for losing that round, even in a 5v3, just with the weaponry they have or the lack thereof. And Brolin's position allows him to spray two down from a safe angle here. And there's limited way to respond there if you're Gamer Legion. To think Snacks gets running, jumping MP9 to close. Mouse will take that in their stride. Eight to six. And Gamer Legion come in with their full buy. Nice heaven smoke. It's going to lock Yimpat out of any information towards the B side. And Mouse don't want to push down ramp with only two players here. They have full mid control, they have cave. It's a good beginning to the round. Gamer Legion just trying to burn out the UTEL. Considering how much damage was done last round, Mao's managed their economy really well, and with Torshi getting some SMG kills to even pull this AWP out, right? This is something that, if you're Gamer Legion, you might expect that you did enough damage that that AWP is not in play here. But it very much is, and it makes its way around towards this B site to help assist in the hold. Right place, right time for Torshi. Spam is good. There's been some light dusting of damage onto Mao's in this round. 
The Torshi's orb awaits. Looks to pick the leader. Miss shot. Well, now they know about it. Still, they're so indebted to the B side. 35 seconds, everyone here. The bomb on ramp. If they swing, they will see that bomb. They will know exactly what's going on. Torshi's going to have to reposition here as the pop comes in. They are up ramp already. He doesn't know it. Hits his shot, gets out behind the smoke. Shui, not with a gun for the job. The rifle rains down and the flashes are perfect. Torshi trying to cover that cross, but he's setting up Util for the retake. Big kill from Exertion through the back line. Flash to tee up the rest of these peaks. Some wanted to be the hero. Acor oh. is trying his best to be that man right now. Just got to put a stop to Exertion. They look to play this together. His teammate oh. along is hung out to dry. And Exertion finishes off that 1v2. Another multi-kill round from him across this series. He has been full of them. And that one there, driving the knife into Gamer Legion. That is a devastating round to lose after Acor's heroics, after you break down that B site. You just don't even have time to react to that play. He clears the off angle for Kios. That's just phenomenal. That's filthy. And then immediately, immediately follows up to Acor, who's done everything he can, but it's still not enough. Nine rounds for Maus, four from the spot -ec. And not just getting there, but the statement of a dominant 2-0 against Gamer Legion, of surviving the overtimes yesterday against Cloud9, doing the same on Overpass here. And Ancient to follow. Maus want to hurry out the Hall of Heroes and strut up the steps of the Spodek. And right now, it's only pistols in their way. Yeah, I mean, and if, and if they don't fall down to these rounds, you know, really, there's there's one rifle round left in this to try and fight back if you're Gamer Legion. This is a down-to-the-wire second map. Any little mistake oh. will cost you dearly. Oh, or she. <laughs> Plucks Ooh. them off from ramp. There is this push up through ramp. A vault silenced after that initial double. Brolin infallible as he puts up a second despite being full flashed. And it's left to Acor again. Will this be his chance at redemption? Denied the play in the last round. This time tasked with a 1v2 and Mauser grouped. They're in this together. Moving through the smoke. Runs out of ammo. And so they chase down that last man. They never let Acor get comfortable. And isn't just that the most Mauser 2v1 you've ever seen? Both sitting in the smoke, both ready to run at him. The second they get a whiff or a chance, he goes low on ammo on the A1. And they just push him together. Mauser just don't give you room to breathe. Just appearing out of holes in the wall. And even Acor can't save this series, although he's trying. Great double entry for Vault again, as we said, the rock of the defensive half. But it's still only an eco. The Mal's put to bed. Torshi starts mid now. Mal's again trying to get ahead of any changes. Acor will bring his T-side orb, something that Torshi never even wanted to wield in the first half. It's up to Snacks in Cave. The poles clash again. Oh, freebie oh. for Shuey. The flash is so good there from Brolin. And this is this is a disaster for Gamer Legion. Whatever they had planned, whatever ideas they come up with, whatever snacks are called, it's meaningless now. The Shuey. game plan entirely uprooted. And it's from the captain of Maus. It's from the guy calling the shots. He really drives home that he is in your head in that round there. Just one of the most aggressive CT in-game leaders we have in the game right now, it feels like. And he has that aim to back it up, and he has the calls to put his pieces in the right place. Once again, look at his pawns getting moved around the map. They're climbing up. They've got the timing. They've got the bomb. Volt will find a crucial trade, but the, to uh, the clock is ticking. Brolin at the back of B waits for support. Yeah, flashes the TR Brolin, but he elects not to play with that first one. Instead, waits to go off the second. It's a little awkward as he was left blind there on that peak. 
tries to go back in for it. It's a one for one, but Volt is cut down from the Torshi AWP, and Maus can feel it now. We said there was really only one proper rifle round left in this for Gamer Legion. That was supposed to be it, and the whole plan, the whole play gets disrupted from Shui's aggression right at the top of the round. An awkward moment now for Gamer Legion as they consolidate what little they have. And for, for Gamer Legion, if they lose this series, it's going to hurt because it's not just how close you were and are to the spot egg, it's what waits for you in the lower bracket. Heroic, maybe even G2 if they fall to Ents. Poles in the top side of the bracket also gunning for the arena. There are, there's only one spot and there are so many hungry rosters right now. Mouse are right there, they can feel it. Two rounds, two Katowice playoffs. And here is that buy for Gamer Legion, that desperate attempt to maintain some stability. But they have yet to find a T side round. Heading over towards A is not a bad shout. But you can already see Shui's posted aggressive in the cave. There will come a time where he wants to peek this, and so he's going to have that info early that this B side of the map is clear. Exertion's even peeled off back into the donut. He'll be here to lend a helping hand. Yimpa fights ahead, and the molly even burns out Vault. They will lose Shui out through the cave, but that second piece of Brolin is there to lock it in. Acor and Isaac, two versus three. And the bomb is away from them. Ooh. Yeah, I don't see a way Miles could lose this position again. They have Brolin in middle. Shui must love using this piece because he is just with him through thick and thin. Oh, this is such a gut punch of a round. Yeah. If you're Gamer Legion, it was all riding on this four spy. You at least needed a bomb plant. You at least needed the cash injection. None of that has been afforded to them. And it's not even close. Your heart sinks as you watch Acor attempt the impossible, a 1v3 with the bomb out in the open and a man tucked in this corner. Acor dead, brushed aside, and Gamer Legion have to come to terms with it. They are pretty broke, heading up against match and series point. It is a bitter pill to swallow. And it's the MP9 that ruined it all. Yeah, you feel like you never even got a chance to play into this T-side yet again. Mal's throw everything the way of Gamer Legion. And they come out unbattered. Undeterred. Oh dear, even spam through smoke is getting better for Mouse, round by round. Snacks catches a kill, but this is it. It's starting to drip away. A missed orb shot, and inconsequentially, as Acor, in the blink of an eye, is left alone against every single player. A 1v4, and Mouse came into play this season. There is no doubt about it. Yeah, just elation for the Mouse squad, and you can feel all that tension building up. They just have this one guy left to finish. Acor spamming smokes, praying, hoping, but he is surrounded. He is boxed in, and with that, Shui moves mountains. A monolithic final push to best Polish legend Snacks and his squad. And from watching Snacks lift that trophy all the way back in 2014 to now 10 years on, it's Shui taking the reins, taking Polish Counter Strike into the spot egg, and doing it with style. Yeah, and his first time in Katowice as well, to, to keep that in mind. But what an unbelievable run this is for Maus just beginning here in Katowice. They lost Frozen to FaZe earlier, but enter Brolin, a name you are ready to forget, and a name that was underwhelming in the past couple of years, is putting Swedish CS back on the map at the beginning of CS2. And this young group of guys in Maus has once again made us smile here. Yeah, from a strong end to their 2023 season, their 2024 one is off to a hot start, a blistering hot start. A hell of a head-to-head, -head. stylistically, a beautiful matchup between these teams.
but absolutely no denying that Mao's were the better squad. They don't even let Game Allegiant post one T side round. It is a statement made from Mao's on their path into the playoffs. And now the only question is just how far can they take it? It's semis or quarters in that next matchup. And this Mao's team is no one you want to underestimate. I've got a very happy Shuhei here, but he did say his heart was racing when it came to that overpass. And rightly so, mate. That, that was a tough one once again. You guys in overtime, though, you're pretty damn good. Man, I don't even know what to say. It was a crazy game. Every round was just so intense. I'm, I'm so happy. But then this second map, this felt like you just had them from the get-go. Was there any concerns? Yeah, I think we feel really comfortable on uh, Ancient, especially against, uh, against a team like that, the playstyle on CD side. So we knew coming into the, this, this game that we just need to stay in control and uh, not let our heads down at any round and not make any silly mistakes. So that's what we did. And for you, your first ever Katowice and you go into the Spodek. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. I'm 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 really happy and I'm speechless. You're speechless, and it's, normally this man has words for everything when it comes to this. From here on out, though, let's just look at your team. These boys you've you've grown up with. Brolan comes into the team as well. How did you manage to get him to fit so well so quickly? Uh, it's, it's not only me. The whole team is doing uh, wonders. I mean, they're all working on themselves. We're we're a unit that uh, it's really hard to get rid of and. Uh, what we have, the chemistry we have, uh, is very special and very rare, I would say. So I'm just proud to be a part of people that are willing to grow every day. And they're motivating me to be better. So I'm really happy to be with them. And how much further do you want to go here? All the way. All the way. All the way. Before he was saying he's going to retire snacks, now he wants to go all the way. But if they play like this, it's definitely bloody possible. Mike, back to you. Thank you, James. Well, a mouse may be a small animal, but the roar coming into the Spodek, that's pretty dang fearsome. You ready for the Hall of Heroes here, Zershin? You've made your way to the arena. Hell yeah, yeah. Of course we're ready. Hell yeah, indeed. Let's talk about you, man. Let's just heap some flowers on. That was one hell of a performance on Overpass, man. Uh, what, what was happening today for you? Uh, I mean, uh, I think uh, we set the game up pretty well. Uh, we had some really early on aggressive rounds on A, which allowed me to also be a part of them. So it was nice to be active a bit more. So, yeah, I think that uh, we were really prepared for them. We knew what we want to do. And, uh, yeah, I think my teammates set me up really well this game. Also on T side, even though we didn't get many rounds, I feel like we kind of threw just the late rounds. But, yeah, I mean, it was looking pretty good. Well, it was certainly strong enough to make you our Air Force aim high player of the match. I mean, these numbers... Just, oh my you know, God. It's just a little, little something there. Light, light work. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ex exertion. Humble King. I want to know, you talked about, I think, in an interview pretty recently that your 2023 wasn't as good as you wanted, despite the fact that you were pretty good in it. So what are things that you looked at, especially coming into the new year, that you said to yourself, okay, I want to be better at this, this, this. What are any of those? Well, uh, definitely, like mental health, like um, making sure that I'm sharp in the game, maybe like, to be honest, like getting frustrated less and making sure that I'm prepared for the game if it's by routines. Uh, my sports psychologist, Ole, in Maus, he doesn't get much credit, so I really want to give it to him. He really helped me. Um, so yeah, we had some good New Year resolution, as you say, and yeah, coming into this year, I believe I can reach much better highs, and I think this game just proved that, you know, and I just want to make sure that I can consistently perform like this so my team can benefit from it as well. Speaking of your, your team, you obviously have a new player, and I know that Frozen before was a pretty vocal member for you guys with Maus. How is Roland's contributions? Because I'm sure he's like trying to balance his game and trying to contribute. How much of a voice is he? I mean, I f first of all, I think he's incredible. I was really surprised in Abu Dhabi in, uh, when we stood in for us how, how good he is, how vocal he is, how smart he is. So, yeah, I mean, I think he has a, a decent part. Um, I mean, obviously, it's basically me and Shuhi talking most of the round, but um, on the Lurk, it's very important that he chimes in with input so that uh, Daigel can perform as well. So, yeah, I think that he's doing a really good job, and I'm really happy to have him on the team.
I also think I have a question. If, if we're looking at the CT roles from you guys, you guys have three players who can like play the hard roles. Like it's kind of a luxury that you're all able to frag. It's mostly other teams who are like, oh, he's gonna play beam rush and he's gonna like play the safe role. But you guys have both you, uh, Jimpad, and also Brodan who can play like those passive positions. I think it's just a gift for you guys. Like, how do you feel inside the team? There, there shouldn't be a lot of competition for the good roles, right? Yeah, I mean, I think this was uh, actually never a discussion for us. We never had issues about this even back in NXT when we had the original roster. Um, I think. Uh, we are getting much better at understanding our role in the team, everyone individually, uh, what is needed from them. And I think that was very important for us. And I think it's the main reason we, are play we played really good today, for example. I think that we understood who like is the alpha in the way you know like we need to let the come like come and IGL call we need to build around on it basically so i think that uh, yeah we've been getting better at understanding our roles and yeah let's talk about the moment here right because uh, there's still one game yet to play in groups but that's just for seeding for which where you're going to be you're going to be in the spodak right you're going to be in one of the premier arenas in the world of counter strike you're going to enter that hall of heroes here at the intel extreme masters katowice and contend for a trophy that every cs player has dreamed of lifting what's going through your head when you you consider that I mean, uh, it's an amazing opportunity, uh, especially considering last year we just bombed out last place. So uh, it's really nice to be back. It's really nice to win two games in a row for confidence as well. Obviously, this uh, event is huge for us and for everyone else, uh, in all the teams here. And I think it's just important to take it step by step and just game by game. It's just another event. Obviously, it's exciting to play in Spodek. I'm very humbling and happy to play there. But at the end of the day, it's just another event, start of the year. We need to show that we are still a contender for titles. That's our goal. And yeah, I'm just looking forward to playing in the arena. Cool. Speaking of that contention, one more question before we let you get away. It feels like the hierarchy is maybe being a little upended at the beginning of this year, right? Vitality is now out, eliminated from this event. A team they like lost? Spirit yeah, they lost. They lost. They lost. Yeah. They're gone. <laughs> so we've got we've got a team like Spirit roaring in with a new face in Donk. We've got Ents going on a tremendous run right now. Just won the first map up against G2. I mean, the, the world order is thrown into complete disarray, right? Is this the moment for a young team, a young squad like Maus, who've been contending for titles, who lifted a trophy at the end of CSGO? Is this your time? Uh, definitely. I think that we're extremely hungry, all of us. We know what we're capable of. And I think the most important thing is that CS2 is a still a new game. There is updates being pushed out like once every month for two months that change the game like completely, I feel like. So I think it's just about who works the hardest and smartest. And I think my coach Cyclone said it good in an interview on HLTV that there's not really the best team in the world right now. Obviously, Vitality is incredible, to be honest. And it was a shock to me that they are out now. But... You know, it's still a new game. Uh, they still have issues to fix, like just every team. And I think that every, every team wants to take opportunity of this. And that's why we see like rising teams like Ants and Spirit. Obviously, Spirit is incredible with Donk. And yeah, I mean, I'm just looking forward. I think it's a very competitive era of CS right now. And yeah, I'm really excited to play against more teams. Well, we're excited to watch you, man. Congratulations on the win. Congratulations on the spot in the Spodek. That's well deserved. Can't wait to see what you do there. And you. Uh, yeah, you can just take the headset off and wander off. We'll keep talking here. Oh. I'll get that one for you. And actually, we do have something else to talk about because Mr. James Banks got a little check-in on the A-Stream. Let's find out what he had to say. An update of what's going on here on the A-Stream. G2 taking on Ents. And, well, Ents managed to get their map pick off Mirage, but they did it in style. There was some great grenade users, huge teamwork coming in. And even on the last round, it was just Pistols and Sub Eagles that got the job done. I spoke to Taz quickly as well, and he was saying his individuals in G2 are not to where they need to be. Even if they go on to two maps that's comfortable for them, this could be a tricky situation. And just think about this. Glaive doing it all again with a Polish lineup? That would be an incredible storyline here for Katowice. Let's wait and see what happens. But next up's Anubis. It would be indeed, James. Thank you. But let's turn our focus right back in to what we've just witnessed. Maus, man, they look yeah. very buttoned up right now coming into Katowice. Put some respect on Cyclone's name, man. Like, getting these players into a team and making them go so far consistently in tournaments, like, I don't think there's a many other coaches than him that would be able to do that. Obviously, you can throw in Sonic and play, but they're used to working with so many quote-unquote better players, but he's brought them all the way from the Academy League. Like, when you covered the WePlay Academy League, you were covering these players. Yes. And now they're all of a sudden standing in one of the biggest arenas in CS. It's such an incredible journey. It's the whole setup. It's definitely also a, a big applause to Cyclone for me. Yeah, just to kind of celebrate Mao's here right now, just the fact that a few of these guys were just playing in the Academy League as soon as, like, two years ago, I think, with the Impact. Maybe even sooner with the Impact, actually. Yeah. But then the other three, uh, Torzi, Exertion, and Shuhei, you know, they're the core part of that that we play Academy League roster. And so just their journey overall has been really such a marvel. And I really feel like with, with how they are playing now, this is kind of what you want. You want a super hungry team that, yes, they, they did win one trophy in CSGO, but like, like Exertion said, it's CS2, it's a new game. It feels like they're keeping themselves incredible 
incredibly hungry and motivated. And I like that, the, by the way, just like one little point about it, they replaced Frozen, who was obviously their star player, with Brolin, with a guy that's also 21. Like, the hunger is there across the board. Like, mm. it's a young team. They're all hungry. Shuhei's just nodding at me from the corner. He's like, yeah, we hungry. We hungry. He wants to chomp down on something, I'm sure, right now. Seems like he's got some words for us. Shuhei, you want to <laughs> just hop up here? You want to just hop up? No, no. Oh, he's, he's on the phone making business. He's got a call. <laughs> all right, Maus. I mean, they're through to the Spodak, but they still have a chance to go straight into the semifinals to skip a step here. It's going to be uh, require a victory against whoever wins from Ents and G2. Again, a shocking one. Yep. The fact that we have Ents up on oh, map yeah. on G2, potential to make it into the Spodak as a Polish team for the first time in... I, it's so long. It's like 2016, I think, maybe. It's legitimately so wild that right now Ents are one map away, and it's practically speaking just the core of the nine roster, which had yeah. so many problems on LAN every time they went to a big event. Like, I thought they were going to do so much better at Paris, and then they just bombed out of that. But then they just switched the leader from Minio to Glaive, and whoop, all of a sudden, you have one of the GOAT IGLs that is just hand like handling in terms of the mentality, whereas those players have always been good. It's just kind of that hurdle that he's helping them get over. There's also this little guy. There's, there's, there is this guy named Diha. Yeah, he, uh, you know, the kind of he's a hometown kid, true. literally now one map away from making into the Spodek for the first time ever. But the thing with Ince for me is so weird. We went into the tournament and even spoke with Clave a little bit. Like, he was mm, not feeling like he felt they could play well, right? But he didn't let, had that feeling like potential vitality versus pro, Astralis, all these teams. They kind of came into that or, that uh, or tournament and with like their breast coming up. And then they, we kind of look now and then it's just all of a sudden changed. We saw the Chengdu qualifier, like they couldn't even make it past to round 16 to like literally no-namers. And now they're sitting on beating the best and the best. It's, it's an incredible journey and it's such an, in a short amount. The brutality of single elimination online. Speaking about brutality, speaking about elimination, let's talk about the other team that was in this matchup because there is another team. Mm. There's Gamer Legion, right? They're now down to the lower bracket. They're gonna play Heroic, the team that just knocked out Vitality. Oh, okay. What do we think about Gamer Legion? Uh, Game Religion, yeah, I'd say that they're trending upwards. It's unfortunate that we're able to kind of see their ceiling here. I feel like when it comes to GL, I just, I'm not sure. It's still like, what I think Bubski and I have noticed is that it has to really be great teamwork and a team effort and a good game plan. And if that's not there, they unfortunately don't really have any individual for me right now. Like, yeah, sure, Isaac did pretty well in this series, but they don't have some superstar that's going to lift them well above what the team had planned. I also think this was their game to win. I think Mouse is a great team, but it's one you can expect to beat if you want to go into that sport area, now they're going in the lower braid and it's just going to be 10 times harder because they're going to have less prep time, they're going to meet equally good teams and they're going to have to play two bo 3s more. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see if they're up to the task. They've surprised us to get to this point. We'll see if they've got more surprises in the tank. For now, we're going to take a break before we get back with our last matchup of the day. See you soon, folks. Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the side. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL, this is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Manages one out of that. Ants had to trade it, and they did. Now things slow down again. Glaive flirting with his smoke on bridge. And gonna step through as it fades. Nico's already conceded the ground and shifted to the A bomb site. Him and Nexo working in tandem. Looking like a split towards that A bomb site. So Nico better look back at some point. But Glaive can still investigate Temple and call his oh, team back. Not only that, but Monacy's starting to move into the Temple, too. 
Glaive better pray that Monacy doesn't check to his left and he does start to think about it, but Glaive knocks him out before he can have impact. And now where do they go with this one? There's still a lot of time left. Yeah, but Glaive's just straight up disappearing. Ninja vanish. Kyler and Hades rotating all the way back around. Goofy can go canals. Hunter has shifted back to try and find him in middle because Nico and Nexa are blocked off. Yeah, but in doing so, has left that B bomb site open. So yep. They can go over there for Anson. It's completely free. Completely free. Glaive has just worked his team. I was going to say a free bomb plant, but now Nico's here. He mullied himself off. It was actually delayed them and allowed Hunter to get in behind him. And oh my goodness, this could just absolutely fall apart at the hands of Ents. Good shot from Hades. Needed to remove Nico, but remember, Hunter's still coming through the darkness and Kylar eradicates him. Now Nexa has to clutch and he's sweeping through this bomb site. Just one player left in Glaive and Nexa saves the day. They needed that move, they needed that clutch, and Nexa provides. Yeah, wow, I think you're right. That Molotov in towards Dark, that, that ruined the timing far more than Glaive thought it would. He's trying to cross the T's and dot the I's and make sure nothing goes unchecked. That's like a special 1G move, kind of like a like a, something that's inspired by it. He's just mullied himself off and, and held down and allows Hunter to come in the back. Yeah, they it took way too long to pull that off because they had the A play sold. They had the defense out of position and just too much time elapses before they pull the trigger. He was so good until it wasn't. It was actually beautiful to watch how they outmaneuvered them, how Glaive in particular did it. And uh, it's crushing to lose that kind of round because now look at the money. Now look at the score. And you can see on the end's faces how that has fallen apart. Oof. AK for Deha. Galil's out there going for it. They've thrown everything into it. I think they feel like they can, I mean, they probably, that, that round they definitely know slipped away from them. So they're just saying, we, we can get the advantages, we can trade the kills, we can gain the space. Let's challenge again. Very slow and cautious opening again. Plenty of utility for Ents, despite the fact they've had to drop down to pistols. Monas, yes, to change position, and he'll nail that one. Hades had no opportunity to react in time. Monas, he gets out of the fire, and Nico now on fire in mid. It's a good kill on Glaive, and Ants have lost two. Yeah, Monas, he made that look so fluid. That switch around with the Molotov into the peak, and then him and Nico have great protocols. Monas, he falls back to flash for Nico's follow up peak, draws one more Ants player out into the open, and this is perfect control of mid. Nico could just back away. Job's kind of done at this point. Cool. trying to get a little boost going there, but a fumble. And they're worried because it made a lot of noise that G2 would be primed on the other side. So they're going to go elsewhere. They're going to dive down into the canal and now accelerate over towards B, where Deha currently is with that bomb. Hunter plays from Ivy, looking to be poisonous. He spots the back of Kylar, who is encroaching upon his position, and Hunter is forced away. Oh, Goofy no. actually got a double. I can't believe Ensign found a way back into this again. This is the little Ens that could... And now the retake for Nico is attempted through the temple and nothing going his way just yet. Deha swings it, looking to bring his rifle into the play. And he's got two players inside a temple pinned as Nico and Nexa make their way back in. It's all on Goofy with three players left. And oh my God, Goofy, he's got another one. A 1v2, but overwhelmed by Monacy. I think Ents might have thrown that away in the post plant just as much as G2 threw that away in the initial inv the initial contact. Good entries coming up, a very passive defense which gave room to work with, and Ents is able to wrap around the bomb site. Unfortunately, Dia missing all those shots. Nico with a good entrance coming out on the retake right here over towards Glyph. And Dia just couldn't keep him pinned down well enough. G2 pull off a great retake, and they're up by one. Another round where Ents come close. So they keep investing a little. Tech 9s and Mac 10s. And for G2, an opportunity to perhaps breathe. Hoxie going out with Hunter. We've seen this move from them before. They love a bit of the aggression together. 
One kill for Hoopsie. Hunter, can he make anything of it? I cannot believe he's still alive. Get rid of him, finally. <laughs> They've got Hunter, but it set up Nico with all the distraction he needed to get in behind them. And now he's just waiting for his time to strike, and Nico will absolutely strike true. Hades' head popped open. And now a 3v2 with Nexa waiting in the wings. Yeah, we're starting to look at a sharper Nico here on, a, on Anubis. Not the sharpest we've ever seen him, but definitely a little bit more impact than Mirage. Modesty doing good as well with the AWP. And G2 has recovered. Taz has certainly got the coaching fist bumps on lock. He's learned that skill real fast. Yeah, we knew that one was going to be there quick. Four in a row for G2's defense. It's been labored at times, but it's getting the job done. Yeah, it's a good defensive side already, but Ants have been waiting for the moment when they finally get all the AKs back. And this all spawns off that round where Glaive Molotovs himself off in dark. But they just gotta let it slip. They just gotta put that out of their minds and try and focus for the rest of this half and get as much of it as they can because they have been getting themselves into good position pretty much every round. No matter what the weapons they bring to the table. And that's a positive sign. And it's just spread out in their normal default that we've seen round after round. Looking for pushes. Making sure G2 knows they have a player in mid. Bomb now shifting towards B. Three defenders here as Nico's entrusted with mid all by his lonesome. And Hunter's so good at locking Dark down that he's just got some utility. He's waiting until he spots someone before he pulls that pin. And they trade fire. Follow up made for a Hunter lands in the perfect position. Identical utility, different results. And a deeper molly this time. Ents are kept out and Hunter feels confident to go for a peek off the back of this. And it might work out well for him or it could end in misery, which is exactly what happened. So Monacy's oh. turn, just a single kill. Wall buying headshot from Kyler comes in. Monacy's put in the ground and that's the plant in for Ents. Monacy got stuck trying to get back into cover, just ran into the corner and couldn't get away from Kyler. Yeah, we've all been there in CS2, and now Nico, Hooksy, and Nex are the trio. I don't think you go for it. At the left in this one, and yeah, it's, it doesn't look too realistic. And Man so, down, no nades. It's a walk away from them. Their chances will come in the later round. Oh, that's painful. Hunter as well, looking over the Molotov, had Goofy just hanging out right behind the flames, his little head poking up and just couldn't find it. Well, that will be four for Ants, and i got to say, as soon as they get the full buyout, Jason, back to winning ways. Oh, Hooksy could take a few of these weapons away, and they don't have a whole lot of cash left over. That's an instant double. That does actually screw over their economy. Yeah, that's, decent a, amount. that's a really nice piece of damage right at the end, uh, end of the day, end of the round. One round back is Ents. Yeah, great Hunter utility just... from Hunter. I, I can't, but he played it so well up until that final point where he just gets... Yeah, he got, he got curious, you know? Mm. He just wanted to see what was happening. And he might have taken that fight with Goofy. Curiosity he killed the hunter. Killed the hunter. Yeah, I think he might have he might have actually just stuck around and taken that fight to the death. I don't think he realized Goofy was that wide. He thought he was going to be able to get away from the spam the deeper he went. Either way, punished. And Ents take a timeout. Cuban wants to have a chat with the boys, give Glaive some time to think. Yeah, going through that first one, burning through it. If you are tuning in for the first time and wondering what this matchup means, this is an advancement match into the playoffs. And answer a team that came into this event with questions surrounding them, wondering what level will they be at? We j the only thing we've really seen from them wasn't all that positive. And they got some big results under their belt. I think early on, they give them the confidence to believe they've got what it takes. And now they're taking on titans of the game in G2. His Nex are getting a bit aggressive through that dark smoke. We've seen Hooksy attempt this earlier in the half. Didn't work too well. Nex is trying it this time. He's got a good position. And with Monacy, it works out well. Hunter to blind pressure outside A. D. Hot and Goofy withstand all of the pressure. And in fact, win all the fights. I feel like Diaz Galil just had 60 bullets in it. He's just holding down mouse one. And it never ended. Spamming as well. Now they've already crossed bridge. Nico and Hooksy past the vision. Oh, this flank could be devastating. It's going to take so long for Ents to scale up canals. Monacy can just go passive. Stay alive. Is anybody thinking about the flank? 
Yeah, Goofy's having a little look every now and then, but more towards A. Not expecting it to come from the T-Star side, and here's Monacy. No! No, that's so heartbreaking for him. Monacy had a chance to line up multiple opponents and didn't get a single one, so now it has to be Hooksy in his stead. It's two coming in for Hooksy. Nico forced into the fight and actually works out for him. He gets that ball plant denied, but still will fall. And and celebrate another round victory as it ties up the scoreline five to five. That's so close. The margins on that round are razor thin. That flank, the wraparound through bridge, it was brilliant. And Ents just picked up the pace at the perfect moment to get around the cover. But man, G2 is going to look back at this one and say, "How close was this crunch? This aggression from Canals and A-Main at the same time? It was so close to working. It was so close to just winning the round out of the gate. And the fights go in the wrong direction. Dios celebrates, and we're all tied up." Probably won't be tied for long, considering G2 is purchased. Ooh, what is Hooksy doing these days? Holy, nice shot on Hades. Don't expect it to go anywhere, but if they walk into a B stack in you know, 5v4, maybe, just maybe, we got a full USP on our hands here, Jason. Nah. He's gonna line them up. I forgot this isn't cloud. <laughs> <laughs> well, hold the phone. There's a little bit of a chance here. Yeah, there definitely is a chance because those are two deadly pistols in the hands of two deadly players. Now an AK-47 for Monacy. And Goofy and Kyla are making their way to A, but they're separated. And this gives Hunter a chance for a 1v1 fight. Oh, Goofy has to ready and steady himself, and he absolutely will. It's now Monacy sprinting back over, and that camera is smoked out. Monacy has some cover to make his way forward. Does he take the risk? He does, and Goofy's ready for it. Gets scary, but it is Ents regardless to move forward. Yeah, Goofy taking no liberties, watching everything. I was curious, because Monacy could have just bailed out of that fight and gone to pick up an AWP. He's not going to have it in this final round. M4 is across the board for G2. This is a shot and a half. Two HP. Peace. Boop. Yeah. You, you feel it if you're Hades. Yep, that just that happened. Move on. And that's exactly what G2 have to do here because they do not have an AWP. Just M4s across the board. You would say they'd still be able to compete with obviously five rounds in the half, but they would love a sixth to tie things up. Hades searching above the top of the mist. And Monacy's Whisper will split it. Good shot right through the head of Hades out in back-to-back -back rounds. Yeah, that's a pair of really crappy rounds for Hades. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, cool. He's like, sure, I guess this is the game we're playing now. His T-side ended like five minutes ago. A double flash to push out. Kyler's ready and waiting. G2 give over the equalizer with a bit of aggression. Hunter still wants to stick around. He's got a frisky idea. Yeah, Nexus had a decent half here. We need to be even better than decent, though. He's got a headshot on Deha. That stopped them at the door of A. The way that smoke faded couldn't have been worse for Deha. Yeah. It, like, faded around his chest first, like just his gun. Yep. And Nexus seen all he needed to start shooting. So how to end to recover this one, or do they? Goofy's coming out to make sure that his teammate can drop down safely, but there's a booby trap set up in dark. There's I think players there. I wonder if Kyler heard some footsteps, but this is the only way back in. Throw utility, start making it look like it's going to be an A hit. Give Kyler room to work with. He's wrapping into that A bomb site right now. Nexa and Nico both focused on A main. Plenty of time for Kyler to have impact. Well, Kyler is being watched from heaven. He's going to win this fight, and he won't against Nico. Tough to win a fight against one of the best riflers in the world, and he's showing us exactly that in this round. Nico with the double leaves Glaive alone in a 1v3. This half has been much better from G2. They finally arrived to the game. You'd stay and say it's still a B game from them. Well, taking six at the turn of the half ties things right up. And this series now has dreams of a third map. G2 trying to secure it. Join us after the break.
two versus Ents is six to six here on Anubis. Second map of the series for qualification to the Spodek. Ents had a couple of opportunities to leave that half with even more rounds, but they let a few slip, and that's what happens when you're an inexperienced roster. Yeah, it really is, and then now they're kind of showing as this tournament goes on, as they get more and more of these matches under their belt, that that inexperience starts to shift away. Maybe the playbook's not deep enough, but you get that experience in high-pressure matches, and let's see what they can do with it. Four players across bridge. Oh, this looks like my matchmaking strategy. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely one you've ran before, Jason. And, uh, well, not like that. You don't hit shots like that. Clay with the triple. Goofy coming in, and oh my goodness, G2. Good night. Sleep well. I win my pistols, though. Well, uh, not really much to say. They don't fool the defense, nobody moves, nobody shifts due to the footsteps and just entirely shut down Glaive. Clothesline's Modesty, add Hooksy on top. He gets so many and then the duelies get involved in the action. Just a complete dismantling of that tactic. <laughs> Hooksy's face, oh my goodness. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one to have to swallow because G2 don't get the bomb plant, which means they don't get the force by, and Ants get the idyllic start. It's so incredible that we're 10 years on from the first ever CSGO event in that Spodak arena, and that was Taz winning it with the VP guys. And now first CS2 event 10 years later, and he has a chance to make it through. It's, it's cool, we got that history, and it will be fantastic to see Obviously, everyone here moving forward. Yeah, Neo's there as well from FaZe. Chance for some former champions to get on the stage still. Kyler, oh, they're, they're so much closer than he expects. Yeah, he's, he's gonna get overrun, but he will get back in time. And now he has a chance to make a lot of money. Great opportunity if he can mow them down and D-Hus with him. Glaive is coming in that rotation. And there was a chance there with Kyler getting caught, not seeing them creep up, but he recovers it. Yeah, that's really good that he got the information when he did. The smoke didn't do anything, but it at least prepared him for the fight that was definitely coming. No plants. G2 is going to get AKs in this third round regardless. All across the board, utility smokes and flashes as well. A first look of the G2 T side. Here on Anubis. Their map pick as well to try and extend this series down zero maps to one. So it's Hoopsie's calling against that of Glaive. Ancient would be the decider if G2 can take us there. You know what they're saying about Ancient these days in CS2? The new Inferno? That's what they're saying. All good, best of threes, and on Ancient. I'm I'm really curious to watch how Goofy plays this, because he's, he's on his own. And Glaive is kind of sticking around, but at a certain point, it's like, bro, good luck. If you like, if you stick around and try and defend him, you, you risk so much. Now Hades at the end of A main as well, but this setup is like it's strong, but it's tough to hold. It's I don't know. It's like brittle. Like yeah. you know, like if if it all works, it's going to be great. But if one player goes down, the whole thing's going to collapse. A house of cards, you Jenga. may call it. Well, there's multiple things I suppose you can call it then. But if you take one piece out of a Jenga tower, it will stand. And there's Goofy. Let's see if it is Jenga or a house of cards. Indeed. It seems to have collapsed completely. And so now we're looking at G2 with 40 seconds left in this round, and they've got the player advantage, and the maneuver towards B is being set up. Yeah, really hard to pull off that setup when, when you don't get that initial contact. You get the, don't get those initial fights with the aggression, at least one or two players. Now they got to sink back into the B bombs. Idea's going to drop. Oh, Nexus waiting, Flash. but it don't matter. Yeah, he just drops on down into the water, gets his feet wet, and gets a kill. Glaive does even better than that. He doubles his kill count, and now it's Hunter running away. Oh, that is a tough one to swallow for G2, isn't it? Yeah, he's got no time to go elsewhere either. This is just going to be a save. 22 HP, 1v3, and far away from the bomb site. So even despite the kills going in the direction early of G2, ends to recover. Good positioning on defense, and Glaive through smoke. 15 and 9 for Glaive. Oh, it's just so rough here for, for G2. This happens to them. Diha dives down. We've seen it earlier in the series versus Vitality. Nerds did a similar play, so maybe it's like a former Ents thing, you know? It's an incredible move. I, honestly, it's, it's, I think it's mostly born out of a little bit of desperation of realizing oh, no, it definitely if is. they're going to hold that bomb site, like Diha needs to be involved in the action with how close he is. And Nexa even seemed prepared for it, but maybe just like the unlikeliness of the play 
caused his focus to shift at the worst moment. Yeah, and it was the it was the same situation with that Nurse claim I'm mentioning earlier. Desperation gives you a big moment. And it was the same thing there. Apex even had the read, but hold the phone. Here comes the execute. d -Hog gets a kill, so does Glaive to slow things down. Glaive, or Goofy, excuse me, using the pillar for cover, but not for long. It's Hooksy and Modesty, two on four. Yeah, got two AKs, two out of this. So let's see what they've got in them. Smoke goes down towards CT. That at least cuts off some of the support network here for Ents. And through that smoke to Temple, d -Hog has been cut through by Modesty. So looking to plant the bomb, receives damage on top, but Hooksy's in a really powerful position, but it's short lived, so it's on Monacy, and he can't do it. Ants come back in for the retake, even though G2 battled their way through the bomb plant. Glaive got some swagger to him. He's swinging into fights right now. He is taking the lead, taking the charge for his team. It's crazy what a bit of confidence can do for your mindset, right? You're willing to go for these fights. Maybe we wouldn't have seen it. Not so long ago, but he said he's been working on his individual form on the CT side in particular, and we've definitely seen him live up to that. Yeah, well, I mean, remember, one of the great strengths of the legendary Astralis roster was the fact that Glaive was just a fragging in-game leader. He was not a liability. There's always an, those smoke kills too, Jason. Yeah, on an individual level whatsoever. So if he gets back to that, all of a sudden we're cooking with gas. Yeah, we definitely are at this point. Eddie's shadow, he shot a little early because of the shadow. Uh, Hooksy took a weird maneuver, a weird movement down the stairway that allowed him to get that kill on the AK-47. Monacy getting bullets whizzing past him. He's allowing Hunter to move on in. One kill towards the back of the platform and Monacy needed to nail that one. And he absolutely finds it. It's Kylo left in a 1v4. This one's not winnable, of course. Cool so idea. G2 got seven. Cool idea from Ants. Goofy just couldn't track Monacy. Maybe it's a little bit different if he's able to get that kill and then perhaps push B main and get into some cover, but that follow-up flashbang looked like it would have been real nice. Yeah, seventh round. Good on G2 for cracking it open. Hunter getting a little bit of a relaxing, calming Polish massage. Now, would you call Taz's hands meat claws as well? Or Not to his face. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll leave that to Maui. We'll leave that to Maui. But Kylar, it's a bit of a boring situation for him, but at least he's got a nice view. Yeah, hang on to that AK. They've got money built up as well, so it's not it's not any kind of red flag situation quite yet for Ents in terms of their economy. Next round will be. Next round will be a little bit of an issue if, they, if they're to lose that one, because they're going to have to probably invest everything. Hades will want that all back, he'll want that shot back that he missed down window. The G2 pulled themselves within three. Remember, this series uh, is for a spot in the playoffs. No one going home, no one being eliminated on a loss. It's just a guarantee that you'll be in the playoffs, you'll be inside the Spodek, and we'll figure out if it's a semi-final spot or a quarter-final spot later. It is funny to hear four Polish players and a Polish coach communicating in English for the sake of Glaive and, of course, what a piece it is to have in the roster. So it seems to be worth it. And this, as you mentioned, is the round where Enza's economy is now brutal. It can break apart with just one round loss. And G2 will be right back in the play. Hooksy making his way through the water and towards this A bomb site. And oh no, it's Hades waiting around that corner, and Hooksy couldn't deal with a god of the underworld. Yeah, good on him for hitting that shot, though. He missed the one previously. This one was a nice sitter that he's able to nail. But middle is wide open and exposed. Dia's going to slide over to keep an eye on camera. Oh, Nico going to turn the corner. Sees a shoulder. Spam gets him down. Oh. And the follow up. The cousins are gone. It's Dia on top. Yeah, don't invite Diha to any family occasions. He has just absolutely ripped them up. Nexa and Monacy in a 2v5 as they encroach upon this A site. They know that Hades was last attacked. Another date with Destiny begins here in the Hall of Heroes at the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice. And this time around, it's Complexity and Falcons fighting for survival. Only one of these teams can remain in the tournament. Who's it going to be, boys? Ooh.
Wow. You're already going to ask for a prediction this early, Mike? No, I'm just saying, how are you feeling? I'm doing great, Mike. That's a, more, that's a more standard opener, I would feel like. But no, I mean... I'm, I'll answer that question later. I will. All right, answer, all right, we'll answer get who I think is going to win later. Tease. But yeah, now both of these teams probably not in the position that they would hope to be in. Obviously, complexity—a team that really started off super hot in CS2. Falcons—a team that probably wanted to start off really hot, but hasn't quite been the case. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Falcons has disappointed everyone, including themselves. I think they just thought that there were going to be ends with just kind of the same as the get-go, but they've been, been even worse. So it's kind of looking a little odd at this point. It has looked a little bit odd, and to find out some answers, we got James Banks to talk to some bias and see what he had to say. Now, Falcons did manage to get the win yesterday, but it was not an easy fight, some bias. I want to ask you straight away, did it feel kind of a dangerous, slippery slope on that new game? I mean, for sure, it was like really close. I think they played really well. But overall, I, I didn't play my game. I am having like a rough period right now. Mm -hmm. But I hope I will fix it today. So let's see. We have a good match against Complexity, and I hope it's it's going to take us uh, the win for sure. Now you said yourself, right? You feel like you're having a rough period, but you've got the same players, the same core around you, right? So what is it down to? Why is this going wrong? Like I'm having things like uh, on my mind right now. I am probably overthinking a bit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm really happy to be with the same core. Uh, still, it's a new team. We have to uh, still uh, make new agreements, uh, be in the same pace all together. So yeah, for sure it's uh, it's like this. It's just a matter of time that we start playing like better CS as a team. So yeah, that's it. So right now it's just trying to get comfort, get used to this system and work the system out. Yeah, I mean the system is uh, we are creating it right. Okay. So that's that's why actually we are having like a bit of inconsistency. Inconsistency, but I think it's that that is something normal when you have changes or when you uh, make a new lineup. Like inconsistency is something that you need to. Uh, have in your mind for the first uh, for the first months. Well, you certainly seem to have a plan on what he wants to get done here. Let's see if it comes through on the server against complexity. Inconsistency indeed, and especially for that man on your screens. It has not been a sunny performance for the Pious so far, but Snappy last night talked to us on the desk, said he needs 10% from pretty much everyone, himself included, right? They're thinking a little bit too much about what they're supposed to be doing, getting the system in place. Maybe not enough about their crosshairs. Well, one guy was definitely thinking about his crosser yesterday, and he's been under the spotlight, the microscope, for a long time. Yeah, we're seeing Boros highlights right now, and he was a big reason why they were able to take down Rebels yesterday, and I feel like they just kind of let him off the leash. They just let him loose. They let him in go into some fights. One time he had a hero M4. He picked up four kills, basically won the round single-handedly, and I feel like these are the moments where you're kind of wondering, You've got some pretty decent players on Falcons. Obviously, Entz was more of a system team than an individual team, but like Sun Pius himself kind of talking about he needs to step it up. Obviously, Snappy's saying it too, and I, like this shouldn't be the, this shouldn't be the case. They should be mopping the floor with people like Rebels. No offense to them whatsoever. And for me, it was like if Boros wasn't what he was, this was they're out of the tournament. I mean, I also think you're underestimating a little bit Sun Pius. He was the number six player on the Hill TV ranking last year. We should expect way more. Like if this team is going to work, he'll going to be have to become the star player of this team. Like, Boris is not ready for it yet. I don't think it's fair to expect that he'll be able to do this that he did yesterday. And it's also the teams that Boris kind of works against is the kind of Rebels type yes. of teams. He's like a, a tier 2, 3 destroyer. So he showed <laughs> yeah. that again. But San Peos is going to be have the tier 1 guy, right? He's going to be for the big games. And today is certainly one of them. Well, now when we're talking about getting that for him out of a guy like San Peos, out, uh, out of the team as a whole. Falcons have built perhaps one of the most prestigious support structures you could have in the game of Counter-Strike. Some guys you're familiar with, uh, you know, a little little guy you might have worked with, uh, Zonic? Bubsky? Yeah, Sonic and Lars. Uh, I think somebody just Ents, Ents just made the Spodak. Ents just made the Spodak. Oh, good. oh my goodness. Wow, good. Ents have just taken the 2-0 over G2 and secured the spot for a majority Polish team in the Spodak for the first time in nearly a decade. Wow. That is... Tremendous. Great live reporting, Mike. That's uh, that, that is actually super impressive. I know we're getting a little sidetracked, but that is that's incredible. I don't, think, I don't think any of us expected that to happen. No one expected them to do anything in this tournament. I mean, this was a team that was coming in. It was a hodgepodge. It was a melding. It was, oh, we bought this core to get the RMR spot, and they just made 
the biggest t yeah. tournament you could as a Polish squad. I guess I'll have to eat my words here. I was Oof. a bit critic of, of having five Polish people around one Danish IGL. <laughs> I think it's hard to justify that it's going to work on the Look, long run. Duolingo but some, have been working. Exactly. For but for some reason, they actually destroyed competition here. They have so many names in the bag now where you can't question if they're a real team or not. All right, let's refocus in here. Yeah. We're talking about Zonic. Yeah, we Zonic and Lars. So Zonic and Lars is one of a, um, a one of a kind duo. I think they have have a proven concept as one of the only ones in the entire space of, of esports when we talk about Counter-Strike. Obviously, we have seen a little bit about Blade, but every team Sonic and Lars has been a part of have won something, right? I think mm -hmm. very few coaches can go into a team and be like, I've won something with different types of things. He spoke about it. He wanted to be an Astralis coach for the rest of his life. Obviously, stuff behind the, the scenery didn't go as planned, but he has shown to take responsibility over his own career. I think going to Vitality and leaving is such a daring mission for some reason he didn't need to do it but he did it and now he's standing in this position where everybody can criticize him right he is up for the debate like is he the gold he is potentially but now he needs to show it once again and i think that's really for for him to take on that test uh, it certainly gives him the opportunity but let's focus in on the other side as well because this is another team that's had question marks this is another team that's had questions about their performance i'm talking about complexity and to find out about it we got some words from halzer Complexity are now facing off against Falcons here after a very tough game against Spirit. But in that tough game, Halzer, we saw the death slams, we saw the frustration, we saw the tilt again. What is going on? Because we thought you guys had got past this. I mean, it's a work in progress for sure. I mean, <laughs> I think that's our lobby has to keep in check today. That's if we're winning this game, it's because we're keeping a good mood, and if we're losing today, it's because we're just everyone's tilting. So that's our. Like main focus today is just everyone trying to keep a good mood and not tilt. If that tilt does start to happen though, if things start to go bad, have you guys spoke as a team to say we need to do this, we need to like slow things down, TC needs to call a timeout? Yeah, we actually have spoken about a few things yes. that we need to do. So yeah, we have uh, some checkpoints to do if it start happening, so uh, yeah. Now, Falcons, right? Name value, how good this team is supposed to be. They've not quite hit it just yet. Do you feel like this is a team that you're quite comfortable with because their map pool's not so good? What you've seen from them maybe isn't so good? How do you view it? I mean, we can't, like, we can't underestimate them for sure. I mean, we know what they can do and what the players they have. So, I mean, we're going into this game, like, expecting a hard game. You know, we have Snappy's a good enemy leader and they can always pull something out of the bag and also they have great upper and everything. So, I mean, it's going to be a hard game no matter what. Wow, well, Halzerk's given him a lot of respect, but let's see if there's any respect on that server. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. Man tells me he's got a point for this, and he just doesn't doesn't even jump yeah, well, on it. I mean, they're going to need to jump on it in the server, right? It's been a bit of a seesaw here for complexity. It's been all over the place. You had that strong 2-0 over Apex, maybe a little shaky at the end there, but on full control. And then they got donked. They got donked on the bottom end there. Everybody about to get donked, but the real question here is, how do they allow a team that's been together for so long that tilt is like a question and a theme inside the team like it's fair enough inside the falcons camp because they're entirely new together they need to build that chemistry these guys have played together for so long like why is it a topic that they're tilting in mid games in important games come on guys yeah i really don't love the fact that the players on complexity just seem to wear their emotions on their sleeve to a fault mm. the fact that there is you know table pounding the fact that you see halzerk sometimes being the guy that does that elige being the guy it felt like actually like, this is kind of the thing I've, that's been such a, a trademark of complexity is that they thrive off of what I was calling honeymoons the other time I've covered them. It's just that when Elise joined the team, it felt like everybody focused up. Everybody had their emotions in order. Everything seemed like it was going well. And then, well, they reverted back to their normal selves where they get a little bit more tilted. Well, they had another honeymoon. CS2 comes out. That thing kind of reboots itself. They all are feeling great about everything because there's a new game in front of them. And then, well, they're back to tilting again. Like, th th it needs to be something where you can maintain that sort of honeymoon feeling all the time. You can't just like come into it and then just resort back to your demons shouldn't just come out that easily Mike Like you shouldn't have to be on the honeymoon to bring out the best version of yourself You don't have to be on vacation. You should be bringing that every single day in day out That's what makes a relationship work Sounds like maybe they need a, a, a therapist, a, a relationship counselor on their support staff. I mean, I'm not sure where we're going. This demons, are we getting an exorcist in there? What's going on? What, what's going on in the veto? Well, we got the 
perma bans coming out from both of these teams. Falcons have been leaning into a couple maps. Ancient is the one that they're going to be picking. It is a map that Complexity is okay with, but Complexity, this is their tried and tested perma pick overpass, and so that's going to be a really big test for the Falcons. The thing with the Ancient for Falcons is obviously just from the ins area that they like this map, but they had nerds in that middle area who were so good at getting those initial opening frags. Are they going to put Boris in the same type of situation? I'm not looking to see that he's like the same type of lurker. He's more of a guy you send in first, and he just opens up the side. So it's going to be interesting to see if Snappy is able to adapt around new players. We'll see if he can. We'll see if he can. Indeed, it looked good last night, but maybe a little I, more tenuous than Falcons would like. I've really... One thing is that having seen Falcons play Ancient a bit already at the Blast Spring Groups, they put Boros on, as the A anchor of this map, and I just hate that position for him so much. I think it's really, really bad for him. And so I think that maybe they're going to start off with a good T side. I think, I think Snappy always has something cooking on that map, but when it comes to the CT side, I would not be surprised if I watch Complexity go for at least half of their plays ending at A. I mean, they're certainly a team, right, with JT leading. Like to get on a hot start on those T sides, like to get some targeted plays in there. Uh, could definitely be a, a little bit of a punish maneuver. Yeah, I also think when we're looking at the side of complexity, the, the guy in the picture, Grim, is necessary for complexity to be what we saw after CS2 release. Like, him and Horsock needs to find their level in order to lift this entire project, because at least Floppy and JT isn't a strong enough duo to just power through games. It's like this teamwork we kind of spoke with the Gamer Legion earlier, but these guys actually have real star players, if you ask me, but the rest of the team is just so lacking at times. Grim and Horsock, when they follow other games, they just become irrelevant at times. Yes, and uh, well, guy we're looking at right there, JT, I mean, you're talking about Halzer, Grim needing to see more. JT has such a pivotal role on this map. I don't know if he's going to be able to hold on to Cave against Falcons, but if Complexity want any chance to win this in two maps, he's going to have to do that. Well, we'll find out if they can. Two maps, three maps, what's it going to be? Well, it's going to be two guys in the chairs talking in your ears. Take it away, boys. Yes, sir, Mike, I am in a chair and I am speaking in the people's ears. Joined by Launders for the final game of the day here on the B stream. We got North America and we've got the Falcons. And Launders, I'm just going to put something out there. I'm going to put out a, a little feeler here and I want your reaction. Okay. Of the 160 players currently playing in the group stage of IEM Katowice 2024, yeah. Sun Pius is rated 150th. Is higher, higher is uh, better, right? Yes. Yes. Because that's the only way that would make sense for St. Pius. Mm -hmm. Because St. Pius is one of the best players in the world. So then why is every single player on Apex, on Gamer Legion, on Mouse, on Cloud9, on Complexity rated higher than St. Pius? How is it that St. Pius can find himself in the doldrums like that? Well, I haven't found any good paella in Poland. So that could be a contributing factor. Other than that, I really don't know because we've actually watched Falcons play and I don't have anyone to blame sort of butt him in some of those situations. Definitely not a great tournament so far from the eye test. Watching Sun Pius play, he was making his fair share of mistakes, missing some easy shots, not like him. Very odd. I called him the most device-like opper in modern CS in terms of the way that he looks. And uh, that's largely because he's got such a calm play style that translates to very consistent output. Isn't getting that here. Feels like if he is not a part of the solution tonight, Complexity will win this game. Halzerk, he's going to hold off the cave peak. We've got Ramp falling the way of Falcons, though. Halzerk gets active with JT right with him. And so two quick kills in rapid succession to take that 5v3 and honestly, just get your bomb plant at this point. Floppy, gonna try to charge him down. Bomb is indeed planted. Matting comes off of that with a nice clean headshot. Won't be able to get anything more. And we've got complexity with the retake successful for the pistol round, map one. So to set the stage for this matchup, I wasn't too excited for it because both of these teams, we casted them playing it sort of at their worst. I think yesterday we watched Complexity play against Spirit. That was abysmal. Like, it was a wash. You can remember things that Donk did and Spirit did, but nothing that Complexity did except for hitting their armrests, looking very frustrated, getting five rounds overpassed that were interesting to watch. That's it. They got mopped. Um, and then for, for Falcons, like, they also nearly lost to Rebels, and... Rebels played very well, but watching Sun Pius have a game where he just, he missed maybe half of the easy shots that he was supposed to take, and then nobody else was getting multi-kills in any round, well, kind of made you feel like, well, 
What is there to be excited about this? Here he is. First kills early on for Sun Pius. They're gonna use that entry as the ramp hit, but Grim opening smoke outside cave. JT hangs on. Desk putting a question mark around JT in cave. Or maybe more of an exclamation point. He's gonna be necessary in these B holds if Complexity are to walk away with a successful CT half. Madden traded out as Complexity get a little frisky fighting out of the cave before bombs planted. You know, he's even trying to throw himself at it. He goes back to long side, never a bomb plant, never a retake needed, but it's Complexity who wants fights, and they get one they can't handle. Now, the potential upside is that if the tournament didn't happen, these two teams coming into the start of the year, there's like, like lots of potential that they both play very well today, and their ceilings are like much higher than their ugly losses to the teams that they played against. Um, and, and so we're just looking for a power-up, and there's a massive opportunity. I think they're both... It's, it's perfect that they both play against each other. If one of them plays well today, then they can walk away feeling proud and forget about that bad loss yesterday. But for the team that loses here, yeah. it ends ugly. No, to be blunt, both these teams don't deserve to go on. I'll take one of the two. Yeah, the one who wins deserves to get on that, go on, and that's it. Yes. They both have to improve. Whichever one does so more so tonight, let them have another rip. This will be one of those bitter losses and bitter ends to a tournament that uh, won't be forgotten. Elige pretty consistent in that top mid pressure, but he'll be the first to fall to Falcons. Sketchy top mid smoke, though. JT doesn't trust it. Looks to abuse it. It's being held, though, by Boros, who pops up. Gets that 5v3 established versus pistols. Fomas changes hands. But there's nobody inside of B. And the bomb's coming up ramp in a second. So this is looking like Falcons losing a pistol all for naught. The bomb plant got that force buy in. Quick kill from Sun Pius as well back in round two. I'll say the other good thing about this series is that the, the veto is good for both, both squads. I can see this going 2-0 in either direction. And I can also see it being a banger third map. Anubis between Complexity and Falcons, they both play it, love the map, can have great games on it, so it's it's wild. The sort of spectru spectrum of opportunity here when it comes to what we could potentially see in this series. I like that the map pool's so even just because I think it plays into perfectly to what we're saying, right? Whoever improves most, but there's not going to be one weird blowout, lopsided map pool, counter pick, etc. Yeah. This feels like even ground, fair territory to duke it out. One run ends, the other goes on. So, we want to see Sun Pius cranked up. We want to see Hauser cranked up. And uh, and then on the rifling side, we want to see Alige playing his best, obviously. And then we also... Actually, the one thing we can say is that Boros actually was great. I mean, I would say he's the only one who was making special kills happen, was making X-Factor plays, was actually standing out despite the team structure sure. falling apart. So, honestly, the one player in the whole server maybe that's caught my attention this event. Oof. Down goes Floppy. I will say, Elige, you know, maybe he didn't catch your eye, but is the 10th highest rated player at the group stage right now. So even with those losses, he was getting his kills, he was staying afloat, but it just wasn't the round winning kills that we're used to with Elige. You know, he could be very textbook and it felt like that's all it really was. And a collapse around him. This round, an expected result. No defense, able to hold back weapons. Falcons, 3-1 the start. You know, we talk about JT and his uptick in individual level lately. Man's been loving CS2. Desert Eagle, as deadly as ever. Not even that has saved them in any of the rounds so far in Katowice. And we saw Leash talk about watching all of Donk's demos and basically admiring him and learning about everything Spirit's doing and talking about how good they were. But as soon as we got in game and Donk killed him on the first round, he was mad. Like, he just instantly slammed his desk. And that didn't end. It just kept getting worse, basically. I don't think Donk realized <laughs> that he was so mad um, because he was just doing as he does. Yep. But I wonder what Alige learned in that game because that was probably his first encounter. And ahead of that matchup as well, right? Saying that he had watched every single Donk demo that exists. All of them. The entire cyclopedia on Donk.
So you'd think he would have expected to die to the kid. But... Didn't like the way it went down. Probably isn't having fun right now, but at least it's guns back in for complexity. Deep smoke from spawn to doors. <clears throat> Plume's well ahead of their arrival, but they'll still just press right out. There's no follow-through aggression. Even with JT getting close to cave, Elise has to turn back. That frag grenade opening smoke was a warning sign, and Sunpaya stepping through it takes a very unfavorable duel to go down 5v4. They were gearing up for the lane fight, but Elbow instead. Yeah, this is such a winning position here for Complexity with Falcons not pressing this at all. They're waiting for, obviously, it would be a beautiful mistake for the CTs to push A in this situation, get a little too, too much extra, but they have so much information that they're really comfortable. Not a, not a bad chance there for Boros. That would have given them something. But Elise late inside a middle. Halzerk with a double layer support here as they come into elbow late. 40 seconds. You'd think it was over. You'd think it was over. Nice dink from Elise, but trades back from Magis. Halzerk didn't see it. And I feel like Magis knows exactly what's up. A little audible here as the rotates go over. Everybody stacking that A play. If Magis lose bomb, it's over. And sure enough, Floppy keeps it clean. So Snappy can creep back with AWP. If Magis cuts off that last player, maybe he makes a sprint for the B site. Hell, he could throw the Hail Mary. He could go for whatever he wanted. It was his round to play as Snappy was nowhere nearby to help. Yeah, it's, it's, it is truly like a, a phenomenon that needs to be studied that a liege can get like two or three kills and then Complexity can lose the round. Mm -hmm. I hate to disparage the team like that because like JT, I think, is a great caller. But like some of those, I don't know if it's individual decision making or like duo decision making or what it is, but... It's actually uncanny. When we saw the amount of ways that they they found a, the, 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 they, they they could lose, they could lose no matter how many kills a liege would get. It feels like complexity kind of. And in this situation, I was like, wow, maybe is this another tragedy waiting to happen? Is it possible? You know, so when you watch Spirit, it's like you watch Donk. If he gets one kill, you're like, he's getting two. Yep. Because he literally has more multi-kills than he does single kill rounds. Wow, oh, no my way. God. Just stuffed by the smoke and the fire and the frag that slowed them down. A bombardment of utility to the favor of complexity as Falcons were pretty stubborn about coming through this elbow smoke. A third player Oh, yeah. Tries, but Elise makes sure to lay down lead. Now, we say he gets one, they could still lose. He adds the third to the round after Grimm's double kill. I'm telling you, like... Last week, they could still lose it. So we got to see if it's a new week or not. Bomb and spawn in the wall. In the wall. Oh, my God. Is he DC'd? No. Okay. <laughs> Just getting nervous, man. And I'm not dying anymore. Yeah. I'm going to sit right here. No pasar. Zona Archaeologica. It's an archaeological zone because there's going to be a corpse down there in a second. And we know that swamps preserve bones incredibly well. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. What kind of, like, alligator bones and stuff? What's in there? All sorts of stuff. Bogs, for example. What's that? It's a different type of swamp. Oh, okay. One of my friends is named Bogs. I was like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> Great guy, but he stinks. <laughs> Call him swamp ass. <laughs> Sapphires is still waiting here. So then, what is um? I'm just trying to think of what dies in a swamp that's really old that we've got good bones of. Alligators, dinosaurs. Same thing. Human beings. Human beings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's uh, what's his name? I think it's called Bogman. I saw him when I was in London at the historic, uh, the 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 London History Museum. Yeah. There's Bogman. It's just like a completely preserved human who just, they think he was murdered. And then thrown and tossed thrown into Thrown in the bog. bog. And then the bog kept him so well preserved, he still got his eyebrows. Whoa, his eyebrows? Yep. Just like Grim. All eyebrows. <laughs> Bai comes back from Falcons with that op included. Sun Pai is able to hold on. We want a fast lane play by the looks of it. 
Higher likelihood Sun Pius gets kills if you don't keep him in where he spawns. And he'd already used that Galil once to crack open B, so this time he's just giving support to Madden, who crawls up. Oh. Nice headshot from JT, but there it is, that op coverage for the long kill. Molly's gonna slow it down. Follow up Util, fast response from Snappy. He's solo in the cave, so that is a huge kill to pick up. It leaves JT stranded, spam through walls. Alige, nothing. And just like that, Falcons cut through the B defense. I'm going to say it, thanks to Snappy. Thanks to Snappy, 100%. And the level is definitely coming up here. I like that we got a good round from Complexity, followed by one from Falcons. You can feel this game's a little, little bit better, a little bit more high level. I'm sure if you ask one of these teams, they, were, they would hope that the other would just be having an off day once again, so it would be an easy game to watch. But I'm personally glad. I think the viewers are happy. I think the fans of both orgs are happy right now that we're, we're getting an improvement. It's n They're not going to go out embarrassing themselves. There might be some messy rounds here because of the pressure, but I think we've got... Uh, we've, I can tell the hotel conversations that happened last night were very deep and thorough. Look at Stappy. Still hasn't slept. You know he's just been working. Man, I think after being pressed as hard as they were by Rebels, yeah, that's got to be a bit of a wake-up call to Falcons. 100%. Um, no one will know unless you watch that game how well Rebels played. Shout out Rebels one Shout more time. Shout out Rebels. They were, they were one made, more time. Really good. Like, really actually want to see... They've only been together for a month. Really want to see them play more CS2, but... Uh, Falcons need to have a higher standard. Yes. Maybe a counter pick if they open up the cave smoke. Yeah, Hauser getting boosted up. We see the utility come out from JT in cave to set up Halzerk going off down ramp. And while he doesn't kill Sun Pius, his counterpart, he does pull one off the play. So I think that's a great response to what Falcons have succeeded with, which was disrespecting that one smoke on door, setting up on boxes. And more often than not, losing elbow. So if Complexity are confident that they can control elbow, it opens up moments like that wonderfully. Gonna get the MP9 peak. Floppy trying to keep the pressure at a 10. And he gets there with the lesser weapon. It's just gonna be a cleanup duty now from JT. Oh yeah, JT, clean double. After already setting up Hulzerk with his util, he makes sure to lay down lead. The complimentary flashes are perfect. The peaks are great. The aim is looking very sharp here. I like what JT's doing on the B side of the rotations. Look very nice oh, and a, nice. a good run boost to kick things off. And then this. With the lightning strike in style. Boop. Wow, that's a That's great a great play. Shot. Wow, that's a great play, hard shot. It's never a problem with Hauserk at the hard shots, though, I gotta say. It's the, it's the sitters that Hauserk, if he picks those up, world of difference in some games. So I like that, man. That was a good strategy. That was a good call, good strat, good team play, good trade frag. Grim comes in, holds it off as the liege goes down to the sidearm. A quick burst is what Floppy's going to have to hold back with ease. Two kills just like that. And now Complexity starting to kind of get into a groove, a quicker pace in these rounds back to back with money on the line. And we know Snappy likes a faster pace. Yeah, they got to try this again, but harder, right? But Complexity's mid control is solid. Like they saw they're super solid on Ancient versus a lot of teams when it comes to taking elbow, holding on to it. I think Alige is the guy who's at the top of the meta when it comes to understanding what to do on this map. Um, and they have really, really, really come like a lot of comfort when it comes to taking control of this, fighting around cave. Um, it'll be him and Grip playing down there sometimes, a Hauser with a run boost and then uh, the cave pressure, but Util is usually perfect. Aim is great. Hard to stop. So Falcons, let's see how stubborn they want to be and if they're going to do it next round. But this round, it's pretty much a throwaway. Not much investment. So they'll go P250, Desert Eagle, and set sights on A, which right now is free for the taking. If the timing works here, it's a bomb plant. Grim's coming back. They're going to hear that run in. Ooh, they're on the brink of an open bomb site. But Halzerk will chip away from the CT spawn. Oh There's the Deagle. Oh, my God. Remember, Deagle P250. $1,000 across the board for Falcons. A oh. bomb plant's great. But it doesn't look likely. Bomb itself dives deep into the temple. Whew. Take a second frag if you have to. 
Not quite a plant, but it's something. <laughs> nice double headshot with the Glock right there. That was good. All right. Well, it got testy. It was a great shot from Boros. Made something of it. But it's really going to be about this round. I wonder what the game plan is going to be here for Falcons. Uh, sp becomes a pretty boring map if you respect the amount of opening control for the CTs can get when it comes to elbow. And then, of course, because of that with B. So, unless they want to try to do a fast play towards A, which is definitely viable, then uh, I wonder, I wonder again. Maybe we get a... Maybe we... I think... It, I, I'm feeling a fake. I'm feeling a fake here. I'm feeling a fake with a, a late elbow lurk, okay, into an A split. That's uh, my wild call. It's oddly specific. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, because I think they have to respect this. They have to respect this, yeah. Because it's too... They're... CTs, they're, these guys are too good at this, so... But you see the... Bomb is actually now walking over towards the B... Over towards B, excuse me. You know, we started this game by saying that the team who improves most tonight is the team that deserves to go on, and I'm seeing that improvement from all of oh. complexity. Each of them. On an individual level, the guns are hot. The shots are crisp. JT changes places with Madden. Madden should know of that, though. The fact he comes through and doesn't see anybody, that's got to be him on high alert, and he's got a chance to make a play with no B setup, with well, this, two players down ramp. Yeah, Matt, that's it. Madden's the inside man. He's going to come right around yeah. to Banana and make this happen. Let's go. Big chance for Madden. Hello. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Disgusting. Alzerk, though, missed oh. shot, but still great damage. Alige, and there's the flank on wow. flanks. All the while, Madden getting closer. He's still sitting in sight, but his whole team gets swept away. Layers on that. Now, that is a monster game plan. Like, that is a beautiful setup. The bomb gets picked up. Madden still has a chance mm -hmm. for the one on two. Let's make this one of the best rounds ever. A crazy answer back from Complexity to Madden, the sole hero for Falcons. That hold doesn't happen if the rest of Complexity aren't also trying to swoop in. Proactive gameplay from the Cole. Madden, here we go. Here's him running in. Missed shots at first. Now they've got him pinned against the wall. Halzer dropped. Madden, still a chance. Four shots. Oh, he needs. He's done it. He got the two kills on Banana. Came back for the 1v2. Soiled the whole thing. Keeping this game tight with a fifth on the board. That is all Madden, round 11. Wow, he got to be hyped, man. He saw all this himself. His team doesn't even realize the genius of this play that he just made. And no trade comes down. Tragedy again for complexity. And it's not because the game plan, that setup had so many fail safes. It was so beautiful. Here we go, back to mid. Trying to win this fight for once in the half. Magis to the boxes, repeats out with Snappy. They'll get Grim's scalp, JT pinched. The nade will take him down. And Floppy looking to recover some control. It was looking like an 8-4 until Falcons found this resurgence. Oh, Halzerk's gonna win the op fight. The better opper in the server right now. The better opper in the server all event long. So Bomb sits deep outside the B doors. Boros and Magisk in middle with Madden holding pocket and time ticking. Being a Halzerk made this a really nice situation and he makes it even better. There we go. And last year, one year ago, IEM Katowice was a fantastic event for Halzerk. Put his name up in the lights, almost had complexity into the Spodek a couple rounds away. And this time, just when it felt like Falcons were ready to tie up, Halzart goes big. Boros, highest rated player for Falcons coming into this elimination game, looking for a 1v3 clutch to go back to back with Madden. And he can move in the clutch too. Spam comes through, that's both players known to Boros. Now he's got this visualized. Can he get out of the position? Does he feel squeezed? Halzerk giving him a chance to get into cave. Giving him a chance to take that duel. One HP. Boros! Back to back! You fucking
marked improvements from complexity got the ball rolling here on the CT side, and we didn't see any tilt. We saw nothing but prowess until Falcons sprinkle in those back-to-back -back clutches. Madden 1v2, Boros 1v3 with one HP. Ooh, they're testing the mental of complexity as they tie this game up six rounds apiece. It is, of course, the pick of Falcons. Elimination on the line. And they will be swapping to the defense to try and lock in Ancients. Such exciting rounds there, back-to-back. -back. Not for complexity. Look at the score, man. Complexity could have been up... 10 rounds to some or something, you know, there's some ecos on the side of these clutches and But that's a complexity game. They they have some moments of course, but like so many big moments happen to them Unfortunately, that is something they have to think about especially when it comes to approaching one guy in a clutch. How can they do it better? Like I'm not sure Hugo Sorry it said Hugo and Harry. Oh, okay, okay. And I want to be Harry. Can I be? Oh, okay. No, you have to be Hugo. I'll be Hugo then, all right. Yeah, sorry about that. Madden? No. Have you heard of my vinyl collection? <laughs> Burned out. Still gets two. Boros back sight. Oh, man. Dude, that was like a bug. Oh! <laughs> like mosquitoes on a windshield just splattered as they run into Boros. And you can get boring round wins, but it doesn't open you up like when you get clutches. It's a real thing, okay? Like, everyone's smiling and having a good time. It's because they had a really great break. They ended on an explosive clutch from Boros. They recovered their CT side. They're, like, happy. They're just, like, they, everyone came into this game bitter, you know? Faces full of salt. And the only thing that could change that is, like, having fun rounds where you win. Yeah, and those clutches back-to-back, -back, you know that's going to tickle Falcons in all the right ways. Meanwhile, for complexity, they felt good halfway through, only to be dirt, uh, served. Reality check. Two tough ones. Snappy holding on to Cave. Elijah's going to try to come through. JT just a step behind, so no real trade potential, especially with him low health. Sun Pius holds middle with an M4. And it's going to leave it on a couple of Glocks. If they kill Madden, maybe they can plant. But no. he's got it. Locked in. Not on the week of Super Bowl Sunday. You can't kill Madden. Is it Super Bowl this weekend? Yeah, I'm doing I Am Kid at Vitae watch party, actually, oh, in wow. Toronto. And then right after it ends, the Super Bowl starts. Is there um? Tell me about something else I don't care about. Kata Vitae or the Super Bowl? <laughs> no, 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 the Super Bowl. I care about Kata. <laughs> the hell? Got his ass. Stop trying to get me fired. Pigskin, go far. The commercials are the best part. Yeah, Taylor Swift's going to be there. Oh, so, oh, then, yeah. then never mind. Nice nade. JT and Grimm softened up. Mmm, plump for the picking. Grimm losing more health before he even sees a soul. Elise is having a rough time of it. Coming into this game as easily the highest rated player. Behind him would have been Boros. Difference is Boros has got a 1v3 clutch to his name and Elise is negative 5. Halzerk reopens the possibility of the round with the B kill. That long peak and a wall bang. Nice, nice. double, but a third player in sight. Oh. Could have caught them off. Instead, Floppy survives the SMG's attack. We've got low health on the majority of complexity. Floppy peeking deep on long, but doesn't want to give this away. This is possible. Floppy has to be very careful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if he gets baited into some kind of swing, there are two players low. It's... But Magisk isn't coming over. So unless somebody gives something for Boros to pull on, feels like he's going to transition to the save, and he's out. He's gone. They concede it. So complexity. That's good. They needed every every kill, right? I mean, that snappy swing with MP9, if he got, you know, he only had an MP9, but if he got one kill, that would have been a very hard trade to get with the, the HP levels of the guys coming in in the back, so... Really critical that uh, every entry goes perfectly because they don't have perfect trade potential. You know, I guess the, the stakes are getting raised here. It's like a double of nothing in, um, in terms of the emotional gambling going on. If Falcons...
had that first half, those clutches, they felt great. They feel like they can win this map and then complexity steal it in the end despite all that. Oh, oh you're speaking to my language. Yeah. Heartbreak, baby. It's on the line. Grim on the ground. Magis lays down lead. Two kills easy. And they get stuffed just as easily as Falcons did back on their T side, right? Elbow's been a point of contention and a point of struggle for both T sides so far. We do get a little cave presence here from JT. Missed chance, the headshot. That would have been quite a scoop. At least the Molly keeps him back. If JT wants to swing sight, he could isolate Snappy. Yeah, yeah. That's what he's looking for. He'll get it. Nicely done. Oh, no. Halzerk. Well, he got two at least. Madden Ooh. gets put out. And Halzerk's got the safe plant. This would be a 3v2 advantage if not for the team kill. So Halzerk, despite his 14 and 7 score, better pick it up. And he will go deep. Trying to make amends. Shadow advantage for Boros. No, don't let him clutch yeah, twice. Why even come for him there? There's a chance, but uh, Boros doesn't have any utility. So Floppy does have time on his side. However, bomb's only halfway gone. Boros can take his time just a little bit. And if he, for some reason, just wants to stick it. Doesn't. Now less than 10. Floppy not going to bite on it. Boros trying to get him in. Still, time is on his side. Floppy cools his jets, leans back, closes out the clutch. And Halzerk will forgive him. Will forgive him. Yeah, those taps were probably too close together, right? Must have been. There's weird geometry, too, coming out of the stairs. You know, you shake a little. Let's see if the elevation change just puts the bullet in the back of his head. But uh, Floppy definitely well, also knows. Get out of the road. Oh, you're talking about the... Talking about JT, you know? Right, yeah. Don't want to get shot. Get out of the way. Complexity tie it up. Big round from Hulzerk. Good read from JT as well, I think, knowing that the player crossing back towards Long would have left one in sight. And as if things weren't tough enough, double nade on Boros before he sees anyone. The JT swing in sight, reading Snappy's in the corner. Good clean kill from him. The follow through from the players that had to trade. It's just the last place everyone ends up as Ninja when a uh, cave split happens. Yeah. It's just, oh, it's just zoning, so. Not just one for the road, perhaps? Yeah, come on, tilt the leash. Ah, missed chance. And complexity back to a lead. So you know what that means. Falcons win the next one. The next round. Yeah. Oh, okay. Complexity. You got to give him a little hope and then take it away. Yeah, yeah, right. It's not been easy for Cole to pull away. Despite leading for most of the game. Falcons on their heels. This is good though, man. We got like lots of good individual rounds. Team, team rounds are looking solid. Complexity don't look shaken. I mean, they're just... Still some mistakes here and there, of course, getting 1v2 two, two rounds in a row. Yeah, but nobody's gotten mad. Yeah, that's that's key. I think Hauser just said in the interview, like, as long as our mood is good, then that's your only chance to win, basically. Because, like, the Spirit game, it was like... Yes. Spirit, in the Spirit game, Elise died... They didn't even try to... Elise they didn't even died, try to hide their emotions. Elise died in, like, a 4v4 and, and got upset. Like, just, like, meditate something. a little bit or something. You know, at least this back-to-back -back clutch losses... You fall victim to that. Nobody's upset. Complexity's still hanging on. Looking good. We said the more improved team would win, but both teams showing a better version of themselves. JT. Yeah, he'll find Magisk. A sitting duck bottom mid. Nice angle here from Boros over the Red Room smoke. He returns fire. Returns the favor. Snappy sliding down. And he's got Floppy dead to right. Such a good play. He got dinked. Floppy hit a headshot just Ooh. then. Ooh. Wow. So incredibly close. Still, that was his advantageous position. If they knew that it was walked down the ramp like that, they Oof. would have chilled for a second. Nice one from Boros. Man, this guy is sharp. So sharp. And finally, the play comes to A. It's a very, very weak side of the map right now. Sun Pius, can he chill for a second? Yeah, the molly is not deep enough. Gets his one. He's still back there. Elise will know it. Snappy's almost dead, and on a fast flank through A main, some oh. pious. Oof, good to see him adding to the tally. His seventh and eighth frag of the map. Falcons tie it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, 
<laughs> like you said. <laughs> I know how the scripts work. Yeah, true. We leak them just for fun, but... There were lots of good moments here for the Falcons and these plays. I mean, this banana push on the CT side is very, very strong right now, so... It gets used a lot of different timings. Not surprised that it works out. Now it's crunch time. And it's like, I both have faith that complexity get to overtime and also faith that it still somehow goes wrong in overtime. You know, like, ah, sure. let's see. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like they can do it. They know they can do it. What if they just caught like a took some L-theanine or something, just, that's it. You know, relax a little bit. Don't take the losses too hard. Don't be too parabolic emotionally. Just like, you're going to play a thousand more rounds this week. Yeah. No big deal. Oh, a liege. Oh, ha, he. Five health. Oh, my God. The bullet's whizzing by. Ah, damn. Oh, well. The fact he even had a chance to get a kill there. I mean, he could have died the moment he tried to press into the smoke. Oh. It's disgusting, isn't it? Oh, man. In all the best ways. Yeah, that's brutal. That is really brutal. It's going to free up a rotate as well. JT trying to hone in on Madden. Yeah. But kills now starting to sweep away from them. Okay. Holzerk on the answer. He's been good tonight. We can talk now. Oh, what? what? Madden from this position. It's the same spot he posted as 1v2. Gets two kills this round. Floppy to the clutch. Getting his leg shot at. Comes out. Whoa, he's got him. Oh. Floppy, no bomb needed. Just lays down lead. That was hard. That was basically impossible. That was the right move from Falcons to rush him down with one player. They have a second one. Hands busy. He gets off the bomb and then finds the 1v2. This is so nice. Ice cold Kamari. Just doesn't freak out. Doesn't think I'm going to try to get the plant off. I think everyone loses that except Floppy. Woo! They got a little bit too. That's nice. That's some dignity recovered here yes. for comp 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 complexity. Can't be on it's the receiving end of every clutch. You can yeah. post one. Finally, some indignation for Falcons, and they have to save in this yes. following round. Complexity hit double digits first is really surprising, and it really speaks to how hard they've had to work in this map. You know, we said that first half could have been 8-4 or more if the clutches went their way, if the saves on the other side of it set them up to really succeed. Finally, something that Complexity can laugh about. Finally, it feels like the cards aren't stacked against them. There's still some wiggle room in this round with that M4 on the board. Madden trying to position it correctly as this stack comes out from Falcons on A. Because Complexity are showing more presence on this half of the map despite Bomb being back by doors. I wonder if Halzer goes through Cave and calls JT back with Bomb. There's enough time at this point that all options open. That M4, of course, sitting top middle in red on 13 health. Madden will look for another. It's that Boros Deagle that makes me nervous for complexity. If Sun Pius sets him up with the USP. Yeah, he's been getting his one. Down goes the M4, back goes Madden. Boros hears the approach, and a liege comes out from Donut, catching him on the other side. So, complexity tiptoe their way through this one to go up 11-9. That's nice, man. Good spacing. No anti-eco disasters or anything for complexity, so... Wow. Wow, pressure's really back on Falcons. They really survived that back-to-back -back 1v2s at the end of the first half in complexity on T-side coming right into this. For complexity, it's a half without hiccups, which is something I feel like they never get to experience. Game's not over. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. It really is like right at the end. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Hold on. Oh, oh, I, I, almost, I almost forgot. Uh, I know you don't have that script. Leave it to complexity. It does feel like they really did take over like North America's Team Liquid curse. Yeah. It's true. I mean, they did take over a liege. Someone's got a voodoo doll of him out there somewhere. Halzerk opening up fast. Also, this tape. Wow. Oh, wow. He's, he's been in some zingers. He has.
a game's not over, okay? So here it is. Great uh, half so far for complexity. Falcons looking for 10. A liege on knock. Oh, wow. Wanted it for just that attempt in through Donut, but he'll pass it back to Halzerk. What are we thinking? JT Masterclass right here. Oh, oh, no! It's hard to call without a head. Oh, no, that is so unfortunate. You know, he's suppressing fire. He's playing around. He's going to throw a couple grenades. He may... Oh, I'm sure they needed that utility. That has probably completely ruined the round. This will be a real test of their metal now to come up with something new without their great big brain. Luckily, he can still flap his gums from the sideline, but who's going to have to go above and beyond to bring it back? Floppy on the entry path. We got one donut, one CT, but the CT player smoked. Sun Pius's nade doesn't quite hit the backboard, so it bounces awry. You got the lurk off to actually cross. Yep. Towards the B side. Could this be a move? Where do they go? He's... Oh, they almost don't believe it. I think they were thinking about actually walking over there. No one inside of Cave. They could still catch Lurks, though. Boros, he could be that guy. He's crossing back over. Smoke soon to fade. He's got a teammate at the exit of Donut as well. So Falcons appropriately stacking up and kind of reading that this mid-split's coming at him. Sun Pius ready. Blindsided, and Boros has got the back turn, even with Elise getting one, but missed shot. Oh, missed Boros. shot. Oh, no! He leaves it open for Elise. Seven seconds. Madden, he's going to run it to sight, losing his head. Take and it's plan. coverage from Floppy. Bomb down. Magisk to the clutch. He's got himself out to CT. They have no clue where he's at. Three one-on-twos this game. Any possible route for Magisk right now, and you can see them scared. Magisk cutting between them. They left such a big blind spot here. He kills Elise, he turns, oh. and he's not going to end it. It's oh. floppy to post another for complexity, and they will get that 12th. Oh. A nice squeeze through Donut, but a missed chance by Boros cannot be ignored. It, yes, if he had just walked for the good shot, it would have been over. He would have won. But the punishment's going the way of complexity. It is a sight for sore eyes. That's a really nice round for them. And they also had their fair share of unlucky moments. I mean, it was that JT frag through the smoke um, inside of middle. So things happen. Things happen, but this for this time, in this situation, at least complexity are the ones to benefit for once. Ooh, Madden wants the fight. Elise gives cover and the trade comes up through middle, not held back, snappy. Oh, it's damaged, but it's not enough. Not enough to hold them back. Not enough to stop the cross. Magisk is going to be the one they need to step up. Losing that second clutch to Floppy, tying the 1VXs in this game to a piece. Floppy, the clutch king of complexity. As Halzerk just off the crosshair gets naded. Ooh. Nice artillery from Sun Pius. They confirm there's a player in cave and Sun Pius tries to press straight into a liege as he's about to come out smoke, but he holds and it fades and it's a clean execution off the SMG. Grim's chance. Can he shine? First one knocked out and having Magisk shot early, he knows. Oh. There's the edge and there is the map win. Three clutches to complexity across their T side outshined those of Falcons and the North Americans. A stark improvement to start tonight.
The stars at night are big and bright, deep in the heart of complexity. And right now, those stars are shining with a victory over the Falcons on Ancient, snatching their opponent's map pick 13 to 9 here, Maui. Beautiful stuff from Complexity. This is the face we wanted to see from them. Halzerk having a good game for himself after a lot of up and down performances. Some really fantastic clutches by Floppy. And overall, Falcons, um, seemingly a lack of chemistry and some big moments for them definitely cost them big. Yeah, and I also think we're going to probably dive into some of those rounds at some point, but Falcons just disappoint me with the amount of players that's on this roster that has tried situations like these. They just look like a no new team. They look like a BB team fumbling the bag in some rounds, but it's so obvious what's going wrong for Falcons. But you could also say that it's complexity making them stressed. But what is going wrong? Because that is our job to talk about. So it's so obvious. What is it? Yeah, I think we have around 19. I think that's the easiest one to just highlight. This is where it really goes wrong. Like, this is such an ABC type of clutch for for the likes of... of um for floppy. Yeah, so exactly. Uh, and there's no reason they're not able to trade here. I'm not sure why Son Peus is not like taking that initiative that I will go first. We're going to see him here in a really stressful situation with a like, Galil 1v2. And then all of a sudden, they just play one by one. The first guy takes the duel. Son Peus is for some reason trying to get covered by that pillar. Like, it doesn't make sense. Why is nobody just saying, hey guys, either we wait for the plant or we go together on the left side. Like, here they do a little bit in between. Right. We saw Majisk try to just shoot floppy kind of in his butt as he was planning the ball. Um, and Floppy just got off and was like, okay, you're going to give me two free 1v1s right now. And yeah, that's kind of the disconnect that we've been seeing with, with Falcon sometimes that Magis felt very committed to that fight, even though he probably should not have been. And then Sun Pius, like, I think what, what Bubski and I are trying to like say is that this, the way this should have played out probably is Sun Pius goes first. Like, if he's able to go first, strafe out with the pistol, he's going to give Magis the positioning necessary and the spacing in order to just trade the frag pretty easily. And yet that wasn't communicated. Magis tried to do something on his own. And I feel like Falcons, they're just kind of like taking these shortcuts in these little moments instead of just playing good CS, which I know, which I know they're all capable of. But yeah, it feels like it harkens back to a lot of what Snappy's been talking about. It doesn't feel like they're on the same page. It feels like maybe they're thinking yeah. too much about like what the ideal play is instead of just making the natural play in a lot of moments. And it gives opportunities to a player like Floppy to punish. Yeah, and it's the worst thing is that it's not even Floppy just like giving a quick headshot twice. Like he literally used a, a couple of seconds for both the duels. So there's so many chances for Falcons to do the right thing. It's not a Nico pulling up a Deagle and just yeah, <laughs> like it's it's a very easy round to win for Falcons, but for some reason they're actually not able to to power through. And, and I mean, it wasn't flawless for complexity either, right? We saw some mistakes, especially with fights in towards mid, right? Losing a lot of bodies early on, yet still managing to overcome for a team where we've been talking about the tilt factor. We've been talking about you know when things don't go their way, sometimes it gets out of whack. Well, they seemed a, a little calm and collected here. Right. This game, I feel like everybody watching that just watches tons of CS is probably not going to say to themselves, wow, that was super high quality Counter-Strike. It was kind of about which team made the less mistakes. And pretty obviously, Complexity, they did make some, but Falcons just made way more and they were just on worse rounds to make them, like losing gun rounds pretty consistently because they're not trading people out. And whereas Complexity, the little mistakes that they made were more like, oh, they gave, they gave Falcons a window into a round, like a gap or something. Yeah, I mean, and they also lose that round at round 19, but then also, like, a couple one later, they do a major mistake, very much similar, and it's just such a team play thing where they fail on basics. I'm so disappointed when we are looking at players like Magisk, Boros, all these guys, they've tried it before, man. Like, it's not their first time. Why can they not do the simple things? I know Sonic behind him is, like, pulling his hair out because it's so basic Counter-Strike that they're failing on. Well, we do have more maps to go. There's time to fix the mistakes, but now we're headed over to Overpass, and this is one of the bastions of strength for this complexity roster. What's our temperature check going in to Overpass? Well, the thing is that this five-man lineup for Falcons has yet to play Overpass. This will be their first outing on it, and I feel like for a map like Overpass, you really do need the reps in order to figure out how are you centering your defenses, what are your responses in rounds, and simply put, Falcons just don't have that yet. Unless they've been just in the lab workshopping this map regularly, which I have to doubt, because they are trying to usually second veto this, or they're usually just trying to, well, they're never picking it, obviously. And so, for me, this is probably where the series ends, because complexity, this has been their bread and butter. They love this map. Their default is very strong. JT's ideas in mid-rounds are also very good, and I do feel like not only are their players right now just playing at a slightly higher level, but I just feel like the calling is going to be better from JT here. Well, we do have another man to do a temperature check with. It's the giant human thermometer we know as James Banks with a sideline check-in. 
I was able to catch up with Zonic just as he was coming off the stage. He's now sat outside with the team, and he said, right now, they get into situations. The calls are good. He's liking what he's hearing, but the players are not able to get lucky in some situations. But luck can't always be on your side, right? And sometimes you need to dig deep and fight hard. He seems to be wanting more from the players and their individual level and wanting them to fight as a collective as well and try and battle back in this. But they're going into overpass, and we know the map pool right now for the Falcons isn't that strong. He needs to get them to step up. He needs to get them to hit their shots and be on a level that they can be on if they want to try and take this and avoid elimination. But it's not looking good. Getting lucky. I, um, mm. I don't think that's what I saw. Is that what you saw, Maui? That's not luck. That's not luck. We know. We all know. We all. Everybody in this yeah. entire hall of heroes know it's it's not luck. It's just better better teamwork, and that's what was on display for complexity. I think they're going to keep that up on the overpass. But, but it's a very common thing for a coach to say, yeah. right? He's not going to go into a discussion and be like, guys, round 19. What the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Like, what is going on? Like, he's going to be that bigger human and be like, okay, guys, we just got unfortunate. Take some water. Like, oh, do you need a little bit of fresh air? Like, things needs to calm down a bit and then take a new map you just pull out the n64 cartridge blow in put it back in see if it works now lucky yeah that'll make it lucky right just lucky i mean maybe they need lucky lucky. On this roster Never right lucky. now because uh <laughs> losing some of these duels man losing a lot of these duels a lot of these fights a lot of these situations but they get a whole nother map to try again so we will take a break and when we come back it's time to see if complexity survive or if the falcons can hang on
can I fight it? How can I listen when there's no sound? Complexity and Team Falcon set to lock horns now on Overpass. Complexity with a map in their back pockets and moving into territory that they know real well. Complexity on Overpass is a place that they have had some of their biggest success stories. And now at Katowice, it is their chance to turn the tide from struggles at the start of this event to an opportunity to eliminate Falcons and continue on this path. Six maps out of Sun Pius here in Cato. Only one in above 1.0 rating. That, I mean, considering Sun Pius, that's going to be talked about for a while for him. Unfortunately, it is Katowice. It would be the first tragedy that happens with uh, Vitality getting eliminated today. But uh, it's a hard tournament, a long tournament, and uh, a very historic tournament. Everybody wants it. So even if you're very good, it doesn't guarantee you anything. In fact, for most, it will just be a tragic finish in the end. Complexity look to try to beat the odds here by going up against Falcons right now. And Overpass is the place to do it. It is absolutely the place to do it. Stellar CT sides on Overpass specifically for Complexity. And of course, up to the challenge of a T side too. We saw a huge improvement from Halzerk on an individual level coming off of that ancient map. And we said tonight, he who showed improvement was the team that would step forth and continue on in Cato. As of now, that is complexity. Yes, and also felt as though 2-0 is entirely possible for both of these teams. And we just saw complexity take Falcon's map pick. So now they have overpass. They could potentially complete that. End it in two. Would it be that smooth always? Hard to say. They lost to Spirit. Pretty one-sided game in favor of Spirit. The rounds that Complexity did were good. There were just weren't, were many of them. So uh, Feels like they got completely shut out of the B site by Zontix and Magix. Now they will fight Magisk and Boros. Leash coming up top connector, leading the train of complexity players to what will be the A hit if they follow through fully. But first they want to make sure that that attack they saw, that prod out from long, hasn't gotten somebody slipped behind them. Sun Pius, job's not going to get any easier. Gush down to 14, falls back. Falcons, A stack. So normally, even with four on the site, it's still winnable, but because of the pistol round, it's definitely not a bad setup. Um, but we've already got a straggler. I think the CTs are so halfway down. Oh my goodness. That's a fat rotation. The move downstairs. Oh, that Luckily. was opened up. There was a chance there for a liege. They got what they wanted, except for the kills. Alzirk responds. Boros down at two. Sun Pius wants to keep himself alive, so he goes back behind Dumpster Magisk. It's a wonderful couple of kills, and it's grim to respond with a flank hot on his heels. He's surrounded and swarmed. So Plays one right squeaky for door yeah. opened up, and we see almost the entire defense run for the hills. But Boros gets that very critical double kill to make things go down smooth. Yep, 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 yep. You know, Alicia could be mad about this one because you got that first one, and then, oh... The crosshair was on him. We saw it. But it is a Glock, so it gives and it takes. It does, man. It, it, it gets a little crooked sometimes, that Glock stream. Sometimes two tap from the other end of bathroom sometimes. <laughs> no damage. Put the gun down your throat, so. No matter. T side, you can always buy. So Pius in a good spot, but... Perfect to counter that. At least he kills Halzerk. At least. It's a shooting gallery set up on long and oh, uh oh. That's a straight-up duel versus magic. Forced by back from complexity. Oh, it's going to be a... 
This was a force without a plant. So yep. that's why we see two deagles in play, but luckily the Galils get their kills first. Boros is trying to move forward here. Doesn't want the entire map to just become shrouded in secrecy. Yeah. The Falcons are definitely scared, but they're not playing like it. At least Boros still holding on to middle of the map control. But uh, just the sheer amount of numbers right now. This is definitely a very good situation for the T side. And with that M4, everyone's got a big, strong gun to work with. Boros coming up. Sees him. Oh, bomb. wait, the bomb. And Nate's forward into bathrooms. 30 seconds, and they get into the 2v2. There's still weapons in hands, of course. And they're going to use that as an invitation to sprint B, but there's already a defender on site. Snappy pressing into them up close. Floppy. Oh, he jiggles it oh, first. Oh, it's so good. Gets him to bite down. What? MP9 still good for the one. Alige. Oh, oh, gets caught by the heaven swing. Nicely done from Madden to take that risk. He just ran through the smoke, and Alish was about to go get onto the bomb. That is uh, pretty unfortunate. Man, Floppy did the perfect thing with the shoulder peek, with the yeah. shadow, baited the whole spray out. and then like a slinky. He still lost to the MP9 on the swing, so nice one from Snappy overall. But this is the one thing that's, that's sloppy here is the, is the bomb throwing that Nade without clearing down the stairs at all. Yeah, true. Boros was in there the whole time. So... They didn't have a lot of utility to work with. They just were hoping it was clear. Nice nade out of Magisk. CT's feeling it a little, coming off of their bomb sites, taking a quick peek, a prod, a poke at complexity, and then a shimmy back into their sights. Uh, weakened economy, complexity, know it, so. We're going to play a dangerous game of forcing back and forth. Just the scout, don't get your hopes up. Not an easy shot for Halzerk. He doesn't bite. They hear the rumblings of the Galils, so Falcons should be on high alert. Playing out a, another piece of utility. That was their last smoke front bathrooms. It'll be there till about 30 seconds. And then we're going to see complexity with a pretty clean line of sight to just gun down A if they want it. Early on, snappy towards water on B. But ever since, we've got, just gotten two sets of kernel defense on A and B. A peek on long. That should elicit the rotate. We see Madden trying to sprint up, but Magis takes the fight forward. Doesn't play on sight. Tries to move out. Now it's on Sun Pius to try and bail him out. Nice flash off Madden. Oh, oh. oh God. <laughs> Sun Pius from behind Dice doing it all. And we've been waiting for him, so an ace looks good. Wow. Don't fly too close to the Sun Pius, baby. That was a clever ace. Beautiful off the back of Dice. And something to show that he's still alive. There wasn't much from him all tournament long until now. And he finally puts up a nice highlight. That's a great round. That's a round he needs, man. This game going on, this entire event just kind of passing in front of his eyes. And it doesn't feel like, probably like a dream. He can't quite grab onto anything. Can't stop it from happening. It's a good just way to look at it. Yeah, I like that. Unfolding and now finally snap back to reality you're in it you have a chance and you have with that ace put complexity into some economic problems on a difficult t side good contribution jt deagle snappy who thought eh, i'm gonna take a risk take that peak to short yeah they were making him dance with the molly so they they're trying to compliment with a push that was a counter punish right there for complexity nice pickup so not out of the water yet here falcons Cool. That's a two for Madden gets one, Hauser gets hit in collateral. I'm gonna walk as smoke fades. Yeah, nothing there for you, boys. Just two M4s leaning back and taking the advantage. 
of the force by start from complexity round after round now 4-0 nothing you can do about it this time Sun Pius stepped up the defenders hold floppy desperate for a deagle kill will find nothing for his endeavor come so close at a couple of moments to pick it up rounds here on T side they don't need that many to feel good about it but for Falcons, uh, it's a nice sign for them. Oh, wow, wow. He did everything, actually. Helped his two teammates dance it around in the fire and also stop the push. And he's like a scientist and a father. Yep. Cyborg 2, I've heard. Cyborg. Two glass eyes. Him and Gabe. Got them cybernetic upgrades. Ooh, careful, Sun Pius. Yeah, he was on that angle. If Halzerk extended any further, he was done. Assuming he didn't hit some nasty shot. And kill goes the way of Falcons. It's just a bathroom's walk-up. I didn't hear a flashbang pop or anything. I think Alish thought he had a little space to creep in with, and instead it's 5v4 for Falcons. Madden was making a lot of noise here. Yeah, yeah, that's Goes off angle. Use that once in a while. It's a pretty rare one. You'll get that kill, yeah. Just kind of on top of the cement bags. Now Snappy can lock into barrels, but hold on. Boros goes to throw a grenade. Heaven player at least pick up some slack. Oh, nice kill from Grim. I love a grim B-site entry on overpass. This guy can just rock your world if you're not careful, but he does get shut down by Madden. Upshot oh. landed, Halzerk. Whoa. Clean with it through the thickness of the pillar. Can Halzerk do something? I mean, there's three, three players here. here. Okay. Ah, Sun Pius gonna lay down the line that he shall not cross and keep Falcons in winning ways. Five straight. Yeah, five straight. <sighs> yeah, that angle, it's definitely not, not played a lot, but it, it is a good one to catch Lurk's office. It's just the perfect time to use it. It's of course uh this one here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Easy to drop off to. Kinda kinda Pretty feels easy. like a I think it'll get used a lot more. Like a yeah. nuke ramp room box, you know? It's a small version. Yeah, that's of it. nice. Yeah, that's a nice uh comparison one to one right there. Let's call it NAF. Yeah, let's call it NAF. <laughs> yeah. So like calling heaven on vertigo guardian. Just start calling everything NAF. Feels like a NAF spot. Oh, hanging out in the trees. NAF. Sitting on top of a box. Yeah, true. NAF. Nice foliage here on Overpass. Really uh, shows the importance of green spaces in cities. Yeah, no doubt. This is uh, it's Germany, right? It's Berlin. Yeah, and they do green spaces like crazy out there. Everyone deserves to look at trees. They have those like little rent the garden spaces that you can have for the whole summer and plant all your mm. stuff. Plant some Get tomatoes some or fresh something. Fresh parsley, yeah. Mint. It's just going to be the explode that they think can get through for free, but defense looking strong. They had that connector player to attack the back line. And there's layers. Magisk, Boros, just easy. Sweeping away complexity from the flank and a 6-0 start. Looking immovable right now on that A site. There have been moments that complexity get close. But the reality is, everybody from Falcons is stepping up. We've got Madden, 8 and 1. Sun Pius, 7 and 1. The best map from Sun Pius at Katowice. Yeah, almost. Finally. To, almost didn't get a chance to show it, man. Thank goodness. Because it would have been a real shame for him to fall off that significantly. Him and all of Spain. You know, we're all relying on him. The entire Iberian Peninsula region. And again, I rate complexity CT side on overpass, but uh, you, you do need a round or two. Hate to break it to you. You got to give us something. So 
Pius looking for it, flashed off his angle. Suddenly there's silence at B. But the connector players creep out, they could catch him. Unannounced, they're just creeping, right? Trying to play timing instead of anything. And yeah, look back, turned. Ooh, Magisk. Oh. Wasn't ready for that one. So Complexity just try to play with it. The element of surprise. A dangerous yeah. beast. Grim has some leverage being here early, but for the most part, it's going to wait for the rest of the plan to fall into place. Falling back now on the outside of bathrooms. Some pious here isn't here to punish. And I guess they know because he has to fall back to a slightly depressed angle. However, the Falcons are still sitting three on B. There is no rotation upstairs. Oh, jumping over, almost caught. Here we go, man advantage back. Spam through smoke by the op of all. Yeah, but that's all they got. They got, there's two TTs still up fighting back and they're still going to what, try to continue back into B. They got a molly on Snappy. The T's are completely out of grenades. Once that incendiary burns out, it's going to be the commitment. Halzerk waiting. Whoa, reacts to the feet of Snap. He sees the ankle, hits the chest. He's got Madden compressed on pillar. Flash comes through. Did it see him? He's going to peek around oh. and get caught out. Now the bomb's been thrown forward. Some pious miss shot. Deagle in hand. It's getting away from him. And oh, Complexity God. finally managed to get on the board. That was crazy messy, man. That was, that was insanely back and forth right there. That was nuts. That Complexity ended up picking it off. I'm surprised that... Snappy went for his push, but it's good, really good, obviously, that Halzerk was so ready for it. You know, I think a couple days ago, that was the kind of shot that Halzerk would miss. So it's really good that you see him hit those because he's hit some really beautiful shots um, in the series so far. That was like a zigzag flick where, like, he almost went too far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's scary yeah, that you're getting yeah. pushed. Diagonal, yeah. yeah. When you go diagonally, it's even if it's close, it's, it's awkward, so... Hit him with the zigzag white. Magisk falling away, not seeing anything. Remember the way that that all opened, right? Just walking up bathrooms, unannounced. If you think about that, just walking around the bathroom's corner, taking a quick glance at A to get the 5v4, and then also the Hauserk op shot through smoke. Those are two little moments in that round that don't necessarily happen twice. So we'll see if Complexity can grab this chance with both hands and hang on, or if Magis can Madden doubling long is a great way to just hold back a liege. Who, despite his kills across both maps, has looked far more mortal. Coming into this match with a 1.25 rating on the event, they're top fake. 10. They're faking, the, they're faking, but it's actually fine because they're so far away over on the long side. So, the two CTs are in trouble. This is a good attack for Complexity and good time. No nades, though. Some Pius. Oh, he dies empty-handed, and this is this is a crazy amount on Boros. But the weight isn't too much to hold. He gets two with him. No nades, no heaven smoke at all. Keeps it even. Snappy's going to be a constant threat, looming, lunging over top of this ledge. Nade goes real deep, shatters Grim to 60. Dink onto JT, he still stands. They tap at the bomb plant, who's now so stuck. With no utility, Grim's pinned in. They've got that pillar player and the short man confirmed. The picture's clear here for Falcons, and the shots, they're crisp. We get the answer back from JT. He's got a little bit to work with here. Which side and when? They almost line up, but Snappy comes through. A triple kill on the retake. Wow, it was a real war of attrition right there in terms of utility. There's no resources left at the end for almost either team. I think Falcons had maybe one smoke. That's it. Um somehow that attack works out. Man, how often do you see, like, no nades but three players coming out of the monster tunnel, CT swinging on this, Boros, like, cleans it up too. Saves. Very hard shots. Perfect barrels player, by the way, in terms of, like, mentally you'd think, oh, he, he'd fit in this position. Sort of idyllic for, like, his aim style. But, uh, this was raw. This, <laughs> this round was so raw. It, but I, I want to say Complexity needed this one, man. They, like, they has a good setup. That 3v3 retake should be pretty hard to win even without nades. But they got put away quick. That was one that Sun Pius could have been crucified for. Missed shot on monster, no kills. If not for Boros and the double kill on barrels. 
Yeah. Suddenly, Snappy's retake all the harder, so... Luckily for Sun Pius, he can lean on his teammates. In a pressured situation, Falcons hold strong. Complexity, your runway... That much shorter. You know, Boros has had like a, like a small spot of bad maps, but um, overall, he's been a huge part of this. Wow, okay, never mind, he's out. Reminiscent of the successful round on A when they just kind of walk out and catch you, right? Complexity creeping close. They see an inch, they take a mile. And now they've got themselves a man advantage post plant. Magisk, he flanked so fast that he definitely made sound, and the player on the other side of this wall has got him locked in. Halzer can just commit to this. And he'll go ahead, take the initiative, and really force Falcons into a dire position. Snappy, you're locked in, bud. No chance at really crossing back for a save. But also no real chance at going in unless Madden comes through. Two kills. All of a sudden, with 10 seconds left, it feels doable. Smoke on the bomb. They're just going to cause problems for JT. They'll blow him up. Yeah, they'll probably blow him up. The, um... Should be at getting least out of there okay. They survive with three on this round, but... The, the call from JT to hit B, it's, it's pretty brave, right? Obviously, if they get mauled as they're coming out right after they lost the last round, they would feel pretty bad. But they needed to recover something. I thought that last round was so pivotal, um, that 3v3 post-plant. But it turns out it wasn't great entry from Floppy. Handling Boros was a tall task after his last hold. So they dealt with that. And there are definitely problems here on the B site. So I, I don't mind the fact that they tried to go for it again. And in fact, I don't think that should be the last time they do. When it comes to Falcons, they've got a good amount of rounds, but I don't think they should slow down. No, don't get complacent. Yeah, no, 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 first complexity. That, yeah. Complexity banking on a CT side that should deliver. Luckily for Falcons, the lead so strong that the money has led them here. Another rebuy, but now with bottomed out bank accounts. Yeah, you see the k kills are actually quite low for Complexity. Felt like Cal Falcons had the door locked, but Complexity about to sneak through the window. Oh, nice damage. Boros, they're gonna try to chase him. He's reloading on the pillar. Short player, able to hold on. Elige looking for the answer, gets his. Swap out to the other AK. Magisk on short could creep through. And as the fights go on elsewhere, Magisk catches him, caught off guard oh. with a beautiful double kill of his own. And Hulzerk, nothing he can do about it. Magisk just pressing through the smoke, taking a risk that could have cost Falcons, but instead should put them up 8 2. Yeah, and they should. Hulzerk. Trying to swing wide. That's the opera known. He knows everybody's position. He's got a chance. He's got duels to isolate. Holzer, go! Oh! Just like that. No questions asked. The All-American stands tall. <laughs> Yo, Howley, this is what we've wanted. Wait, this is what we've wanted, man. It has been a tough month. Yesterday, he was slamming his desk after each round. Pure frustration today. He said the mood is good. We can get this together. They had some good rounds. They had a good map, and now he's had a great clutch. What an exciting play. It's Sun Pius, bro. Making noise in the background. Op shot missed as he crosses. Second op shot for the trade. Uh-oh. It's a golden ticket for complexity now. They're gonna lose that one kill. Halzerk's gotta get out of here with the bomb. They can't chase him. He's gone. B site there for the taking. That, I said they found the window open. Boys just busted through the skylight. Yeah. Love that. They know how to SWAT capture SWAT team entry. Yeah. Elige repelling through every opening they can find at this point. It's gonna be a fourth one. Damn. Game changer. Game changer for sure. Crim's like, why me? What did I do wrong? 
Sizing up the site as well. No kid on the play though. Snappy gonna just go save the AK. A little scary with that deagle kill towards Fountain, but B site had no defense. Halzer played that clutch so well. Like, I mean, he made the most of the missed op shot as well. Kept running to like, and then right. The cool part about that was just that you mentioned it right when it happened. He knew where everyone was at the same time. <laughs> it's like, he didn't know where anyone was for a second when he came up short, and then all of a sudden the op shot came in, and technically all three players shot at him at the same time, and he still won. When that op shot it's missed him, cool. you just see him slide into action. Yeah. Like, he knows the chance is still slim. He's like, you gave me that. But it exists. Now I know what to do. Let's see if it works, and it, it did. Such a great shot on some Piso to punish him. Holy. Oh, background, dude. Ooh. Clapped. Like, if we just watch that round from Sun Pius, I bet you it's soul-crushing. To miss the first shot, let the first guy die, and then to miss your follow-up and get domed. And then to save the next round? Wah. Looking for a fifth to end the half, but they get stuffed. That's a B defense that we've seen more often than not. Can't deny it. A couple rounds here for Complexity where they get into it in the second half, but a little damage here from JT versus Snappy. Stacking that B site as they do have possession of Bomb. This one should make it easy. JT still fighting tooth and nail, trying to chase him down. Get out of that pipe. His bullets flinging both ways. Missed oh. Molly as it busts inside of the construction zone. They do have a couple, couple, couple more grenades though. They can try again, I guess. Jimmy rig and execute. Hippie one more time. CT's out of utility. Just one flash on Boros. We'll see if he sends that deep. Oh, Alish is coming in. He's looking for more. Oh. He's going to get stuffed by Boros, who can just lock into the pillar now. Bomb gets picked up. 20 seconds. Halzerk's alive, inspired by his previous clutch. With an op to support him, JT just trying to cause some kind of a problem. It's going to have to be another one, but enough's enough. They'll lay it down. It's eight rounds still for Falcons. Great CT side, but life still surging through Complexity's fingertips.
rock solid B site defense put up by Madden and by Boros, anchoring the site nicely, posting eight rounds on the half for Falcons. But that Halzerk 1v3 sprinkled into oh. an otherwise difficult T side from complexity certainly inspired them as their defensive half's about to begin with a map in their back pocket. One of these two teams goes on with the dream of the Spodek on the line. Mm -hmm. The other crushed tonight. Completely. Uh, Halzerk's 1v3 save the half, save the map com for complexity. They win this pistol is like, literally I think they're favored to win the, the map. And uh, that 1v3, without that 1v3, this could have been. Whoa. Look at this defense. We got JT on short, completely exposed to any kind of short pipe push. Yeah, he's he's actually just going to kind of play retake in this spot. Everyone's boosted up right now on top of sandbags. Can't do that without any other distractions. They're pushing all the way through, however. Yo, 20 shots on the Glock, and Snappy can't get it. Just his uh, one. But at least you killed a liege. No easy feat. Evan Plant. We've got two players going up there. A third on graffiti, the fourth down in water. You have this to use that not smoke be late. easy. Yeah. Surely that smoke's got to go on the bomb. JT with the kit in the middle of it all. Smoke is there. JT, he's just going to prioritize plant. Kills coming through like it's nothing. Oh, that's going to work, isn't They've it? Got the tools for the job. That's all they needed. Smoke on bomb, and they unravel. Ooh, Falcons. Was that a plan? If, I mean, they had everything they needed. They let them go to heaven. JT, it, it felt like he gave them everything they wanted. Hmm. Because the CT retake was perfect. Yeah, well, there's this on monster with the kit and the smoke still held on to. I mean, if that's not a counter, come on. Well, they have short control, so they, they have to retake through monster. So I think no matter what um, site hit is coming in, they're ready for it. I think ideally, though, like the Heaven Planet should technically be a counter to this because they're, if they were playing with monster control, it would have gotten taken over instantly and they would lose right away. Um, but there's an inherent risk of trying to play Glocks up in heaven to post plant versus USPs. Ooh, careful now. Elige, nice answer. Snapping down to Sun Pius. Boros. He's gotten himself two kills on the round already. Pistol may all be for naught. As the bomb plant has put in gun rifles in the hands of the T's. Better weapons than what's alive here for complexity. Grim's hoping that the connector player just inch closer, just a bit more. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's a fine. That's all he needed. Puts us back 3v3. Everybody's here on the B site. Six men ready to duke it out, but they're actually leaving. One comes back in Grim, finding a player oh on the cross, softening Boros, who has now posted all three kills for this T side. Oh, it's just because they got the... Oh. Down he goes. They press out heaven. Madden's down beneath it. Halzerk, a bit audacious. Floppy also slain, and it is Falcons to answer right back. Because they got the boost off on short. That was not enough information to call that they want to rotate, but they, they, they felt like they showed two in the back of the B site. They had three in total. So, of course, the T's are going to avoid them. That's what they were thinking. It's obviously a misread of the map, as we saw. Falcons just linger, lingering around, waiting for their time to hit, and, well... That was exactly it. Does it see there's an op also an opportunity when there's a two player boost in the back of the site to hit B because that means that those players aren't playing monster. So like that's a monster timing. Yep. Uh, the fact that Falcons were in monster, you know what they're going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. JT just didn't synthesize that one fast enough or rather played the other option. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's, that's an interesting one. I would like to hear if they would say if that was a mistake or... Couple scouts. The way they can go. Pistol on the rock. Grim and Elige both down. Long players get cleaned up. We've got complexity now in a very difficult spot. This will be Falcons 10 5. And of course, buying into this one suddenly feels like we said if they won pistol, it could be favored. But that force by back puts them in a dire spot where suddenly map three seems so real. Yeah, but this is just like Halzerk's hero story, right? He's not Polish. But uh, he might just be a hero. He so. might be. I feel like Halzerk's amorphous. You know, he just kind of, he becomes where you put him. Okay. NA has taken him over. Yeah. Send him to Denmark. See what happens. You, just, you, you think a Norwegian is going to turn into a Dane? Halzerk's something special. Wow. How do we know that Halzerk's from Norway, really, to begin with? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I would have guessed. 
Arkansas. Yeah. Idaho. Wyoming. Louisiana. North Dakota. Just name it every. <laughs> <laughs> One of them. Wherever that damn keystone's from. <laughs> yeah, wherever he's got to go to get the keystone. Wherever they drop offs. Ten five Falcons banking on a Boros performance. We saw his stellar defense down on B in the CT half. It was pretty immovable for a lot of those complexity executions. And it was a triple entry on that very same bomb site at the start of this half in the force buy to put them up ten five. Looking for impact. Missed shot. They're close enough to chase him down. Yoink. He gets away. No damage. Snappy takes a scout shot to the chest, down to 30 health. But if it's not Halzerk, then it's a round for Falcons, no doubt. Folks, Scrawny just cursed it, so... It's like a specialty is cursing rounds like these. Uh, there's no way complexity win this one. <laughs> Zero chance. <clears throat> Under a minute. I mean, they just saw everybody outside of B. It's clear as day. They're going to end up coming back here, right? Yet that scout doesn't move a muscle. Still yeah. outside bathrooms. Yeah, they're still chilling. And ah. Lee's not turning the corner. First swoop comes deep. Best eagle in uh, North America. Yeah. In South Africa. You're right. But still zero percent chance. Magisk. Yeah. Oh, okay. He's the solution with Sun Pius. Still way sketchier than it should have been. Yeah. What happened to Alzerk? Didn't even get a chance for that. Part of the story. I think he came out from heaven. Oh. Died elsewhere. Ooh. Hot rod. Look at this little little yoink. See ya. Is that called a hot rod? That is an M4A1S hot okay, rod. Yeah. Yes. Are those expensive? Yes. Oh yeah. Yes indeed. I'll give you one for 30 bucks. Wait, what? You're going to buy one for me? You almost said no. <laughs> Falcons having a field day. I didn't expect their overpass to be that good. Do you I want it or not? No, I don't. Okay. I've got a blue phosphor, bro. Back up. Just saw it to make money, but whatever. Typical. Driven by greed. <laughs> Greedy Magisk on this bomb site with Sun Pai is coming through with the frags. Yeah, that's what happened to Halzerk. Yeah. Cleared off site like it's nothing. So, okay, the pistol meant to set complexity off to a good start. Force by disrupted that, puts Falcons two rounds away from map point. Yeah, they played one one rifle round so far, but now they have to be pretty much flawless. Yeah. This is uh, MR12 mode. Time for a true test. Liege again operating on his own inside connector. Takes a lot of responsibility on his shoulders, this CT side. Gets out through the smoke as Magisk opens it and tries to catch him. Chance to just reset everything. Krim just playing the signpost, double rifle set up on the A site. And Snappy's still deciding what to do. I don't know if he's dropped over any grenades to go back to B. I'm not sure what I love or hate about either team in this position right now. 
There's just going to be some really raw duel about to take place, I can tell you that much. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Which, uh, resting all your information on a dry duel like that, I guess it makes sense when you have low grenades, but now, we'll look what happens. Floppy's alone here on the B site. Hanging on. One in the back, actually. Yep. Oh, it's a little sloppy, but Elysia's still here, so they each post one. And he stays alive. Grim comes through with a helping hand. Fire's gonna cause problems, it delays the plant, but that actually sets them up to go for the double peek into Halzerk and Floppy. Oh, two dead at the same time. Mm -hmm. And they know Grim is here, he just got that kill. He's flanking around, Magis locked in on him. Oh, no. Yeah, Grim smoked out, and Falcons giving him the smoke, giving him the fire, giving him the beans. 12-5, the lead, seven map points. Yeah, that's, uh, that's kind of sad. They had no, they had barely any, they didn't even have like a full buy, you know? And uh, I don't blame anyone else for that. I just think like, wow. You said it was going to be a raw duel, man. He skinned him alive. Yeah. This is just not very impressive uh, from complexity to to come up with basically one rifle round that's not even a rifle round and not have any ops and then just be able to lose. It was 8-4. They couldn't convert. So really a massive failure here on multiple fronts for, for complexity to not even get be able to get the CT side started. They... This is a this is the the map and half that they are the most known for. So, I mean, maybe it's maybe it's the T side of this half of this map that they're most known for. To be fair, but they should be getting a lot of rounds on CT. And it's not. I don't think that Falcons have played so well that it just crushed them in a way that they shouldn't have been able to get into the game. And now we have this buy, which has more utility, less guns, more pressure too. Do or die, map two, Grim. Nice, underhands the flash, slams Magisk with the MP9. Now we've seen a liege down there, but constantly leaving without kills instead. 4v4 setup. You lose the Fomus. Oh no, oh, it gets unraveled. Boros just pressing in, neither player ready. And Overpass suddenly looking more like Falcon's map pick because Complexity just haven't been able to hold on. If you think back to that 1v3 of Halzerk on the T side, that's the only thing that denied Falcons from like in like a 9-10 round half. They switch over to the T side, they lose the pistol, but the force buy works wonders and they will close this in convincing fashion. Back to back stomps of complexity on overpass, once at the hands of spirit, and now it's the Falcon soaring to the map. Three, Anubis with these two teams and elimination on the line.
Uno reverse here as the Falcons fly in for a map win, snatching overpass in, frankly, dominant fashion. It looked a little close there at the beginning. There was a fight back from Complexity, but when the second half hits, it's over. This was a surprisingly bad CT side from Complexity, but it's not like they gave themselves much runway on their T side, which usually accomplishes them, I'd say five, six, I'm used to even sometimes seeing seven rounds from Complexity on the T side, so offense really couldn't get rolling quite how they wanted it to. Yeah, and I also think we kind of have to give a little bit of appreciation for Falcons daring to take a relatively good map into the hands of over, uh, into the hands of Complexity, but they have surely done their preparation, right? Sonic has seen things in the likes of um, Snappy. I remember some of the old games with Inns and Saw and Snappy being like one of the best in the world when it comes to like preparing for opponents. I'm really going to be looking forward to see how that teamwork between those two is going to be looking. I want to focus on one particular moment. It was early on in the game, and it was uh, getting a guy going who we have not seen much from. We've seen a major struggles from I'm talking about some pies. I'm talking about a round where some pies popped off early, pulled back an ace in a round where they looked like they're about to be overwhelmed. This could have completely changed the character of the map. If complexity gets rolling early, if they win that first gun round, this could have been a world of difference. Absolutely, Mike. You already teed it up and yeah, I mean some pies he hit a home run with this one. This was honestly a moment like we all know that the economy is so important in the beginning of these halves for the CT sides especially and just barely surviving there because Sun Pies by the way, there were great support flashes beyond that, like right behind him that mm. set him up for those kills, but obviously he nailed the shots. I think every single one of those kills, at least four of them, were all assisted either with damage or a flash assist. So, uh, all in all, that was a moment where he was able to stand up, and I was actually uh, not with the AWP, where we usually see him. Yeah, we also asked for his performance in the last ancient game. We kind of thought, like, it can't come from Boros only. Like, this team doesn't have a massive amount of firepower, so it's really crucial that those players who are set up for success also performs, and we see Son Peos doing his part in it all of a sudden through Souls in a win, right? It does indeed. It does indeed. And there was another big piece as well. Another guy we've highlighted, another guy we put the, the, the microscope on, Boros, right? Yeah. Boros, again, showing up in a big way for this team, being a firepower piece, being the, the, the star player that we've been expecting him to become. Uh, Boros is just such an X factor sometimes. When he's really feeling himself as he was on this B bomb site, you can see that it just becomes his playground. He's taking all these little duels, taking these little fights, kind of just playing in a lot of weird off angles. You see, like, he caught Floppy off, I remember one time when he was kind of on the railing on the back of sight, and Floppy was trying to just jiggle into the whole the whole bomb site. Sometimes he's swinging in front of the barrels. He's doing all these weird little things that because he's just so confident with his pure mechanics that he just can he can just take all these fights and honestly complexity we're uh, we're giving him a lot. Also, from my subjective point of view, I also think it's a very crucial thing why they put him on the monster thing. It's because they don't want him to think too much, right? They just mm -hmm. want him to do what he's good at, and that's aiming. We see matches. He was usually the guy around the B side and the monster positions, but he's all of a sudden on the A side. I think it says a lot about what Boris brings to the table and what in, he can improve on. Well, from my objective point of view, there is yeah. one more map to now be played in this series. We're going to be headed over to Anubis, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and that now asks us a question. Where the hell's Anubis gonna go? In my subjective point of view, <laughs> I don't know why, why are we doing that. In my in my point of view, in my objective feel, point of view, in your objective point of view, in my subjective point of view, I guess yours is an objective truth. I do think that this is a map that actually Falcons have looked okay on. I feel like there's maybe a light disconnect between Snappy and Boros when they're playing B together, but like Majisk feels very at home on that A bomb site. Modern feels really good when he's playing middle. So I feel like they're not they're okay with this one. I thought this was gonna end. And in three, I was leaning complexity, but some of the mistakes and hiccups they had there on overpass have me a little bit concerned. Let's talk about some of the mistakes, right? Because this is a complexity team where there were some disjointed moments. In particular, I'm thinking about round eight here. Uh, you want to talk to us about this one, Bubski? Yeah, you want to show me to it? And we see it here on the B side. I can't even remember this round. This is the retake where it's a ah, three yeah. on two. They jump out heaven, and then the, the swing into no man's land from a liege, from Grim. The spacing, once again, is bad. They're not looking the right way at the right time. The comms seem a bit confused. It's a little hard to read what exactly is going through the mind of complexity there, but that's another moment early on where they could have seized control on the T side, and it just goes out in the air. Those little mistakes, I mean... Like, there was that, there was the Sun Pius Ace. They actually, I think two rounds after the Sun Pius Ace, they also had a 4v3 briefly there. There were just a couple times where it was very tough for Complexity to convert their advantage. But I want to give Falcons some credit for it because it's not that just, well, Complexity obviously have to play badly to lose those situations in some regard. But also, it's also because Falcons were being fairly active with their help. Like, they were very good at flashing for each other. Like, they, call, they clearly had a couple nade protocols in place here to defend that I didn't think was going to happen given that that was their first overpass game and at least as an official and so 
that makes me worried about complexity because I feel like I really know what complexity is, but Falcons seemingly are kind of leveling up the more I watch them. But that's kind of what I'm expecting. When I say the name of Magic Snobby, I think like team play and I think structure and uh, very good at nades. I think Magic is one of the players I played with personally who's at the best at like just using utility in a smart way on the fly. He's not really a guy where you need to teach him things and be like, okay, you need to stand here and then you need to line here. He will just come up with it on the spot and I think it helps a lot, especially in those dynamic situations. Well, there is another stream going on. There are some more games going on and to find out what's actually happening over in that thing called the A-Stream. We sent James Banks out on a mission. What you got for us, Banks? Here on the other stream, we've got Na'Vi going up against Eternal Fire. It's elimination match. We played Nuke to start off with here. And Na'Vi, although they tried, although they tried to fight, Eternal Fire just bested them with some great plays. And honestly, the utility was still a huge problem for Na'Vi. Miss smokes outside, a bit of stuff just not going right. At one point, Jail was charging his mouse, which um, should have been done before the game. But now they're going into Mirage, it is Na'Vi's pick. And if they can at least fight like they did and it's on their map pick, we should be going to a third. At least we high hope so, being the Na'Vi fan. We'll wait and see. Uncharged Mice, Missed Utility, and an Eternal Fire map win. That's exciting. But we've got one more map to talk about here. I want one quick thought before we go to break. Who's winning it, Maui? I got Complexity, 13-11. Confidence not wavering. What do you think? What do you think, Bubski? I hope Falcons solely do so with the former teammates. And I also think we're going to be looking in. I'm going to give a quick point. Just follow on the A side. Quick Both thought. Just want to Floppy and Magisk are going to be the difference maker. Whoever does it best on the CT side is going to win this game. Floppy, Magisk head to head. But who's going to bring the Magisk into this final map? That was a corny one, but it's time to go to break. Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the site. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. i 
Last match, last map of the day here over on the B stream. I am Katowice, well underway. We're crowning our Spodak competitors, and both these teams, it's still a long dream. It's elimination that they face tonight. And we saw good things from Complexity to kick off the series in Ancient. We saw great things from Falcons on Overpass to take it back. Finally, Sun Pius, his best rating here in Cato, leaps and bounds above the rest. Of his seven maps played, only two of them above a 1.0 rating, a 1.06, and this most recent 1.39. On overpass, we felt his presence. 14 and 6. Boros, still star of the show, but it felt like Falcons hit their groove. We said whoever improved the most was going to win tonight. And out of the gate, it felt like complexity, but Falcons, with their back against the wall, certainly stepped up. All these true points and in this veto, again, it coming down to Anubis in the end is what we wanted. It's the best possible outcome. I thought that this would be a 2-0 series, and I literally didn't know which team. Like, either team I felt could take those maps, but I was pretty convinced that whoever stole the first map pick was going was gonna to grab it. Now, Anubis could have come up earlier in the veto, so expecting at least a high-level finish here for both squads. Ooh, floppy. Berettas get the one. Two sets of Berettas back to back. Oh, the rate of fire is fast. Grim just turning it upside down. Getting man advantage for complexity here. Boros of two minds wants to help his teammate, but decides not to, and it's a mm. great choice. Goes for the duels down the river instead and sends their corpses sailing. Halzerk answers, and we saw great clutches from him. From overpass to ancient. Another one queued up early, but Madden makes the difference. Falcons, T-side, pistol in the bag. Yeah, and you can see he's trying to, I think he's just trying to stay as focused as possible, where I like really just be in his element, not get rocked. And uh, he played so well on overpass, hoping for some more good action from him. But those are two very key kills from Boros, who, again, he's been the shining light, I think, for for, for Team Falcons. Like, not even in, even, not even in an underrated sense. Just a, overall, he's been the best player uh, in the rounds that have mattered. Halzerk with some tag damage. Ooh, thought he could get the front runner tagged up as well, but Snappy just glazing by with the Mac 10. That's going to elicit an answer here on Long A. Magisk with his ear against the wall. Here's the rumblings of complexity who are just going to smoke it off and leave Floppy alone. Grim is stuck on the pillar, or he got two kills last round off Beretta's. He's really good with fights like that. Oh, but he loses JT. Ooh, gets What's this. happened there? That's through the smoke. Yes, to try to fight out. Yeah, that's actually... Ooh, good Let's... find from Boros once again. Yeah, maybe he jump spotted both times. Elise will respond back. Last CT's position known, so Bomb can just sprint into the A site. No problem. Elise trying to chase Snappy here. That'll keep the round alive. Give him a chance. I believe there's a Galil there he can upgrade to. It's an AK, in fact, but certainly this clutch is too much to ask. Just the sheer amount of distance, sir. Yeah, we didn't get to see how Boros found JT through smoke, but if it was anything like how he killed Grim, a jump on the ledge over smoke maybe saw him. Boros unraveling that bomb site from the safety of Long. Yeah, that's true. I didn't think about if he had seen him that easily or not. CT defenses for complexity you know, is just like alarming to be like they can just fault they can just falter so easily. It just feels like they're so flimsy sometimes and it's very frustrating to look at them like that, but it's hard to tell if the remedy is that like the individual level for each player is a problem or some of their setups are not complimentary enough where they can't instant trade at least some of the kills back. It feels like they never have a position to trade anything. They just, they lose a player, then they lose another, then lose another. It's like, I'm more confident and excited for the complexity T sides. The CT sides, I'm like more worried, I guess, than I am excited. Just still feels like sometimes it lacks a certain cohesion between pieces. Like, just because we saw them play against Falcons yesterday, compared to like even Rebels on a CT side versus Falcons, felt like there was more composure within defenders. Felt like where there was one, there was more. Constantly, 2VXs, 
Halzerk 5-7. Oh, there's a gift. Oh, oh. oh two kills off the pistol. Yo. That was a real chance at a third one. That's great damage from Halzerk. He's been great for complexity. Sets up the rest of the pack to maybe pull this off. What a crazy round it would be. Alij has an armored AK and is yet to get into the mix. He is over here towards the A site where the bomb looks to get going until Smoke met them on camera. Madden killing Grim in mid opens the flank back to B. And Alish feels as though he's got to get something done. So he'll sprint towards long. Gun put away. And that's going to be one and two for Snappy. Mm. Well, it gets interesting, obviously, because Halzerk literally makes it a 3v5 uh, for one second. But it's, it's a little pyrrhic. Like, they get the 4v5 right away. Or 4v3, I should say. But that, I think this is another good example of, like, they have that, but then it just disappears because Hauser gets his kills, they trade him back, and then what happens? Through A main, we have a push in, Snappy finds his pickoff, leaves, gets out of there, then all of a sudden it's chill. They have some information back, they found like a straggler. No one can get tight, no one can get into trading spots, and no one was even with Hauser in that spot in mid to double down on the damage. Yeah, that's the part I found crazy, because it's not even like they were over in long A either. They were, like, floating exactly. around camera. You're by camera slash bricks on A site. Exactly. You're not even helping mid. It could be just too narrow of a game plan. They're waiting for one exact play. Mm. It doesn't come. And then it looks silly because they had some regular default. They would have covered more options. So it's really, I feel like it's very hard to put my finger personally on what's wrong fundamentally with some of Cole's CT setups, but... But obviously it's not enough. They found an opening here on Dark that they want to try to exploit, pushing the river. Floppy spam back through smoke. Oh, Madden, that headshot on Halzerk is gross. Grim, though, element of surprise, slides in, double kill, bridge control. That's what makes the difference. If Halzerk hadn't lost his head, these players don't get to trade that. Maybe Grim gets around the corner, runs to A. Alige. Instead, a liege 1v2. Uh, liege is looking for uh, a window, literally. He'll miss it so... Wait, hold on. Are they going to come back? No, no, no. They're definitely going to go forward in an A. 30 seconds. Alij knows it. He's working with a smoke and a flash. It's a solo operation from Jonathan Jablonowski. Cross on Fountain. Oh, he wanted that pillar peak. And instead, Boros with the instant headshot. We've got to say it. Boros, three strong maps. Woo! Yeah, man. What was that? That was Madden. <laughs> Someone stepped on his foot. Sounded like a chew toy. Nice two kills from Grimm. There's that trade frag back from Boros. Yeah, Boros has just been everywhere all the time across the series. Yeah. 19 frags on Overpass. 18 kills on Ancient. 37 and 29. Coming into map three, and again, just hot off the press. So, and so consistently headshotting, man. Crazy aim on him. You know, because there's a question around this formula for Falcons, right? If we just chalk up Magisk to be an improvement over Diha, then Boros has to compete with Nerds. And to outperform Nerds seems like a tall order. And he wasn't matching up. But this is a glimpse of what could be. Shotgun and an MP9 here for complexity. Bunch of targets. Wow, they chewed through the first two. Halzerk's 5-7, consistent. Shotgun, not so much. The buckshot betrays him. And as Madden turns back to flank with Bomb, a smoke ahead of Grim. If he holds it, Grim may run the risk. It's just... Hoping it's something different, but it's it's not. It's gonna be that A plant. Grim now. There, there's really looking around for him. Oh, the swing out is quick, but Tobias is careful with it. You know, it's it's not that actually that Boros needs to be Nerds. Boros needs to be Nico. Jesus. Yeah, that, he's not replacing Nerds. He's replacing Nico. When uh, you're you're talking about the. The lineup sure, that came to Falcons. Right? Look yeah, at what, yeah. who Falcons were trying to get themselves. Okay, no, I like that. I like that. They were... Okay. Yeah, that's what... That's. I'm thinking about the Ents team. You're thinking about Falcons' expectations. This was, we're watching Falcons, right? They yeah. tried to get Nico. Oh, you're right. And they couldn't get Nico, so they got Boros. 
that's the role he's filling. Everyone else is in a position, so there's pressure on him to not just be a very good star rifler, but to yeah. be the best player on the team, potentially right after some pies or whatever. Well, as far as Katowice is concerned, he's already better than Nico. Yeah, and that's no joke. Chance to move it back into the water. 5v4. Looking good for complexity. Finally, a slight edge in one of these CT rounds. But it's not just a matter of earning it. It's a matter of holding on to it, too. We got enough utility across Falcons for the full-blown exec a site. Floppy loves a pillar play. Would love even more so to be set up by a teammate. But instead, he takes the dry duel, honestly, at the perfect moment. Oh, where's this flash He gets support. the second. Nobody there to help him. What is that? Still gets two. Believe it or not, on his own. Boros, his 10th kill of the map thus far. But he is surrounded. I guess they already had got their kills, so it was fine. Or the, the flank. Okay. And he goes. What is it you wanted? Flash support, uh, flash support. Yeah, I was like, oh, he took his dry duel. That's really good. Like, yeah. you, when you get the dry duel early, it's amazing. Because you throw the flash in after, then you deny a trade. Or they run away, whatever. But, like, right here, minute up. Boom. Where's the... There's the... Yeah, there's a flash right after. They're, they're coming in from camera. Yep. But they didn't have one. They did. <laughs> Maybe they forgot they had one. <laughs> but it's like a communication thing. Like, where... But it might have been that there were... They already got kills. I, I didn't actually see what happened right there. Floppy happened. Yeah. Complexity posts their first. Now, nice nade. Elige traded immediately. Boros is dead. That's a good sign for Cole. Molly in front of the rest of them. Mac 10, Tech 9. Three smokes. And plenty of time to reset this pack of players anywhere across the map. Ooh, there's a nice upgrade. Chucking the SMG away. So they're going to go double smoke exec. We've got a doubling of E box here for complexity. Op posted, and Halzerk's been good, and they'll cool it off. And that was the exec that Falcons had to work with. So oh, they're Flash through, they're comes through. through. Madden's in. Oh. Madden's, Madden's real. He goes under the scope. Under the scope. He's got Holzerk. Matt just kills Grim. They oh, clear it. What? They clear the entire site. Oh, my God. In the blink of an eye, Madden manages to get past. And because there's a player on the pillar jiggling the side, Madden just slips through. Wow. That's the second time this series did on Ancient. Walk through K that round. Got the flank off. Shades of that. That's a, that's a good play. But damn, that blind spot from Complexity was so small. And that timing that he got out, they didn't even know he got out. It was so slight and that worked out for Falcons. That is devastating. A three versus four, right when Complexity pick up their first round win. Man, what a move. Imagine the X yep. Factor play. Yes, sir. Off to a phenomenal start. Just simply not dying. Six and one. Nice! <laughs> yep. What? <laughs> Just Sonic's delayed yelling in his ear. Oh, 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 yeah. Very, very well deserved hype because Madden, that is. Sometimes I'm like. Just gross. Yeah, that's. that's... Oh, man. We're back into an overpass situation of like, get enough rounds on CT. Anubis to talk about T side because it's going to be a comeback. Not having their best day right now, even though we have seen spots of brilliance here from complexity, some improvements on what we've seen throughout the tournament, which is good. Some good things, some good things. But man, complexity just a tough December, tough January. Might not make it through Feb. Extra gun. Holzer's got a scout. Oh, sorry. This is T side. <laughs> Snappy playing <laughs> Mac 10. Yeah, like what spawn are we in? Who left that there? Snappy wants a Mac 10 over an M4. 
They were going to use him to rush, surely. The jackknife that is. Uh-oh. I think oh. the op is... Oh, I don't know about the op in this position. Snappy's in. This is why he's got it. Oh, it's just a scout. Boros. He's going to get the headshot. Snappy just tearing through for control of the site, causing pandemonium. It's Bedlam and B. A liege in E box flashed out of his angle. Molotov smoke. Huge gap on that, though. <laughs> Massive. Nothing he can do to stop the plant unless he takes the risk of running out. He'll do so. Quick kill to Magisk. Nice dink on Madden. What? No scope through the wall from Halzer. Okay. And we're into the 2v2 here. Temple and Long is what they'll have to play with. But the flank from Sun Pius. Ooh, dirty. That should very well end it. The scout is desperate. Oh, he didn't pull the trigger. Now he's tagged down low. Two kills for Halzer trying to hang on to the bomb site. He did his damnedest as his teammates fell all around him. He's going to elicit the push out, but the Glock's enough to end him. Seven to one. Snappy just running through that site, dodging bullets. Mm -hmm. Oh. I mean, that was uh, just basically an anti-force here for Falcons. Great execution overall. Um, yeah, all the trades come into place. The Halzer shot was pretty crazy. Just trying to collect the icons. Essentially, is there any way back into this game at all for complexity? I think so, but it's, uh, you know, we're, we're into requiring the pistol, maybe even requiring an eco round to be won. Let's see if they can do it. They got a good stack. Nice. Oh, they got a great stack. You know, we saw Falcons die to something like that from Rebels wow. yesterday. Wow, four in the kill feed at once. Finally, an answer back. That's right. The exact same the position. Rebels. Although Rebels had Flay on an AWP, this is even less for complexity. You said, is there a way back in? This will help. Yeah. It's not enough, but it helps. require a Madden master class. Now, none of them have helmets, but they all have Kevlar. Well, it is a Super Bowl this weekend. Come on, Madden, go for it. Let's see how many yards we can get. First one's easy. Oh. Nice answer out of complexity. Swarming when he shows skin. First down. Hut, hut. What do you watch, the cross? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm liking like European sports. <laughs> you know, like uh, long ski jump, cycling. Yeah, Europeans love watching exercising is what I've noticed. <laughs> yeah, they're not even sports. <laughs> Things like contact is very barbaric in sports. <laughs> then there's the Swedes. At least they play ice hockey. True. The yeah, Finns, yeah, yeah. the Finns can get down. Oh, yeah, let's go. So we like, love the yeah, Finns, baby. Yeah, them Vikings up north, I tell you. We went to a Jokerit game. Remember that? Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. What happened to the Danes? It's like all, you know. Yeah, they're, they're good at sports, but they play like handball. Yeah, and they got so soft. About what? At what? Everything. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> compare them to Norwegians, compare yeah. them to, to Finns and Swedes. I'm just, I don't know. What happened? Yeah. What happened? Joe and the Juice happened. Esports. Yeah. <laughs> All the points at Counter Strike. Uh, well, a couple Danes in the server right now, thriving. So maybe I'll shut up. Sonic and Snappy calling a good T side. Holzerk though, gonna open nice up. Nice one, nice one, man. Matt just feels it. This is what complexity needs, right? From the pistol round into a 5v4. And you've got the economy broken. It's not too late. Leave it to Cole to make their job harder than it has to be. That is so real. That is so, so real, and you're right. It is not too late. And the double op setup is a statement that this is a real final stand economically to try to create momentum, win multiple rounds in a row. Make this comeback happen all at once, and it starts off with a 5v4. 
Chance at it. It's a tease approach e box quietly shrouded. Quick pedal to the metal moment. Snappy not getting through for free this time. Teammates on the pillar, though, they've got the response, and they know they've got Grim pinned into this corner. God forbid he's on his own until Halzer comes in. Oh. He gets flushed out by the Molotov, and that man advantage gone. Madden deep. Ebox flanked. Held by Floppy. He's just going to go quiet. That Opry loads over towards the tunnel. It is in the hands of Elyse and Halzerk. Double Opry take. Woo! Necessary shot out of Elyse. Boros tries to get off of the platform. Madden's cautious of the E-Box peak. Floppy's made sound. But these two operas, they are completely smoked off. It is going to be a tough job. Luckily for them, it's a missed shot from oh. Boros. And in they go. Kit indeed. Floppy with the defuse. Complexity a third. Uh, Floppy was a main resource right there to draw all the attention. Even if he gets a kill or not, they have a chance of getting through the smoke with his uh, presence. So he was very careful about it. Played that spot very well. And they coordinated the jump in perfectly. So nicely done for Complexity. This is almost pretty bad after um, JT spray right on the right side of default. It's four players all coming out of the same choke point, and they only get that first kill. So nearly ended in tragedy, but it's totally saved. They get even enough, even having the ability to pick up both ops is huge for the economy here. But not only that, they live with three. Bad buy for the Falcons. It was a cool play that they tried to do with not the best guns ever last round. There's definitely a chance they can still pull something out. Yeah, Complexity started winning rounds exactly when they had to, right? The economy of Falcons, they're coming in again with everything they can afford. Remember, the two ops means less retakes, so these rounds are even scarier in some ways. Full-blown exec inbound. Floppy going to be exposed, tries to get into the corner here. He'll spray down the one Galil. That was the one rifle they had, but the SMG still fine too. Halzerk inside a smoke. He's got support coming out from camera. Tech Nines over top, and Elyse plucking him from the sky. They've stalled out. Grim's flanked. Down okay. go Falcons. Wow, that's uh, two kills from the Mac 10s entering the site. And you think, all right, well, that really exposes the weaknesses of the two ops. Whatever train lines they have versus a full exec, it's going to get scary. And uh, yet still. Uh, complexity stands strong, so now they're up to four. Then they can maybe start to sit up a little bit more straight because... Oh! Elyse can opt, that's why. <laughs> Haven't seen him try it too often, but it's looked good in a few rounds so far. Third consecutive four spy. Fourth consecutive round win, perhaps. Elyse peaks deep. Dies out to Magisk, whose head just pops over the ledge. Luckily, JT maintains man advantage by going into the E-Box. And Holzerk, he'll escape middle, never caught by Sun Pius. Holy. Things looking up at the end of the half here. Better late than never for complexity. Falcons, Falcons can still totally be proud of having seven rounds, but... I think they're hungry for a statement at the end. Oh, that wide swing. Oh. Snappy just throws caution to the wind. Grim eats two flashes, dinked down to 10. He gets his damage back out on Magisk. Molly, smoke, nade, and push. They're going to tear it up towards Snappy, closing that gap really quick. But look at this reposition. Where the hell is Magisk going? He's going to have to go all the way around, wrap it back, and hope the CTs don't kill Snappy in the meantime, which he has pulled off. Wow. So they're going to be convinced for sure that somebody's sitting long. But at the same time, Bomb's not planted for him. Snappy goes down, and they hold off on E-Box. It's a retake for Complexity, and it is a mandatory four-round streak to close out this half all by way of that pistol force buy.
just when it felt like Falcons had complexity dead in the water, a resurgence from the North Americans. Four rounds in a row to close out that CT side. Four rounds that they absolutely needed. We're talking about a complexity core that was here last year on the brink of stepping onto the Spodek. A year that came with highs and lows, and a year now in 2024 that has started with nothing but struggles. But a chance, one last time, on the T side of Anubis to keep the dream alive. On the Brink might be the name of the complexity documentary at this point, because that's literally, the, that wasn't just Cato. That was so many events, RMRs, major qualifiers, everything for complexity until this point. They actually have had that, they haven't found that big success. That's what they're looking for. So didn't close out that tournament that they were looking for as well in that winter season when things were looking so good. So we'll see for complexity. Falcons, you know, they're a latent team, but still massive expectations as well. And an overall pretty good start, but the T side pistol looks like it might go the way of Cole. Could. Grim manages to get a kill in the mix. It's been him and Halzerk dragging the rest of the team, kicking and screaming through those last few rounds. Magis continuing the retake attempt, but he loses a teammate on the approach. Missing some shots, Sun Pius finds his. Magis to the 1v3, double players on the long setup. It's a strong post plant after a strong opening and complexity. I mean, this lead that Falcons once had has evaporated. It was seven to one, right? Yes. So seven to one. And good ideas. The, C the CT improvements. It was like literally what I was, what I was really wanting. You know, like my wish list on that CT side was like be able to trade together, like go for pick plays. They used the op, the double op setup. That was a very nice adjustment, and a lot of clutch maneuvers in the middle of all of that. I mean, they they really did save each other in a way that I think they were missing. In, um, in overpass on their CT side then. So, does it mean it's over? Absolutely not. Falcons can still 100% close this game out. This one is razor. Razor thin in terms of margins for both teams. Schrodinger's cat is everywhere at the moment in terms of what can happen. Very open middle. Falcons banking on Madden to do something here. Deagle in hand. They go for the long B peak just to see it empty. Madden loses his line of sight, and Magis suddenly going to feel desperate here. But maybe it's, that smoke grenade stalls things out long enough because great they went for the peak on long. Look at Boros, man. Huge flank. He started to foam at the mouth at the moment. And we saw this happen. Oh! Pass, but luckily, Grim holds on for the flank. And now Complexity are going to feel as though they have been found out. They're on high alert. They don't need to be too scared, though. Like, if they are, they actually will lose them the game. They need to stay closer together. They know there's pistols ahead. Oof. Halzerk's going to take it down to the bomb site with the double kill off the SMG. Sun Pius, his scout, and USP gets two off of the play. But sure enough, it's a trade train down into the A plant. It's floppy to hold off on flank. And it's complexity to have closed that gap entirely from 1-7 to 7-all. Yeah, and I've been like looking at Halzerk's cam for this, this series. He's clearly just gotten into stoicism yesterday, it feels like, because suddenly he's just very, very calm. He's on that Marcus Aurelius pipeline at the moment, like trying to keep it all in, be a master of his emotions. And it, I think it's actually been working. He's had some higher moments. He has actually hit most of his easier shots. Ooh, some pious little fierce burst of rage right there. But... Uh, I would be very happy for Halzerk. I think today ended up better. <laughs> There's more where that one came from. <laughs> JT and Grim. <laughs> yeah, I gotta sit them on their ass real quick that time. Okay. Easy anti eco. It was seven to one to eight seven here for complexity. A few smiles starting to crack on the complexity camp. Is that very quickly wiped off their faces because they know it's only once they get in the lead that they can lose it. Exactly. That's true. And knowing complexity. They can lose it. Yeah, it's very cute to be the team that can always come back, but it isn't when uh, you need to actually win the game. So... Okay. Ooh. 
Oh, good return though. Elise cracking open the mid smoke, finds Madden sitting on the other side with his pants down. Where was Sun Pius's? Oh, I see. It was up in A main. Yeah, and see, they rush to take a space right after because they know that he rotates way out every time. Meanwhile. Wait, was that Sun Pius over on B? Or was that where he did? I think he peaked E box. Snappy gets the dink but doesn't get the kill. And they just pretend like it didn't happen. Oros comes over. Couple players behind the obelisk. Halzerk preparing for the split. Snappy leaning forward into the pillar, wants to go and clear out the E box. Him and Halzerk, matter of timing on this one. There's, there's an angle here that Rain uses that's just so perfect. I think he's on it right now. If Halzerk goes down to Snappy, then suddenly the defense looks better. Oh, and he gets it, sliding out wide. Cut punch with the A4, Boros, clean. Ooh. Two kills from the back, Plat. Complexity hit the ground. The moment they get a lead, they lose it. Wow. Some Pius opens up with an op kill somewhere and then closes out against the liege as well. That was nice. It was getting bleak all of a sudden for Falcons, and then everybody steps up to the challenge. So nice for the opper to open things up, some Pius. Yeah, it was uh, the E-Box Yeah, peak. okay. That was good. Man, watching Boros, I swear, it's just like calligraphy with his M4 work. It's just so nice on, on rifles. Beautiful to watch, to be honest. Another big one for him. And a hard split stopped for Complexity. That was definitely a good setup they had for that attack. They instantly put Halzerk onto the ramp. Chance to duel Sun Pius, he hopes, but that nade actually comes to the entrance of B. Look at, look at the hefty damage from Grimm. Half a Boros, half a Sun Pius. All in a $300 nade. And if they tenderize that B site before coming through with what could be, in an instant, a split, Snappy better keep it on his toes. We've got a heavy mid-presence here from Falcons. Three players layering on bridge. Molotov from Snappy forces him to back up slightly. Falcons just hanging out by the door, playing counter flash, expecting something to come across that bridge from the T side. Right now, everybody's setting their eyes into B, and Snappy's about to have his hands full. Support is non-existent. He goes for some spam on smoke. There is nobody here to help. They're going to try to dive down off bridge into E box. Quick on the heels of complexity, but Floppy holds off against Madden. Boros slides out. Health advantage. Bomb planted. And as Elise gets back on 30 health, I can hear him moving. CTs call it quits. Falcons out. Yeah, they're gone. That's uh, now it gets scary for them. They got to save these guns. But now they're running out of rounds. That's a good attack from Complexity. They try it one more time a little bit better this time, says JT. And they lay it down. There is no play from the CT to get aggressive. They played a little more vanilla. And this sort of exposes, I think, like how many plays they actually have as a new team to to make things happen. They, they do have the end score. So they do have some stuff that they can do, but... And we have seen sometimes that they, they keep those players together on sites in each map. But uh, that was all the defense had. Literally that Elige 10 bullet burst through smoke clears it. Bridge players set up, but not fast enough, not sharp enough to get the better of Floppy in the E-Box. You yeah, just know whoever whoever comes out of this is going to play way better tomorrow. You can only hope. I think these two are both basically wet knives for each other. Wet stones, excuse me, to sharpen each other up. He's got Boros to defend with him this time. Making 
sound outside of the site. They elicit the utility. The CPs are going to get, yeah, they're going to get punished for that. And he just uh -oh. peeks in. Takes a step out too far, exposes himself to Long, and the offer pulls him off. What's even the chemistry here on the CT side for, for the Falcons? There, there's just Boro sitting in the same position to start out. Shoulder peeking that angle. This setup would work around, you know, 30 seconds, but Complexity have shown they know what to do with the space. And it's the scariest time to do it, but Falcons need to find out what's open, because if they don't take anything right now, it's going to get used against them. Taking a glance down the river, but even if you do decide to push this, the timing could just be too late. You've got to get to the corner of that wall and hope that Complexity doesn't go fast into A. If they start the split, they've already gotten into main. Snappy, he's at the tail end of this flank. Maybe he gets the opera. Maybe he drops bomb. Oh, there's a, oh he, he has shoots. to drop into the water. Snappy, the elevation change screws him over, and now all of a sudden Falcons have nothing, nothing. in this round. Yeah, there was, that was the only thing they had going. They were lucky to even have that. That's a complexity. We're readying up a split on the other side of the map. The Falcons found the right CT aggro to take, right? I mean, dropping the bomb there would have been cute, but it still would have fallen forward. It would have been hard for a Snappy to camp it. None of his teammates got kills. They couldn't use with the information that it was going to be this A split coming in. Uh, they, they couldn't use that information and set up accordingly. And they most importantly didn't hit their shots. Complexity, best round so far. Thorough with conviction. No hesitation. No hesitation, yeah. That, that, that to me, once Complexity started crossing bridge and moving through river, I didn't see them stop at all. That was, that was walk key held and moving forward the entire time. That slow squeeze. And this mistake by Boros to take that step to expose to long. Yeah. Looks like uh, nine out of the last ten rounds won from Complexity. Unreal. And, uh, you know, going out of the tournament's one thing. Going out in this fashion, oof. Back-breaking. Falcons, no timeouts remaining. Sonic says, let's go, boys. Now or never. But leave it to complexity to lose momentum. Uh, they should be lucid about the fact that the money is here is limited for the CT side. They're probably buying, they probably know this is such a big opportunity. Snappy has found a way to make do uh, when they've lost a player, but their opening setups have been pretty frail. I think the CTs have left some gaps. If they tighten this, tighten this up and bring us down to like the 40-second mark without dying, I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if you can find that move to make something happen here for the CTs, but... A press oh. with AWP. With the AWP Grim. above. Oh, snaps over. Shots missed. Grim knows. Can't really afford to cross out. Oh, man. Tries to go for the peak and just gives himself over. Luckily for again, though. complexity. There's the answer back. They've got one stuck. Oh, they Floppy got finds through. the entry. A site is open and complexity. Uh -oh. Grim keeps two sets of hands busy on B. Even though he dies, his entire team gets their entries elsewhere. Snappy's desperate. Tries to run at this from Bricks. All this team corralled on site. He's got them against the wall. And as he dives back, he's hoping someone else comes in to help. Snappy frantically trying to press both sides. They want to fight so bad. Flashbangs over the top. Hulls are blocked in on the fountain. Looks to hold off. And down he goes. Boros, it's clean. Trying to make up for the last round. Sun Pius comes out. What? And he nails that off shot. Oh my god, they actually Falcons, won. Falcons, finally answer. They actually won that. They threw everything. Everything that they could and the kitchen sink over that wall and just ran at it and said, we need to figure this out now. Complexity got to be so tilted. They literally had the perfect setup into that site. But honestly, that, uh, that ferocity from Falcons right there has to be credited. Like It was snappy. Good for them. Just make it happen. They, yeah, they, look at the way he just scares them all into this clump, right? They said, don't let them them down from bricks. Doesn't let anybody get back on camera. The one person who gets out long gets called back into the action. Wow. Stuffed by the op up close. Holy, that's a win. I don't even know what to make of that, man. That is absolutely nuts. If that level of pressure doesn't indicate snappy, I don't know what does. So, 
thriving in the carnage. Falcons respond. It's a lifeline. Yeah, it's a lifeline. That, that's no sustainable victory. That's just what they need to get back on their feet. That's a loan. It's a heartbeat. Matt just turns. Oh, oh double! What? Oh, the clothesline on Magisk, on the walking through A, and now it's 3v5. Some Pius feels like he's got blood in the water, tries to press a little deeper. Alige getting closer, shot right to the hip, down he goes, no answer. Halzerk will find one. It's a 2v5 queued up between Halzerk and Grimm. It's a massive ask, or it's Falcons to tie this game at 10. Yeah, right. Leave it to complexity to lose momentum. Working I always like to make a meal of it. A flash and a molly. Grim just silently creeps across jail. Snappy along the wall. He looks away. Grim sprays. And at least Holzerk's able to trade. It's a bomb plant at the very least. And the CT's far enough that he's going to come up op in hand. Holzerk. Oh, a second. This is for your Hollywood reel, Halzerk. Already seen it. A 1v3 back on overpass. This man's flow is unquestionable, and as he creeps around the corner, oh. he gets caught. Magis, the man of the hour, oh. the man of round 20, oh. gets three. He was right there. He was so close to getting away. And Magis steals that. They get 10. And we're going to get the firework finish now. Whatever the hell happens. What an insane last few rounds. And Complexity have done a great job of getting back into this game but of course falcons know what to do with a good amount of data they've got champions on their team they're not gonna let this be easy and they certainly weren't going to let it end on another 1v3 out of hauser again he refuses to go down without impact 20 kills on the map Complexity still have the advantage with Liege so much better inside a middle and really showing Falcon, uh, exposing Falcons for never playing in here. And this is something they don't do in their other games as well. An op duel. It's an op duel. Oh, they both land their shots. Yes, but H H Sun Pius goes up top. It's just a leg, shit, leg hit for him. And with that, Sun Pius puts Halzerk on ice in a series Sun Pius had to perform. They're going to walk this back, and despite the success of complexity inside of the A site, they have never had to deal with three defenders in there. But they then pulling one off by shuffling Sun Pius back to CT spawn on this little 10 HP he has. There's going to be another moment for Magisk. We saw two kills on the smoke push one round ago. When that fades, he's got two heads on display, and it's too much to ask of him to get them both. Now suddenly Madden's going to be pressured. Alige dies out in middle. Sun Pius with more impact, oh. and Madden a solid hold. Floppy two kills, the only player here for complexity to get anything going in round 21. Flash is over, peeks wide, he's got him against the wall, but Snappy makes the difference, and Falcon's in the lead yet again. Oh my god, they got back in the lead. That's so ridiculous. That Sun Pius duel right in the beginning, the leg shot because he goes up top. Poor Hauser hits the flick on a sliver of an angle, but this is the right play. And yeah, that's now the emotions coming out, and I completely understand at this point, listen, we're in the fourth quarter. Could be the, the entire tournament on the line here. He barely couldn't get away in that 1v3. Loses the opening kill in the next round. No money for Complexity to defend against tournament point here for them. Magisk helps, stole it, helps steal it away. Sun Pius helps steal it away. Snappy helps steal it away. Big one for Sun Pius, not only opening up with the op duel, but circling back from CT, getting into mid. We've been saying that, of course, middle has been left so open for a liege, and a liege versus an opera on 10 health gets clipped right before he comes down camera. Right before he has a chance to add himself to that A play. Sun Pius with a crucial double kill. Sun Pius with a mandatory uptick in performance in this best of three. Little light buy out of complexity, trying to throw a wrench in Falcon's works. 
trying to stop them shy of the lower final in Group A. They heard him jump around with that flash outside of main. Oh, but they might run him down with these pistols. They're coming in fast. Oros on the back plat's got the op to at least cool one off. Nothing! JT gets in with the SMG. Luckily, Madden had rotated over fast enough, but still, that's a portion of this bomb site that's no longer Falcons to be had. Ambitious wallbangs off the mark. At the very least, bomb planted and complexity set themselves up for the future, but there's still a slight chance they could pull it over the line. Grim off of the jail, now has to get two more. He sees the shoulder, he lines him up, oh. but just by the skin of his teeth, Madden, four kills. It's another high pressure moment, but it's one that Falcons thrive in. Yeah. And it's Falcons on 12. They had to fight for this one, even though it's real ugly. And it comes down to one player. It's another clutch that still goes in their favor. They have done almost every single thing they need to do now. And they have a run round buffer in case Complexity's next buy still goes well. There's a huge chance for Falcons to finally take this. After a war of a series. Complexity running nine rounds out of ten in a streak. Suddenly in this game. After that 3v3 retake. Yes, sir. Over on the A site. That should have been the end. Should have. And now Sun Pius has come alive when it absolutely matters most. Halzerk his counterpart oh. answers. Lays down the, the op and a flash comes in. That's indicative of Boros behind the obelisk. Oh! oh! Just seeing a glimpse of it to take back man advantage. Boros makes sure no entry allowed. And with Halzerk on the wayside, it's Grim, Elige, and Floppy left to keep complexity in Katowice. They were looking to dispatch of the Falcons to get into that lower final in two consecutive years. Floppy. Oh, Great answer. That's two of three. He doesn't know about the third. Madden peaks, finds the trade, goes right back at long. And it's going to have to be a liege. He steps into complexity. They have an uptick in performance. He is a game changer. One of the best that NA has ever had. And a chance to clutch out. Instant headshot on Madden. No idea about Magisk. Oh. And there it is. The end of complexity. And a chance for the Falcons to move on. Another, another heartbreak for complexity. But a fantastic comeback into the game for Falcons. It felt like a foregone conclusion in complexity. We're going to be able to close this out after their massive comeback on Anubis. But amazing resolve out of Falcons and a great call and some clutch plays and maneuvers in the end for a team that really is brand new together. Uh, this has put some hair on their chest, I'm sure. They can enjoy this one. Like a team, of course, that needs to find victory early on. Community has put pressure on the Falcons because of the price tag that it came with, because of the ambitions of the organization, because of the dissolving of an Ents roster that had so many fans made last year. But this is a big one. This is a chance. One more best of three between Falcons and the Spodak. One more best of three. That's all that stands between one of Counter-Strike's newest champions or potential champions and the Spodek Arena. Joining us here on desk is a many time former champion. We got Magisk coming on in. Congratulations on the win there, man. That was, uh, that was a little bit of a tense series, shall we say. How you feeling? Uh, I'm happy. <laughs> uh, it was very intense. I think we actually played really well today in the sense that we kind of threw the first map by losing five versus three and five versus three and two versus one where we got fucked with the money. Um, so I actually think we were the better team today, and I'm just happy that we played better than the previous two games. Now, I mean, talking about it, right, some of your teammates who've been in the spotlight, who've been focusing on their individual form, perhaps. I want to focus on your opera early on, some pious, right? Had a, a, some banging games today, some banging maps as well. Any words for your opera? I think it's nice that he's finally taking on his role and focusing a bit more on himself because I think the first two games he was more focused on what the team wanted to do and he was not really playing his game and to be honest he was just fully locked in and not doing his you know role of just killing people and I think today he was uh, very focused on that he just need to focus on himself and do all these aggro peaks he likes to do and I think that is uh, uh, what made him play well today. Well first of all congratulations for the victory it was really close but 
already kind of continuing off of what you said there. I'm sure you're looking at your team right now, realizing that it's kind of rough around the edges here and there. What, are your, what do you think is kind of like the biggest thing that you guys still need to work on? Um, I think, you know, the, our biggest issues the first two games was probably that we had trouble running our strats out of spawn. And I think that is a, a fundamental issue. And I will uh, say big props for Boris. Um, the last two games, he hasn't made one single mistake. And I think he has been working really hard to try and fix these issues. And you can also see that he has been working really hard because now individually he's also popping off. Because now he doesn't have to think about what do I need to do and all these kind of things. And yeah, he's just been playing like really, really good after he fixed those things and it's very, very good to see. It's perfect segue because he is our U.S. Air Force aim high player of the match through the series. Strong performances from Boros, really becoming that that star in the rough that, you know, Snappy talked about last night that we've heard in interviews as well. The sort of the rawest element of this team now maybe starting to take form. You're, you're seeing that player come together here? I, I think it's very clear that he has the potential to be one of the best rifles in, in the world. I mean, his aim is uh, unreal and sometimes I'm not even... Uh, like, I don't understand how he does it, but his aim is just very clean and very, very crisp. So I think if he can be more focused on like not making mi mistakes uh, inside of the tactics and all these kind of things, uh, I think he can definitely have the potential to be a very good rifler. As I would say, um, to look at Emil in Danish, but uh, let's do it in English this time around. Um, you kind of changed roles in this roster. You're not really playing the the same type of support role. I think you've taken a little bit more responsibility. We see the Ains in the overpass. What, like, why is that? Was that a wish of your yourself, or was it like a team decision? Uh, it was definitely a team decision. I mean, I loved playing my role uh, before as well. But I think right now with the team, I need to take more responsibility and also make sure that um, on the CT sides that I can call a little bit more. But of course, it's not on every single map, and uh, for me, it obviously also needs to be more uh, better stats and stuff like that because I need to uh, show up individually as well. So I think it's it's definitely different for me, but I, I definitely think I'm capable of fulfilling those roles. Um, so yeah, I'm. Yeah, just doing my best to make sure that I don't uh, play bad. <laughs> Now you guys are one step closer to the Spodak, and I kind of want to ask about, you know, roles beyond the server as well, right? In this team, you know, you're maybe not the most experienced uh, teammate. You, you, uh, Snappy's certainly been around a long time, but you are the most accomplished player, right? The most decorated player. You come into this with a certain degree of respect that uh, you're going to command from all of your new teammates, right? Is that, do you, is that something that you feel in terms of not just in the server, but outside of the server as well, in terms of how you're being looked to as a teammate? Mm, I think... I. I really try not to use my achievements because I want everyone to be equal and I want everyone to have their voice. I think it's very important for a team if you want to work prof uh, like really good, you have to listen to everyone and hear what everyone has to say. Um, obviously, uh, in-game it's more uh, where I can take over and come up with the solutions if we need that. But outside of the server, I think I'm just uh, letting uh, like Lars and Danny do their job. and them controlling everything and I'm going to follow like everyone else and, and do my job as a, as a player. Um, so yeah, I think it's, of course, uh, people, they can ask questions and stuff like that, how it feels to play on the big stages and stuff like that. But, you know, I think it's it's only Boros who is not really played on like big stages, maybe one time in the quarterfinal of the major. But other than that, you know, it's just me trying to help them and, you know, calm them down when we need to. And obviously also not overthinking when we lose games, also outside of the server, because that is the tendency of young players is that they will start overthinking because they have one bad game. And that is, you know, normal for everyone, uh, even Saibu once in a while. Hmm. I, I mean, that's certainly the case. Uh, speaking of things you got to think about, not overthink, but think about still, there's one more, more opponent that stands between you and the arena, that stands between you and walking into the, the Hall of Heroes and the Spodek with your head held high. Uh, we're not quite sure who it is yet. I believe it's the victor of that other game. Uh, so that is going to be either Navi or Eternal Fire. Uh, any thoughts on, on either of those opponents, on, on what you're, you're thinking about heading into that next match? I think right now we are going through a process of learning every single game. And I think right now the most important we can get is experience as a team, like more playing more and more games. And also because we have the Armar coming up, which is obviously a huge uh, importance for every single team. Um, so right now, I think it's just important that we just take one, one game at a time and take all the data we can get and then start fixing our mistakes. Because let's be honest, there is quite a lot um, when you lose so many five versus threes and two versus one, where he's stuck on the bomb side. And <laughs> yeah, all these flashbacks kind of going through your head right yeah. now. <laughs> we, we had a saying that, it, you know, it's like, Cyber will always have rounds, you know, it's a Cyber round. But right now we're doing Falcons rounds, which is losing advantage situations left and right. So <laughs> we need to fix that before we, we talk about the, like winning the big trophies, that's for sure. Mm -hmm.
Well, looking forward to seeing what kind of form you come in tomorrow. It seems like it's getting better day by day. Congratulations on the win here, and hopefully we get to talk to you again. Thank you. Just pop those off and leave them ah. on the desk. We got another team to talk about, but uh, you have some much-deserved rest at this point. Now it's time to shift gears. It's time to talk about, unfortunately, the team that we won't be keeping around. Complexity are done here. Uh, and for some words from that squad, we got James Banks. Complexity will fall here to the Falcons. Elise is kindly joining me. And things started off positively. You get their map pick, things are looking good for you guys, and you're willing to fart on it. We've got to touch on your overpass, because this is the map you guys can always rely on. What was going wrong here? Because it felt like it was almost like the spirit game again. Um, well, on T side, we were just in like the force wars, and uh, we actually had a lot of good chances, like in, in like the first like five rounds. But unfortunately, none of them went our way. But we still ended up pretty okay, I think so, on the T side. But on CT, we won pistol and then got ecoed, which was really bad for us to happen because they ended up being able to, you know, win the next round, and then everything after that was like super small margins and just like little mistakes like here and there. And unfortunately, make enough of those, you're gonna lose. And in terms of that, we then come to Anubis sort of decider. And this was certainly a great chance of that. I think this was one where we saw you had it in your hands. Is that how it felt to you? Uh, I mean, it did for me, yeah. I, I thought that we put ourselves in so many positions where we can win. But like I said, like, there's just so many little things that happen. And they all just ended up like, you know, not going good for us. So, yeah. Now, looking at just Complex's performance here at Caddo, we start off good against Apex, we now then come on to the Spirit game, then we go into this one. How do you look at where it tells you of Complexity is? Because it's continuing, sadly, to spiral downhill. Yeah, I mean, I think that we've only performed worse in like the last like four months. I think that we need to just do everything better. Like, I don't even know what else to really say about it, because things aren't going good, they don't look good. Our Apex game wasn't really good. This game was slightly better, but I think that we still should have won. But, you know, there's, there's good things to take from it, of course. But I think just across the board, we just need to perform a lot better. Obviously, the RMR is coming up not too far away. Will you be trying to stay in Europe up until that point? Yeah, we're going to be here for uh, until the 17th. So okay. we're still here for, for a decent amount of time. And we can, you know, get everyone a little bit of like a break mentally since it's been a long travel. Uh, you know, we've... Well, a lot of the guys have even been like in Dallas and like just away from home since like the fourth or the fifth. Yeah. So it is a little bit grueling sometimes having like these types of like long travel sessions. Um, so hopefully we can get a good reset in for everybody and we can put in like a lot more work and more efficient work so we can get back to the top. And in terms of the mental reset, the one thing I, I see that was going away when you first joined the team was the mentality was a lot more positive. But now you've, you've got a bit more time with the team, we're starting to see the same kind of frustrations and, frustrations and tilt. Is there a psychologist, is there something that can help you guys to make sure this gets better? Because we see the individuals can light up. Well, I think that in the beginning, I think that we were on like a really good streak where we can um, you know, be ahead of everybody else and everything like that. But now like we've, we're you know everyone else is caught up obviously and there's just been like a lot of like repeat mistakes and i think that you know it's it's really difficult when things aren't getting better like consistently like you want to feel like things are getting better day by day and i don't think that we've like done that well enough just like across the board like as a team um but i mean yeah we would love to but you know esports winter and all that <laughs> pretty much <laughs> well fingers crossed the winter is over soon the results will start coming and they do get what they want thank you very much it's time to say goodbye to Complexity here at the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice. The star of Dallas not quite shining here tonight. The clouds covering it. And while there were some good moments, some moments to be excited about, they were not enough. This team may be missing their peak, may be missing their ascendancy, now struggling to regain form, regain momentum, and it will not be here. Great eulogy, Mike. Couldn't have said it better myself. Obviously, Elige disappointed by the loss here, the grueling travel schedule, everything that it takes to be a professional player from North America. But at the end of the day, it's results that count. Obviously, complexity missing out on some pretty big rounds there. I think that Elige was just incredibly aware of the fact that he too had some moments where they would find themselves in advantage, which actually speaks about how good some of their starters were in some of the rounds. But then just the closing or the lack thereof was a big difference maker against an a team of experienced players like the Falcons. I also think we have to get to that stage where complexity has kind of fallen out of that top bracket, right? They've made a, an, 
a decent amount of bad results at this point. We see the Elisa Masters, we also see the Challenger in, in NA now. Like For me, the CS2 hype is de definitely dead for complexity. I'm not sure what's next. I also remember he's saying it's kind of tough on the internal parts of the team because they feel like they're not improving. I wouldn't be surprised to see roster changes being coming in from, from complexity, depending on how the major goes, because right now it feels like they're kind of running into the wall. It feels like it's just so frustrating, right? Because we were we were starting to talk about complexity in a different light, in an entirely different perspective, right? Since the Liege came in, mm -hmm. since the new game, we were saying these guys are contenders. These guys made a final in Sydney. These guys are fighting for titles. These guys should be in playoffs, and that's just not the case anymore. It's been too many events of disappointment for us to really consider them uh, as playoff contenders on a regular basis. I feel like right now they're just kind of a random upset team if we really want to be blunt about it. Uh, sure, they could beat a team like Apex in their opening round matchup. That maybe is an upset, but then, you know, against teams that have more experience, more veteran savvy, it does feel like Complexity are the team that more frequently loses their nerve. Yeah, CS2 gave them a nice buff, but I feel like they're such a far cry away from that now that I don't really see what's exactly supposed to perk them up at this point. Yeah, we, I think you said it nicely. I think they're moving into that layer of teams where we have Apex, Gamer Legion, those who will upset the good teams a couple of times. I don't think teams, once they're drawing complexity right now, they will not be scared. I think that have that feeling after Sydney, be like, wow, these guys really know how to do stuff in CS2. All of a sudden, they look a bit lackluster and not really the same anymore. I think it's going to be a gift for some teams because of that relatively high ranking that they have right now that they're going to meet into these guys for the near future. Well, we're looking to the future because we've only got one day left of the groups. We're wrapping things up here on the B stream and we've got some matches coming on up. Gamer Legion taking on Heroic Falcons versus my favorite team, TBD. That's either going to be Navi or Eternal Fire, depending on the result of the A stream game. And then Ents taking on Maus to determine who's going to make it straight into the semifinals of the Spodak. That's a, a wild possibility here in our last slate of games. Yep, we've got on the A stream for tomorrow, G2 versus Monty. That might be a surprise for a lot of people to see G2 down in the lower bracket. And then FaZe versus Spirit. I feel like that's a marquee matchup. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you yeah. like Counter-Strike tomorrow, you better tune into that one because you want to see Donk tested against the best opposition in the world. Yeah. It really is at this point just like, who's going to stop Donk? Who's gonna do it? Someone's that's gonna do it eventually. Props. That's the narrative Props. we've been building, right? I think we've said, oh, then Na'Vi, because they were looking good. But I think it was Spirit making Na'Vi look bad. I don't think Na'Vi particularly has looked bad at this tournament. Right now, they're playing a very close game over the A stream. I don't think it's taking away much, considering they're playing against Eternal Fire. So I think Na'Vi is surely still a top 7, 8 team, for sure, and dunked, literally just uh, dunked them. He dunked them. He donked him, and will he donk his way straight to a trophy? Someone's going to, whoever it may be, but we won't find out today. There are many more days left between these rosters and that cup. That beautiful, shining, gleaming trophy that they all vie for, the ray of light in the Hall of Heroes. But for now, it's time to turn out our lights. It's time to say good night and see you all tomorrow. There's still a game going live on A, so head on over, check out the conclusion of that one, and we'll see you tomorrow to wrap this whole group up. Shout out to the guy in the spot. <laughs> What's he doing? Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. What's he doing? Up the truth, this ain't new to me. Since the age of 22, I've been losing it. Like it's fuel to level up, like it's champagne in my cup, like there's nothing interrupting my pursuit of dreams. There's a vision in my mind, it's consuming me. Take my confidence, combine with opportunity, mix it up with unity. Soon to be the greatest of my generation, Operation Victory. Fight or fly, we will stay through the perils we dare not to stray. Spark the match, light the flame, out of luck, out of sight, dangerous dynamite. Dynamite! Setting fire to the clouds at the speed of light. Going up, I call it down, screaming. We are, we are. Superman's kryptonite. We are, we are. Blowing up dynamite. Dynamite! Check it. 
Troubled days, lonely nights, a lot of tears, a lot of fights. Big dreams met with bigger lies. It ain't what it seems from the outside. On my downfall, they pray. Will I surrender or will I betray? Given the trauma that lives in my brain, or use it to fuel up the fire in my veins. I never complain. I boss up and do it. If there's a battle, I'll find my way through it. If the wind blows, I thank God that he blew it. Cause what is a blessing depends on you view it. The fruits of my labor are in abundance. Indispensable, I'm not redundant. Incomprehensible the way I've done it. When the struggle pushes me, I'll shove it. I'll rise above it. Fight or fly, we will stay Through the perils we dare not to stray Spark the match, light the flame Out of love, out of sight, dangerous Dynamite Dynamite! Standing fire to the clouds at the speed of light Going up, not coming down, screaming We are, we are Superman's kryptonite We are, we are Scouts are blowing up Across. Yeah. 